Hello there. Are you a mobile application developer? Are you tired of creating boring and inspiring flat applications? Do you dream of building user interfaces that are both beautiful and functional? Well, I got you covered. I'm here to introduce to you a Mastering Professional Flutter User Interface course, the ultimate course for aspiring Flutter developers. Many Flutter developers struggle to create user interfaces that are both visually appealing and user-friendly. They often end up with poor layouts and inconsistent styles and lack of user interactions. In this course of Mastering Professional Flutter User Interface, I will train you of how to avoid these common pitfalls and take your application design skills to the next level. In this 18-hour comprehensive video tutorial for Flutter course, you will learn the following. Essential user components such as bottom navigation, bottom sheets, buttons, and many more. I will train you advanced interactions such as implementing dialogues, expansion panels, pickers, sliders, and many more. I'll train you user-friendly patterns. I'll teach you how to do snack bars, toasts, steppers, tab views, and form design. I'll go ahead and do real-world examples such as building profile pages, no item page, players, timeline, shopping experience, and much more. In this course, I'll do a clean and well-documented code. Follow along with easy understanding step by step without skipping any step. By the end of this 18 hours course, you'll be able to do the following. You'll create stunning user interfaces that impress users. You will improve the user experience of your mobile applications and you'll also boost your confidence in Flutter development skills. Click on the link below that is going to take you to my 18 hour YouTube video tutorial where I'm going to train you how to make beautiful and user friendly applications that are going to be loved by everyone using Flutter. Hello and how are you? My name is Mohind Umbarak and I welcome you to our very first video of learning how to make uh, Flutter uh, user interfaces. It's going to be a series of so many videos and in these videos we are going to look at very very many different uh, components and uh, following very good uh, user practice i mean programming practices that can help us in uh, what in our day-to-day -day life of uh, creating mobile applications yeah you know uh, user interfaces are very important to application because they are the ones that are interact with the users or the users interact with the user interfaces with the application so if you make uh, poor user interfaces or application that does not look good or does not have good user experience it means that the users will not appreciate it and if they don't appreciate it they will not be able to promote it or they'll not be able to come back to you so having uh, doing good nice user interfaces or good user interfaces is very 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 crucial to a mobile app developer so I'm going to do this series of a uh, very good number of videos of how we can create different day-to-day uh, -day interfaces. And you can even stock these interfaces somewhere so that uh, you keep on coming back to them and use them in different kind of what? In different kind of projects. So without wasting much time, let's go straight in our today's business. And we start learning how to create uh, different kinds of what? Of user interfaces in uh, Flutter, or I can call it maybe UI challenge or whatever you want to call it, but it's going to be a serious journey. So, I want you to get your hands dirty, don't just watch the video that I'm going to be teaching you, watch as you practice. Okay, I've already created these interfaces, so I don't need to repeat myself, but I'm going just to be explaining everything step by step. I'll not, I'll not, okay, I'll not explain it, I'll be creating even some. So I'll be explaining them as you also do it, as you go so ahead, go ahead and do it and write them. So by doing like this, it will be able to save our time that I use to type. However, I already have my code, so I'll be explaining how everything works. And also maybe what needs modification, I'll be doing what? Doing the modification in the video. All right, without wasting much time, let's go straight and start our today's journey of learning how to make uh, 
different kinds of user interfaces in Flutter by following the Google recommended material UI design. Okay, let's do this. So we're going to begin with um, creating the fresh new application. So I'll close this application that is here. Close project, close all projects. And I'm going to create a new application, new project. So I'll simply come say Flutter project, and then I'll go, well, that will be the SDK. I just say Flutter and then I click next. I hope you already know how to do this. Uh, so here I'm going to give this um, uh, the name. So I don't know how I should call it. Flutter UI or UI challenge. Okay, I'll call it maybe UI Mobile app UIs, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I should call it, but you'll find maybe a good way along the way. All right. So, I can call it maybe Flutter UI. UI is UI, whatever. So it is in my pro in this folder. And I'm going to call this one maybe Flutter user interfaces. All right. So after doing that, it's going to be an application. This can be our temporary name. It's going to be Scotland. Everything is going to be the way it is. Maybe I can remove in iOS and Linux and Mac and Web and Windows. I keep Android only for now. And then after I go ahead and say create the project. So I'll wait for the project to be created. So there the project. After it has been created, I'll go ahead and run the project. So my emulator is there. I'll run the project. So there's a lot of materials that I don't want you to repeat. I don't want you to repeat again and again and again. So I'm going to provide you with you these materials so that when you start your project, you don't suffer with material. You just concentrate on the work only. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, I will, I will publish the basic file or the startup file. I mean the startup project. So for you, you'll just clone it and then you use that startup close the project i'll put the link in the description of this video so that you don't suffer with uh, creating your own images creating your own ui i mean creating uh, things that are very common like uh, the data all that stuff i'm going to share with you so that uh, for you you'll just download the scratch file or the scratch folder i, I mean this the scratch application and then you start from that what from that scratch application so that scratch application will come with assets and the link i'll put in the description of what of this video that those assets will that asset will have pictures etc okay so you can see i've already started my application there it is okay this is a typical flutter application so the first things that i'm going to add in this application the one that i'm going to give you um I'm going to give you the pubspec.yamo, this one. Okay, so the whole pubspec.yamo, I'm going to put it here. Okay, I'm going to put it here. So your task will be just to download that pubspec.yamo and then start following along. Okay, or start implementing what I'll have just done because I don't want you to suffer by looking for your own images. It is, I just want you to concentrate on the work only. So let me first organize this guy. Okay, so we begin with pubspec.yamo. So I'm going to today right now in this video creating just a scratch folder, a scratch file. So you may just watch because I'm, I'm going to give you this file. I'm going to give you the link of this project. 
I'll tell you where we'll start from. Just watch how I do everything. And then I'll say, okay, here we are now starting. So that's where we'll get it. You download that folder that I'll share with you. You, you, you put it in your project. I mean, you put it in your, in, in your phone and then you start from there. Okay, so I'll begin by removing these useless comments. I don't need these comments for now. So I'll go ahead and remove them around these comments. Remove all the comments. So I hope you're watching. All this is a part of learning. Some people think these comments are needed and they'll leave them there. So let's learn, let's learn. Okay. Okay. So I'll remove all, 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 all. Maybe these assets I'll put my own. All right. So after doing that, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to add my own packages, the packages that I really want. Okay. So the, here they are. So I can just... In the in the form of I mean for the assets for the assets I need only the folder of images. Okay, let me just copy everything and I put it the other side. Okay, up to the environment. Just simply come and copy this and I'll explain it. Up to version. So I'll come and copy up to version and put it there. Alright. So these are the packages that we're going to use in this project. Okay, so I'm going to explain them um we're going to use uh flutter that is okay cappuccino icons that is okay that comes with it we're going to use get x this is called get x this get x we will use it for navigation and uh, local database and, and state management this get x so you should be knowing how we're going to use get x so you should add it in your app okay we are going to use flutter toast you know flutter toast it is used for doing what? For making those simple toasts. We're going to use INTL or INTL. This one you're using, we use it for converting the dates and uh, other different conversions. It simplifies the life of converting di different things. We're going to use package info. This one just helps in knowing the, pa the, the package information. We're going to use the HTTP. Uh, we are, this one will help us to make HTTP requests, but we'll not use it so much. Okay. We're going to use it flutter speed dialer. We're going to use uh, shared preferences. We're going to use one signal. One signal we may not use it right now. Let me remove it. Okay. We're going to use URL launcher. URL launcher it helps us to launch the 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 URLs and also the fonts. This shared preference helps us to save the keys in what in the in the local database. Okay. We're going to use backdrop. We're going to use uh, Flutter, staggered grid view. We are going to use SQL Flight. SQL Flight, you know it is used for local database. And then you're going to use Path for accessing the local files. We are going to use Cache Network Image. You already know this one for offline fault images. We are going to use this HTML. This HTML we use it to display the, the the data in the form of HTML. We are going to use Web View for displaying the web 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 views in the app. We are going to use a um, uh, material design. We're going to set it to free, and then we're going to use an asset of images. These images, I'm going to share them with you. So I'm going also to share with you this pubspec.yamo. So these are the things that we're going to use. So uh, when we're building the thing that you don't know, of course, I'll be explaining them. But these are the most important packages that we're going to use in this journey of learning how to create user interfaces by following the good, good, good what good practices. So let me go ahead and install this. So I'll just simply click on PubGet. Okay, so PubGet, it is going to do what? To install all this into my application. So also go ahead and do the same. Don't bother to do this by your own. Of course, you can do them. You can pause the video and copy them and do them. But don't bother. I'm going to share with you this project. In the middle of this video, I'm going to share with you. And then I'll tell you, okay. Forget about everything. Now we start from here. Download this project from this place. And then you st we start from here. I'm going to show you everything. Okay? Because it's going to be a serious journey of uh, learning user interfaces. Okay. So though that is our pubspec.yamo. Okay. Now the next thing that I'm going to add is the... Um, is the what? Is the... The assets. So... These are the assets. In assets, we just literally have images. Eh? So I'm going to copy this assets folder and I put it there. So I'll come and copy the asset folder 
and I put it in my in this project that we're going to have to do together. So I'll come and put it here. Put asset folder into mode X. Yes. So this is the asset folder. Uh -huh. So in this asset folder, of course, you're accessing the what? The images as you can see here. So that's what you're going to use. Asset. So these are the assets. I'm giving you these images for free. Just go ahead and download it. They have a lot of uh, uh things that you're going to do uh, to use icons and the rest okay. so instead of you suffering creating your own images you are going to download this application and then the learning so that we can focus on learning okay i hope you understand my point all right so uh we're going to need them um, we're going to need that assets folder okay after having the assets folder uh what else do you need uh the lib this is where the logic is going to be. Um, I think that's it. Okay, then you're going to need the data. This data that you're seeing here. This data. Uh, I don't know whether you need also the models. Okay, I'm going to give you the models and the data. Okay, I'm going to give you those two. So that you should not suffer. The models and the data. So when you reach a model, you'll be explaining what, how to do, how to deal with that model. So that our focus should be only... On the user interface not on the not on the not on the what not on the logic of creating the back end okay so but i'll explain everything so i'm going to copy the model and the data those two are also going to come in the scratch file i mean the scratch project that i'm going to share with you so i'll come and paste them here in this project that we're doing all right so those i think those are enough for you to get started so you have the data, we have the models, good, and then you have this main file. This main file is crying. I think it doesn't need me to have this super. I'm going to remove it. Okay. Okay. I'll go ahead and remove uh, this test. I don't need it. Okay. So yeah, so that's our application. I'm going to share with you this code, so don't worry about anything. Before, before, until right now, don't worry about anything. Okay, so this data, it is having a SQ flight. What does it say? Uh, let me first remove this. Notification. Okay. This for notification. Let me first remove things that you don't need. For example, the notification, I don't need. You don't need them right now. Let me first remove those ones. Let me remove things that you don't need. Okay, don't need those ones. So this is the dummy data. You don't. What else is crying there? People model. I'll just import it. Yeah. I'll just some models are not imported. Okay. It was just to copy the project and start. Focusing on the user interfaces. Okay. But I'll explain these things as we proceed. Eh? So, still don't worry. Then, lastly, this one. All right. All right. So, what else is crying? After all of these ones. Okay, so in this main, in this main, uh, there's something is crying. We're going to remove those ones. In this main, in fact, we're going to put our own main. Okay.
there. These are just our simple screens. We have a splash screen and then uh, the main the main the main screen and then the about us screen. Let me remove the about us screen you it now. Um I will design our own splash screen. Okay, so we may even not need that one now. Let's just put our home screen. Our menu screen, you can call it menu screen, okay? So we are going to come here and create another folder of screens. Eh? We are going to create now a fresh folder of screens. Folder called screens. So inside these screens, so we are going to put our first screen. That we are going to call... Transcript me many many route that you use for routing. That's like a home screen. Then just simply put stateless widget. Paste there the name. Import the data. Okay. So here we are going to you don't need this all right so i'm going to come here okay that's a, our simple home screen okay so i'm going to come here to the home screen and then import this okay yeah there's no more thing that is crying so i hope you're now on the same level so this is the simple scratch file i mean the scratch app that you're going to need okay so that uh, we should be able to learn the thing that we're going to learn. Can get the dependencies. Let me run the application. Stop it and run it again. Okay, so we're going to have different those screens around that we're going to begin with. So it is loading. Let me prepare here something. So you'll have to come here to compile SD can make 34. I want the application to run so I can be able to share the code. Alright, also the min SDK. Min SDK should be 22. Let me make sure it is running, then I share the code with you at once. Okay, it is running now. Good, that's our home screen. Alright, so in this home screen, we're going to have our, our what? In this home screen, we're going to have our menu. So 
So just simply going to come here and say list view. Uh -huh. So we're going to give it, for example, our first main is going to be about, okay, let's first put here our app bar. So it has sound it is scaffold. It has to be body. Uh, so I give it up bar for example. It's boring. <laughs> I know it is boring, but it's worth it's it. Boring. Yeah, but we are just setting up eh, to something very interesting. Trust me. Okay, there I go. All right, so that's where we're going to begin from. Okay, so I'm going to put this application to GitHub and I show you how you can clone it. So I'll show you how to publish your application, even your application GitHub. This is how you do. So I'll go to where my project is. So you first install GitHub software. This is my GitHub software. You just install it to search GitHub and then put in your phone. I mean in your laptop and install it and then you log into your account. Then after go to your project where it is. For example, uh, Flutter UI, this one that I'm going to work with. I'm just going to drag and drop this project in that what? In this uh, Android Studio, I mean this uh, GitHub repo. Just going to say Flutter UI and then drag and drop it there. Okay, so after doing that, they'll tell me that this project is not on GitHub yet. Okay, so I'm going to say create a repository. Okay, so I don't know how I should call it. Should I call it Flutter UI? Yeah. Let me come here and cheat on chat GPT. I'm not organized. Nice name for Flutter UI training course. Run to suffer. Mastering. Yeah, mastering Flutter UI. That is good. Flutter fitness. <laughs> all right that's good i think we should use that one so the project name we're going to be mastering flutter ui okay okay so yeah that's going to be the name of our project okay the description what etc everything is okay yeah that is okay that is okay so i'll go ahead and create the repository so i've created the repository so after creating the repository i'll go ahead and publish it okay 
I publish it. Okay, so after publishing it, I hope you don't add the build files, the build folders. Send it ignore. That's okay. So the app is now on public. So I'm going, did I make it public? I don't know. So I'm just going to go view on GitHub. To see on GitHub, I think it is not public. All right, so this is the link. So you'll go ahead and clone this. I'm going to show you even how to clone. So I'll just make sure it is public. So you guys can be, should be able to do it. Uh, to get it. Ah. Okay, so it's now public. So you'll come to my what? To my repository. Can I change this name? You'll come to my repository and uh, get this project. Let me rename it. Mastering Flutter UI. That's okay. So this is the project, okay? This is the project. So for you, what you'll do, so you, you see, I give you the images, I give you the, the YAML file, everything. So for you, what you'll do, you'll just simply come here. So if you don't have GitHub in your computer, you can as well download the zip. So you download the zip, you'll have this one in your laptop. All the images, everything that I've set, you'll be able to get them. And if you have GitHub, you just copy this and then say clone. Okay, come here and say clone and then select say url and then put the url and select where you want this project to be saved and then say clone so once it finishes cloning you will have exactly the same thing in your laptop that i've just created so go to that folder then drag and drop it in your what in your android studio then you'll have something like mine so by there you'll be able to get started with this course i'll put the link of this video i mean I'll put the link of this uh, uh, repository in the description of the video so you can be able to do it to get started. I'll also put it in the WhatsApp group. And in case you don't get the link, you can as well find it on my what on my on my on my on my GitHub. Search mobile 360 will be able to get it there. Or you can just go to my YouTube channel, go to the description of the video, you'll be able to get the description. So go ahead and download that. That's all you need. So we'll be able to do what? To get started. So let's get started right now. Okay. So what we're going to develop right now, we're going to develop uh, this. Let me show you what we're going to do right now. Oh, the problem, I have one phone. Uh, let me just uh, take a screenshot of what we're going to do. And then we get started. Uh, all right, we're going to do that. <laughs> it is simple, but it's beautiful. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do an Instagram splash screen. Okay, when you open Instagram, what do you see? So we're going to do something like that. So don't undermine it uh, because we're going to learn small things and big things. So do yes, do do a favor to yourself and do everything. Don't say ah, this is too simple. I will not do it. Please be humble. Try it as a challenge. Okay. Okay. So this is what we're going to do right now. Okay. I hope we're together. So this is what you're going to do. I don't know why I should put it. Let me see if I can put it on another screen. I think I'm not going on another screen. Okay. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And save it home.
like it will be here okay that's okay all right so that's what we're going to do members that's what we're going to do it's not so much it's not very hard but it's it can be a challenge so let's go ahead and start let's go ahead and start that's what we're going to do so let's go to our application our application is here so you this is the time now you start now go ahead and clone your application and then start doing these things or is it anyway okay so the first section is going to be splash screens so let me just simply come here and let me just simply come here and say maybe serve a web organization um, so i'll come to our main route our menu route here i'm just going to put here maybe my simple widget uh, okay i'm going to have a, a place where i'll be keeping my widgets uh okay i'm going to put here splash screens Okay, let's go ahead and put our, our first splash screen, which is going to be Instagram splash screen. Okay, Instagram splash screen. Okay, so I want now when someone clicks here, when someone clicks here, you should be taken to that Instagram splash screen. So I'll come here and put what on top, open, and then put Instagram splash screen. So the way how we're going to organize our things, let me make my okay. I hope you you can see my menu here. So the way how we're going to organize our things, we're going to be putting all of them in a folder, things that are related. So here I'm going to come here to screens. I'm going to create another one called. I'm going to create a, a. I mean, I'm going to come here to screen. I'm going to create a folder called Splash Screens. Okay. So I come here and say new folder or new directory and call it Splash Screens. So that's we're going to have all the things of Splash Screens. All right. So let's go ahead and start at doing it. Okay. So I guess we need to come here and put Instagram. Let me see how I'll be naming them. Come to this guy here. So I just simply come and say Instagram file. I'll begin that splash. So all of them they should be in the same order. Splash underscore Instagram dot Instagram dot what the dot. Okay, so don't ask, always add. So come here and create a stateful widget stateful widget and then we're going to put there instagram like that splash instagram all right so i'll go ahead and import this so this is just a, a simple what a simple uh screen Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to do this. This is what we're going to do, okay? All right, so we're going to begin. By putting the scaffold. So everyone knows how to put scaffold. So I just simply come and put scaffold. So I remove constant and put scaffold. Okay, so after they putting scaffold, what I'm going to do, I'm going to navigate to this screen, okay? 
So to navigate this screen, we added a package called getx, okay, in the, in the project. It helps even in navigation. So we're going to come here. When someone taps here, what you do, you just write get.2. So it's not like they were how we were doing it at first. Just write get.2 and then open your bracket and then open the bracket, then point that the screen that you want to navigate to. So that is the power of getx. If you still remember, I told you the fun the, 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 the library called get, you are going to use it. So you have to have get x in your packages in order to navigate to this screen. So that's our first screen, Instagram screen. So if I click on this Instagram screen, let me go ahead and save. So if I click on this Instagram screen, I should be able to go to Instagram screen here. Yeah. So let's go ahead and design that. So what we're going to do first, we're going to put there an app bar in this scaffold. Okay, you're going to put there an app bar in that scaffold. I believe you all know how to put an app bar. So I'll come here. As I told you, some things I'll be copying them because I want to repeat myself so, and to save your time. But you, you have to write them. Okay. So I'll come here and add app bar. You see? App bar and then say app bar background is white. Okay. Background is white. And then the elevation is zero. The toolbar is zero. I mean the tool the, the, the tool the toolbar height is zero. So I want to eliminate that what? That app bar. And then I put what you call system overlay. Let me first remove this and I show you what's meant by system overlay. Okay, so I save. You'll see there is that kind of um, white in the background of the what? Of the of these buttons. Eh? But if you know if you know Instagram, everything is purely white. Like the whole screen is white, just like the way you see uh, this screen. Everything is white. But you see ours, it is having this kind of background white in the time in this top where there is tie, where there is clock so if you want to remove that background what you do uh we come to our screen first screen we add there inside the app bar we add what you call uh overlay system overlay so you import it in this system overlay will help you to color that top bar so we say status bar uh brightness status bar brightness we say brightness dot dark. That is the one here on top. So the I say this one means that the icons should be in dark mode. And then I say status bar color. The background of the bar color it should be white. So if I make changes, you'll see I'll achieve that. So it is looks simple, but it is beautiful. Okay. So we are doing the Instagram what Instagram uh, Instagram uh, splash screen. When you open the Instagram, what do you see? Alright, so after doing that, then I'll go ahead and put now our main container. Okay, okay, let me uh, go ahead and put the container. So I'll come here and give the body to the what? To the scaffold body. It's going to have uh, a container. Okay, our main container. Okay, so in this container, we're going to make the width and height to be infinity. So that they should make sure that everything reaches from the beginning up to the bottom. So go ahead and put the width and height, infinity, and alignment center. Okay, so this is a container that makes sure that everything is up to infinity. And the alignment of everything that we're going to put there is going to be in center. Our time is up. They're going to give me like only three minutes. And then we finish also that of TikTok. And then we call it a day. So I'm going to give a stack inside the stack okay so i'll just simply come and put here stack so the child of this container is going to be a stack child okay all right so to take children okay after taking children we're going now to give it what we're going to give it um, um a container of what a container that's going to take an asset image okay so this is nothing but a container and an asset image so this asset image it takes image asset and then we have this uh, class that will help us to import the image it's a class i created it so here it is just so I'm, i want to type everything that's why i want to save time so i want to save time so I put your container and then put child and then say image.asset 
and then I pass, I display the image, and then I make the color of uh, the asset image to be uh, having that kind of red in background, and also the width to be 460, and the head to be 60. So this image I see icon Insta, I mean social Instagram, PNG is the image that I have already provided you. If you don't have access to this, please download that repository. It will come with all the images that you'll see in the what? In the repo. Okay? So go ahead, please, and uh, install it. So I'll save and then update. You see? So because everything is in center here, we're able to receive this one in center. So this I see Instagram image the PNG. You can even go ahead and change maybe it's a uh, kind of uh, shade color. Okay? I say maybe it should be light of... Uh, then it will be that is that right. So you see what you are doing. So you can also put there your own icon in your fair case. So or you can try these things and get the idea and know how things are really done. Uh -huh. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to do in the bottom and display the word uh, Facebook from Facebook. So how shall we do that? I'm going to explain to you that. I'll come here after putting this image. You've seen how you've seen you have to put the image. You can post the video and do it. Then in between here, I'm going to put container and then say margin. So margin is going to be symmetric, uh, 40, 30. And then I put a column inside that, which is going to be having max size, which is going to be minimum size. And then inside that column, the, I'm trying to put the thing I'm going to put, come in bottom. Inside that column, I just put the word from, and then I put... Uh, um, I put what I put from so this I think I'm also going to give it to you uh, this styling that I already created I have these stylings here let me see in which folder they are they in fold of widgets but I didn't want to give you my widgets because a lot of things are there okay Let me just give the styling only. I think I should give you the. Let me see how much things I have there. Okay. I think I should also give you the widgets. So I'll be explaining widgets and utilities. Then I'll be explaining them. So let me fix this progress. Go ahead and import and remove this. And also the toolbar. Remove that and import. Then everything should be alright. Right, I'll go ahead and give you so that okay. Okay, so this dialogue just import the colors. I need to, uh, I shouldn't give you these utilities. Then what will you learn? Okay. All right. I think I shouldn't give you utilities because I have not learned a thing. Let me just give you all the widgets. give you these ones i'll explain everything later all right so i come and do what come and report text i'll show you how we format this text uh -huh. so when i save and update you'll see i'll be able to have uh, such kind of beautiful ui i hope you guys you can see it okay instagram from facebook <laughs> it looks like it can you see that? I hope you can see it. Then lastly, let us do for TikTok and then we call it a day. Let's do for TikTok and then we call it a day. Okay. 
So yeah, that's it. You see, you can be able to do something beautiful like that. All right. So that's Instagram splash screen. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the last screen for today. We're going to do the splash screen for TikTok. So I'll just simply come here and say new splash. I can just duplicate this one. Eh? Let me duplicate this one, then we'll modify. So I'll copy Instagram, copy paste, and then it's going to be splash TikTok. It's tick, eh? tick, talk with a K. Like this, okay? TikTok. Like TikTok, TikTok. Okay, there we go. So that's our TikTok one. So I'm going to go ahead and change this class. So I'll just select this Instagram. Select it, Alt and Enter, press, and then maybe TikTok screen, TikTok screen, like this, right here. So I'm going just to remove everything up to scaffold, okay? I'm going to remove everything in the scaffold, okay? So everything should be empty okay so let's go ahead and add this tiktok on our home screen this tiktok i'm going to hide it on the home screen so i'll come to home screen okay and then we'll just duplicate this one And then add our TikTok splash, and then come and paste this one to TikTok. Okay, so I want if someone click here, they should be taken to TikTok. <clears throat> so when I click there, I'm taking TikTok, but there's nothing in TikTok. Okay, there's nothing there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do it and uh, and put our TikTok there. So, I'm going to just simply come and redesign the TikTok. I'd really create it. Do, 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 do. So, it's going to have a scaffold. Okay. TikTok screen. As well. We're going to give it scaffold first. Then, uh, we're going to give it background color. The scaffold is going to have a background color of black. So, background color of the whole scaffold should be black. And then, you should have something like that. All right. After doing that, then we're going to give it... Um, an app bar okay just like we did on instagram app bar so come here tiktok and give it what app bar okay it's also going to have the system system ui so here the system ui overlay for it the difference will the ui will be light and then the the color will be black okay the color of text so that on top side you should have black light and then you should have black that is tiktok we are going so we're going to have much more of instagram so you're going to have uh the container that has infinities so i'll come here and give it a body so in this scaffold i'll give it body of a container and in this container i'm going to give it width of infinity and height of infinity okay so after we're going to give it a child that is going to have stuck so we're going to give it a child child that has stack okay so this stack is going to have children of a column of which i'm going to explain so i have to give maybe this aligned center is on what is on uh, stack is going to have a child i mean it's going to have a, a container and the container will have children it will have a child of of column so give this one children of container and then we're going to have child of what of column and then this column is going to have children and then after this you're going to have a uh, max size to be minimum here in the in the container and then uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, put the image of tiktok in the middle Okay, so I'll just simply come and put image.asset.tiktok. I'll go ahead and import this utility. 
and then this is the, the image that will come with the package that I share with you. So go ahead and download that as what I shared with you in case you haven't downloaded it. The scratch file. Boom. You see? There you go. Uh-huh. Then lastly, we put a container that can be a sized height. Okay. Uh, a height with the, I mean the size box with the height and then we go ahead and put our TikTok text with, with its format okay this is just a format okay headline and then put context and then say copy with color and then this one comes with what I shared with you so put TikTok word boom that is TikTok I should say so that is the we, we call it a day yeah, in the next uh, lecture, we'll see how we can do uh, the splash screens of Facebook, the splash screen of Twitter, yeah, and then uh, we proceed to another user interface. I hope you can see how we are, they are not really, really great, but uh, if you're not keen enough, you will see that uh, you can fail to make something that exactly like that. So please uh, give yourself a challenge, make sure that you post the video. And do this thing by yourself. Don't just watch and say, I can't do that. Watch and do these things by yourself. I'm going to push these ones and uh, so you can have them, okay? So you can have them. But I don't know whether I should push. <laughs> okay, I'm going to push these ones so you can have them. Then the next lecture, we go now to real business. So without wasting much time, let's go ahead and uh, start, right? So... Uh, we are going to do this first, the Twitter splash screen, okay? So what we're going to do, we are just going to copy one of the splash screens that you did yesterday, for example, this of TikTok, and then we duplicate it, then uh, we'll just modify a few things that we th think we will need. So we're going to come here, say TikTok, and then copy and paste it. And then I'll just simply come here and say, splash uh, Twitter. Okay, so it's a splash screen for Twitter. So it is... Uh, this one here so i'm going to go ahead and change the class here instead of twitter press ctrl f and press press alt and enter so i can multi edit and then i'll come and remove this tiktok and put twitter all right so after doing that i'm going to remove a few things for example let me just remove everything in the scaffold so that we can start our own scaffold from scratch okay okay so something like this so everything is empty as you can see so what we're going to do we're going to add this uh, twitter splash screen in our home page so that someone should be able to navigate this splash screen so i'll come back here and then i'm going to add it here so to add it here we'll just simply come to our what to our menu route and then come and change this one okay let's be adding the the, the, the top that we do we'll be adding them on top so i'll just come and change this one and duplicate it Okay, and then I'll just simply come and say this one is what is Twitter and then it will be taking out to the Twitter screen. I'll import the Twitter screen from here. All right, so I'll save. After saving, you'll be able to see the Twitter is there. So when I click on Twitter, it takes me to the empty screen, this one of Twitter that we just created. So I believe everyone can do this at this point. Okay, so let's go ahead and start designing the Twitter splash screen. So then the Twitter splash screen, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and uh, and uh, come to this. I'll just be copying here my code as I explain it, okay? So as you can see, we're beginning here with the scaffold. After scaffold, we give it the background color of Twitter. So I'll just simply come to my scaffold and then give it the background color. So in the scaffold itself, we give it the background color of Twitter. So you just simply say color and then you put there some the color is it so you can click here to modify okay you can click here to modify here so that's how i create color so when i save you'll see i'll have that one that uh, kind of screen uh for twitter uh splash screen let me let me disable copilot so it should not uh, disturb me disable completion good all right so i'll go ahead and add the app bar so I'll explain the app bar. So for your case, you just pause the video and start creating the app bar yourself. So this is the app bar. It is having the the uh, this is the app bar. It is having the background color of white. 
okay and then it is having elevation of zero and the tool height is zero so here in, in, in simple terms i'm eliminating the up bar and then it has the system uh, system overlay uh, parameter you know the system overlay parameter is the one that will help us to set this uh, color on top here so I'll press alt and enter so it can be imported so the system overlay parameter it will take the status icon i mean status icon brightness and make it light and then the status color and of icons and make it this this color of what of twitter so when i save you'll see i'll have that kind of what that kind of a status bar i hope you can see that so if i save everything will be all right so the next thing i'm going to add this icon in the middle so what i'll do i'll just simply come and begin with the adding a container that will give the width infinity and height infinity so just simply come here to the body and give it a body body of container and give it width of infinity and height of what of infinity all right so after creating the container we are going to give it um, alignment of center so we're going to give it alignment of center okay so after doing that we're going to go ahead and add now what our icon here so it's going to be a child of this container so in the child uh, the child of container we're going to have stack so it can be uh, centered so just simply come and put here stack i mean so child sorry child that will take stack and then in this stack we're going to have a what we're going to have children and then those children is we're going to put a what we're going to put a container again okay so put again a container here and then after putting container we're going to have another child inside this container in this child so we're going to put a what a column so in case you want to want to write the word in in after twitter you can put there a column okay I may already put a column so just simply come here and put column okay all right so in this column it's going to take children and those children it is where we're going to put the what our image asset so I'll just simply come up here and paste the image asset here all right so in this image asset well you will see a class called img.get this img.get is just a simple class that uh, I created okay the, so that you can do what you can reuse it it will help you to to add the the, 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 the assets path and then go ahead and get the, the the icon in the what in the asset folder so as i told you you must have our asset i mean our scratch project so you can be able to get all these images without you searching for them so if i press ctrl and click on this img you will see it is nothing but just an image class that is helping us to do what to load images it just simply attach the word asset and then images and then return for you the what the the name that we passed so like this so you don't need to again write the word asset again and again all right so i'll go ahead and save okay so you'll be able to see that i'm having that kind of art of uh, of twitter so one more thing i have to align the item in this column so i'm going to give it alignment I mean sorry in this in this in this container this container here i give it alignment of center okay so let's remove this okay so i have to remove i can even remove this and remove this all of them are just uh, equal and uh, make it center yeah so like that you'll be able to get uh, the twitter splash screen so i hope uh, you've learned how to make such kind of a splash screen so in case you want to make your own splash screen and even color this top side that you're seeing here the status bar you will use that kind of technique of using the app bar and then give it a system bar i mean give it a system overlay you might. so that is how you make a what a twitter splash screen i hope you've understood and it's not that much complicated all right so let's finish uh by creating a what uh, Facebook slash splash screen. So this is how Facebook splash screen looks like. This is how the Facebook splash screen look like. Let's go ahead and create this Facebook splash screen. So what we'll do, we'll just duplicate this one of Twitter. 
we just duplicate this one on Twitter and then remove everything okay so I'll just simply come here to this file of Twitter okay and then paste it and then come and call this one what Facebook plus screen all right so I'll just simply come and change Control F, Alt and Enter. I you see I select the whole world and then the whole world and then press Control F and press Alt and Enter. And then I come and change this word to what? To Facebook. Sorry. Like this. Alright, so let's go ahead and add this Facebook to our home screen. So our home screen is here. The main the menu route. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this top one. Okay. So I should have here Facebook and then put here Facebook and then I put it. All right. So by doing like that, we'll have our Facebook UI. So in open Facebook, it is this one. So let's go ahead and remove everything that is there. So let's click on uh, Facebook. That is an empty screen of what? Of Facebook. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, do the Facebook UI step by step. So the first thing we're going to give it the background of color white. So I just simply come and give this one a uh, background color white. Okay. So after giving the scaffold color of white. I'm going to give uh, the white up bar and make it white and give it overlay of white. So, you know, I already explained this one. I've just explained it. So, everything will be white. After doing that, the next thing, I'm going to now give the body uh, a container. So just simply come and give your body and give it container. Alright, so it's going to have a child and this child is going to have a uh, what? A uh, stack. So this container will have infinity height, infinity width, okay, like this. And then you give the child of what? Of stack. So stack is going to take children and then these children are going to be... Uh, uh, the first container is going to have the Facebook icon, okay? So I just simply come here and give it the Facebook icon. So this is nothing but a container uh, which has an image asset as a child and this image asset is just an image of what? Of Facebook icon. So if you have the project that I shared with you, if you began with that, you'll be able to get that Facebook icon image without you suffering much. Okay, so let me import. So when I save, You'll see, I have that Facebook. All right, so that's beautiful. So after having this first one, so we're going to put uh, this uh, Facebook and then you put uh, the icon of, of, of user, chat, and then marketplace, and then the I, something like that, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and get uh, and create a container. So I'll come here and put container after the what? After this first container. So give it a child. So in this child, we're going to give it a what? Column. Okay. So I'm going to give it what? I'm going to give it column. All right. So, but before you put column, I'll have to give it um, the margin of 30. So I'll just simply come here and say margin symmetric 30. All right. So after doing that, we're going to give it children. Okay. After giving it children, I hope members are together. Okay. I'm going to give it now what? I'm going to give it uh, may the, the main axis size should be as minimum as possible. So I'll come here and give main axis size to be minimum as possible. I save. So the children of this column, we are going to put what? We are going to put um, uh, text. All right. So I'll go and put here text. So we'll go ahead and import my style so this my style i mean style so this my style is uh use some user interface i mean a, a, a styling theme that uh, i created for you 
so that you don't need uh, to again create everything by yourself okay so if you press control and click on it you'll see here i have different uh things that are created for you for body one for body two for body three for display it will help you to change different sizes okay uh so for you just simply say my text and the important and they say body dot context and then you say if not you put here the, the explanation mark then you say dot copy and then here after saying dot copy and then you start uh, giving what giving the colors so by doing like this it will, it will maintain the theme of the what of your application right without tempering with it so i'll go ahead and give it color and give it also font what font weight so when i save i should be able to see facebook but it should be on top there all right so after doing that the next thing we're going to do we're going to okay so the next thing we're going to do we're going to do what we're going to uh to put a container of uh height eight so that you can separate the words from the icons so come here and put container of height eight and then after i can save all right so then after i go ahead and put now the icons okay so these icons are going to be just in a row i believe you know how to create a row so i'm just going to put here my row that's going to have as minimum axis main axis as possible it's going to have children so each children is just a what an icon that has a what that has a contain i mean that uh, i mean an icon that has a color of gray 500 and size of 19 okay so you can modify this one as you want so when i save i should be able to do what uh to see this okay all right so the on top uh find them become on bottom what we're going to do we're going to position them so, So come here. Supposed to be in stuff here. Let me see where I've skipped. So this column is not supposed to be there. And this one. So I have uh, my stack. It is accepting two containers. So it should be stack that has two containers. Okay. So the first container is the what is the image. So it's going to be stack, and then it has contained the first container, the image. Then the next container. Is the what is this one okay All right so let me just position it so it says it is in stack okay so you should have something like that so just go ahead and pose and give it a position so come here and surround it with for example center and then say positioned and then after come and give it um, bottom and then say 10 okay so i'll center it by giving really infinity but that's okay it'll disappear all right so what i'm going to do let's keep anything i'd already designed it and the main is infinity alignment is center I don't know whether I skipped anything. Okay.
all right so what i'm going to do just going to do it simple i'm just going to change this stack to what to column okay and then i'm going to put here on top i'm going to put spacer like this just do a simple way and then i'm going to put another spacer between this column okay so you can be in the middle here, and then i'm going to solve the problem so there are so many ways of how you can achieve a single i mean the same thing so there we go so you can see it's just a simple column then you have spacer then you have the container that has the image of facebook then you have a spacer and then you have uh, you can even remove this position you don't need it then you have a container that has what that has a column which has facebook and then uh, the row oh, that has icons and that's it and that's it okay so yeah so this one has margin don't that create the space between be below here so i hope you've understood how you can achieve a facebook uh, what a facebook um, a facebook splash screen so we have created a splash screen for facebook okay we have created a splash screen for twitter we have created a splash screen for instagram and then a splash screen for what for tiktok so you can think creatively of how you can come up with maybe your own splash screen or something that is even much more better than these ones uh, so this knowledge you can put together and see how you can make good use of it all right so the next thing we're going to do we're going to now uh, look at something really different i mean something really new we're going to do what we're going to uh, create uh, the bottom sheets okay these bottom sheets they're the one that we're going to create okay so we're going to create these uh bottom i mean sorry bottom navigation this is what we're going to create like being able to navigate like this so this is what we're going to do step by step so all right let's go ahead and see how we can achieve so what i'm going to do i'm going to create another section where i'm going to put uh the bottom what the bottom navigation as you can see here i organize my code in what in um sections all right so we're going to go ahead and put another section here another another what another directory you can call them bottom bottom na navigation all right bottom navigation so this is it okay the bottom navigation all right so in this bottom navigation uh we're going to have now the basic bottom so but before we do that let's first display to the home so I'll just first close all the things that i have opened and then come to our menu route or the main routing i'm going to go on top and create another one for what for the bottom navigation So that's where we're going to be putting uh, the bottom navigation things, okay? So first things first, uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and add what? And add the first bottom navigation that we're going to look at, which is called basic. Our watch we call basic bottom navigation. So that's the screen that we're going to create, okay? So we can just simply come here and create our fresh screen. So you need to say the bottom navigation. Make sure that you're in the right folder. Then say new, then say file and then you're going to call it a uh, basic bottom navigation dot that so that's the name of a file let's go ahead and create the screen basic bottom navigation 
then I go ahead and uh, import remove this yeah, so there we go so after doing that so I'm going to navigate to this uh, screen so to navigate that screen we'll just simply come to oh, there is a bracket here Wait. Okay, so I'm going to navigate this screen by just simply coming to our main route and then we're going to duplicate here something that can be clickable like this one and then paste it here and then come and copy the bottom navigation class and then put it here and then you call it uh, basic uh, called what? Basic what? basic bottom navigation so since all of them they are under bottom navigation so we don't need to do that to repeat our, ourselves in wording so basic bottom navigation so this is the one here all right so when i want to click here it should take me to the what to this screen that has nothing so now let's see how we can turn that screen to have something like this okay something like this so i'll come to the code that i already created Okay. Okay. The first thing we are going to create a what our our list of items. Okay, the list of items that are going to appear in this home screen. I mean, in this home, uh, in this menu. That's what we're going to begin with. So to do that, we're going to just simply come and uh, create a list. Of bottom items i can call it nerves i can call it maybe bottom items something like that okay so let's go ahead and create uh, that list so i can come here and create it so i'm going to explain everything so i'm going to import this bottom nav it is nothing but our class that we created i'm going to explain it and then i go ahead and import this word this icon so this is nothing but a final list of items or the bottom navigation items that is accepting uh, a list or multiple items of what of bottom nav bottom nav is a class that we created ourselves if you press ctrl and click on it it will take you to where it is it is here under what under models so instead of you creating this by by yourself i had to create for you it's just nothing but a what but a class so you can focus on the user interface just bottom a class of bottom navigation that sucks that has a string that has icon data that can accept different colors that has boolean uh, of true or false and also the badge text in case you want to display something in the badge then it accepts the constructor whereby the constructor it will take the title and the icon and the color it has multiple constructors or what you call constructor overriding or you can even patch multiple things but this is the most constructor that we use most okay so that is our simple class i already created i already shared it with the scratch file that i shared in the description all right so if i go back here to our what to our main i mean to our bottom navigation you'll see that we are now have that list of these items and they are here okay so this is the list that's going to appear in bottom so if you have what maybe to add more list something like that i can go ahead and do show all right so you can think uh, really much more uh, better than this okay all right so after you see i've just added one more item so after having your menu items or things that are going to appear in the menu you proceed to the next thing uh we're going to go ahead and do what 
and uh, create the current item that is being looked at and also maybe the context okay so here and then create these two things the first one is called current index equals to zero so that is the one that will help you to control your screen or your what your navigation then by whereby when something will be changing the index will be updating that one okay so now this uh, build context it is uh, this is the one that we're going to use for what for accessing the context all right so after doing that let's proceed we're going to go ahead and uh, put uh, on back press okay this on back press is a listener that will be working in case someone clicks what click back okay but it's optional no? but you just take action when someone clicks on the back icon so after doing that the next thing i'm going to do now we come to our scaffold so let us look carefully into this scaffold it has what you call silver up bar which is the one that you see here on top okay so i can collapse this silver up bar then it has the, the silver list let us also collapse this one for us let us concentrate on the of the what on the bottom sheet so you can see scaffold it even gives you uh the parameter for what for the bottom sheet okay for the bottom navigator it comes with flats with flutter in a way that you don't need to do what to hard code it by yourself so i'm going to come here and say uh to a scaffold let's go ahead and create a scaffold so we'll come here to place hold and remove it and return what scaffold so in this scaffold we are going to do what we're going to give it what bottom navigation bar all right so this bottom navigation bar you see it comes it is just within the what the the the, the the scaffold so it knows that sometimes you also need the bottom navigation bar so this bottom navigation bar it is, takes a uh, bottom navigation this one here so i'm going to copy it and i will just be explaining okay let me just copy this first one okay so it takes what you call bottom navigation just so come here and put bottom navigation and that's all so i'll import okay so the first thing that it requires the bottom navigation it is the items remember we've already created our items here called the items now so it will just go ahead and ask for items and then you give it uh items that's so when i save So I have to turn them into a map like this. So I have to come and say here dot to map, and then this to map, to map you it's going to loop through these items. So as it is looping through them, it will be giving you that particular item. So you can pause the video and look at this properly. It is item dot to map, and then you open curl bracket, and then you put what you're going to receive per per per, per looping. So you can even make a decision from here, you see? And then after, you display the bottom navigation I, navigation bar item. This is the item that has to appear there that will accept an icon and will accept also the title. So if I go ahead and check, you can find uh, multiple things that this bottom bar navigation can do what? Can take, okay? All right, so... Let's go ahead and save so far and we see. Okay. All right. So we proceed. So I've put the bottom navigation and the items. So let's see how we add more things. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do, uh, we're going to set now this bottom navigation. We've already added the items. So let's go ahead and set a few things. For example, the background color. Remember, the color is white okay so i have to come here and say background color inside this bottom navigation so i can keep it what i can keep it blue dark 
so you can have the what the background color of bottom navigation as blue all right so after doing that i'm going to add the what the selected color like when the item is selected which color should it be okay so i'm going to make it what i'm going to make it white okay the next thing use indicator color okay what is what should be the indicator color that will be used when someone hovers over so i can go ahead and put here okay save next uh you can see our icons have started coming eh? all right okay so the next thing is um set the current index like uh, which index do you want uh to be the current okay so go ahead and do what sit here like this remember I have our index this one here by default is what it is zero so by default is at home okay so what else uh on tab when someone clicks on an item like this what do you want to do you may need to update the what the index so you can be able to make a decision so you can come here and put on tab and then you check who as ringed so come here on the bottom sheet and add on tab so like when someone taps it should update the status of where someone has clicked okay Yeah, that's how you create a what a bottom sheet. So let us go ahead and uh, I don't know why the colors it's not this reflecting. I've set the color here. All right. Let me first go back. Let me restart the app because it's supposed to do what? It's supposed to update the color. Let me restart the app. So we're going to achieve something like this. Let us start it up. Okay. It's taking time to compile, but no problem. Which emulator I'm using. Let's come this side. All right. Okay. Yeah, so that's it. Let me see what could be causing it not to.
We change the emulator here. Okay, so uh, the up bar, did we set it? I think no. Let's go ahead and set the up bar. Let's import. Okay, I'm going to find out why mine is not turning to the blue color that I'm setting, which is here. Where is the background color? Oh, yeah. Ah, I see the problem. <laughs> I put just the wrong color here, you see? I put uh, the wrong background color. Okay, that's the problem. So I have to put uh, this one here. No, this is not the one. I've put this one. Yep. I've been doing the wrong thing, eh? So put correct color. Then should be able to show up, I hope. Okay, let's have a break. When you come back, I'll fix this issue. I don't know why it's not updating. Eh? Uh, supposed to update to this blue, but it has refused. This indicate color, I think. Okay, I think there's a problem with my emulator, but I won't figure. And then when you come back, you should be able to work. Okay, we're going to have a short break of. Um, 10 minutes and then we come back for another session so in the next session we're going to finish this and i see what is causing it not to, to act as it works supposed to and then we're going to do what we're going to implement these things let me show you what we're going to implement it's supposed to be like this that's how i want it to be like so i'm going to figure and see what could be the reason okay so then uh, we'll go ahead and implement our uh, watch we'll go ahead and implement these others uh this one with a light background the one that we are using right now and also go ahead and implement uh this kind of uh, design and also go ahead and implement the one with the badge this one where i can have such kind of a badge so that's what we're going to implement when you come back and then if time will allow we'll go ahead and implement the bottom sheets these ones okay so so i'm going to explain i've already fixed it i'm going to explain how uh you can achieve it so what i'm going to do i'm going to go back here to home screen here and um i'll navigate to my bottom navigation the basic bottom navigation which is this one so let me remove a few things that uh, might confuse you for example this uh, silver above remove this one okay so that's what uh, i needed us to have so if you come back here so let me explain how you can achieve it so the first thing you have to create your what your um, uh, your navigation items like the one i demonstrated in the previous video and i hope you are following so after doing that you have to go ahead and create um, your stateless widget i mean your stateful widget class like the way it was 
So one more thing that we would not do was uh, to add the ticker provide state mix in, okay? And then you pass the what? The name of your what? Of your, of your, of your bottom screen navigation, okay? The name of this class, this name of the class. So after, after, so the one more thing that uh, you have to add to your state of your project that has going to have a bottom navigation is this one. You have to add with with ticker. So here, after where the class, the normal class ends, you just come and add this one with ticker provider state mixing. So this one, the one that is going to give the ability to put the bottom navigation in the bottom and also being able to do what to modify it. So you have to attach it as long as you're going to do what as long as you're going to use the bottom navigation in your screen. So after we had to create here the what now we had to initialize the uh, the build context as you can see here, and then after you say uh, this so this is the context that we go with that we have. So you put here on press you should be able to do what to change uh, uh, the color uh, when someone click uh, when someone clicks the, the back press you should be able to do what to remove uh, uh, the the bottom navigation. Okay. So after doing that, uh, you go ahead and put build. This is the normal build that you always have, okay? The normal build. And then you have an initialize here, the context. You come and initialize here the context on each what? On each build. Then you return back your what? Your scaffold. So by doing like that, you'll be able to achieve what I've just done, what, what I've just explained here. So you return back the scaffold. I believe everyone knows how to do this what? This scaffold. Then after turning back the scaffold, you give it the background color, and then after, you go ahead and give it uh, the, the bottom navigation. So in this bottom navigation, it takes the bottom navigation bar, and then that bottom navigation bar, you go ahead and give it the background color, which can be color.blue, and then you can give it the selected color. So here, you have ability to, to create your own theme. If your color is red, let's say red, you can as well make it uh, red, as you can see there. So after, you go ahead and give it um, the what? The select item color, like when someone selects an item, which color do you want to show? And then you give it the default color. So before an item is selected, what color do you want to show? To, to, to show? So I can say maybe you should show yellow for the item that are not selected. So the items that are not selected, they are yellow. When I select an item, they are a color that I do what? That the color that I want. All right, so it takes another parameter, is the current index. So this is uh, when you click on something, you, you go ahead and update the index as I showed you here. And then when you update the index, you, you call set state. Then you'll be able to do what? To move this one. So it means that if you have this uh, index, it means that you can also be able to do what? Uh, to control it even using a what using the button as long as you can update the index all right so you gain you then pass the what the items of which i showed you how we did it you just simply say the items dot map and then you you put uh, the loop that's going to receive the the bottom navigation then you open the curl bracket and then you start returning a single item by single item so by doing like that you'll be able to do what to receive i mean you'll be able to uh, to create your system that has a what that has a bottom uh, navigation so the main mistake that we are doing the other time we are not attaching the ticker provider state so this is how you create a bottom navigation you can pause the video and look at the code very carefully and see if you can achieve what i've just done what what i've just explained okay the code is simple and straightforward then you can go ahead and put now your body and then in this body you can put anything that you want. Here. So you can go ahead and put the body there. So you can sound this body with what, for example, it's safe area. And then you'll have your body coded in there. So that's how you do it. That's how you implement the bottom navigation. Okay. That's how you implement the bottom navigation. All right. So we'll proceed to our next thing.
I want to compile this one in half to emulators. I want one to be in one. Right, and stop this from here. And I compile it in this one. Right, so uh, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to still on bottom sheet, so we we'll read bottom navigation. We're going to see how we can do a navigator like this one, where you have items that are what? That are shifting, okay? And are changing color like this one. Okay, so we are going to do this. We call it, we call it uh, shifting navigation, the one that is shifting. So don't mind about the content in the middle here. The content in the middle, don't mind about it because for it you can uh, design it at any time, you can change it any time. So let's just focus on the what? On the bottom navigation. Assume that you want to do this kind of a what? This kind of bottom navigation. So let's go ahead and do it and do it. Okay. So I called it uh, shifting bottom navigation. So I'll come here to shifting bottom navigation. Okay. So what we're going to do here, uh, we're just going to use the same one. So make sure that you perfect this first one. Make sure that you this first one works because we're going to rebuild on it other than keeping on repeating ourselves. We're going to just rebuild on this one and then uh, we'll be explaining things, uh, the changes that we've made. All right. Okay, so I'm going to just come to this very bottom navigation. In fact, that's how we do code. You just write one thing and then you keep on re reusing it. Okay. So I'm going to come here to the basic bottom navigation. Let me rename it. It's basic bottom navigation. And then I'll copy and paste it and call it what? And call it shifting. Our shifting bottom navigation. Shifting. Press enter. That come here and select the whole name. Press out and enter and call it um, shifting bottom navigation. All right, so we're going to connect it with our home screen. Okay, so I'll come and duplicate this one and call this guy shifting. And then come and put here, when someone clicks, they should be taken to the shifting bottom navigation. All right, so when someone clicks here, they should be taken to the shifting bottom navigation. Let me I shall be building as we go up. So when you click there, you'll be taken to the shifting bottom navigation. So right, let's see the changes that we have to make on this shifting bottom navigation so we can achieve this one. All right. Okay, so first things first, uh you can see this one. We are having a movie and uh, it is having the icon the first icon that will be on the default and also the what the color okay and then we, uh, we have movies then we have music and books and then newsletters so let me copy these ones and i'll explain how i do them so i'll command paste them here all right so we're going to have uh remember they're on top here in the stateful widget i mean in the stateful widget so they will not update until you do what you restart the app i mean you 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 restart the screen so here we have the the bot the, the bottom it that is taking uh, the movie and then it takes the default icon then it takes the this what this optional color this third color of the icon okay so remember this class we created by ourselves uh so it will be taking that 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 that, that color so we are sharing it we are sharing the the Move it to the title of the of the of the item that of the bottom item, bottom navigation item, and then we share the icon, okay, and then also share the color that should be changing uh, when someone clicks on that on that icon, okay. So let's go ahead and restart uh, the screen, then we'll be able to achieve that. So I don't know when I make it four. <laughs> They misbehave. Let me go back again. All right. Okay. 
I'll find why when I make them for they misbehave, I'll find out why. <laughs> Alright, so after doing that, uh, after doing that, I'll find out why when I make them for they misbehave. Alright, so uh, after doing that, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, we're now going to uh, implement this what? This logic, okay? This logic that when you click on something, it should change, okay? So that one is going to be in the bottom navigation uh, logic itself, okay? So you'll see that um, okay, so here in the bottom navigation, uh, so we're going to have the, the background color which is uh, by default blue and then after we have uh, the selected item it should be in white so all the time select an item will always be in what in white so a selected item should be in gray so the item that are not selected you'll see they'll always be in gray so the current uh, item is in index just like the way it did and then when every time an item changes uh, the current item is what is uh, is the uh, is updated okay so here The difference is in this bottom navigation item when someone clicks on an item we change the color okay the background color okay so okay I think this is where the problem was eh? so when someone changes an item we have to change the background color yeah I think that was where the problem mainly is I was uh, skipping it so when someone clicks we go ahead and update the color remember on top here we passed the color here so we passed the color so i want when someone changes i should update the what the background color so you put d dot what dot color then by doing like that you'll be able to achieve uh, let's restart the screen of course should be able to achieve Uh, the background color is not updating that's the list label and then someone changes should be able to change the color uh, let's see where i forgot to put the system state ticker okay this one And uh, copy the naming. Press Alt and Enter. Let me remove this one. Then I'm going to explain everything step by step. Import this. Let me remove these things in the body. I'll restart the screen okay so let me explain these things step by step so you can also be able to write the same thing okay so this we already implemented it as we said in the previous lecture okay so you have to extend the what the ticker and they always give uh, the bottom navigation in the and, and, and always give the the name that is here always uh, pass it inside between here the name of the screen so after doing that the next thing you're going to get the index get the builder just like we did in the previous lecture this is an optional thing it's just for optimization and then you always do what you always uh so this one i already explained how you do these items okay so you always uh, initialize the context and then here this is optional you can remove it it's just for the current bottom navigation uh then return the scaffold i believe everyone can uh, be able to reach at this point where you can just return the scaffold and in our scaffold let me open again in our scaffold there is no anything okay there is no anything there is no body so it means that you can do your own body at any time you can put your own body all right so after we go ahead and give it the background color which is going to be by default it should be gray 
and then after you say bottom navigation which is this one and then you pass bottom navigation bar bottom navigation bar and then you pass bottom navigation bar then after doing that you give it the default background color which is going to be blue and then after doing that you give it the selected item so an item that is selected should always be what should always be white Okay, after doing that, you go ahead and say selected item color it should be white and then say a selected item color it should be this color of gray according to what you want to design and then you say current uh, index should always be the current index that we did and then on top you should always update the what? The index. Alright, then he, in here you go ahead and pass the widget and then say item.nav I mean dot nav. So this is a, you're just trying to access something that is in the state full here that's what you are going to do that's what you're going to that's what you're doing here then widget dot item dot nav then set dot map and then you open bracket and then you go ahead and loop and then set to list like this one okay so you can pause the video and see how this code is written so here they give you ability to change the color according to the item or the according to the item that you've clicked on here so you said dot what dot color like this so you go ahead and pass the icon so this is going to be the icon and then you pass the label like this one so if there are many uh it will be able to do what to switch uh the label per time that's why you you, you see they are able to show one by one at a, at a go otherwise uh if there are few then the other label will always but will always be shown for example if i make them three here and then i go back and then i open it you'll see the label is always shown okay so if you make them for it means that uh, the label is going to be what is going to be uh it's going to take too much and then the label will be showing per clicking over what of a certain item so that is how you can implement this so this is uh, a class of uh, what a class of uh, the the class of a what the, the, the class of what of the bottom navigation of course i've already created it for you so for you just do it go ahead and do it and implement it accordingly so i hope you can see that and i hope you've seen how we can achieve that so by the time you click on something it will be switching to its color so that's how you use the shifting uh, navigation so the shifting will only happen when it is uh too much than the what than the available what than the available space that's when it when you click on something it will shift and then put the icon in front and then uh, put the label in the bottom and then change the color according to the color that you've returned here so there is no magic just pause the video and then see what i've just implemented here and follow step by step you'll see that you'll be able to do what to achieve it all right so we are learning <laughs> though it's boring but uh, I believe we are learning. Uh, so in case when you're making an application, you can be able to do what to use different kind of what of bottom navigation. All right. So the next thing we're going to do. So I've been able to achieve this. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to see how we can do the light. So this light is very simple. It's just uh, straightforward. You just implement and then give it uh, the background of light color. And then you just change the icon color. Let me see something that is a little bit uh, different from what you've done. Uh, this one, the one with the dark mode. Okay, this is just a screen with a dark mode. And then, since we have not done something, anything with a dark mode, let's go ahead and do this. This one of a dark mode. Okay. So this dark mode one is just going to be like the first one that uh, we did. So I'm just going to duplicate the um, the what the. I'm going to duplicate the first one. And then you see how you implement that dark mode one. All right. So I'll just simply come here and then come and say get this basic one. And then I duplicate it. I'm just going to call this one dark. And then say bottom navigation. Then I'll come and select everything here. And then say dark. Okay. So after doing that, we're going to link it to our home page, to our home screen. So come here to the route menu and then we'll come and duplicate this one on top here and give it dark navigation and then you can come here and change the wording to dark like this 
all right so i'll save now when i click here i should be able to go to the dark one so the dark the, the whole point is the dark one is going to be just in the like the basic one but in the dark mode this one all right so the first thing that we'll do you'll have to change the background of your app bar okay to do what to become dark all right so let me go ahead and do that we'll first change the the, the the background of the whole application to black so let's go ahead and do that so we'll come here to our scaffold and give it background of black there's something with my emulator it's not updating all right oh i just put it in the wrong place sorry it's supposed to be in the dark one here okay so i'll just come here to the scaffold and give it a background color of dark of black so after giving the background color of black uh the next thing you're going to uh, after giving the background color of black then the next thing you're going to come to your uh, bottom navigation here the color and then give it the background color of what of gray uh 900 so I'll come here to this background of the navigation and make it gray 900. So when I click there, you'll see I'm able to achieve that gray 900. So uh, the next thing, this is a gray 900. So I think that's it. Yeah. Then you'll be able to create something with a dark mode like that. So if you make it really, really black, you'll just simply say gray black or maybe black. So everything will be real black. But here, some are not differentiate a bottom uh, navigation from what from the app. So make it dark, but give it a level of darkness, right? So they will be able to achieve a dark, what? A dark uh, version or a dark mode of, of uh, bottom navigation. I hope you're together. So... You can remain the dark mode mode like that okay so the next thing that is uh unique so you can play around them so we can see okay let's go ahead and do this one where we have uh, a main icon on top of what you call the primary okay so this one's a little bit unique so we're going to do it and we see how we can achieve it this one with the primary icon okay so some apps like uh, when you have maybe a marketplace and you want to have sellers and uh, you want it maybe some users i mean uh, the, the 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 leading icon to always be on top that you use this kind of what of an icon so primary so the it's going to be just like the way other bottom navigations bottom 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 navigation are but the only difference is going to be here Okay, it's the primary one. Mm -hmm. So you'll have the tab bar, and then uh, these are going to be the tabs, and then you're going to have uh, the first icon, the second icon, but uh, the third icon is not. It's not really going to be in the what in your bottom navigation. It's going to be a floating icon, but outside the bottom navigation then by doing like this you'll be able to you'll have achieved the what the primary navigation all right so let's go ahead and uh, see how we can implement this so let's go ahead and implement this one okay so i'll just simply come and put here what you call primary i'll duplicate maybe this basic one so I just simply come and put your primary bottom navigation and then come here and put alt and enter and then just change this one to what to primary okay so I'm just going to explain the code Alright, I'm going to explain the code, so be very attentive. 
I'm going to first remove uh, useless things that we don't need. So it's our scaffold. I'm going to remove the app bar. We don't need it. So I can explain the code that's going to make sense to you and you also try it out. So I can even remove the what? Uh, the content. So I'm going to say text content. All right, let's go ahead and link it. So I'll come here to our main route. Come and duplicate this first one. Put primary bottom navigation. Put the word primary. Okay. Now come back. Click on primary. So I'm able to have that. So let me explain what is happening here. Okay. Let me explain what is happening here. So the whole point is there is really no bottom navigation. There is no bottom navigation. But we are just having two tabs and a floating icon that is in the middle of those two tabs. Okay. Then we'll be able to achieve something like that. All right. So let me explain how it works. I mean, how it is done. So this is just our normal scaffold, like the way we have been doing. Okay. So this is our app bar, and in our app bar, you can even remove, it. you can remove it, so you can have a, a an empty what, an empty app bar. Okay. Ah, sorry. It is this one. Okay. So it it doesn't even extend single ticker. So what you're going to do? So we're going to extend the, 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 the other single ticker like the way we did it. Okay. And then you put also a, a, a tab controller uh, variable. So this tab controller variable is the one that will help to switch uh, from what? From one to another. Okay. So after doing that, you go ahead and uh, create, you initialize the tab controller in this init state. And then initialize the tab controller. And then you give it the length. The length is going to be two. And then you, here where there's vsync, you put what? This. And then you say tab controller, you add a what? You add a listener. So that's why that's how you'll be able to do what? To switch your tabs. And then you put here the dispose. Okay. And then you say on dispose, then you say if tab controller is initialized, you dispose it. Okay. So I hope you're following. So after here, you build, you, you return the what? The build, just like the way we, we always do it. Then you return your what? The scaffold. Okay. You return the scaffold here. So in returning the scaffold, you can give it background color. So the main point here, you give it a floating, I, I mean the floating button. This one. Just like the float, the normal floating button that you know. So if I remove this, it will go, it will be gone. You give it a floating button. That's the one that you're going to act as what? As our primary button. So this this in simple terms, this floating button is not really in the what? is not really in the in the bottom navigation or in the app bar okay so after you create primary so um you center give it margin 10 so it should be a little bit from bottom it should be on top okay and then after Put floating by floating what floating uh, action button i want to show where i centered it version two so this is uh, a place where i center the floating button they say floating button location eh? so this is the parameter that is taken in the scaffold so uh, then you pass floating button dots so you put here that what then they'll give you different places where you can put uh, your floating button. Okay, so you see end top. So you put end top, you'll see your floating button will be here. Can you see? So there are different places where you can uh, put the what uh, the floating button. 
so here what I did I had put it in what in uh, center float so when you put center float it will be here on top yet so it appears as if it is a uh, leading yet it is not really in the what in the bottom navigation then here you come and create that just like the normal body that you always create give it a column then you give it expanded so if you do expand it, it means that the content will be in the middle and whatever is next to that it will be pushed at the end okay so here you go ahead and create a what a card so you can do anything you can create a card you can leave it you can give it elevation of four so that it should look like a what a bottom navigation this is just a, a bottom navigation that we are creating manually and then you put a uh, uh, rounded rectangle border rect 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 rectangle border and then put border radius of what of zero so you should not be having a what you should be having uh, the, the the radius this this card but this is also optional you can as well put a container all right then after doing that uh, you go ahead and uh, give it a uh, a child of course this child is going to have some what some padding of vertical four so the icon should have some space on top and the other space in bottom and then it has what you call the tab bar so this tab bar is the one that can allow what and can allow uh, you to have different tabs that can even switch using the what using the tab controller all right so go ahead and give it tab bar and then give it an indicator it's going to be transparent and then give it um, the indicator tab size so like uh, that indicator the one that will be showing where you've clicked eh? so you can even make it maybe red so you'll see that uh, when i click on this tab it shows that i've clicked on this one you see so if you make the indicator transparent someone will not be able to do what will not be able to uh to see it okay then you can give indicator h to be one and then give it the tabs okay so these tabs are going to be arranged in form of tabs like here that's like you can hear them so it's just going to be a container and it's going to take a tab which a tab can take an icon and the what and um, the color that you want it to show all right and then you you put two tabs okay so when you do like this you'll be able to achieve an item that is uh, having some leading what some leading button if you go to most marketplaces uh mobile application you'll see they have something like this one whereby this can be maybe sell uh there are, there are different ways uh, how you can implement this one okay you can implement it maybe when you're having an application where there is one main button that you want to be worked upon as a main action button so you can achieve it by doing like this so the content will be here and then someone will be able to switch these tabs and uh, the button will always be like it is floating on top so in simple terms it is not really what a, a bottom bar a bottom what a bottom navigation but it is just something that you can engineer yourself that you can create yourself just like the one i've shown you here so you can also try it out and see how you can man how you'll manage it you'll definitely manage it so when you're making your application you can think creatively how you can make use of such things all right so the next thing we're going to look at uh we're going to look at uh, this light bottom na bottom navigation uh this one is very simple let me look at something that is a little bit challenging so i've looked at light i mean uh for an article this is just a normal bottom navigation but like this uh -huh. so this one is one that's going to have like a, a main item let's go ahead and implement this one let's go ahead and implement this one okay where you can have something that is on top i mean that is that is a little bit bigger than others all right let's go ahead and implement that okay call it what you call it uh, mains then maybe if time allows we'll also implement this one with the badge and then we'll go ahead and implement uh yeah let's implement those two this one already implemented almost implement that one with the main and also that one with the badge and then we call it a day for bottom navigations okay so let's go ahead and do that so i'll go ahead and create the screen i'll go ahead and create the screen for the main so it's going to be like uh, this basic bottom navigation but we tweak a few things so 
I'll go ahead and copy and paste and then I'm going to call this one uh, main bottom navigation and then I'll come and change this wording I press alt and enter and say main so after doing that we're going to go ahead and collect this main bottom navigation with our home screen which is going to come here at the home screen main main route and then duplicate this one and then call this one what uh sorry main route and then call this guy main so it could be clickable and save so after doing that uh someone should be able to see main but when you click on main it's just nothing but uh, like the other things so the first things first uh we'll come to our main and then after we are going to give it uh items so it's going to look much more like the one that we've just done before the one that we just did going to look like this one in simple terms there is uh, it's not going to be like a, a bottom navigation it's just going to have uh, the main leading item here all right so let me go ahead and uh, implement it okay so save time I'll just simply copy it and paste it there and then I'll explain but for you don't do this, so just go ahead and code it all right, I'll explain everything here. I put it in the wrong place, eh? So we I'll come here where there is main. Paste it there. I'm going to explain it, eh? Okay. All right. Let me I'm going to remove unnecessary content. Oh, I can leave it for you to try. I don't know. So that is our main app. Okay, so let me remove unnecessary content. Eh? Let me, but there's nothing unnecessary. Like there's nothing very hard here. I just want to explain it. Eh? Okay, so let me explain. Let me explain. So watch the video and then try it out. Okay, so everything is just the same. Okay, everything is just the same, just like how we did the tab bar. Okay. Then after creating the tab, initialize the tab controller. After initialize the tab controller, we go ahead and do what? We go ahead and uh, create our scaffold. And then this scaffold, we give it an up bar. And this up bar, you can see how it is. Okay. So I hope that's, that that thing unique here is in up bar. Okay. So after up bar, we have our container. So you can pause the video and look at the app bar. In this app bar, we have our container uh, in the body, and it is having it's going to have a what? A, a column. So in this column, we have expanded. I told you the meaning of expanded. Expanded will make sure that everything is what is pushed at the end. It is taking as maximum space as possible. So when you say expanded, it will be able to expand and then push everything at the end. So this content inside the expand is not main or main our business but you can look at it if you want to design something like that okay you can pause the video and look at this content of this um, this icon that you're seeing here in the middle all right they're just two icons that are in a row and then with a, it's, it's just a row which has a, a circle uh, avatar and serving a background of this and then it is having a, a space of uh, 20 
and then it has a column in that row and then uh, it takes uh, uh, this width with this color of gray yeah and then you duplicate it twice then you'll be able to do what to achieve this one and then this background color you give it uh, the gray light that you have here so the main point here our main point is uh, at last here so we're going to have a card that you're going to give elevation of four and then after you give it the rounded rectangle so everything is just like the way it was in the previous what in the previous demonstration but the only problem i mean the the, the only uh the only difference here is the floating action bar this one here so you say floating action bar you create a normal floating action bar and then you give it a elevation of three so it should be a little bit bit bigger and then come here and let me explain this one again so you put a tab what you put a tab a tab controller inside your card okay in the bottom so it put tab bar and then this tab bar give it some much some conditions that you can see here make it transparent etc and then in the tabs in the tabs that's where the whole point is in the tabs you, you create the first tab which will take an icon and then the size of an icon the second tab the tab and then the size of the icon then in this one instead of giving a tab you give it a floating button action button you know that floating action button okay it can really stand out so you make it the main button in the middle of the two and then do a, go ahead and give the rest these ones so by doing like this you'll be able to do what to achieve uh something that is having this 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 and the one in the middle which is main okay so you can pause the video and ignore the rest and see if you can be able to do what to achieve this okay only this is what matters okay for now so that is how you do what you implement the main navigation or the navigation bottom navigation which has the main what the main button all right so our time is up i think um when you come back we'll go ahead and uh, finish this one with the badge or oh, i'll leave it as a challenge for you uh whereby you can just do the same but you be adding the what the badge okay let me just explain it right now and then you get once so the badge is here the one in the badge so i'll explain the whole logic where it is so here in the badge you create what you call a wrap i mean you create a positions icon okay position icon and then you you wrap it you see you can just pause the video and look at this code you wrap so the items which have uh, um which have a badge which which whose 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 badge context whose badge text is not zero you go ahead and display the what the container on top of them in flutter and uh, today we're going to mainly look at um, what we're going to mainly look at uh, uh, bottom sheets so we use bottom sheets uh, to display uh, data that does not need to create to, to navigate someone to another page or we use bottom sheet even to give for users to input their actions even uh, to input their action even when they don't want even when they don't even when we don't need to move them to another screen so the bottom sheets are <coughs> the, the new designs that can really help us uh, in uh, usability of our applications so this uh, bottom sheet is something like this one you see like when i click it comes from bottom and the user will have ability to do some actions on it so we have uh, different kinds of bottom sheet like this one and so many all right so right now we're going to see how we can um, do uh, most important ones so without wasting much time i'm going to launch our application that we always use to practice with if it's your first time download the application to start with in the description of this video so you'll just put in your phone or put, i mean sorry put in your computer or download it and then uh, use that pro that project or that code that i'll have shared with you to start because it comes with uh, a lot of assets that uh, i don't need you to suffer while looking for those assets
Okay, so download that uh, project that you've been, the li whose link will be in the description. So you can be able to do that. To start from somewhere, uh, where I have already created for you a few things like uh, putting the asset for, for photos and also maybe creating the models, also creating the dummy uh, data. And uh, you will not need to do what you will not need um, to create your own. So, you have, if you want to begin, you have to begin by loading that project. Then you will be able to do what to get up and running it simply. Okay. So that's it. Let's go ahead and see how we can do bottom sheets. So we are going to begin by adding on top here bottom sheets in our menu. So I'm going to begin by creating a separate folder called bottom sheets. bottom sheets okay so after creating bottom sheets we're going to put our first file which is going to be this one the basic bottom sheet so i'll come here and say new file i'm going to call it basic bottom sheet do that all right so after doing that, I'm going to come and write stateful widget and put basic bottom sheet. All right. So after doing that, I'll remove this and then come and press Alt and Enter here, and then the data will be imported. Okay. So after doing that, let's go ahead and put here our scaffold. Okay, so I put scaffold and then I'll go ahead and put uh, the title. I mean, up bar and then put up bar and then put here maybe title. And then I'll go ahead and do it. I'll go ahead and put here uh, bottom sheet. Okay. Okay, so after doing that, the next thing is uh, we're going to connect this the other the main screen into the with the main with the main screen or the main route. So I'll come here to our main uh, menu route and then come and duplicate what is there. item like this so someone should be able to click on it and be taken to the screen at one so i have to make sure that uh, i keep the order so this bottom sheet have to be in the section of the other bottom sheets here on top all right so come and put here the title uh, bottom sheet All right, so after doing that, now let's go ahead and connect. So I should click here, it should take me to the bottom sheet. You see, bottom sheet is there. All right, so we are not going to make it so much complicated. We're going to begin with this basic one. I want when uh, someone clicks on a floating icon, we should be able to show the bottom sheet. So what we're going to do, we're going to come here to our app bar, and uh, I mean to our scaffold, and uh, put the floating button so it will follow by floating floating action button okay so it requires an on press listener so if someone presses on it and someone presses on it you should be able to figure something okay so after we'll need to be maybe Put the child of what of icon 
Let's watch the plus. So I'm in the wrong file. I've come to this one. Yeah. So there we go. Now someone will be able to do what? Someone will be able to click here. Okay, so now what you want when someone clicks here, you want to show the bottom sheet, okay? You want when someone clicks here uh, when someone clicks here i want to show the bottom sheet uh, whoever has that uh, i'm using i'm using android studio okay so now let's go ahead and do that logic okay So, you write a separate function that shows a bottom sheet. You write totally separate function, but should be in the same class that shows this what? The bottom, the bottom sheet. Okay, so this is how you show the bottom sheet. You just simply say, show bottom sheet. It takes the context like this and the builder. And then inside it, you can put anything that you want to do what? To display, but you should always be considerate. When you're returning something in the what in the bottom sheet so i'll copy this function and then i'll explain everything step by step okay or i'll just go ahead and explain everything step by step we want to have something like this okay we want to have something like this so what do you do uh, we're going to put here our function like when someone clicks on the plus we call the function called show bottom sheet Okay, so this function is not there. I'll go ahead and create it. That's the method. Then after, we we'll go ahead and run the command that really displays the bottom sheet, which is this one. Okay, it's called show bottom sheet. It's a Flutter command. Show bottom sheet. Right. Okay, so let me explain this. It is bottom. You say just simply say show bottom sheet and then open bracket. Then say context and then you put comma and then say builder and then you open bracket and say context builder and then you open curl bracket and then inside here you can return, for example text and say my bottom sheet like this then put semicolon there so even if you return something small as that still it will be implemented so when i click there you see i'm able to see my bottom sheet there it is it but the point here is uh, it doesn't look well organized so let me show you how we can organize it and uh, you have something that really makes sense in the bottom sheet okay so the first thing we're going to surround it with the what with the container i'll surround it with the container you go ahead and give it what you go ahead and give it uh, the background color of white and then the padding go so I'll come here. I'll come here and paste these things. So at least you can see there is a white board, uh, there is a white uh, content in the what? 
in the bottom. Okay, so you can use that space to do a lot, a lot of things that can make uh, your application simple for the user. All right, we proceed. So our goal is to achieve something like this. So I'm going to put um, a wrap in that content. But I'm going to explain everything. So I'll come at the chart and put wrap. Sorry. Right. So in this child, I'll come and do this content. I'm going to explain it step by step. Okay. So this is nothing but what, but content, and uh, I've already told you, I've already taught you how to design what different kinds of content. So it's just going to be a wrap, and then it is having uh, widgets, of course, multiple widgets, and then after multiple widgets, then you put uh, the title, like they can see robots, and then you put the styling, and then you put the spacing, and then you put the other title. Yeah, something like this. So as well, you can as well design such a thing. Then you have a row in the bottom after that content. And then that row, it has uh, two buttons. One is for closing. Another one is for what? Is for opening details, something like that. So I don't see where uh, there is like uh, too much confusion. It's that uh, all you need is just to understand how to do the bottom sheet here. And then you start implementing it in what in a different project. So you see, when I do like that, we have all we have achieved what we needed. Okay, so that's the bottom sheet. You can do a lot of things or a lot of ideas by the use of what a bottom sheet and make your application fast and appreciable. So you proceed. So you see, that's beautiful. You can do that. Okay. So I proceed to another what to another kind of bottom sheet. They are all the same, but these just are uh, ideas or creative way of how you can implement them. So you have this one called list. It is a bottom sheet, but uh, but uh, but what? But uh, its detail is uh, having a kind of what? A kind of a list. I believe you must have seen this uh, kind of implementation in one or many apps that you have used i believe because they are they, they help users to not to go to another screen but to do different items i mean different items on the same screen so what i'm going to do i'm just going to duplicate this one and I create a file for what for okay say a file for basic bottom sheet i'm going to duplicate it paste so i'm going to call it what i'm going to call it um Call it list bottom sheet. Okay. 
okay so for that delay so uh -huh. so after putting a list forum sheet okay so we're going to link this one with our main form so i'll come to main route and then duplicate this one All right, so I'll go ahead and open the list. So we have a list bottom sheet. So when you click on bottom sheet, list bottom sheet, we are going to implement now. It should show some kind of a list. So it is simple. It's just uh, once you understand the, the what uh, implementation, then it's done almost. So. This is our bottom sheet. So everything is the same, only that the UI. Okay, so I'll copy this one and then I'll explain the UI. So it's going to remain show bottom sheet only that here on the return of content i'm going to remove what i'm returning and return this mm. okay so let's go and implement that all right so let me explain so this is just like the normal bot bottom sheet that i demonstrated but only that its UI is uh, different. So its UI is uh, a wrap, or you can call it a list, and it is uh, accepting. I mean, it is having list style, which is having the leading and the trade, the title, and then on the top. So here on the top, it's made be when someone clicks on it, what it should do. So you have these, okay, these kind of what of bottom sheet. So go ahead and create this kind of a list. Right, so it means that you can customize the bottom sheet and put anything that you want as long as it does not mess up with this UI. You see, I'm able to achieve that. Okay, I'm able to achieve that. This is a very powerful feature, even uh, when you share, maybe when you share something. Uh, wrap is like a column, it's like a column. Okay, so you'll try it. Uh -huh. So, when you try to share something, maybe you need from your app, you may need to share a bottom sheet. So the user can first select what they want to share. So that is a bottom sheet and it's nice. All right, so that's how we do it. Okay, so we proceed. Hello, and how are you? My name is Mohindo Barak, and I will come here to our fifth video of learning how to make uh, Flutter user interfaces at advanced uh, level so we're going to cover a lot of things in this series of uh, mastering flutter ui as we always do always do uh, 40 minutes so i'll start our timer so if it's your first time to watch this video and you want to take it from here i recommend that you start with the project 
that is in the link i mean the link is in the description of this video get that project and then uh, clone it or download it and then it's the one that we'll start with in that project there is um, a lot of things that i provide i provide you the resources such as images and different assets and also maybe the models uh, so in a way that uh, uh, we are going to i mean in a way that when you're developing we're going to develop only while concentrating on the user interface uh, but things like dummy data images all of them they are in that they are in that project so you have to download that project at first and then you'll be able to do what to clone it the project will be like empty after you've run it but uh, you'll find all the packages that you're going to use in this series of these videos and also maybe they can help you in your what in your different projects that you're going to be doing so that's the first thing that you'll have to do clone that project or download that project and then uh, run it on your on your computer and then after uh, start with uh, any video that uh, we'll be doing that we'll be doing here so with that much said uh, let us go straight into our today's business if you still remember in the last uh, lecture we looked at how we can do different bottom sheets we looked at uh, how we can do such a bottom sheet a basic bottom sheet we also created um, a bottom sheet like this one uh we also a list bottom sheet they've also created a, a bot uh sorry those are, those are the two bottom sheet that we did what that we did create so in this uh, lecture we're going to see how we can create multi i mean more de uh, ki different kinds of bottom sheet uh the first that we're going to do i'm going to see how we can do a floating bottom sheet like this one whereby uh, an item is like uh, floating if you have ever used the youtube you'll find that when you want to create a post a new video they'll bring you something that is floating yes it is a bottom sheet so we're going to see how we can create such a bottom sheet uh we're also going to see how we can um, create uh, a filter bottom sheet so this one you can use it also even in your application how you can make such a nice bottom sheet we're also going to see how you can make a uh, a an expand an expand bottom sheet like the one you see on google maps whereby someone can expand and then this bottom sheet can spin the full screen and the and and, and so a user starts uh, uh, using it so this bottom sheet you can see them on google maps and the different kind of applications uh, whereby someone when they want to read more they just scroll and then uh, uh, the bottom sheet will take over so that's the kind of the bottom sheet that you're going to do. It's very important and uh, you can use it in different ways when you're doing what? When you're doing your application. Then we are also going to look at uh, how we can create different types of cards in, these, uh, uh, in today's videos. So without wasting much time, let's go straight into our today's business. And we start straight from here, how we can make a floating what? A floating bottom sheet. So this floating bottom sheet, you can use it maybe for, the, for writing your application, something like that. So let's go ahead and uh, get started with your business. So as always do, this is our application. So if you download you the, the code that I've told you, you'll be able to get something in this kind of what? In this kind of structure. So we're on the topic of bottom sheet, as you can see on top here. So I'm going to add another item to discuss about today, which is going to be a floating bottom sheet. So I'll come to our main screen, our main screen, our main menu screen which is here under screens under screens and then you have your main route menu route that's where you have all the screen that we're doing so on top here i'm going to add another navigation that will enable us to navigate to the floating bottom sheet so i'll copy this navigation that's already existing and then i paste on top here and then i'm going to call this one at i'm going to call, to call it uh floating bottom sheet so let's go ahead and create the screen for floating bottom sheets. We're going to create a fresh new screen for both floating bottom sheets. So I'll come here and then come to our screens of bottom sheets here. And then we're going to create a new. And then we say, um, we're going to get new and then say file. And then we say floating and then put bottom sheet like this and then put the that. So after doing that, then you can create a stateful widget uh, that's going to cover uh, the bottom sheet. But we already have this kind of stateful widget, so I'm going to copy one of the existing stateful widget and I then paste it here and I just rename the title. 
but you can as well create your own from scratch okay let's create our own from scratch so I just simply put here stateful stful and then i'm going to call this one uh floating board tom sheet like this and then press enter and then i'll go ahead and import these other things all right i'll import this and uh remove this to packy maybe and everything should be all right all right so we have here our, sp our placer our, our, our placeholder so what i'm going to do i'm going to now add this bottom sheet to home page so in a way that if someone clicks here they should be navigated to the floating bottom sheet so i'll come to the main route and then click here our floating bottom sheet and then import it so after doing like that you're going to go ahead and then click on this then we'll see we're on this uh, uh placeholder where there is nothing we're going to put uh, demonstrate the floating bottom sheet so as i told you i always create my code before so that uh, i don't waste time when uh, i'm doing what when i'm teaching you and uh, i also help myself at save time and also i go ahead and make i make sure that i explain everything okay so this is the class that i mean the the, 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 the ui that i created so what i'm going to do I'm just going to explain everything step by step. So the first thing we have a scaffold here. You know what's made by scaffold. And then behind the scaffold, we're having what? We're having a background color of a primary gray. So I'll come here and create our scaffold. Scaffold. Like this. And then put some colon here. Let me first disable. Um, to copilot okay so i can be able to explain everything step by step all right so in this scaffold i'm going to give it background color of what of gray so you see these my colors they are already constant that are already defined in the project that i told you to download so if you press control and click here you'll be able to see some different themes or different colors that are already defined that are going to be using this project okay so i'll come back and then i press i save then we'll see i'll have that kind of what of uh, background grayish background then after i'm going to put a up bar so you know what's meant by up bar so i'll just simply come here and put uh, up bar like this so i already created my up bar so you can simply press control here and then you'll be able to see the up bar okay so this up bar is just return an up bar and then it is having an overlay ui of light and then it is having a leading icon and then it's having a what a trailing icon of what of such so this is an app bar that i created and you can find it in the project that uh, i tell you to download okay so we don't repeat ourselves so let me go ahead and do it and save then we'll be able to see that you have that app bar you just simply custom app bar and then you put dot get app bar and then you put here the title that you want the app bar to display and then you do like that okay as a preferred widget so you can as well remove this is just an option okay so that is our what our app bar okay so that is our what our app bar so after putting the app bar the next thing we're going now to put the what uh, the logic that will launch this bottom sheet okay so if i click here it should launch the bottom sheet it's for the rating so we are learning all many things all of them at once okay so what we're going to do we're going to put here we're going to put here uh the what we're going to put a, a column in uh in uh in 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 our we're going to put a column in our scaffold and then uh we're going to uh, do what we put the up bar i mean the the, the, the floating action bar in between those columns and then after we're going to put the hero uh tag of what of this color and uh, i mean we're going to put the hero tag of this color and then after we put the elevation of three and then so these are the parameters of what of floating action bar nothing is special there all right and then we're going to put a listener that when we click there we should be able to do what to launch the bottom sheet so let's go ahead and do that so i just simply copy this column okay and then i got to paste i'm going to paste there and I explain everything in that column so you for you just pause the video and implement accordingly so come here to children i mean sorry to body and then i put this column so i'm going to explain everything there so in this column we have it's just a, a column of course widgets and it is uh, having inside that column we're having what we're having uh, a floating action bar 
okay and this flashing option bar you can give it a hero tag and this one is option you can as well leave it and then you can give it an elevation for it to stand out or you can leave it and then we give it an icon inside it which is a what which is a star icon which is having the color of white and then this is the background color which is having pink eh? the pink background color so this be a pink button with the background color of what oh, i mean the pink button with the with the, with the star icon uh that is white so i can remove this first on the on press i can remove it so we will first look what we have done here so you can pause the video and see how it is just a simple code that you have just created so let me go ahead and save so i'll have to import this text also press alt and enter so you can import the text okay all right so after this action bar there is what just a text okay press the button above something like this and then just display the text and uh, i can save and then you'll be able to see it something like that all right so i can go ahead maybe and center this let me sound with center and then you'll be able to have the centered what the centers at uh, the centered icon bar action bar so action button so when i click on this you'll see it is now clickable and it looks nice okay so you can maybe this can be a rating page if someone saves them they are the us. so i want to enable that when someone clicks on this rating page the I mean rating button this button you should launch the what the floating bottom sheet okay the floating bottom sheet so what do we do there a minute Uh, so sorry about that. So we're going to put here what we're going to put here um, We are going to put here a, a Function that will be called when someone clicks on this button and the text of that function will be just to launch what to launch the bottom sheet All right, so you will see we have after the after this scaffold. I mean after this build widget we have our what we have our our logic that is going to display the what the bottom sheet all right okay so i'm just going to take you step by step so you can understand everything so i'm going to create just this function okay this method uh that will be called to launch the bottom sheet so i can just simply come and create it here after the build okay here after the build i just simply put there uh show 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 sheet or oh, you can put maybe rate us or you can put anything that you want so i'll just come here and call it when someone clicks on this button i'll be calling that method so uh when someone clicks on this button i want to be calling this method so let's go ahead and uh, implement it so you see when i click here uh the but this function is being called but there is no action there so in this function is where i'm going to put the action that will show the bottom sheet so how shall we do it so first of all We'll begin by creating what a bottom sheet controller in case you want to control this bottom sheet okay you can begin by creating what a bottom sheet controller just in case you want to control the bottom sheet maybe closing it uh, using another button something like that okay so just simply say show bottom sheet show bottom sheet and then you open bracket and then you put the context and then you put the builder and then you put uh, uh, the return okay so let's go ahead and do that so just simply say show bottom sheet show bottom sheet so show bottom sheet and then you pass the context and then you put here the builder okay so this builder uh it takes just the context okay and then after you then you open curl bracket and then you do what you return what the, the widget that you want to what to to work upon something like that and then i can return here so you see how it is very simple to show a bottom sheet in flutter okay so when i click here when i click there it's supposed to show this bottom sheet let me go ahead and call this controller
let me see what is uh, complaining no scaffold widget found Skipped. Scaffold. All right, think. See, get the scaffold. Let's create the scaffold here and then we have to initialize it. Here the builder. Start with the builder and then uh, we initialize it from here. Then pass here the context. Okay, and then we just uh, pass this context here. And that's going to fix the issue. Yeah, all right, you can see our scaffold is being, I mean, our bottom sheet is here. <laughs> our bottom sheet is here, but uh, we cannot see it. Eh? Can you see my sheet is here? So we're just going to add now the, the what? We're going to add, um, we're going to add now, we're going to give it the body so we can be able to do what to control it. Okay, so you can see it is here. All right, let me see if there's any error. There's no error. All right, so just, I just uh, change this one to what? To a builder. Okay. I sound the build and then I make sure that I initialize this what this uh, context and then this context the one that I'm passing here or you can as well pass the context uh, straight to here all right so uh, now in this bottom sheet I'm going now to put my content there you see it is there but it has no content okay so we're going to see how we can do what how we can put now the context with the content inside that what inside that bottom sheet all right so to put the content first of all you may begin by adding there a card okay and begin by adding the card and then you you let us go ahead and add here a card so i'm going to come here around my text and just simply come and add a what and add card around this text so you just simply come here and then simply say sent and then you can say maybe card like this and then save so let's go ahead and close the bottom sheet and then open it you see there is a bottom sheet but it's very very small all right so after doing that then you're going to give it um the shape of this card but this shape is optional you can as well leave it so i'm going to just simply come here to this card that will just build this one here and then give it a shape so again just simply say rounded i mean rounded rectangular border and then say border radius and then you give it the border radius that you want okay so that is when you're defining the what that floating thing that you want exactly to look like the way you want so let me compile it and then and we see what we have now I have something like that so after doing that the next thing you're going now to give it what you're going to put a container uh inside that text you're going to put the container inside that text so we'll come just simply to this child and surround it with the container press alt and enter and surround it with the what with the container then after surrounding it with the container the next thing you give it what you give it width of infinity so it should spend 100 percent of its width so just go ahead and give it width infinity okay and then give it um the padding of uh, 50. so when you do like this you'll be able to get uh something like that can you see it is now taking shape so we have to give it what we have to give it width i hope you can see that i hope you can see that so when you press back it closes okay so you can see that i hope so that's the floating bottom sheet so after doing that so the next thing you're going to do we are going to now start putting there the content this content that you're seeing here uh so it means that you can put the end kind of content that you want that you need to put in the bottom sheet so i'm going to put a column and then inside that column we'll, be, we'll put different rows okay 
So just simply come and say instead of text, we're going to surround it here with a column. Sound with what? With a column, and then it can be a parameter of minimum size. And then after surrounding it with a column, you're going to give a row, this row that you see here on top. Okay, so I can just copy this row and explain it step by step. So you're going to put this thing that you're seeing on top here. Okay. So we'll just simply come here where there's a column and then I paste it here. So let me explain what I've just put here step by step. This one is a what is a row which is having uh, expanded and then it is having a column inside it. So this is the column that I want to put here. Sorry. All right. So I hope you're together. So could you explain what? Like, I don't, I can't hear it clearly. Yes, sir. Sorry? Could you please re explain what the use of the uh, is? The is? Can you put, 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 put your comment, put your question in the comment? Yeah, I'll yeah. read it. Uh, your network is not very clear. Put it in the comment, I'll then uh, respond to it. Eh? Kindly put it in the in the sorry, put it in the in the what in the chat box and then I'll respond to it. So here it is a row. This is the row that you're seeing here. And then you're having here some a title. I mean this title it has expanded. I mean this row it has expanded. Expand I want to spend like a maximum space as much as possible and that is available. And then you say that I expanded, I put a column. So the column so that I should be able to display the city and the what and the date something like that okay this can be anything that you want okay it can be the name of a person maybe and uh, some short bio something like that eh? so it can be creative it can be a name of a product maybe and the price or something like you need in what in this is a device okay and then next to this uh expanded or this column i have now the what the closing um the closing controller so here i want when someone click on here they should be able to close the watch the bottom sheet so i'll show you how we we'll do that logic of closing let me first remove this one for now and i'll show you how we we'll do the logic of closing so when you save we should have something like this see i have something like that hope you can see when i click it is there it is not attached to the end but it is uh, a bottom sheet and it is kind of floating and you see we're having such a beautiful what beautiful thing so this button i want when someone click here it should close the what the bottom sheet itself we'll see how to do that uh there's a question someone is asking please re explain the use of builder oh so builder they are used uh, they are used to impl to be implemented uh for something that is not initially started in a what in the scaffold i mean the scaffold for example uh if i open uh if I open, if I open this screen, okay. So if I don't, if I don't click on this button, what does it mean? It means that that button will not do what will not be displayed. So Flutter will not call, will not build that. I mean, it will not, it will not display the bottom sheet. So Flutter, what it does, it will not build the bottom sheet to save the space and the memory of the phone until someone clicks on here. So when someone clicks here, it will now build or it will now create that item exactly as how you need it so in simple terms is uh, is to save memory it's not like other functions that uh, when you open the memory i mean when you open the screen everything is built whether it is on the screen or it's not seen on the screen it is built and put in the memory until the user does what until the user uh, calls it or until we display it for the user so for the advantage of builder is something will only be created when it is what when it is requested so that is went by what by the builder so sometimes you may put a scaffold without building it and sometimes you may need to optimize and do what and uh, build your what your content or you build your scaffold or you build something that you want to display okay so that is the advantage of builder uh, there are a lot of topics about builders. You can search about them on Flutter. They will explain what, uh, why you need the builder. So you can do this one without a builder, 
if you show if you create this bottom view dotted builder what does it mean it means that it will be created and kept in the memory in the even though the even if the user does not click on it it will still be in the memory so that's not more it's not optimal so what you do it is very good to build your widgets to be having builders so that they should be only created and displayed in the, and put in the memory only when someone does what only when someone uh, clicks on them and then they display so every widget that you see here it can also be built uh, or per require per requirement per, when it is when it is required so you can search more topics about builders uh flutter builders and then you'll be able to do what to understand uh what is meant by what by builders so i hope you understand that so uh to say that i have understood you're saying easy so what do you mean say i get it not easy what do you mean easy <laughs> i'm not i'm not doing what i'm not defending myself i'm just explaining what you asked and you if you ask you don't ask to challenge or to do something you ask to do what to understand so say okay i get it not say easy easy it's not a competition eh? all right so we continue um we continue so we have seen how we can do that so the next thing we're going to go ahead and put this divider so this is how you put a divider that small line that thin line that is dividing the two so you can just simply come here after this row and you put the divider so you can design these widgets and then you reuse them later in your what in your applications when you see you see that small divider that you see there so after that divider i'm going to put here the what the um, height of five pixels all right so you can see that will be the height of what of five pixels okay and then after i'm going to put now my content this content that you're seeing here the little ipsum so I just simply come and copy this and then paste it here all right this is just a plain text so in the project that you will download it will come also with the what with the strings or the dummy strings uh that you may need to test with okay so if you press control and click here you'll find some strings that i've put in this um uh in this class of my strings so i start i'm calling here and then i give it this style of body one and i put on copy copy with and then i put a uh, the gray color all right so that's what's going to cause for me so you can pause the video and look at this styling that i've gave it so that one is going to create for me something like this so when i open and you see i'll be able to do what to see something like that all right so after doing that so the next thing you're going to put those stars these stars that you're seeing here these stars so to put those stars i'll just simply put a container and then i put here uh the stars okay so i'm going to display those uh, rating stars i'll just simply come here and put maybe divide i mean uh, separator so size the height i mean size the box and they give it height of maybe uh height here we did what the height of 10 and then he will come and put that aside so i can import this rating star this rating star is a package that you is, it comes with the project that i told you to download so it is having a, a spacer so it means that meaning that it should be in the middle and then we're having here rating count so we call rating star rating count to put five and then you put the rating of five and then you put the color of that yellow or the orange and then you give it the size of 440 and then you put a spacer at the end so it should be really in the middle so when i do like that i'll have this kind of what this kind of uh, rating box okay i hope you can see that okay so i hope you can see that so then lastly i'll go ahead and put now the divider okay go ahead and put the divider after this row of rating okay and then after putting the divider okay after putting the, 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 the container, I mean the, 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 the separator, I'm going to go ahead and put the what the button for submission. So I'll just simply copy this and then explain it, okay? But for you, you need to pause the video so you can uh, try it out. So this is just a, a container. The container with width of infinity and inside the child, I mean inside this container, I'll give it a child of what? Of load of elevated button. And then this elevated button is having this style, okay? So you just simply put elevated button dot style and then you pass some few parameters as you can see here. Okay. 
then after you put the what you put the text inside inside that button and then in that text you put um, the color of white and then you put the on press uh, listener so this is our button here that you're seeing here so you can pause the video and look at this button okay so the beauty is you can create these things once and then you reuse them so let's go ahead and see now what we've got you see i've got something beautiful like that one all right so i can give maybe some padding of 15 so it can be a little bit big button you see I'm able to get something nice like that one so you can also to make sure that it is floating so you may even create much more spacer space to see here uh here where there is padding uh here where there is uh padding you can give it also a uh, margin so example this uh this card you can give it what you can give it uh, margin okay of edge inset and then put dot all maybe say 15. so by doing like this you'll see our card is there but it is kind of floating let me put here symmetric symmetric and then put um horizontal 10 and maybe vertical maybe 15 okay so you'll see that uh, you'll have a full control over your heart over your bottom sheet so you see when i click here my card is there and my bottom sheet is there but it's kind of what it is kind of floating all right so you can pause the video and re look at this code very carefully most especially this function of what of bottom sheet and try it out okay and try it out okay so once you try it out you can be creative and think how you can use it in what in your different applications uh so i want now when i click here i should be able to do what to close it so to do that you need to have a what a controller of this bottom sheet itself right so that's why i had to create this controller by initializing it so you just simply say a uh, bottom sheet equals two then you create this controller okay so this controller will be an instance of what of persistent bottom sheet all right this is a persistent bottom sheet like this so once you have the person bottom sheet so well now we need like uh, when someone clicks on this close on this close you should be able to do what to close this person bottom sheet it will not be able to to be what to be closed even someone even if someone clicks out of the space okay so let's go ahead and do that so to do that we we'll just simply come to here on close method i mean this button of icon button of closing and then you call um uh sheet controller the one that we just created here the persistent bottom sheet and then you we created this and then you say sheet controller and then you say dot what dot close so when you call dot close when you call dot what dot close it will go ahead and do what and uh, close the bottom sheet okay so it's a function you call it dot close so now when i come here and i click on the close you see i'm able to close my what my bottom sheet programmatically so that is it i hope uh, you have learned and i hope you see how you are getting this uh, whole experience of creating um, uh, nice user interfaces that you can creatively use in your what in your mobile applications that is the bottom sheet for you, the floating bottom sheet. So pause the video and look at this code very carefully so I can be able to do what? To do such kind of beautiful UI. All right, so that is a bottom sheet. You can put there maybe a product details. You can put maybe there a detail of a certain something. You can also maybe even collect the data, something like that. You can see, think creatively of how you can do good things out of what? Out of uh, such a bottom sheet. All right so let's proceed uh to another thing all right okay we'll proceed to another thing so we're going to see how we can do this filter bottom sheet this one all right i told you you should do it as a uh, assignment but i'm not sure that you guys really did it i don't know i'm not sure that you did what that you tried out so we're going to see how we can do such a beautiful what such a beautiful bottom sheet and then after that one we'll finalize with this one with the expanded bottom sheet so Let's go ahead and uh, do the filters bottom sheet. This one here. 
this one is what I'm going to do, right? Okay, so you can use it maybe for your what? For your mobile application when you want someone to create a filter or something like that or to enter some information so you can use this what? As a filter bottom sheet. All right, let's go ahead and uh, design that beautiful UI. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, begin by creating here. Uh, what? Let's go ahead and begin by creating. Um, by creating a, a bottom sheet uh, class. So I can just simply come and get this basic bottom sheet, and it's the one that we're going to use maybe to build the filter, the filter one. Eh? Okay, so that you should not repeat yourself again and again. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll copy this basic bottom sheet and I paste it and I call it filter bottom sheet. Oh, we create again from scratch. Let's create from scratch, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, first add it in our menu. So we're going to come to our menu here and then you add the filter bottom sheet so come to our menu route and then you're going to duplicate this and then you call this one uh, filter bottom sheet all right so let's go ahead and create the class i mean the, the screen filter bottom sheet so just simply find a new file and call it filter bottom sheet but that all right so it's going to be a stateful widget and then you're going to call it filter bottom sheet okay screen or something like that then let's go ahead and import this alt and enter and then say import and then remove this one like this all right so after doing that we are going to connect this uh, bottom sheet with our home screen so come to home screen and where there is uh, this floating bottom sheet we're going to put a filter bottom sheet all right so after doing that uh, we're going now to see when you click here you should be able to see this filter bottom sheet Okay, so after doing that, let's go ahead and uh, start implementing the filter bottom sheet. Okay. So our filter bottom sheet is going just to have uh, a scaffold. Okay. So let's go ahead and return here what? A scaffold. Alright, so after doing that, some colon there, uh, we're going to go to do what? So we're going to return uh, our title widget, our upper bar widget. Import this. Okay. So there we go. You see? There we go. Alright, so after doing that, we need to go ahead and do what and uh, put our body. This is going to have just simply a center of what? Of just a few things. Right? Press the button below. So I'm going to put now the what? The floating button that is going to work as our action button. Everyone knows how to create this floating button, I believe. So I just simply come and put here the floating button. Alright, so now in this button floating button, we're going to call the what the show bottom sheet function. So I'll go ahead and create this function of show bottom sheet. Alright. So now we have this uh, floating icon. Okay, you can pause the video and look at that button. It's just a simple button of uh, that is inside the scaffold of floating action button. So after doing that, uh, we're going now to go ahead and a click here and be able to do what to show the screen all right so we're going to come here and uh, return uh the, the style our time is up but can give like more five minutes and then we got once 
so this is just uh, simple textile okay so let's go ahead and now create the show bottom sheet so all the bottom sheet will show them we we'll just simply begin with the what with the show bottom sheet and then also then the builder so show bottom sheet and then uh, the first thing that you pass you pass the context so the context is this one that you received here and then you build it builder and then you open here so the builder will take the build context like this and then curl bracket and then put semicolon at last here and then return whatever I want to return that return a widget just return maybe so by doing like this you already have your what your bottom sheet so when I click here you see I'm able to get my what my normal bottom sheet right so inside here we're going not to design and put what you want uh, to be put there so the first thing that we're going to begin with we're going to put a what a, a, a scaffold inside this bottom sheet if you didn't know you can as well put a scaffold inside the bottom sheet so let's go ahead and pass there the what the scaffold and then after we're going to give it um resize to avoid bottom inset let's go ahead and make it false okay put a semicolon all right so in that scaffold you're going to put a scroll a single child scroll view single child scroll view as as its body and then inside that single child scroll view you're going not pass the what the container that's going to display the other the rest of information so it's going to take child and put container and then say that container we're going now to pass the what uh give it a color of white and then inside this container we're going to go ahead and give it some padding and then give it a color and then this column is going to put our item that you want to do as a display right so let's go ahead and say uh, child column and then open bracket and then just simply put children and then say put your text and say maybe data and then save All right something isn't right save okay save and then let's go ahead and you see we have that kind of beautiful beautiful uh what beautiful user interface so in this user interface so so we're going to put our what our items here these ones i'm going to create just two here and then the rest i'll just paste as you can do them so the video shouldn't be too long so i'm going to begin by creating a, a spacer on top here so i'll go ahead and create a space on top here just a sized 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 what then after i'm going to put a uh, uh, padding and then say that padding i'm going to give it what a text of uh, property type okay so it can be like a, a real estate as application and then here i want someone to be able to filter so you see property type that's beautiful all right so after doing that the next thing you're going to put is now to put the content okay which is going to have a padding of 10 and then inside it will have the content so we're going to put padding of what of edge inset dot all 10 and then inside there we're going to put what we're going to put um, the very first item here this one okay so it's going to be just uh, we're just displaying it's going to be a container a container which has width of infinity and is having a stack inside it and then it is having um, a padding of uh, a padding which has the text of a line left and then it is having the word parent and unit apartment and unit okay and then next to it 
sister stuff next to it i'm going to put padding and then you put the what the icon and then alignment is going to be what right this one here okay so you see it is stuck the icon can come on top of this one so i'll just copy that and then you can pause the video and look at what i've just explained right now okay it's this one okay so after this padding you can just copy this so you can pause the video and see how i've done it So come and give it a child and then put that. Ah. Alright. So we have here the decoration as my box decoration. So this my box decoration is just this user interface that you're seeing around it. So what you do, you create it only one time and then keep on calling it. Okay. So let me go ahead and create it. So create method and then keep on calling it. So that you don't repeat yourself by designing the same thing to be consistent. All right, so when I save, I should be able to open the bottom sheet and I see that. It's beautiful, right? It is beautiful. So pause the video and look at what I've just created. These are just common things that we always do and they are straightforward. Okay, just pause the video and do it yourself. Okay, so after uh, we finish by adding these other two, These other two that are in a flexible uh, row, okay, and then the column. So it's just going to be the same thing, but in a what? In a flexible row. So I'll copy it and then paste there, and then I'll show you the code. You pause the video and do it. <laughs> Don't just uh, skip, but I believe you can do it. It is just straightforward. So it is just uh, a padding, it is having a, a row, and then it's uh, flexible, and then uh, we have a container there, let me first compile it, and then we have a what, we have a container inside it, here, yeah? okay, so on top you're having mean price, and then inside this container, it's having the other thing that we just showed on top here, of stack, you can even create this on the one time and just keeps on calling it okay like this and then next to the other row you have another flexible with the same things but with the just only the change in the name called max price like this one so after doing that then you can go ahead and uh, finish the remaining ones which are almost going to be the what which are going to be the same okay so after you've done one you just copy and paste and they finish the remaining ones which are exactly what the same only the changing of the name and also the button so i'm going to explain the what the button so i'll just simply come here in this column i make sure that i'm in a column and then paste press enter so you see and then you can see let me put here maybe 25 and then you see here the last thing is just our button which is an elevated button and it's having this style and of color black the one that you can see here so you can pause the video and copy this and then you has the word search right so once you finish one of this one you can just duplicate it like the way you see others so you see when I expand here i have such a beautiful what a beautiful user interface it can even be scrolled just in case someone's phone is small or someone's phone is too little okay so someone can even scroll. so now when you're doing a real application you just change this one to what to input fields or the drop downs where someone can just simply create a drop down and then uh, they filter according to what they do what according to what they want we're going to see how we can do the such a such a thing i'm sure you what we're going to do in this video so we're going to look in the topic of what in the topic of cards is my cards my cards are here i'm going to do how, how we can do a basic card like this one this card this is what you call a card i would say i can do such basic cards we're going to see how we can create um a cards in a timeline which has a picture and this and the and the photo of a person around it and then some kind of comments on it Okay, we're going to see also how we can do a card that can have an overlap 
where it crossing another thing and then you scroll it covers the top side we're going also to see how we can uh, create a uh, wizard card where someone we can where would i want that you can use for onboarding someone you see where someone can click on next next and then they can get started i'm going to see how i can use that do such kind of wizard cards we're going to see also how we can do kind of wizard overlap a card like this one okay we're going to see also how we can do what how we can do an outline card like this one and also lastly we see we'll see how we can do a card that can be expanded like this one so that's what you're going to do it's going to be interesting uh series i mean section of this what of this user interface series so without wasting much time let's go straight and uh, start implementing what we have just looked at i'm going to begin by creating these basic what basic uh cards so we'll go to application as i told you download the project that is in the that that is in the description the link is in the description so that after you downloading that you you run it on your application so it will give you some common scratch files that you'll have to begin with otherwise if you don't have that project that will be hard for you okay it will be hard for you to jump and start doing what you're doing right now so go ahead and download that project upload it on your uh, on your computer and then doing what and then start implementing i mean then start following us otherwise if you don't have it, it's going to be hard for you in that project we have constants we have uh, pictures we have uh, some strings we have some dummy data so that we only focus on what on user interfaces all right so in the previous lecture we did this beautiful ui i hope you can also challenge yourself and do it so now let's go ahead and see how we can implement the cards so what you're going to do i'm going to get a second section i've been another section of what of cards so let's go ahead and do that so i'll come to our main main route our main route here or the main menu and then you're going to create another title the one that i can call here uh, so i can come here and just call it what so i hope i have card hmm. all right whatever and then i'm going to call this one what cards like this one okay so let's go ahead and see and start implementing the first card so i'll just simply come and copy this list item and then put it here so i'm going to call this one basic cards basic cards all right so in these basic cards uh i'm so going to implement now the real basic what basic cards all right let's go ahead and create a set widget screen so i'm going to create another folder of what of cards new folder i'm going to call it cards so in this folder i'm going to put another what another file now of what of basic cards that that all right so i'm going to put here stateless widget stateful widget and i'm going to call it uh basic cards oh okay basic card screen something like that and press enter and i'll go ahead and import these ones and then i go ahead and remove this so i believe everyone can be able to do this at this level so after i want to connect this one with the what with the main screen so in a way that if someone clicks there they should be taken to this screen so i'll save and then when you click there you're taking this main screen which does not have a what anything so let's go ahead and uh, see how we implement these what these basic cards so in my code here and put it in what in card basic cards all right so i will begin by by giving scaffold so let's go ahead and give the scaffold okay and then after scaffold in this scaffold we are going to give it a what i'm going to give it a background of gray color so I just simply come and come here and say scaffold is going to have a background of gray color so we have something beautiful like that then after am i not recording i'm recording 
let me see i'm recording i'm recording yeah i'm recording you see i'm recording using a software so i've just checked i'm recording all right so after doing that i'm going to give the app bar okay so let's go ahead and give our app bar all right so you have to import it so we'll have our app bar there after putting the app bar then we're going to give now our body where the whole business is someone is chewing chiverenge i can hear from here even oh, who is that <laughs> i decided to mute <laughs> we have seen you sir <laughs> okay i can give you a body <laughs> Okay, so here I'm going to have a scroll view and then <laughs> I'm going to give that scroll view padding of 8. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have that one. Okay, so then after I'm going to give now this is a single scroll view. Now I'm going to put their what? Our column. Okay, so in this column, I'm going to have different cards. Eh? It's going to be so many different types of cards so you can design them separately and call them as widgets or you can design them and put them here for just for this purpose of all right so let's go ahead and put here what our child and put here a column so we're going to put children and then we can start designing okay so to put a card you just simply as it sounds the, the user interface is called card card okay so we're going to to design this first card here. We're going to design it together. Let's design it. So the first thing we want to call card class, and then if it's not there, we import it. So it's going to take a um, shape. In case you want to shape it in your own way, you can give it a shape. Okay. So just go ahead and give parameter of shape, and pass border rounded rectangle, and then you can give it your own kind of shape. This is when you want to. <gasps> maybe reduce its uh, shape something like that so when you do like this you will not see anything because you haven't put there any content so after doing that whoever can leave this shape even if it's much more beautiful when you don't have this shape eh? so you can leave the shape thing so after then you can give it a behavior okay and then after you go ahead and give it a column so since it's this uh, image on top and there's another content be above below it so it means that is nothing but a what but a column so let's go ahead and put a child of this card as what as a column and then after i'm going to give this column children and then that child the first child is going to be what an image all right so it's going to be an asset image so that's where the beauty of uh, the project that I told you to 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 put in your in your I mean to begin with the scratch project. That's what becomes helpful. So go ahead and uh, import this image. This image already in that scratch folder project that I gave you. Okay. So I will have something like that. Okay. So it is. See, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. Okay. So if I say maybe here. Such that will be 10. You'll see to try to to do what to change the borders of my card. Okay, so that's the first image. All right, then after the image, you're going to put now the, um, the, the contain that's going to contain these remaining things. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So after the image, you're going to put the container. And this container will take children, and the children, of course, is going to be what a column. So let's first give it some paddings, and then give it a column. So this give this container some paddings, and then give it what a column. All right. So the column is going to take what children. All right. So these children are going to have the what uh, the, the 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 first text. Okay. So this can maybe make it cross alignment start and then we're going to give it now the what the first text the first text okay so i'll come in this children of this container i give you the first text you can pause the video and see this text how i do it 
okay so I import you'll see that that it will have that one after doing that I'm going to give uh, now this the size height the sized height and then after giving the sized height we're going to give now the what uh, the container content this one all right so just create another container and this give this lorem ipsum content like this I hope you are together so go ahead and import my string because already in the scratch folder that i gave you all right so we'll have something beautiful like that it's not beautiful yet but it's going to be so you can see that so after doing that uh let's go ahead and now give a row of this thing that is going to uh have these buttons eh? so i'll just simply copy this row i'm going to explain it step by step okay all right so i'll copy this row and this row i'm going to put it uh in the first column not in this column that is inside this container i'm going to put it in this first column the main column okay so i'll put here comma and i put it in the main column and i import it all right so i'm going to explain everything in this column so this column is just going to present our two buttons which is text button it is just a, a row sorry it's a row that has what that it has two buttons text buttons and inside text button we're just styling them like one uh, to have a foreground of transparent and then it's a child that has a child of text and then you give it that style and also the style something like that so you can pause the video and see them okay then i go ahead and what and import them then i can go ahead and give the size the height here after this row of 15 of five then you'll have a beautiful user what user interface like this one you see it's so nice <laughs> i hope it is eh? so follow the videos very carefully and challenge yourself and do it not just to watch so i'm going step by step so i should not leave anyone behind so you can even turn this one into a what into an a widget you just collapse this one i just they maybe say card one card uh, one and then you go ahead and put it anywhere that you want so you can put it as a method and i just return it as a what so let me remove this and i return it as widget return as what as a widget so this is your first card so you can use it as many as you want okay or in different ways so if i come here and i just duplicate i'll have it as many as as many times as i want to see and this will be scrollable it's beautiful okay it is beautiful all right so that's how you do different kind of cards let's do one more card and then the rest you'll challenge yourself let's do this card this one here let's do this card here but this one is just like this one <laughs> this one is like this one so go ahead and challenge yourself and do this uh no this one is a little bit challenging because the text is in background eh? so let's go ahead and do this one let me help you do this one and then you'll challenge yourself and do this and do this maybe and also do this colored one eh? so colored one you just give a background color of a card and then you change the text to be white then these are two are in row so you can make them as widgets and then you just import them so what i'm going to do i'm just going to do for you we are going to do this one together and then you should be ready to do this one you should be ready to do these remaining ones eh? okay you should be able to challenge yourself and do these remaining ones so let's go ahead and uh, do this second card so to keep my code clean i can just simply come here and create another widget and i call it card 2 okay card 2 and then i just come and call it here as card 2 all right so i've not returned anything that's why it is crying okay so let's go ahead and now return um so this is the second card okay just a second simple card this one here all right so let's go ahead and do it faster faster so it's going to be return card like this so when i go back i should be able to do that so in that card we're going to give it what we're going to give it a shape whoever this shape is optional you can leave it so we're going to give those two parameters 
so after giving those two parameters uh, the next thing you're going to give it what you're going to give it um, the column since it's going to be in some kind of column this one here so you can give it column so it's child of this the child of the cut is going to be a column and then since we want since we want and this column is going to have a alignment of cross alignment of start so since we want since we want um this text to be on top of this one it's mean we're going to create what we call stack okay if you still remember stack stack you'll be able to put something on top of the other so let's go ahead and create the stack so stack i mean this column is going to take uh children and the first child is going to be a stack okay so after putting the first child of stack we're going to pass the image as the first child of the stack so we're going to give children of stack the first one is going to be an image you see how i put my asset images eh? so i do like this then we'll have that beautiful thing so since it is stuck with anything that you put here in bottom is going to come on top of that so we're going to put a uh, position dot fill and then you pass container so you put position position dot fill position dot fill close bracket okay and then you put the position I mean, so this position of Felix must take a what? A child. So position, you'll be able to do what? To do something on top of the other, right? So you're going to put there, uh, in this position, you're going to put there what? We're going to put the um, container inside this position that field. So a child of this position that field is going to be a simple container, all right? All right, so if I save to be like that, so inside that container, we're going to give a padding of 15, okay, padding of 15, and then after, we're going to give now the what? The alignment, align, so just simply put align, and then give a child, and then put alignment, so alignment is going to be what? It's going to be bottom left. Okay. And then and then after we're going now to put a what? We're going to put now our text. So this text is going to be what? It's going to be a white colored text. So I'll just simply can't cut the text as it is and then make it white. All right, so it's going to be here and white colored. So by doing like this, we'll have something beautiful like that one, which is having a stack. Okay, so you see that, right? You see that. Okay, so after doing that, so the next thing we can now go ahead and put these buttons in. These, ones. these are just uh, buttons, icon buttons. So I'm just going to copy this row and I explain it. Eh? So I'll come here and I come after the stack. After the stack, immediately after stack, don't put it inside stack, put outside stack and then put our row. So let me explain this row, okay? It is just a simple button, icon, I mean icon button and then it's having an icon button. And then the alignment is at the end. My, 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 my main, main, main axis alignment is at what? Is at end. So you put your three buttons, okay? Which have these different three icons. And then you'll have come up with such a beautiful what? Such a beautiful user interface. Okay? So it means that you can even create here something like a row. You can create, you can create here something like what? Like a row. And then give it children. And then give it these two. Let me make this one to have width of expanded. Let's say expanded. And that's okay. And then duplicate this one. You see? Then you'll have this will have created this can you see that it's 
beautiful so maybe we just need to change maybe the images all right we need to change the images so you can say maybe it's going to be taking what an img or a string of image let me just come here and come here and say it is going to be taking what a string of what of image so in this one i just come here and put img so when i call it i just uh, uh, give it what i give it image so this one i can give it that image and then i give this one uh, uh, image five and then give this one image maybe seven save you see i've created something beautiful like that one you see i hope you see that then you can just again call this one bottom here after the row okay so that is how card makes apps look nice I hope you can see that members uh, so challenge yourself and do these ones by yourself do this on your own this is just a card that has a background color and the text of white and then a divider ah, that's it and then an icon that is separated one icon here and another icon on the other side all right so challenge yourself and do those remaining ones okay so let us proceed to another kind of cards How can you put the shadow behind the card? <laughs> you can put it under this uh, using the using what? Using the border. So you see, you have the, the shadow color, and then you can challenge. You can change the shadow. Then you have the elevation. You can increase the size of the shadow. You see, this one is becoming reddish. So when you say elevation five, that reddish is increasing. You see? So that's how you can play with the shadow of a card. I hope you've seen it. Eh? But there is also another way by using borders yeah this border you can pass i think a uh, parameter of using shadows but this is the simplest way of using card and put shadows all right so i think we can proceed so challenge yourself and do the remaining uh, things okay so let us proceed to something else i hope you're learning you guys so let's proceed to the basic cards are finished uh timeline cards tell timeline card yeah so you're just going to do this this one eh? one like this i think this one already finished you can do something like this let us go ahead and see how you can do this one this second one is a little bit complicated and complex eh? so let's see how i can do this second card all right so we're going to call it timeline card okay so let's go ahead and uh, just i think i'm going to just duplicate this one and then other than repeating everything from zero we're going just to extend this one so this timeline card the what is there what we're going to add on this one is uh, what is um this image this photo and then this name and then this comment and then make it the multiple okay and then say maybe view comments that's what I'm going to add on this timeline card. Other than repeating the whole thing, okay? Yet we have already just learned this one. Eh? All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can create timeline cards. So I'll just simply come to our project. I'm going to duplicate this basic card. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. I'm going to call this one timeline card. All right? And then I'll come here. 
and press copy search this okay i'll press ctrl f alt and enter and then change this one to what to time line cards all right so after doing that i'm just going to change here the title to what timeline cards okay then after i'm going to make this timeline card the class that we just created this one available on what on the main screen or available on the home screen so to do that we we'll just simply come to our basic route our, our menu route and then duplicate this one okay and then come and call this one timeline cards and then come and call this one timeline cards okay yeah i think that's it all right so now when someone clicks on this one it should be taken to this screen of timeline all right so let's go ahead and see so when i click on timeline cards i'm taken there so i'm just going to remove this first let's remove the first one and then we just expand the second one okay we add more things with the second one all right so let's go ahead and remove this first card so this is the screen i'm just going to remove this first card and maybe even this rose okay and then we're going to depend this on this second card i can call it card three uh to do us to do our kind of timeline card so if i save i'll have this so according to what i just covered in the previous lecture i mean the previous demonstration we just did this one right now so if you did not do it then please go and do it so you can now take it from here you can copy your screen and then resume from here so now you can see our timeline let's go anyway let us first go ahead and see timeline 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 the cards timeline cards uh-huh so where are we this way that we share things here yeah things here nope also there's share and comments and then we just expand that card we continue from where it is i think it is this one let's start this it's this one the space yes all right so we're going to see how we can do this so for the other one you see all of them they are the same what and the same so how can we separate so you can have like and share maybe and also comments let's begin from there uh let's remove this row and then we do those ones begin we begin from here right i hope you are together so we're going to just simply copy this row, and i'm going to explain everything step by step okay I'm just, I don't want, I don't want just to write because the same, but I'm going to explain everything step by step. So I'll just come here and paste and compile it. All right. So what you should see here is that we have a container of width five, okay, and then we have icon button. So this container of width five is just a row that is separating this column from this one, okay. And then you know how to create this uh, button. And then you have now the another the next button which is of share icon it that has an icon of share it is this one then between them there is what you call spacer so spacer it will create as maximum space as possible for the available room and push whatever is next to it to the further end so you see this spacer it is pushing these two and then at the end we have the what we have an icon button which is having this comment and then we have a text which is having the number so by doing like this and then this container that is separating this text from this one so by doing like this you'll have achieved uh this kind of what this kind of an interface all right so i hope you've understood that so the next thing we're going now to see how we can now add uh these these bottom things eh? this one all right let's say that eh? It has some comments eh? that's what i'm going to add right now okay so it's just nothing you just need to face it uh it's going to be a container first 
okay a container that's going to contain all these uh, things so it's going to be you can create one and then keep on calling it okay so it's you can call maybe mean comment or short comment or item comment something like that eh? so we're going to create one and maybe you can call it multiple times all right so we're going to create uh, the first one so we are targeting this eh? so the first thing we're going to create a what a container so we're going to come here and collapse this row and then create a container here container and then we're going to give it some child some ch some ch a child uh, i'm going to give it a child but you can give it some background color of gray of, of gray so it can be a little bit different from the text i mean from the content so give it gray and then after i'm going to give it a row i mean some padding of 15 all the sides you know what how to do that and then we're going to give it a what we're going to give it um a, a, a what i'm going to give it a row because it's going to be one next to the other in in vertical format okay so let's go ahead and create a row so just come and give this child a what a row and this child well, i mean this row we're going to give it a cross alignment or start all right cross alignment of start and then we're going to give it uh, children okay we're going to give it children so we're going to give it children and then the first child is going to be this photo that you're seeing here of the user who commented this so the first child is going to be an asset photo okay of laura okay so if you want to make a circular photo you just simply call this function i mean this widget called circle image and then you pass in it image provider and then you pass this avatar okay so this one will provide you and then give it a size that you want this one will provide you a perfectly circular what circular image as you can see here so after giving the first photo so the next thing is going to be uh, a spacer that is going to space for that photo from the next content so just simply put here our spacer of uh, container with 15 so after doing that so the next thing is now we're going to put now the column a column that is going to have this title and then this description all right so this column this title can be too much so what you're going to do you're going to put what you call expanded so it can use because you cannot predict how long the content is going to be so it can use as available much room um, as much as as possible of the available room so give expanded and then this this expanded give it a column okay column all right but if you want it to be uh, uh to spend the minimum part of place you just give it a, a flex of what of one all right so this column is now the one that is going to take this content and this one all right so this column can give it a cross alignment of what of start okay and then we give it what children the first child is going to be this first text so i have nothing much to explain about text because we have been working with text for so long so when i save you should have something like that well, this text is just kind of gray for 800 so it can be a little bit black darker okay then the next text we're going to have a spacer of height okay of four and then after we have now the content which is the laurel ipsum okay so i'll just simply come and copy this text of the content and then put it there all right ah, then you'll have created your simple user interface like this one all right so what is remaining you, i hope you can see that you can see how so we've just done a beautiful thing so what is remaining is now just put uh, the other side content this one eh? all right which is going to be uh after this expanded and then put a spacer of width 10 and then after we're going to put maybe the time ago for example i can say maybe one minute ago one minute ago or two days ago something like that so I can just simply come here and put one D means one day. I can say maybe two M or three how. Okay, so something like this. So you see, 
something so beautiful like this one all right so beautiful so you can now put your divider that's going to separate this item from the next one all right so where we're we going to put it we're going to put it here in this column this column right copy and then put it there so if you want to if you want to 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 to, to do it again you can go ahead and make this one a what uh, a widget so let me just call it maybe comment comment ui and then i call it like this press alt and enter i get it created all right then i return that comment ui like this so like that so i can maybe say if i want to change the image i can come here and put maybe a string of peak i hope guys you are together so i just come and receive and update this one like this so let me go ahead and call this comment ui here and they give it uh some photos like this one so uh so when i want another ui i can just simply come here and i call it so you see we have two and i can put here maybe image one put a divider okay put your image three and then put a divider put image maybe seven boom see you have such a beautiful uh user interface okay where someone can see maybe this one put their comment and this one and this one and this one you see so nice with that simplicity so don't give up just make sure that you practice and make sure that you do it that you understand because once you understand you'll understand forever and even what is beautiful most is that you can even use these user interfaces in your different kinds of what in a different kind of project but so in today's video we're going to proceed from uh, what we looked at in the previous video and we're going to see how we can still go ahead and implement cards in different ways for example right now we're going to make this uh, beautiful uh, uh, onboarding screen or what they call wizard screen also if time gets enough we'll go ahead and do also this um, uh, wizard light screen that will have some image in background and you can use that kind of what such kind of um, wizard to get on board your users or the users of your application so without wasting much time let's go ahead and start implementing uh, this kind of what of uh, wizard I mean, start, start implementing cards to make this kind of what? This kind of wizard or what you call uh, onboarding uh, screens. All right, so let's get started. So this is the project that we've been doing. This is what we did in the previous lecture. So let's go ahead and create a fresh screen where we're going to implement uh, this one, okay? So you can call it wiz card wizard or wizard card, something like that, all right? So let's go ahead and go and create a fresh new screen and then we can call it card and then I'll call underscore wizard wizard dot that all right so after doing that I'm going to simply come and put here a stateful widget stateful widget and call it card wizard we can call card wizard screen press enter then come and import uh, these ones uh, so after doing that we're going to add this on our home screen so that when someone clicks on that on uh, when someone reaches the home screen should be able to click and preview and view this and access this what card wizard all right or wizard cards uh, or what we're going to demonstrate here so let's go ahead and go to our main route i'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to call this one um, wizard card or card wizard. And then I want when someone clicks there, should be able to proceed to what? To this wizard card. All right. So you've seen I've already lit the screen. So when I click there, you're able to see the placeholder that has nothing. So all right, let's go ahead and start implementing and as we're doing what you exactly want. So this is what I'm going to do. 
Um, the first thing we're going to, of course, to begin with uh, making a scaffold. Okay, we're going to begin by putting this, returning the scaffold instead of placeholder. Scaffold instead of placeholder. All right, after returning our scaffold, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to give our scaffold a background color of gray 100. Okay, background color of scaffold, gray 100. So after doing that, the next thing we're going to give uh, our up the scaffold the up bar. Okay, so up the scaffold and give it what an up bar. All right, and then this up bar we make it uh, zero, so that it should spend like a hundred percent of our height. All right. Okay. The next thing now we're going to put the body that is going to contain this widget that can be scrolled. All right. So let's go step by step. So the first thing we're going to return a container. So here we come to our scaffold and then we create a body that is going to return what? The container. Can collapse this one. Okay. So after returning the container, of course, this container is going to take a what? It's going to take a, a child. So give this container a width of infinity and height of infinity. All right. And then give it a what? A child. So in this child, uh, the child we're going to give it a what a column so we can be able to have these dots and also this uh, um, the, 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 the interface so let's go ahead and do that so just simply come and give here column and then the first widget is going to be is going to expand as maximum as possible the maximum the, the available space so we're going to put here uh, expanded I mean, so children and then you put expanded so it can spend the maximum height as possible. And then, after putting expanded, we are going to put now what you call page view. So, page view gives you ability to, 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 to create an item that you can be able to change the what uh, the, the views okay by use of what of sliding. So, let's go ahead and create our page view. So, I'll just simply come here to our what our expanded and give it what a child of page view like this so before give before give this child i mean this page view child children let's go ahead and put these dots okay so i'm going to show you how we can do that okay this let's, let's let's finish with these dots at last all right these dots will come at last let me first let us finish this uh, main page view so this page view has some few parameters that it takes so the first parameter that it takes it takes the on change listener. So on change listener is a method that will be called when an item in the page view changes. So this is going to be just nothing but a what a method. Okay, so let's press Alt and Enter and create this what this method here. So it's a function. You see, it's a function. So in that on page listener, we're going to have the page that has changed. Okay. So it's going to come here, the page that has changed it will give it to here, to which the page is at at that moment. And then we'll check if that page is the last, and then if it is the last, we'll be able to change the wording that we want to display. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, we're going to have our what? Our integer here, that's going to be public, that's going to call int page. So this page by default is going to be what? It's going to be a zero, okay? So this is going to be a zero. So by default, that page is zero. Okay. So every time this page listener changes, we'll just be updating the what? This public page is going to be what? Our value. This one that has come here. So I'm just showing you the logic that we're doing in that on change method. So after something it has changed, we check if it is the last screen or it's not the last screen. Why do you want to check the last screen? We want to display this different word, get started when it's the last screen. When it's not the last screen, we want to display next. Okay? So we're going to create a boolean here and we call it is last. Okay? So we're going to create a boolean here and call it is last. Is last. By default, it's going to be false. So it's not the last at the beginning. All right. So after and then say is last equals to. So okay, you can just simply say if our current page, okay, the current page is 
if the current page equals to and then you have here what you call wizard so the wizard is going to be now the items that are going to be in this screen so you can also access the original size of those wizard the wizard data this is just nothing but uh, what a list of objects that are going to contain these images okay so you can call it wizard data or you can call it anything okay my list of items okay so you can call this one even items let me call it items so it should not confuse you so we're going to import this wizard data and then say dummy dot get wizard data let me explain this okay this wizard is nothing but just our model that you, you can create even yourself okay so this is the model that it comes with the project that i told you to download okay i created it so you see it is just nothing but a what but a model you can also create it okay so this model it takes the image link or the image uh, path it takes the background what you want to display in the background and what you want to display in it as a title and also the brief message and also the color so you can create your own what your own wizard object in your own way in that you want okay so don't be confused that uh, i don't know what where the wizard come from this is nothing but a what but a class model that you can create in your own way and give as many parameters as you want or as many as you want so i just see i create a list of items okay and i say dummy dot get wizard items so this dummy dot get wizard item this dummy is my what is also the dummy data that it comes with a what with a project that i told you to download okay so it is nothing but a list of what of objects of wizards okay so instead of me creating um i mean of us creating this object here i had to create them first and then for it you can just call this one it gives you a list of what of this wizard you see i'm here just looping and then i loop i just uh, create a single wizard object and then i add it in an item and then i return so it means that now when you call dummy this is a dummy that will be using to generate a lot of data or different kind of data okay it has some dummy data it just comes with that scratch folder that i told you uh -huh. so it gets items and then said dummy dot get wizard so it gives us the list of just dummy wizards eh? and then here we have the wizard item so how shall we know that uh, this is at last item so that we should be able to say get started instead of what instead of next so we'll know if the page is equal to the length of our what of uh of our item minus one because uh pages always begin from what from zero but the normal counting always begin from what from one so if it is that then we'll have to make this is last to be true is last equals to true okay otherwise else is last is not true it means that is last is not what is not true this got false so that's how we'll know that whether this page has reached the last screen or not all right so while still here on the on change method see on change method then we update the state okay so after updating the page and also the state ah, then you should be able to know whether you're on the last or not so all right that is the on change method and i hope you've understood everything step by step okay so we go back we go back we have the preview the page preview then it has what you call controller so this controller is the one that you can use to control either to close the screen or to stop this thing or to move it to next something like that so let's go ahead and give it a page controller so you can come here and give it a controller and then you give it page controller so this page controller is going to be a variable that you're going to create also so this page controller you just simply create it like this okay you say page controller and then you give it a name then equals to page controller and open so when you open it has a parameter that states it asks for example where do you want your 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 item to begin from so initial page you can say it should always begin from one from zero okay 
so you can look at other parameters okay so we need to do that to to set in this page controller so you come and make this page controller to be the 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 the, 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 the control of this page view so after doing that the next thing is um is what is now after creating the page controller i hope you are following and i hope you're understanding now the next thing is now to build the items okay build page view okay so what do you want to display okay so this one is going to be so i can just simply come here and say uh children now what you want to display children and then i can call this item what i call build page view this one is just going to be returning for me things that i want to display press alt and enter to create that method okay so if i want to display just text and the pages okay so i can just simply say text and then i put here uh page okay that is on and then put it to string so by doing like this you should be able to know uh, so i'll have to open it again I have to return okay so first finish it so this page builder is not that it's going to be doing what it's supposed to be, to be an array because it is uh, it is a column so to return it in form of what in form of array yeah you see so i hope you can see that so we have an item here but we have not just added so you can just see that we have a, now a, at least some control on it so this page builder is just responsible for building what the item that you want to display all right so let's go ahead and now just build now this item this beautiful thing that you need to display all right so it's going to to return a list of what of widgets eh? so i can just simply come here and say list of widgets and then I return this widget that I want to return here okay like this so in these widgets I'm going to do what I'm going to loop I mean I'm gonna say I'm going to loop and then I create one by one all right so this is the the task of the page builder to build the list of widgets that you want to display in the screen so let's go ahead and look through these widgets as you create uh, a single widget one by one or the single user interface with for each wizard all right so let's go ahead and do that uh, so we're going to say for for variable maybe you can call it maybe wizard or anything in items so you know we put our wizards into items all right so after doing that we're going to now go ahead and create a single one a single widget right so you can say maybe widget and then you say uh wg something like that anything widget equals to uh container all right and then just this is a container so after creating that widget after creating that widget you're going to do what you're going to add it in this what in this widgets all the widgets that are going to return this one here so that what that add uh widget wg so this will be called one time and then mean that these widgets will be built only one time so i can just simply come here and say maybe uh text sorry and give some child and then give it maybe text and say yes. okay so you'll see i'll be able to do it to scroll one by one i hope you can see that okay okay now let's go ahead and now start putting content inside this uh inside this item inside these widgets All right so it's going to be a container now we're going to design this beautiful thing eh, that you see here so it's going to be a container a very pretty container then you put alignment center so it's going to be alignment center can as well be a card okay alignment center and then after we give this width and height infinity so you can spend as maximum height and maximum maximum what width as possible so we'll have something like this you see 
All right. So after doing that, we are going to give it um, a wrap. This wrap is optional. We're going to give it a wrap so it can be as minimal as possible. So give it a what? A wrap. So wrap will take what? It will take children. And then inside this wrap, we're going to give now a what? A container. Okay. Container. And then this container, we can give it a uh, height and width. Give it height and width. All right. After giving it height and width, now we're going to go ahead and create now a card inside this container. You know we have here nothing. Okay. Now we're going to put here a child of a card. And then we put our content inside that card. All right. So let's go ahead and put here the card. I hope you're following. All right. Then after putting a card there, we're going now to give this card a what? Uh, some shape. I've already shown you how you can import this shape. Or I can create how you can create this shape. So after doing that, we're going to give uh, the layer of this card and the elevation. Good. So you can do that. Then after, we're going now to give this card content. So you give it child. And then since we want some things to be on top of the other, so we're going to give it a stack. All right, and then this stuff we're going to have children, and then you go ahead and give the image, the first image. So I'll copy this and explain it. Eh? So I'll give the first image. So you can see, this image is now uh, referencing this item. Okay, so maybe we that or you can call it object something like that into items. Eh? So it's a widget that the wizard dot background. So this is why we had to create a what a model. So this is a background of this wizard, this one here. Yeah. So the dummy it initializes and store this some background in this one in this wizard wizard the background image. Okay, but you can do your own that you want. Then you give the width and height to be infinity. So since we have already defined here the height and width, so you can make this one infinity and then say maybe box fit to be covered. Then we'll have something beautiful like that one. All right, and this is slidable. You see, the slidable can be slided I hope you can see that okay all right oh shit. all right so after doing that so after doing that now we're going to add there some content on it we're going to add now the what the overlay the overlay this some this this overlay that's going to be here on top of it so just simply come here on bottom and then say of color and then give it um, um for example light green and then make it um uh, with opacity of 0 0.7 so they will have that kind of background of green okay so it can be even a kind of uh, red and uh, then give some kind of opacity so opacity means it should be kind of transparent eh? so if you want to make it like really really uh uh, you want to do something on top of it you can make it transparent like this just give a stack give an image and then give uh, something a layer between and this layer between should have uh, almost same height and uh, go ahead and give it the, with the opacity and then pass the how 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 transparent you want it to be so i hope you understand that okay i hope you understand that all right so after giving it now the next thing is now we're going to write here the content on top of it okay so since we have now that layer and then we can now go ahead and do it and put now the content on top of that layer so and that's the power of stack oh that is the use of stack anything that is next to it it will be on top of the next thing so let's go ahead and now put the content in that layer so we'll just simply come here and give a color Okay, and then this column we're going to give now um, some height on top so you can have some children so you can have something on top of it some space here uh, it is 35 and then we're going to give this title okay so this title is going to be from the wizard all right so I'll just copy this and then come and give this one okay so this title is coming from the what from the wizard object that we utilized so I'll just go ahead and import this format so this is just our first text okay so now import like that you see it's beautiful okay 
It's beautiful. All right. So after doing that, the next thing we're going to uh, put this next lorem ipsum, which is also the description that is in the wizard. So I'll just come and paste here. It is nothing but a container. It's nothing but a container that is having a text and having this kind of styling. So there we go. I hope you can see that. All right. So have this. Okay. So after doing that, uh, the next thing that you're going to do, we're going to give it uh, an expanded. So we want an image, this icon to be as maximum as possible. And then you give it this image. Sorry, in this column, this is a container. I come after this container, and just this column. Then put an image and the wizard of this image. So this image is the one that is in the what? In the object of wizard. This one. Okay. So create your object in your own way. It can even be a network image in your own case. So I give it a height of uh, of uh, 140 and the width of 150. 150, 150. All right, and then give this image a color of white. So those images are already provided in the thing that I gave you. So you'll have something beautiful like this one. Okay. Then we have a, a what? A button. Okay. So I'm going to copy this button and explain it step by step. Eh? This one. So I'll just copy this called container and I'm going to explain it step by step. Okay. So this container, you can pause the video and see. What I'm explaining is having width of, of infinity. Remember, this one has expanded, means that it can spread as it's going to push whatever it is next to it to the bottom. So it's going to have an image of width of infinity and height of 40. And then inside this container, we'll have a, a button called with a, of elevated button. Okay. And then this elevated button is having this style that you can see here of button, style form, and then it's having light green of this color. Then after we have the text. So this text it is checking is last. If it is last, it makes the word get started. If it is not if it is not last, it makes the word to be what? To be next. So I check if it is last here also when someone presses on this button. If it is last, I I end the screen. Okay. I pop the screen. I I, I go back. This is navigator.go back. And then if it is not last. You see, I return here. If it is not last, I say page controller dot next page. Okay, and then you put the, the decoration of, or I mean, the animation that you want. But this one is going to call the page controller and make it move to the what to the next page. So when you save, you'll have something like this one. So if it is not last, it will have the word next. And if you click and it is not last, it will give me view to the next page by the use of this one. So if you reach the last one, you see the word is get started. And of course, it is last. So when you click on that one, it's going to take you back to the what? The main screen. So if it is last now, this is when you take someone now to the what? To the to your app if you're doing the onboarding of screen. So I hope you've understood that. You can pause the video and uh, internalize it again because this is uh, very important you can even make a different design in a way that uh, you can have totally separate different design and you use that app to do us to get your users on what on board so you can see next next i can even go back you see can go back can go next 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 and when you're done you say get started ah you see, ready to travel, pick a ticket, then put some description, flight to destination, okay, and then enjoy the what? Enjoy the holiday. So maybe your application might start like that. So you can see I've taken you step by step. If you if you if you if you feel like I skipped any step, you please rewatch the video very carefully and make sure that you understand. Okay, and make sure that you do what that you understand. Otherwise, these things are very possible. So you can think creatively of how you can make such kind of item even much more better. Okay, you see, like uh, you have a lot of parameters here that you can do. Also, WhatsApp status they have something like this. 
where you can just simply slide but for them they have timer so you can implement the timer that when someone is on new screen when the page is in this screen it starts counting after the certain second it moves you to do what to the next page by the power of the what of the controller all those are the different ways of how you can implement this one if you want to implement this one to be a hundred percent of the width you see i can even say maybe width infinity hit infinity infinity it should be able to do what to spend the maximum height as possible and also the width infinity something like that if you want you can as well uh, expand as uh, to infinity size or make it a full screen if you want to all right so that is how you implement uh, such kind of what of wizard try it out and make sure that you do what that you understand i wanted us to implement this one also it is just the same i think you can do it as a challenge it, okay the last thing that we did not put is now the what is the is the these what these uh, dots the, the the bottom dots those are very simple to put just simply come here to align and then add the ones in. then you'll be able to have those bottom dots you see in the main screen after expanded put then put your build dots how you want your dots to look like Okay, so I'll just copy this method and put there for you. you. Pause the video and do it. So instead of wizards, we can just put items and then put here the colors that you want, and the dot is selected. So you'll have your dots. You see, the dots are down there. So go ahead and challenge yourself. And make sure that you do these things when does the text change the change the text is changing on the on the on change listener you see when you build this let me show you list builder it builds all the widgets and make them ready okay so this page view it is responsible for switching those uh pages the page view which uh the page view component the one responsible for switching the pages that you have built you see this builder it is when we build what our pages okay so we put even the text there you see the titles already put there so you build them only one time and then it will be responsible of flutter to switch them so and then you can look at this function of what of uh, of bottom buttons or bottom points so whatever but buttons whatever you can design them in any way that you want where they wanted to be them in box something like that you can as well design them like that all right so you go ahead and challenge yourself and do this one go ahead and challenge yourself and do this one instead of giving it a background color give it a what a white color and also this is just a very simple it is just a column and then the scaffold you give it a what an image in background with a layer behind it so challenge yourself and do this okay we remain in eight minutes let's see what you can do in those eight minutes so this light i want you to do it by yourself and uh, let me see and do something wizard overlap this one i want you to do it by yourself challenge yourself and do that Let's go ahead and do these card outlines and then if time allows we will go ahead and do the expanded i wanted to do another thing is it the overlap this one yeah so we're going to do those ones i need to do the first one the outlines and then this card overlap if time will allow outlines just very very simple i think you should do a hard one this is just simple <laughs> okay let's do this one eh? let's do this it's a little bit challenging let's say that you want to do such kind of user interface 
yeah, if we finish this, we'll have done a very good service to ourselves. All right. The overlap. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to create a fresh screen. So as I've told you, please challenge yourself and do this. Challenge yourself and do this one. You will not be taught everything, everything. Another thing you have to brainstorm. How can I do such also by myself? Okay. Otherwise, if you just do everything that I told you exactly as I tell you, then you'll have not you have not learned, you have just memorized. So challenge yourself and do this. It's like the other one, but here the background is not an image, the image is in behind the scaffold. Okay, so do that please. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this um, overlap. Okay, let's go ahead and do this overlap. All right. This single page that has card that overlaps. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I just simply come and say new. We're going to create a fresh screen and call it card underscore overlap dot dot. All right, so we're going to put here stateful widget and then call this one card overlap. Okay, then come and import and remove this. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. First of all, let's first add it in the what in the main home. I mean, let's first go ahead and, and add it in the in the main menu. Let's go ahead and design it. So remove this place so and return scaffold. All right, so let's go ahead and see. Um, so the first thing we're going to turn the background color and make it gray of 10. This scaffold. So these colors, I've already shared them with you. Just go ahead and download that project, the Scratch project. The link is in the description of the video. Okay. Then after the learn that Scratch project, the one that you'll begin with to create the system. Then we give it this uh, background. I mean, uh, we give it the up bar, we eliminate it and give it a zero height. Okay. The app bar will give it a zero height. All right. All right. So after doing that, we're going now to go ahead and uh, add a single scroll view. Our body of single scroll view. So the single scroll view is going to take child. A child of what? Of a container. And this child of a container is going to take what? Child of of column. All right, and this column is going to take what? Children. And the children, the first thing we're going to add there is the what? Is the stack because we want this image to be on top. Eh? I mean, we want to, the image to be behind these things so let's go ahead and add our stack all right then we pass children then after i'm going to give it what uh the container i'm going to explain a few things in this container it's just having a background color of primary color and then it's having a width of infinity and height of 250 i mean 256 and then it has a box decoration ok 
okay a box decoration that is having uh, a background with opacity of 0.4 and then it has a child of an image of asset and then this image is image age okay so it's just a container with these few parameters that you can pause the video and look at them so you have something beautiful like that one okay so after doing that we're going to now give another con container in bottom of it that is going to have this item so i'm going to copy it and i explain it step by step so i'll just simply come here after this container so since it is a stack it means that this one is going to be on top of the other one so it is just having a width of infinity and it has a column and then after the column we have a max i mean main main axis of size minimum and then the alignment of center and then we have uh, what we have children here this widget is option if you want to put it for one don't put it and then to have an asset of what image asset of this image okay and this image has this height and this color okay so after doing that then we will pass the text since there's a column and text multiple children and this text you can import it okay pressing add and enter then you put the style of what of the text and then the same then you'll have something beautiful like this one so i hope you are observing what i'm doing right now okay so after having that the next thing i'm going to put is not put this uh top bar these ones eh? okay so that it can be on up like our up bar should be on top so just simply come and copy this and i'm going to explain it so i'll come here after this container i'll come and add now what our up bar which is nothing but uh, remember the up bar that we had we had to eliminate it by giving it a height zero of zero so this one is has just an icon button of menu and have a spacer it is in a row so a space is going to push both of them from the further end and then you have an icon of search and then also an icon of what of more okay and they are white so since they are we have an overlay between this of black then the content in white in front it will be visible then you'll have something nice like that one i hope we are together so after doing that the next thing is now you go to uh the what um this content okay then you go to this content i hope our time is up but we can uh, do it faster faster okay so i'll just simply come and copy this container okay this container since this, all of them they're in stack eh? you know they're in stack so they're just going to be on top of the other so i'll come and copy the container put that container here all right so after doing that we just give it these parameters the paddings all right and then the transform translate to this value Right, so it can become some some kind of some kind of an animation and then after you give it some children i mean a child of what of column and then give it some children and then these children is where now you're going to put this card okay this card so just go ahead and create the card okay and the card is going to take um these parameters okay you can pause the video and look at them just color and then the shape and then it takes what the child so the child is going to be a container that's going to have a what a column inside it okay so making something nice is not simple that's why not everyone does nice thing okay child and then it's going to have a column inside it and have children and then inside those children we're going to give first the parameter and make sure that they're always at start then say these children is we're going to give maybe this top title here okay then you go ahead and give this top title okay so you can see uh the styling of this title all right so go ahead and do that 
save. All right, so after, give it height. Then give these parameters. So you can see how I do one here. Pause the video and see how I do one. Then you do the rest like that. Should be outside stack. Otherwise, stack will not make it appear. Should be next to the stack. In this column like this all right so we are here okay so in the in this column so in this column we're going to now give different parameters this one here different rows and value run and value run and value okay so you can just pause the video and see how these run values are written so i'll go ahead and give it here so they're just text an icon a row which has an icon and date the text like this eh? hope you can see that okay so do the same. This we have to give it some padding. Yeah, like this. You see? So we're going to do the same for the rest row that has icon and text. Icon and text. Okay. Then you'll have something nice like that. Okay. So this can be a single product details page, something like that. All right. So you can create it only one time and then you reuse it in different projects. Then after doing like that, then you can go ahead and create this card of address. So, the card of address, I'm going to put it outside here. Okay, I'm going to put it next to this card. After stack, I can collapse this one, and then I put it here. So, the card of address, you can challenge yourself and do it without looking. Eh? You see? So challenge yourself and do that kind of address then lastly you can put the description it's just nothing but some lorem ipsum text i import my string then boom we have such a beautiful user interface okay so pause the video and look at the code carefully or you go ahead and just try to create your own way of how you can achieve such a, a nice thing or such a beautiful UI. All right. So as I told you, you need that uh, setup project. And uh, once if you have it already, then you, you don't need to worry. So this startup project will look something like this one. Okay, so once you have it, you'll have uh, all the assets and the packages already set for you. So that you concentrate on, on the what? On the user interfaces, not on the dummy data, on the, on the, on the resources. Okay, so this is the project that you always work with. So I'm going to create another subsection for buttons. So I'll come to our... To our main route. this one here and then i'm going to create another subsection that i'm going to call buttons 
Okay. And then after, we are going to put our what? Our um, our first example there. So the first example that we're going to look, I'm going to see how we can do these basic buttons, okay? Basic buttons like these ones. So I'll just simply come here and I put basic buttons. Like this, then I save. Then we have here yeah, basic buttons. So after doing like that, we're going to create a screen that is going to be taking care of those basic buttons. So I'll come here and create a special folder for buttons. And then inside there, we're going to put a what? A stately, a stateful widget for buttons. That's our, our what? Our buttons basic fold, uh, file. And then you can call it stateful widget. And then call it buttons basic. That's a buttons basic screen. Okay, then after we we'll go ahead and import the set for the place, we can remove this one here. The key. All right, so after doing that, so the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to make this uh, button appear to be when someone clicks here, it should be taken to the what? To these buttons. So, how do you do that? We'll just simply come to our main route and change this one to. So now, if someone clicks here, it will be taken to the what? The screen of buttons. So, once we have that, we are going now to go ahead and do it and start implementing what we need. Okay, so I'm coming to the screen of buttons, this one here. And then, I'll write it in my code. So, I'll just go to where the code is. These are the basic buttons. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to begin with, we're going to begin with... Uh, we are going to, we need to do something like this. Eh? So let's begin by adding a what? A scaffold. Okay. So just simply first create a scaffold. So I'll come here and remove this placeholder and put what? A scaffold instead. Import it. Okay. This scaffold, it will have an up bar. I mean, it will have maybe a background color. I mean, an up bar, which is going to have this uh, word button. So this up bar, I showed you how we import it. Eh? So if you have the scratch project file that I told you that I tell you about, you'll be able to get this up bar. So I import it and then I save. So I can see here basic. I can put here basic what? Basic buttons. Alright. So after doing that, the next thing we have now the, the, the what? The up bar. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, the putting here the single scroll view so that this should be scrollable. Alright. So let's go ahead and do that. So come here and put body. Let me first disable copilot. Alright, so come here and put body and put single scroll view. So this single scroll view, it's going to take uh, it's going to take some paddings of 15 all sides like this. And then after it's going to take a what? It's going to take a uh, scroll direction of vertical. Alright, so after doing that, the next thing it's going to take, it's going to take now the what? The child, which is going to be a column. So just simply come here and put child and then, and it's going to be a what? A column. So this column will take what? Will take children. Alright, so after having those children, so we're going to begin by creating these buttons, eh? These buttons. So create those buttons, as you can see, they're in a row. So we're going to begin by creating a what? A simple row. So here are the children, we're going to create a what? A row that's going to take what that's going to take children all right so after doing this the next thing we're going to do we're going to put our first uh, spacer for example if we want them to be spaced equally okay so we can put spacer and then you put our first button so the button we're going to do is the elevated button okay so elevated button then you close so you can import the style that we have for you so it says style and then you say um elevated button dot style from 
and then uh, this tile already come with what uh, I uh, uh, the, 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 the scratch folder that I gave you okay so say style from and then you put here the background color then you can specify the color that you want and then after we put the text which is going to be the child of what of this elevated button and then the text is going to be like a normal button and then you make the text color to have the style of what of color white okay i mean gray on the 800 pixels so here on pressed we are not doing anything we just pass on press method and we don't do anything so you can pause the video and you see how i've created this kind of what this kind of button so if i save it i'll have this button here okay so the spacer is pushing it to this side you get it eh? so you have that kind of what that kind of beautiful button so let us go ahead and add another spacer here and then you add another button this one okay which is having the primary background okay so i'll just simply copy this and then come and paste this one here so that is how you can create this kind of what of button i hope it is uh, kind of self explanatory what if once you created the first button the next button you can create it like that one however this one is giving it the primary color of blue so here it can be the primary color of your application and then you'll end up having such a nice what such a, a nice button let's put again space up and then we see we go ahead and put this accent button a button that is having the background color of accent color okay so i'll just simply copy it uh, so here they're just sim same buttons but the difference is uh the difference is they have different colors okay that's the difference uh, the difference is the color so you see you have here the accent button that is having that kind of what that kind of pink color okay so you can create your own buttons with the own with your own colors that you want of your own choice and then be able to achieve such a nice and beautiful thing so after creating buttons so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to see how i can create the text buttons okay so let's go ahead and uh, copy this row and i'm going to explain eh, everything so i'll just simply come and put this next to this row here Okay, let me go ahead and explain so you have here the spacer like the we had here so everything is the same but here the difference is it is text button is not a, a elevated button it is a text button so it is the text that is going to be appearing most compared to other what to other uh, thing features like uh, the background the way the previous button was so you can see those buttons sometimes they put it maybe when you when they want to tell someone to retry or when when it is main neighboring what the main button and there are two options so you can use the text what the text button so the text button the main content that will be shown is the text and even the color that will be setting it is what is the text color it will not have a background it will be just a what kind of transparent so that is the what the text button so you can just do the same thing and then do them three times and then you can change see how i change the color here foreground color and then i give it color of transparent and then um the the color of what of the text i give it the primary color so you see when i click here it will bring that kind of what that kind of uh, the interface or that kind of appearance so someone can know that is a what it is a button so you see until they click on so in case they say maybe there is something that okay read our terms you can put the the before you sign up so this can be a button of signing up and then the terms of agreement or terms and condition can be in this kind of a button of uh, text so that is how you can do the what uh, the text button so another type of button is the what is the button that you can disable okay you can as well disable button okay so to disable button you just simply give it what you give it a state and then you do what you disable it Okay, I'm going to copy this and then I explain it everything step by step. Okay, so these are just normal elevated button like the one we did at first there. Then uh, you give it foreground. 
and then you give it um, set material state and then here you say if it contain disabled then it should be what it should be disabled it should be set at none so here in the foreground you say resolve with color and then you pass the color that you want and then you do what then you give it uh, if it contain disabled it should be doing what it should be displayed as disabled so by doing like this you'll be able to achieve a button that is what that it is disabled like this one all right so these others they are just same button that we just created in the what in these top examples eh? just elevated button and in this elevated button you have uh, given what you have given if the foreground of color white and also the text of the color of the primary so you'll see this text button i mean this elevated button that is having the background color of white still it is different from what uh from um, the um, text button the text button looks really much more like a text where it does not even have the borders but the elevated button even though it is having a white background still it will show you that it is a button by kind of applying the what applying the shadow as you can see so that's how you can do elevated buttons and access button accent button that are based on text i hope you can see that all right okay uh so another other types of button these are icon buttons for example you want to have this kind of plain icon button so how can you achieve it okay so let's go ahead and put a divider so it can separate our normal button from what from the next button that we're going to do okay come here say the row come back to the column here and put a part of the divider so you'll see our thin divider has been created there okay so after putting the divider so the next thing you're going to do it we're going to create the row of these three buttons of icon buttons so i'm just going to copy it and explain it okay All right, so you can see it is just like a normal button, but it is having what you call icon button. So those are the ones that we call icon what? Icon buttons. Okay, they accept icons and they can look as neat as you can see them. And then also after putting the icon button, you can format it. So you see it is very simple, just two parameters. Okay, the icon itself and then the open order on press okay that's how you design what icon buttons so then lastly uh you can as well make this uh floating what the floating uh, action button the one that is always there on bottom you can also as well create use it anytime and then for it it goes also like kind of icon button but for it as what it has the background with it okay so if i come here i'll just simply say floating action button that's the button and then you can give it a tag and then you give it a color background color what you want it to appear in background and then you give it an elevation of for example 302 and then you do what and then you and then you do what um and then you, you add an icon for example you can see here just simply put a child and then give an icon that you want to display there okay so when you do like this you'll be able to do what to get uh, beautiful icons like these ones i hope you can see them okay so instead of you suffering your icon you better know such kind of things and then you'll be just be implementing them in different uis accordingly so this is an elevated button they may look the same but every button has its uniqueness that it doesn't look the same depending on the data okay so that is how we create what that's how we create what uh, basic buttons okay so we're going to see now how we can create what uh, utilities button if you want to make something like this how can you do it 
Ah, uh, même pas. Tu, 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 tu. Ok. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this kind of uh, user interface, okay? Uh, so what we're going to begin, we're going to begin by creating a what? A fresh screen, and then that fresh screen is we're going to see how we can come up with something like this. So I'll come to our screen here, and then I'm going to create a new, a completely new screen. So come here to buttons, and then we click new, and then say file, and then say buttons. This one we call it what? Utilities, eh? So utilities buttons, utilities dot that, and then we create a stateless stateful widget. A state. Okay, <laughs> the word is not correct. The extension. So I'll go ahead and rename it. Refactor, rename dot that. Okay, so we're going to put here stateful widget. And then we call it uh, buttons utilities. Press enter. Then come and import this one. Alt and enter. Then you say import. Then you can remove these keys. So after doing that, we're going to add this screen to our menu. So that when someone clicks on button utilities, they should be taken to this screen. Okay. So go to our main route, which is here, and then come and duplicate this one. Ctrl D, and then come and paste here so the class that we just created, and we import it, and then we call this one buttons what? Utilities buttons or button utilities utilities. All right. So after doing like that, now if I press here. Should be able to take us to this screen, which just has a, a, a what a placeholder here. So I'm going to remove this placeholder and put a scaffold, and then we should have something nice like this. All right. So after doing that, let's go ahead and start now implementing. So come to our code. Our buttons in utilities. Eh? So we're going to begin by adding our app bar here. So we'll begin by adding our app bar. So I'll import it. There you go. So you have button utilities. Then after, we're going to go ahead and add our heart and add our body. So our body is going to have single child what? Scroll view. Okay, then this single child scroll view, of course, is going to have what? A child. But before, before you give it a child, let us have, uh, give it what? A scrolling direction, of course, going to be vertical. And then you give it what? A child. So the child that we're going to give it is going to be just uh, a container and then a column. I don't know whether this container is helping anything here. Nope. So I can just give a column straight away. So the single scroll view, let's give it what? A column so you can add their multiple what? Multiple items. So it's going to give it children. And then the column, we're going to begin by adding this uh, user interface. So we're going to see how can we're going to design this one. So to design this section, we're going to begin with creating a container that's going to help us create some padding and separating it from other UIs. Okay, so let's go ahead and design the container. So container, open bracket. So this container is going to have a child of column. So why do you need to put column? I mean, it's going to have a child of column. So why do you need to put column? It's because you want to put this first item on top and then you put this one next to it. Okay. So let's go ahead and put column. So go ahead and put children. I mean, a child and say column. And then it's going to have children. And then after, we're going to give it uh, padding, this, this, this icon. We're going to create this icon and give it some padding. So I can just copy this and explain it. Okay. So I import these colors. Okay. And then I say this icon is having this color. 
so you can see this one is just um let me let me explain it it is just padding that has uh uh edge insets of 25 25 all sides and then it has a row inside it and this row it is having icon at beginning which is this icon and then we have a container an empty container or you can put a sized box that has width of 25 and then the text of morning pizza you see you can do something like that in that way i hope it is not complicated you can pause the video and also do, do it all right so after doing that we're going to go ahead and now start putting this next which is going to be a row and put these next buttons eh, that you're seeing so to do that we just simply uh go ahead and create a row let me go ahead and create a row and then give it children okay so after giving the children so the first child is going to be a container that is going just to support this button from the beginning here okay so it's going to be 20 plus 25 to make okay so there we go so it's going to have that space now that I'm putting that space let's go ahead and now put the what the elevated button so here you see we're implementing the button that i've just learned so put there elevated button and then you give it a style of uh, white and then give it a child which is going to be forced to stop and then give it background of black and then give it a on press listener okay and then save then we'll have such kind of what such kind of button so you can see it is not like rocket science it's not so complicated you pause the video and you try this out you see you have that kind of button then after we're going to put a space that's going to spread that button from the next button this one that's going to be an install all right so go ahead and put that and then also put an elevated button with those colors and then put the word and install hope you can see that so just an elevated button that is having this style and a pink color and then the text that inside there is an install and then the the color of the text is kind of white all right you see you'll have that kind of what of user interface with such buttons okay so you can think creatively of how you can use such kind of what such kind of an interface or even modify it so there we go so we are done with this first section so we can proceed with the next section by putting this uh, user interface okay this is not our today's topic but let's go ahead and do it these are the main topic eh? but let's go ahead and do this one just for the sake of learning okay so i'll go ahead and uh, create another section here so for the sake of learning we're going to go ahead so this is a a container that you're working with and below this container i'm going to put a what a divider of h15 okay let's go ahead and put a divider i think it should come in this column All right, oh, so this is a container, and then after putting that container, we're going to separate the two. We're going to put a divider. So after putting that divider, this divider should come here in this column. So after we're going to put now what our uh, next uh, column that's going to contain these items okay so this column is going to just have this icon and then this word storage and then followed with this total and then which cell can display that so you can put in the same column or you can just create, create a what a separate column again just collapse this one so it cannot confuse you okay so we have this uh, in the parent. Let me collapse this. So we are putting all these one in the what in the child of what of the scroll view of 
of that single child school year. Okay, so put after the divider, the next thing we're going to put a what? Our column. And then say that column, we give it children. And then after, we're going to give it a alignment of start. So on top of this column, put alignment of start. And then we go ahead and give it some padding. So we can be able to create this kind of an icon. So give it padding and then say padding. Uh, you can put even all and then put 25. And then after, you inside that one, you give a row. And then in the row, the first, we put an icon. After putting the icon and give it this color, you put a, a separator that's going to separate this icon from the storage. And then put the text of storage. Okay? So by being like this, your items are going to be in a row with the storage. With the word storage. I hope you can see that. Though I cannot see a divider. I don't know why. Let me give it maybe color of red. Yeah, you can see it is there, but you cannot see it clearly. But you can as well uh, increase its uh, its what its uh, thickness. Now you give it one something like that, and then you, you give it a uh, gray color. Yeah, then maybe you can maybe say shade uh, three hundred if if it is shouting so much. So you can have such kind of a divider. So you see, ours is kind of. So it was there, but it was not looking clear. So all right. So after doing that, uh, we have now. You see how I've done just. The, I've just just have done this, having the word storage and then the icon, then the word storage there. All right. So after doing that, let's go ahead and uh, put uh, the word total. So this total is going to be in a what in a, a row. column it's going to be let me just copy it and explain it because not topic go ahead and import progress static and have something like that okay so let me explain everything step by step so after putting the storage on top here so the next thing we created a row okay after creating a row we give it children i mean give it children and then you give it expanded so expanded will make it uh, spend a hundred percent width okay and then you give it flex one so it should be a 100 percent of the space that is available then after we created a what a container inside that row and we gave it a column okay so the advantage of creating this row is to make sure that it is going to spend 100 percent of the what of the available width Okay, so after doing that, so this 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 container here is the one that is here that is hidden. Let me give it a color and you see uh, red, so you can uh, so you can see it. There's a container there that you cannot see. Eight and say five because you may ask like why did you create a row? You see, there's this container that is pushing this one to here. That's why you created the what? That's why you created the row, but it is invisible. Okay, so we have expanded the one that starts from here up to the other side. Then we have a column that is going to arrange the total and these numbers. Okay, so after doing that, uh, we have a height of 8. And then we have here the text that is going to show maybe the size of the storage. Okay, and then it is having this style and this font size. Then you give it a height of 5. And then you give it a, the, we create a progress static uh, bar which is uh, progress static dot get flat progress. Then you pass the total and then the minimum that is remaining. So by doing like this, you'll be able to achieve this what this kind of uh, static progress. So it's 70 and it's remaining 20. Okay, so you can change these numbers if you want. You can say 100 and this remaining is maybe 30%, something like that. Then you'll be able to achieve something like this. And then after, you create now a what? A row that is going to have these two. Okay, so the, it's going to be expanded, and then another thing is going, I mean, both of them are going to be expanded, expanded. And then the first expand, you give a column, and uh, specify the, the app, and then the word uh, 0. Point, I mean 9.40 MB, this one. And also do the same on the other side. You said up this side, and then you said data, that 
amount. So by doing like this, you'll be able to achieve uh, such kind of uh, such kind of user interface. So you can see how you implement your what your buttons in that way. Okay, so go ahead and challenge yourself and do such kind of what of a user interface. You can even do it in a different way. So that's how you can do that. But remember, this was not the main topic. This is just uh, helping you to learn many ways of how you can implement these things. So you can pause the video and also try this. The remaining what? The remaining uh, bottom uh, item. You can even see it from here. So you pause the video and try this one by yourself. So after doing that, we can proceed. So uh, this one, I just copy it and paste it. I'll not explain it. Just paste it here to not explain it. It's on the main thread. Ah, so you can have such kind of what of an item. Okay. So I hope. We are together. Something like this. Okay, so you can do such a thing. Challenge yourself and do such a thing. All right, let's proceed. So you have seen how you can create utility buttons or how you can place buttons in two utilities. Then let us proceed and see how you can create this kind of fab button. Okay, this one, a floating button. All right. So to get that kind of button, of course, so I've already seen it in different user interfaces. Let's look at something that is a little bit challenging. Got how that's in the middle. Okay, let's see how I can create this kind of a button that is having a more. Okay, like when you create a it, it opens other what? Other buttons. We call it what? This button that has more. So that's the what we're going to create, this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and face that. So let's go ahead and create a fresh screen, or you can duplicate the screen that we had. Let's duplicate this one and just remove some content to save time. So I'll just simply come here and then come here. Buttons, say, fab, more. And then after I come and copy this and select and then search it and rename it alt and enter to rename okay so I just simply come with this one call it fab more okay so you can change the the icon the naming here and say fab more so after doing this then we are going to go ahead and do what we're going to go ahead and add this one in our what in our main screen so to add it in the main screen, we just simply come to the main route, okay, and then duplicate this. Sorry, this one, and call it what? Uh, fab buttons, fab more, whatever. Then come and paste here the class that you want. Sorry, this is the class, eh? Yeah, come and paste it here. And then import it. All right. So let's go to that. Uh -huh, then when you click here, you're able to go there. So I'm going to remove uh, up to the scaffold. Okay. Let's remove everything up to here. At least you guys can do up to this level. So that is the. So we're going to see how we can achieve this. Don't mind about this uh, list because we'll come to them. Right now we just focus on buttons. How can we achieve such a thing, okay? So to achieve such a thing, uh, we're going to have our normal floating button. This one, floating button, okay? So as we have our floating button, we're going to have our normal what? We're going to have our normal floating button okay so what when someone clicks on the floating button you should go ahead 
and expand these items okay so how do you approach that we come here and then add floating button on the scaffold add floating and then in this floating button uh, floating button we are going to call the what speed dial builder this is just the name of a widget, a name of what a name of um, the, the function you can call it anything in this case i call it build speed dial something like that okay so i uh, can call it there and then after i go ahead and create it alt and enter create method so this method is going to return a what a widget and then in this widget it's going to do the logic of what of building it okay so i'm going to return uh this feature i mean this widget called speed dial okay speed dial this so you import it okay so all right so this floating button is just calling this eh? so here we say return speed dial so this speed dial it is going to take a few things it's going to take elevation like uh, how how do you want to be elevated and then it's going to take also the animation like the animation icon okay so after giving it those two the next thing we're going to give it you're going to give it uh, the theme color so you can import those uh, themes all right so after we're going to give it uh, the car the, the, the how you want it to eliminate it to animate so you can say animate linear so if you press here and put dots there you will see different what different uh kind of animation that you want that you may try out so me i'm going to keep it simple and just keep the animation of what of linear so after doing that we're going to give it what we're going to give it a background color of accent so it can look a little bit standing out all right so you put the accent color and then after we're going to give it now the children so like okay when someone clicks on it what should or what should open okay what should open so we're going to give it what it, what it takes the children now so we we'll give it children and then in this children is where you do what you pass item that you want to be expanded all the thing that you want to show when someone clicks on it so the first item that you want to do is just build their child and then you you give it a what an icon and an elevation just like you always do with other buttons an icon and elevation and then it is speed day child and then an icon and elevation so you can format the icon that you want and then it will have the on top listener like in case someone clicks on this one what should happen and then you can also do the rest for the remaining one like this so if i save i'll have such kind of what such kind of a button so when i click you see it is able to create that kind of um, a, a, a what a block on the main UI and then show me these icons. And you know these icons you can go, you can you can do what you can format them as you want in any way that you want. So that is how you can achieve such a what such a speed dial, okay? Or such a an expanding what an expanding button. So. Our lecture is our time is up. Let's see if we when you come back, which so you can as well even attach text. Okay, you can as well attach text. Okay, so by just simply passing the what the parameter that of text. Okay, so uh, another thing, let's see the what we may need to look at when you come back. We'll look at the, the toggling of these buttons. So we have a lot of more to do with buttons. So let's go ahead and have a short break. Then we come after that break, we're going to look at uh, uh, material buttons and also maybe the toggle buttons and see how we can uh, learn from all these things. And then also the outline buttons. Yep. We're going to see how we can create this kind of buttons. The one with high emphasis like this one. Okay, also with it like this one. And then also we'll go ahead and uh, see how we can create... Um, toggle buttons like these ones so that's what we're going to do in this video so i hope 
uh, you're ready to do this if you are then let's go straight and start doing it so right now we're going to do the toggle buttons how can you toggle a button like this one whereby you click on one and it's the one that is being uh, that is being enabled all right so how can you do such a thing okay let's see and let's learn and let's see how we can implement such toggle buttons like these ones okay let's go ahead and and do this okay so i'll do these two and then you can challenge yourself by doing these three or these remaining ones okay so let's go ahead and do that all right so the first thing we're going to create our free screen or our fresh screen so i can just come and duplicate this one and then i just call it buttons togo okay and then come and change this main class name and call it buttons what buttons togo okay then after come and change the wording here the title and make it buttons togo and then after i come and add this to our main screen here okay come and add it here so to do that we'll just simply come to our routes and then we'll go ahead and duplicate this and call this one buttons togo and import it and then you can just simply come and call this one togo all right so now this one should be clickable in a way that if someone clicks here someone should be able to see this a buttons toggle okay so let's go ahead and clear everything in the buttons toggle you will come here to scaffold and remove everything in the scaffold so you can start with a fresh page okay so we save and then you go to button toggle you're able to see this i believe everyone should be able to do at least up to this level okay let's see now how we can achieve the toggling of buttons okay set time i'll come to okay so we're going to begin by doing what by creating a container So I'm going to call this one. I'm going to create a container there. And then this container, I'm going to give it some padding and margin of horizontal and vertical. I mean the padding of uh, of symmetric horizontal and vertical. And then after I'm going to give it a child of what of a column. So I come here and say child and give it a column. So column to have children. Okay, in the children here, I'm going to begin by passing the first icon, I mean the first text here, which is going to be a uh, total. I mean, text toggling, okay, text toggling. So I just simply come and paste it here in this children of this icon. So I'll go ahead and import. So I hope everyone can do this, just displaying this text like this and applying the padding that I've just applied. I believe everyone can do that. So after doing that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, add another thing, which is going to be the toggle buttons, okay? So I should be able to toggle like this, okay? Let's go ahead and see how I can add the toggle buttons. So to add the toggle buttons, just simply come and add this class of toggle buttons. Toggle buttons, okay? So it must take children of items that you're going to toggle, okay? And also... It must take it must take if is selected okay so an item is selected which color do you want to do what to to display so uh, just simply come here to toggles and then put is selected so this is selected is going to be a boolean that will be true or false for the item that is selected okay so and then you give it also a color maybe of gray 60 so let's go ahead and create the variable of is selected okay going to be a list of boolean 
of items that are selected. So I'll come here on top, on top the word override. We put our list, I mean, we put our, um, our list of boolean is selected tab, and then it's going to be list of generate three. And then we go ahead and do it and make it false or default. So after doing that, we go ahead and it's selected there. So after doing that, the next thing, um, so the next thing, we create the item that will be selected by default. Okay. So just simply come here by default. Okay, there is selected one to be true. So this means that it's only one that will be what? That will be selected. Okay. So after doing that, we we'll go ahead and uh, add more items in our in our toggle buttons. So the item that I'm going to take is now to be they're going to be now the buttons themselves that are going in uh, what in these uh user interfaces okay so i'll just simply come and copy this container and i paste there and I explain what is inside there so i'll come here where there's children of uh toggle buttons and then paste it there so let me go ahead and explain it is just nothing but a container that has is that has eight inserts of 25 as a padding and then that has the child which is uh button one and then also uh, the text that want to display which is this one after doing that so the next thing you can add uh, the rest what the rest container button two button three and ba button two and button three so let me go ahead and add these children here okay so you have three buttons there so after doing that, after doing that, you see they are not clickable for now. So we're going to make them what at least clickable. So after doing that, we're going to put on press listener. So this press listener will be giving the item that has been selected. Okay. And then we do what? We generate the list of item that has been selected and then make it to be true as selected. Okay. So just simply come here on this button itself on this button parameter you can add here you can even put on top here and say on press okay so on press to give you the index of the item that has just been what that has just been selected let's say list dot generate and then say index make it false and then you say it's selected tab then you get the index that has just been clicked on and then make it true here okay so by doing like this one, the buttons, and then main, and then set state. Make sure that you set state. So when you do like this, you'll see now the button can start having the state. Okay, I hope you can see that. Like when I click on a button, the state will remain there. So it can start now having the what? The state. So that is how you achieve such button that can have the state hope you can see that or button that can be selected okay so let us proceed and see how we can do this kind of buttons this is just the same but it is just the same but the difference is what the difference is this instead of having text there are icons so you can also do it on your own okay so this one can also be done on your own since they are what they're just the same exactly but what is the difference the difference is the items inside them okay the item inside them one can be an icon another can be a uh, what another can be um uh, the text as how we demonstrate it there so go ahead and challenge yourself and do this kind of what this kind of button okay so if we use text here so you should also be able to use the what the icon Alright, so that's it for the fire buttons. I mean the toggle buttons. You the remaining is just a challenge for you. Go ahead and do uh for that of what? Of icons. So let's see how we can do an emphasis button. Like the one you see there. 
which is uh, outstanding and it is really on top of others so someone can be able to do what uh, to click on it okay so how can you do such an emphasis button okay so let's go ahead and de design this user interface and when you design this user interface we give you the mod these respective buttons okay so let's go ahead and do this so i'm just showing you how you how you can implement the button that we're just learning right now so uh we're going to come here right click new and then you say button underscore i underscore emphasis the dot after doing this so the next thing is now to put the content inside there okay so i can use stateful widget and then you put the name of the class it can be button hi emphasis a hey, emphasis then spring something that we can do the way it is all right so after doing this We proceed and add this one on what on our home screen. So to add on your home screen, we just simply come to our main route and duplicate this and put button high emphasis. As a screen, come here and put the text that should be seen. So, when I save, that button should be here. Okay. So, let's go ahead and click on uh, the button. Then we should be able to see an empty screen. All right. Now, let's go ahead and design this screen and give it life. So, of course, we'll always begin the what? the scaffold okay so we're going to design these uis this first one and the second one so maybe from this design that's when maybe you can also get uh, inspirations of doing different kind of things so we're going to give it give it the title and the app bar we import what is missing Okay, so when I save, you should have such kind of beautiful UI. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is now to add a single scroll view. Okay, so single scroll view is going to take some padding and do some direction. Okay, so after it's going to take the item that is going to be a column, which is going to be a column. Okay, so this column is going to take uh, different children. So we're going to design this card very fast. Okay, so the child is going to be the card, and then we import the card just in case it's not there. Need. So it's children. Okay. So we put our card there. So how to design this user interface? So the first thing we're going to put the border radius of, of the card. So you can see that is the shape and the what and the items and the, and the parameters rounded rectangle border and then uh, the the circle or the, the 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 radius that you want to supply it you can see it here so after doing that the next thing that you're going to do is now to give it maybe the clip behavior and then after 
we are going to give it now the column. So the column, since these are two images, I mean these are images and then followed by these items. So I'm going to give it a column inside there as the child of the card. So just simply come child and then it's going to be a column. So this column, of course, is going to take what? Uh, children. So make sure the column is what? Starting. The cross alignment of the column is start. And then it's going to take what? It's going to take children. So inside here, we're going to give the image. So if you have the scratch folder or the scratch project that I gave you that I told you to download, that is in the description of this video, you should be able to get these functions of getting an image and being able to display them. So when I save, we have that kind of what? That kind of image in our card. So the next thing is now to start putting the card information. So I'm going to get here another container next to the card, I mean next to the image, and then we're going to give it padding goal of what, of 15. So it should have some space around it. So after doing this, the next thing is uh, now to add the column here, because this is going to be items that are in form of column. If not add the column, okay. So it's going to be child and then put column and then it's going to take children and then we're going to do what we're going to make this column always what always start the cross alignment okay then after putting the children then we're going to start now putting the items okay so come up with this we have the word title of travel here so you will go ahead and put it there so you can look at my at my text you can pause the video and look exactly what i'm doing okay so you can even get an idea from what i'm doing so i'll go ahead and save so you'll have the word travel written there so after doing that the next thing is not to separate the line by eight of five and then followed by this word five sheets etc these were mapped here Okay. okay, so when I save, I should have such kind of user interface. As you can see, it's not magic. You can pause the video and just see what I've just written right now. There's nothing like magic there. Okay, so after doing that, now let's go ahead and put our buttons. Okay, so they are going to be just in a row, one following the other, and they're elevated button. And that's it. That's how you can implement such kind of what? Such kind of button. If you still remember, I told you that uh, the usage of the text button will always be followed, following, will usually be following the what? The, the what? The primary button, okay? Which has a background. So you see here, view, entry, and then here we have learn more. So it will look weird if both of them are in what? Then the same shape, same design. So that is. Uh, that is what? That is how you can design such a nice UI. Alright, so let's go ahead and design. So and that's how I can implement these buttons, by the way. That's how I can implement these buttons. So let's go ahead and design this remaining card. For it seem to be tricky, but we can, as of course, do it. Okay? So I'm going to go back to the cards level and then create another card. Okay, so come where the card is, it is this level, you can collapse it, okay, you can put maybe even a new card on top. Put a height of 5, then put a new card on top. So it's going to be card, oh I should copy it and explain it, okay. It's going to begin with the card and then these settings. Okay, so I hope you can see that. So after doing that, we're going to put, to put now the children, which is going to contain these items. 
and then we'll put the stack so I can be able to put something on top of what of the image. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So this stack, I'm going to explain it. So how we're able to achieve this button to come on top here let me explain it so we had a stack and you know the meaning of stack that if you put something in after stack it will always be on top of the previous one so you have this stack that has an image then you put our extended button button dot extended which takes the fab tag you specify it its color and then you check the what the label so I put the what? The label, and then you put the icon that's going to be the leading icon. Then you put the own what? On press listener. So by doing like that, you can be able to do what? To, uh, to, the, to, 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 to get such a what? Such kind of user interface. So these remaining words, they can also be added if you want to. You can pause the video and look at them. these ones okay so you see I have travel special okay by just the use of this one of this few text I have travel special and then special menu I mean travel special menu something like that and this button is really on top of this one okay so That is how you create the what? The leading buttons that request attention. All right. You can see. So you can pause the video and follow my code very carefully and make sure that you don't watch, that you don't leave you behind. Okay. So proceed. Give me just two minutes. Two minutes. All right. So that's how you can create and implement buttons in uh, different scenarios. So you have created these ones. We have also created these ones. I have implemented in that way. I have implemented these buttons. I've seen how you can also implement uh, the toggle buttons. And also you have seen how you can create such an emphasis button that can even be on top of everything. Okay, so this is a fab button, eh? fab extended. So a fab button can also be anywhere. Or floating buttons can be anywhere. So with that much said, let's go and uh, learn something else also. All right, so we're going to see how we can uh, implement also the what? The chips, okay? So chips, they are simple UIs that you can use to present a description of something with a photo and then also the control action of like closing. So these are the chips that we're going to do right now. And you see how you can also make them in what? In uh, how you can make them in your system when your application and implement them in a different way. So we're going to learn about, we're going to get introduced about what? About um, chips. Okay. So let's go ahead and... Uh, see how we do that okay all right so let's go ahead and get started so we're going to create uh, we're going to begin by creating these ones we're going to begin by creating these just basic chips like the one that you see on email uh, when you're writing an email you attach uh, the people who are going to receive the email or the, the receivers and then you can present them with their photo their name and the icon to close so that is can be achieved with the what with chips so let's go ahead and see how we can achieve that okay 
so we're going to go ahead and create a new screen and create a new folder that we can call chips right so in that folder we're going to create a first basic chips so I create a file and call it chips underscore basic that and then go ahead and give um, a stateful widget that you can call chips okay chips basic okay so after doing that we go ahead and import After importing, let's go ahead and add this one in our heart in our main screen here. So come to a main route, menu route. So it's a different topic and just duplicate this title and then put the name of the topic. Then after doing that, we go ahead and add the first one. So let's go ahead and click. So just paste there the name of this class, Chips Basic, and then put there maybe uh, Chips Basic like this. All right. So now when someone clicks here, they should be able to do what to get this empty screen that we just created. All right. So it's going to have the scaffold. And then it's going to have what? Now we're going to now start formatting this scaffold. Okay. All right. So the scaffold, the first thing that we're going to begin, we're going to begin by adding there the up bar. I believe uh, everyone at this level they can create such kind of a what one up bar. So I don't think that we need too much explanations there. You can pause the video and you see how I have created my what my up bar in my scaffold. Okay. Pause the video and understand if you do not understand how to create this up bar so after doing that i'll go ahead and save and then we'll have um, our simple screen so let's see now how we can achieve the other thing this one so we're going to have a column our body is going to be a single scroll view and inside this body we're going to have a column Okay, and that column is still going to have our, heart, our alignment and make sure it always starts. Okay, so after doing that, we're going to go ahead and create a row so that we can have this word too, and this icon, and then this icon. Okay, of phone book. Let's go ahead and create a row. So after putting the row, so the next thing that we're going to do is just to make this element always start. Okay, then this row is going to have its own what? Its own children. So the first child that we're going to go is going to be just this word two. 
which is having some padding and then the word two you can see it there okay and then import the word the style so you'll be able to achieve uh this okay you'll be able to achieve this okay uh so after doing that the next thing is not put now the 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 the, the, the what the the chips eh? so the chips are going to be in expanded space so that you can space it as much more as possible okay so just simply come here and say expanded okay and then after after we go ahead and give it a child of birth Okay, so wrap is going to take a list of what of chips. Okay, so this is the first chip. So let me explain the first chip. So the first chip, it's a UI that will come with a place for you where you can put an avatar or an image. So you see here an avatar, we put a circle avatar, and then you pass the what one of the image from from what background avatar, and then you put one we pass one of the image from what from our uh, from our package okay of i mean from our from our, our assets then you give the label the label is going to represent the title on that uh, single what on that single uh ui or on that single chip and then you have the delegation icon so i mean the delete icon is the icon that you want to when someone clicks on it they should delete and then you'll have the what the delete color the color that you want to put on the icon so there are so many uh there are so many ways you can uh, do that so i mean there are so many ways how you can uh, style it you can make it delete to be red something like that so you can see the main point why this is very important okay so when i save you see i'll be able to see that chip okay so you can duplicate it you can start doing anything that you want all right so I hope you've understood it. Okay. So you can get this other chip and add it. So you should be able to at least receive, uh, achieve that. You can get also this chip. Okay. Then uh, lastly is this icon for button, I mean for phone book. So you can see it, it is just nothing but phone book icon and you can do that I believe. It's an icon button. So if I come here, So then lastly, we put this button. So this is just the icon button that's going to appear there at last. So you see that is how you can design this kind of what this kind of chips okay so there are different ways of how you can do it okay so that is the basic one so you can as well use them as well as tags so to use them as tags you just do everything that you've seen here you can as well do it okay and then instead of or putting there anything that is plain you can just put tags and then you pass only the labels which is uh, self-explanatory and i don't think that i will need to explain that okay these are just labels then we have uh, chips for groups where you can have different chips that can be clicked on okay and 
chips that are outlined like the one that is outlined when you click on it of uh, dialog boxes in uh, flutter in fact we're going to do such something like this whereby we're just going to have a um, basic dialog box where i can click and then have a simple basic dialog box you click here you have a confirm dialog box like confirm you click uh, you have uh, confirm or decline you click where you have a dialog box where someone can sell, select multiple options and then okay i'm also going to see how you can make a custom dialog box whereby you can have your own form or your own custom fields within a what within a dialog box okay so we're also going to do um a warning dialog box like this one okay that can send a warning to someone we're also going to see how we can do um but i don't know whether time will be enough but if time goes becomes enough we'll go ahead and see how we can do this uh, uh, achievement dialog box okay and so many other dialog box that are prepared uh for you an image dialog box like this one a project dialog box and uh, also maybe the designers dialog box something like that so there are so many dialog books that are prepared for you but uh, in this lecture we're just going to concentrate on what on dialog boxes so with that much said, let's go straight into today's business and we see how we can create this kind of what these kinds of dialog boxes. So I'll come to our application. As you can see, this is the application that you always use to practice. And I'm going to create another what? I'm going to create another section of what? Of dialog boxes. Okay. So I'll come to application and then come to uh, our screens. And then I'm going to create a new section or new directory. I'm going to call it dialog. Dialog okay or dialogues or anything you can use plural let me use plural and call it dialogues rename refactor rename dialogues like this all right so inside there we're going to put basic dialogues or you can say dialog basic so you can come here and say file and call this one uh dialog underscore basic underscore screen and then say that then after doing that, press enter, then go ahead and create a state full widget of dialog basic screen. All right. And then go ahead and import uh, the states and then can go ahead and remove this if you don't need it. All right. So we'll have something like that. All right. So After doing that, we're going to go to our home screen and add this dialog screen on the home screen. So in a way that if someone clicks on it, they are taken to this what? To the dialog box screen. Okay. So let's come to the home screen, which is going to be our menu, our menu route. And then we're going to create another section called dialog box. All right. I'm going to call this one dialog. Dialog. All right. Okay. Or dialog. Dialogs something like that another section can put here maybe some kind of looking for a relevant icon whatever icon it is all right so after doing that let's go ahead and now put here our first dialogue basic screen okay so i'll come and paste here and then i'll just come and copy dialog basic and then put here uh dialog basic okay like this so i want when someone clicks here they should be taken the screen of dialog basic like this so i'll go ahead and do it and import it put there dialog basic screen and then i save and now i want when someone clicks here they are taken to the what to the screen of dialog I believe you can do that at this moment okay so i'll go ahead and open the dialog box and then come here and put a, a scaffold okay and then okay inside here then we start doing our business in dialog boxes so we'll come to our code save our time i'll come to our code and just use reuse the dialog box that I already created have this basic one all right so again so we have our normal scaffold there okay and then a background of white and then we're going to give it what uh, an up bar okay so our up bar will import it as always do and then we call this one dialog 
basic dialog basic so in save we should have something like that which is having your dialog basic there all right so after doing that then the next thing is now to do what to start implementing okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to put the single scroll view so i can have this kind of what this kind of items in there all right let's go ahead and do that so even if you don't put single scroll view, you know there's not going to be scroll level we can just go ahead and put column directly okay but that's anything just put single i mean child i mean sorry body give it single scroll view and then the single scroll view i'm going to give it a um, padding and then scroll to vertical then we're going to give it what a child and this child is going to be what of course a column and then inside this column we're going to have our first what our first width okay it's going to be the word confirmation okay this one here we're going to make it what uh, a confirmation a confirmation a confirmation a confirmation dialogue okay so you can just create inkwell straight and then do what the needful or you can just simply first put the container so children we're going to have here the container and then inside the container it's going to have uh, width and height so the width will be infinity and then the height will be 40 i mean 50. then after doing that we're going to put now the child which is going to be inkwell that's going to be clickable okay so it's going to be child inkwell so you can be able to do what click so you pass on what on top and for now we just keep this method open we don't put anything there and then you go ahead this child this uh, ink will have also a child that's going to have what you can call a line and then you say a line center or you can even just put padding directly and put the coordinate you want to display there all right so say so come here to inkwell and give it a child and then give it this information so let me put a line center so i'll surround this one with what with a line and then you pass as align left center like this all right so now this one's going to be what is now going to be clickable you see i'm able to do what i'm able to click this one okay because that's inkwell now what when you click here we want it when you click here we want to show this first dialogue okay this dialogue of confirmation okay so to do that we're going to call a function that's going to be responsible of opening that dialogue and it's no one who's going to create fu that function apart from us so in we're going to create a function that it will be calling and it creates for us that dialogue so that function you can call it confirmation dialogue and then we give it context so give it context because uh launching a dialogue it will be needing context so I'll come here where there is on top and then you put the function what of confirmation dialogue let's go ahead and create this method Okay, create as a method that is receiving context and then inside this function it is where we're going to put now the logic of show dialogue like this show dialogue so calling show dialogue it will make uh the operating system i mean all flutter to do what to launch for you a uh, dialogue okay so let's go ahead and design and create our dialogue here so in this function will be called we will open the dialogue by calling show dialogue this one is a what is a flutter uh, function okay it's a flutter based function so the first thing it will take it will take cos context so go ahead and give it what give it context uh, the second thing it will take it will take whether it is dismissible uh, or not dismissible okay so pass by are dismissible or not so if you say false it means that even if someone clicks outside it will not do what it will not close until someone does the needful then we, but we give it what then we give it a builder as we always do so it can build now this what this dialogue so we give it a builder and then this builder the builder will take context and then like this and here we turn what we want to be in the dialogue okay so let's go ahead and return what we want to be in the dialogue so 
we pass a LAT dialog is the one that has to be returned and then it will have its own parameters. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So just simply come here and say return alert dialog. Now in this alert dialog, it's so you put parameters. Okay, we put things that you want to be shown or different conditions. For example, the first parameter is a title. Okay, is a title. For example, the way you can say warning, or you say alert, or you say maybe heads up, or you say anything that you want to act as the title of that dialog. So you see here, use Google's location services. It's asking a question just. I use the title of that dialogue. I hope you are together. So if I click here, at least you see, I'm able to launch my own word, my own dialogue. But the problem, even if I click here, it cannot disappear. Why? Because it said it should not what? Shouldn't be dismissible. All right. So after doing that, then we, the next thing we put is now the content. So the content will also take a what? It will also take a widget. So it means that you can also express yourself in the content. So here I'm giving my middle lorem ipsum it's my from my strings okay you can import my strings if you don't have them from the project that I told you okay so I hope you are together then after doing that now we have what you call actions which actions so at this moment our dialogue is just as simple as this it has no any action okay it has no any action it just shows up now what if you want to display some actions like uh, okay accept or decline or agree or disagree something like that there you have to pass what you call another method you have to pass another method that you can call actions you have to, call, you have to pass another parameter here in the dialog and pass what you call actions so actions will take an array of things. so this widget it can be like a text button like the way we discussed Okay, so you can put there text button. You already know what's meant by text button. You have already practiced it. Okay, you can put there text button. So here I put disagree. So when someone clicks on this button, I'll know that they clicked on what? On disagree. So this is how I close the dialogue by saying that get a dot of, I pass the content and then say dot pop. So by doing like this, it will be able to do what? To close the dialogue. Okay, it will pop it off. Okay. So if you want to also maybe the agree button, also do the same here. So you can create such a dialogue that when someone clicks on agree, you do a certain action. When they click on disagree, you do another different kind of action. So let's see, when I click on here, you see, agree and disagree, okay? So when I say disagree, it calls this method that closes it. Otherwise, if I don't do anything here, I see that I commit this. And I just call. So even if someone clicks on disagree, that will not work. So it is be your full control to decide when the dialogue should open, when the dialogue should what should close. So that is a while well, uh, that is a, a a good introduction of what of dialogues to you. So you can now start thinking how can I make use of this what of this uh, Flutter feature in my applications. Or in the application that I'll be what? That I'll be developing. You should start thinking. You don't need to wait to start thinking. Alright, so that's how you implement what? Implement basic dialogues. Alright, so can proceed and see how we create uh, a alert dialogue like this one. So you can see this one is just like uh, uh, the one that you've just created. But the difference is it doesn't have content. It also has the what? the title okay so let's go ahead and create it so i'm just going to come to uh where our commands are here and i'm going to duplicate this one So this just I've done nothing but just adding what uh, option of calling 
a lot of dialogue. Okay, so I want when someone click here, we show the alert dialogue. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the alert dialogue. It's just going to be like confirmation dialogue. Okay, so go ahead and say alert dialogue. Okay, so okay, we create this method of alert dialogue. So this method is going to look much more like uh, this one. So we can just simply copy this. So the only difference is this one is uh, only the title doesn't have content. So I can say, are you sure? Okay, are you sure you want to leave this up? So that's kind of a confirmation, or you can say, if you want to leave this product, etc., all that. So the difference here, you don't need to leave it. The content is not available. So by doing like this, it will automatically become an alert word, an alert dialogue. You see, are you sure you want to delete this up? So if you want to make this one maybe green or something red or anything you want to style them so you have the full control over everything you see you can say agree then it will disappear so that's how we implement the alert dialogue so let us see how we can implement also the single choice dialogue where someone can select something and then we take that recording or that whatever they have clicked on that record let's say maybe want someone to pick something so you may show them a dialogue and then they pick and then you make a recording so let's go ahead and do that a single select dialogue okay and then this one is a multi select dialogue we're going to do one of them and then for you to try out the other one by on your own let's do the single select dialogue okay single select dialogue Okay, so single choice, I call it single select. Okay, so I want when I call it, I should it should what? It should build the word, the dialogue from here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add. duplicate this and then call this one Okay, so in there we're going to put single choice dialogue. Okay, so you see how I can have something like this one. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is to design the single choice dialogue. Okay, is to design the single choice dialogue. Okay. to build it so this single chase dialogue it's not just going to be a normal widget it's going to be a stateful widget so that you should be able to do it to update what you click on and then it changes accordingly 
So you create it as a what? As a stateful widget. You can even be in the same screen. But uh, after doing so, uh, you give it full control to do anything and even update the status. So for you, just be waiting for the what? For the results. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a, a stateful widget of single select. And then we be able to go ahead and do it and build it. Okay. So let's begin. So you can just simply say so coming in bottom, you can as well even have the same file in, in bottom. So it's going to be single select dialog. It's going to extend stateful widget. So it's supposed to be a class, right? It's a class, of course. Okay. So it's going to extend the widget. Let me just copy this. You can even create on your what? Your separate screen. Uh, it's supposed to be outside. This is a class on its own. So it's push outside here. So. Then after, after creating its stateful widget, like this, the next thing we're going to create is now its stateless, or the its state. So I'll come here and create a class that extends single state. So this class is going to have this, the builder must have the what? The builder. It must avoid the builder. So I just come and copy this one and then I paste here so I can explain everything step by step. So it is uh, having a builder and then this builder it is returning a simple a simple dialogue. So the simple dialogue can take the title and then can take a uh, children or item that you want to do what that you want to display so we have to have these items so they can be displayed okay so let's go ahead and create these uh, items it's just a list of strings like this all right so now we are finished creating our uh, what our single uh, single select uh, dialog so the next thing is now to launch it okay to display it to be able to display it So to call it, we'll have to build it since it's a widget on its own, a mini stateful widget on its own. So we want when someone taps on that, on single choice dialog, we should build it and then call it. So you see, show, then they pass contact, then they say build, and then you pass. Um, the state okay so it is show and then you open bracket and then so you here just running a builder show context and then after comma they say build and then after comma and then you call whatever class that you want to do what that you want to build so by doing like that you'll be able to do it to get uh, a single state dialogue as you can see it here okay
you can be able to get single state dialog as you can see it there all right so that's how we do it then uh that's how we do basic dialogues so go ahead and practice don't undermine them okay so how we can uh, create we are going we are going to resume with the preview with our today's topic so we're going to see how we can make uh, custom dialog boxes such as this one assume that you want to create a pop-up where someone where you can collect, collect the data from the user so how can you create such a custom what dialog box that can come on top of of the current page and you're able to do anything that you want using that dialog box so that's what you're going to see how you can do that such kind of a thing today we're going to see how you can do a dialog box like this one where you have a fully user interface customized within it okay we're also going to see how you can do dialog box like this one okay like this one where you can collect maybe a post where someone can write something like this on this in the dialog box and so many things so if time is enough we're going to see how we can do a lot of uh, things or how we can implement dialog boxes in different ways so without wasting much time let's go ahead and start our project so this is the project that we always use to do what uh to practice if you still remember this is the dialog box that we created today yesterday or in the previous lectures okay so right now we're going to now take it from there and we go ahead and do it and do this uh, custom dialog box this kind of a dialog box so let's go ahead and start with this machine so the first thing that we're going to do right now we're going to create a, a screen or that we're going to put that that we're going to implement the custom dialog boxes so this is uh, our section uh, the code uh, where we're putting the, the data about the dialog box so I'll go ahead and create another what another empty screen that I'm going to call dialog dialog underscore custom the dot so that's we're going to put our custom what our custom string I mean our custom screen so let's go ahead and say stateful widget and press enter and then put custom dialog custom maybe you can put screen and then go ahead and import uh, these things all right this is having an issue the word is not correct it's dialogue okay so that's our simple screen i believe everyone at this level they can do such a thing so after creating that screen we're going to add this screen to here to our main route so that someone when you click when they click on uh, the custom dialog screen they should be able to be taken to this screen so let's go ahead and go to our menu route okay and then go to where there is what there where there is dialog basics so i'm going to just duplicate this one and call it what uh custom dialog or dialog custom the one that you can customize and then you put there custom dialog and then i import the dialog so after doing like this, now we should be able to click here and you take into the what? To this empty screen, she just has a, 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 a placeholder and to the place we are going to implement our what? Our custom dialog. So let me go ahead and click on the what? On the empty screen. So to save time, I've already created this code. So I'm just going to open it and then I'll be copying and I paste and I explain everything step by step. Okay. So it's dialog custom, which is this one. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to begin, of course, we're going to add begin by adding there what a scaffold. So we'll come here and remove placeholder and put what and put scaffold. Also remove this constant. So after doing like that, we should have such kind of a what of a white screen. So the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to add this up bar, this up bar. So I'll go ahead and import that up bar. Okay. You can create your own custom app bar if you want to. All right. So then you have our app bar there. So after putting the app bar, now the next thing that we're going to do, we're now going to put the what? Uh, the, the body. 
so the body is going to be a container okay like this one okay after putting the container this container is going to leave it to give it an alignment of center okay uh, let me first <laughs> this thing is interesting yeah this compiler thing it has already done for us everything that we need <laughs> hey copilot leave us disable copilot it is predicting things that i want to do so i'll end up not doing anything for you all right let me remove copilot all right so we are here then after i'm going to do what to to put there child this center i'm going to put here a child of a button that you want to click and then it while does what it shows the the, the 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 dialogue so i just copy this button and then come and put here as a child let me remove everything that can confuse you so i believe everyone can create an elevated button that is having this style okay elevated button dot style and then you put uh, this, this style that you can see here on your screen okay now we're going to have just a button that is having the word show dialog in the center okay so at this level you should be able to do something like that so this is just a simple pattern now we want when you click here it should show the custom dialog or the, the the dialog that has our own content in it okay so i'll put the on press listener which you can see here that will be called when someone clicks on what on, when someone clicks on that button hmm. so now let's go ahead and write a function that is going to be responsible for showing that custom button i mean custom dialogue so it's going to be just a builder just say show dialogue and then put context and then put uh pass the context then you say the builder and then you open this bracket and put underscore in between and then you point at custom dialogue so this custom dialogue is now the content that you wanted to show in that uh, customized dialogue so it's going to be just a widget that we're going to show inside there so this is how you write to show a custom dialogue so let's go ahead and do now this function that is going to be responsible for doing what for returning the custom dialogue so first of all it's going to be a class so you just copy it and then come and and make it a what a class okay that is going to stay extend stateful widget so you can simply say class and then you say custom dialogue so it is totally up outside okay and then we can just simply say stateful like this and then put custom dialogue like that all right so i hope you are together there let me repeat come outside your come outside your, your class and just say stateful widget so we just paste there the word custom dialogue this one here then we have just a stateful widget meaning that you can as well put your screen or any kind of screen in form of what in form of custom dialogue and you do everything there as if you're in what on a full screen so if i do it like that so you see it's just a stateful widget and then it is having what uh a state and then this state is just having a state a what a uh, placeholder so if i click there you see it is showing but with the word with a placeholder in it you get it so now inside there it's so we're going to put now the heart the content so after creating a stateful widget this one here with its state so you are going to return what you call a dialogue instead of a placeholder so go ahead and return here dialogue all right okay so inside this dialogue it's so we're going to put what we want to show there so you can even put the scroll view where someone can even be able to scroll so go ahead and put a child and then put scroll view and then this scroll view will take child of course it's going to be a what a column a column so i can just make this scroll view to be uh, scroll direction vertical 
and then i put inside here a column inside this column so you can see it is just like kind of an external screen that you're putting in on top of what of another screen and inside here you can do almost everything that you do what that you do that you want so i can pass here children and then come here and pass here text like this okay so you, i just want to show you what you can possibly do so here the difference is instead of returning a scaffold you're returning what you're returning uh, a dialogue so when i click open you'll see that i have my text there so but the whole point is we are having like a, a full scaffold i mean a full uh screen or a full ui where we can perform almost everything that we need using what using the on top of of another screen in form of what in the form of a dialogue all right so after doing that so let's go ahead and uh, proceed with the uh, with the uh, with the, what we're doing okay so after putting the column so we are going to pass a uh, material and then this material is going to have a what uh, 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 this kind of uh, a scaffold is the purpose of that material okay so let's go ahead and pass this material widget material widget okay and then uh, after passing material widget we can give it what we can give it now uh, a color primary so give it color primary so you put this color uh -huh. then after putting the color of primary the next thing we're going to pass we're going to give it now the content or the child so just simply say it has the child and then the child is going to be what a container so we're designing our custom dialogue okay so after doing that then we go ahead and give this container some height right now we're trying to do this thing on top here Okay, give the container a height of 50, height of 50, and then we'll have such kind of thing. And then after, we go and put uh, a row inside that container. So just come here and give child and give a row. And then inside there, we're going to give children. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put here a closing, what? A closing button. So on the first, we put the icon button. That's going to be a closing button. Okay. So it is icon button and then of context then you put the icon which is going to be close and then the color of icon is white in this row and then you put on press so when you press you just say context of whatever context and then you say pop so it will it will fall back and then close the what uh the dialogue okay so let's okay so after doing that the next thing can put now the text okay and then you make that text to, to have white color sorry next to this uh closing icon okay then you say they should have a white color something like that so you see you're having your custom dialogue on top of another screen and it's having these features and someone can click there and it closes all right so after doing that you're going to put here maybe like something uh, maybe save okay you're going to put that button of save so to put the button of save is going to, to be an inkwell an inkwell that's going to have a splash and then uh, um, uh, a what uh, uh, um, it's going to have splash and then uh, uh, a what a container which is going to have a text of what save okay and then remember to put spacer between here so if i put it there it's going to be next here the word save we see it so what i'm going to do i'm just going to put um, a spacer so it can spread them okay like this so by doing like that you have such a beautiful ui all right so after doing that the next thing now we're going to add uh, the content inside here so this can be anything that you want it can be a form it can be anything that you want but the whole point is you're able to customize your own dialogue and put any content that you want okay so you can think creatively and start putting content there so i'm just going to go come here after my column after my column here 
so you can see how Flutter is powerful. Eh? So after the column here, and then I start putting there the content that I want. You see? So this is just a list style that has uh, a title of this and then uh, a, a trailing of an icon that is white so you can see that hope you can see that okay hope you can see that so go ahead and do that i can even go ahead and put your own content that you want in that dialogue okay so this dialogue it means that you will not close the previous screen you we'll just let the user to use the current screen to do any kind of operation that they want to do on top of another screen and that is the that it, it improves the user what the user experience okay so we proceed you can go there and add a container so i'm going to just add this container and then explain things that are there you can decide i'm going to explain it eh? but uh, the the main point is like i've shown you how you can customize a dialog box so it will be up to you to see what you want to put there so that's the main point and i think i've covered it so inside here i've just put a container that is having padding of this one and then i put a column okay inside that container and i make that the the the, the, the item in the column to always be on start then after i do what okay after i put a text Okay, that is going to be having the word London here. And then after doing that, I go ahead and put um, event name, you see. So someone can be able to type in here. Okay, and then here you put. And then someone maybe select a date, select what, and then they do what. You see, you can even scroll and then you click save. And then you can do some action back here so i hope you can see that so you can pause the video and see how i've done this one but the whole point is i've shown you how you can do what how you can uh, you can be able to customize your own dialog box and put anything that you want that's the whole main point so i hope you've understood how we can achieve that Okay, how we can achieve that. Hope you've understood. All right, so just go ahead and try it out. Okay, so I'll mark this custom dialogue as what as done. So we're going to do also another thing. We're going to see. So I've learned how custom dialogue can be done. Okay, let's see how we can do such a beautiful dialogue, a dialogue like this one. So it's going to be almost the same, but the difference is it's going to be the UI. Okay, the difference is going to be the UI. But here, another point is we are able to communicate. You see, a dialogue can be able to do what? To communicate to another dialogue. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one. Let's go ahead and do this one. So this one, we call it custom information dialogue box. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll come to our screen. I'm just going to duplicate this current dialogue and we're going just to modify it to suit something like this. Okay. So let's go to our screen and then we are going to call this one custom info dialog box or dialog custom information. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll come to this screen that we just created right now. I copy it and I paste it. Okay, so inside here, I'm going to call this one dialog custom and then I put info. Then after putting like that, I come and change the name of the class. So I'll just select this one and then press Ctrl F and press Alt and Enter. And then I come and change this one, Dialog Custom Info Screen or Information Screen. Then after, I just come and change this, this, this title to Custom Information Dialog. Okay. So after doing this, then you're going to add it on what? On the main screen so that when someone clicks there, they should be taken to this second screen that we just created right now. This one with custom info. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll come here to our main screen, which is this one. So I'll come to the main route, which is this one. And just I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'll call this one custom 
info screen and then i press out and enter and then i just add the other word maybe information something like this so when i save okay when i save and someone clicks here they are taken to this custom information dialog so we're just going to remove this content and do another content like this one okay so let's go and see so we've put custom info and then you put here show dialog where there is a show dialog this one here so it is just the same it is just the same like what we did the other one but the only thing here we're going to change the what the user interface so we're going to begin from here so i'm going to come here to custom dialog info and then come here to show dialog and then come to this guy and then i just i'm going to remove the content inside this dialog okay so we put the data here so that's the beauty you can also create these things only one time and just keep on reusing them in your different projects you see so this is we're going to put the content all right so let's go ahead and do that so we are going to first of all uh pass the what the background and make it transparent so we'll just come here to this dialogue and give the background and make it transparent okay so when someone clicks there background is transparent of this what of this content so after doing that the next thing you're going to do we're going to give the container and give the height of 150 okay so this container is going to have a limited height of 150 so just simply come here and put child and make it container and give the height of 150 so after doing that, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to give a card inside that 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 that, that container. So come this container and give the child of a card. So after doing that, we are going to go ahead and give the shape of this card. Okay, so let's go ahead and give the shape of that card as rounded rectangle border with a circular rounded of four. So after giving the shape of the card, the next thing I'm going to do is give the background of the color of that card to be white, of course. It's already white. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do, we're going to give the clip behavior of a silver. Okay. So after doing that, then the next thing to do, I'm going to put there a wrap. So go ahead and put there a wrap. So that's the child of this card. It's going to be wrap, and this one's going to take children okay so we are going to go ahead and start putting the content inside there so the first thing i'm going to put the first child is going to be a container that's going to have padding of one of, of 20 from all so i'm going to put the first child which is going to be container that has padding of 20 all sides All right. So after doing that, since we have specified the width, so you can come and give the width of infinity. I mean, give the width infinity and the color to be light green with 400. So by doing like that, we'll have that kind of what of uh, background color. So then after doing that, we're going to give to give a column in that card. So can put your child and put column and then after I give it children all right so we're going to go ahead and give it some container of height to make some padding on top side okay and then after we're going to go ahead and give an icon of this check okay so you see we'll have that kind of so you can use this one maybe to show someone someone's account has been verified or maybe a transaction has been completed successfully something like this or you, when you have something to to show to the user and you want to pop it up okay so after putting that icon i'm going to give another spacing of this and then after i'm going to put text of account confirmed so come here put text of style 50 import uh, the text uh, title my text title so this was already in the thing that i gave you and then and then give it a color of 50 
so account confirmed so you can see the word is there all right so after doing that the next thing we're going to do we're going to give it a height of what of 50 so i mean of 20 so this word can be cannot collapse it should it collapse to what with uh with the border Right. So after doing that, so designing this. So after doing that, now we're going to go ahead and create another container that is going to put this information. So let's go ahead and put a container. So this container is going to be uh, outside this column is going to be now inside the wrap here. So it's going to have width of infinity this is the width I already specified it okay and then it's going to have a column inside it so the child of this content is going to be what a column and it's going to have children uh -huh. so this column is going to have our communication there reload again this set is limiting us yeah that hit was limiting us all right so I hope you can see up to that level members okay so after putting the short message there we can go ahead and um, add more information in that column it's going to be after putting the information here so we're going to put now a what an elevate a spacer of 10 and then we're going to put an elevated button this one here so this button can look like too much code but it's not too much code you can as well create it so an elevated button and then put here my toast dot show and then it will be passing this information so you see so you can pause and look at this button eh? it's just nothing but just a simple button so someone can click on get started and then just to get started so you see how you can do such a beautiful what a beautiful UI This was supposed to be with faith. Yeah. So members, you can see how you can do such a a nice what? A nice thing within just a um, few minutes. Okay? And then you can use this one maybe to show anything. That something is confirmed you can use it to show it a warning you can use it to show it uh, success you can use it to show to communicate to the user uh if he effectively because when it pops up it means that the user will have to do some action on it all right so that is how you can create your custom dialogues so the whole point here you can put any content inside this one inside this dialogue okay all right so let's do another dialogue there are so many that I had prepared for you. Uh, let's do. <laughs> let me see the one that is uh, interesting. This one terms, so you can do something like this. It's nothing but a dialogue which you can put the terms inside there. So I'm going to do this one of terms because it looks unique, and then we're going to do um, this one of achievement. It is just like the one we've just done right now. So you can give yourself a challenge and see if you can do such a what? Such a dialogue. Okay. So pause the video and challenge yourself. Do a dialogue like this one. 
Pause the video, challenge yourself, do a dialogue like this one. Pause the video, challenge yourself, do a dialogue like this one. Pause the video, challenge yourself, do a dialogue like this one. So those are, we have already done them kind of custom dialogue and and then you put there any content. Pause the video and do a dialogue like this one. All right, I think we're going to do one like this and then you'll do the rest. Some A dialogue like this one, a dialogue like this one. All right, let us do this one and then also we do the dialogue for terms and then the rest, I'll, then, I'll just show them to you and then you try them by your own, okay? So you have to try by your own. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do this one. This one of a designer. All right, so I'm just going to use this very screen, this very one, and it's the one that I'm going to modify to do this designer what? Designer dialog box. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll come here to this screen that we just created, and then I duplicate it. And then say designer okay dialogue designer and then we're going to change this one to dialogue designer something like that all right so let's go ahead and put it and change the class name control select the whole class name press control f alt and enter and then go ahead and change dialogue designer screen or custom dialogue designer something like that all right okay so this one okay so let's go ahead and add it to know what on our home page so that when someone clicks there they are taking that designer custom dialogue so i'll come to our main route here and then duplicate the very first one and then come here and call it designer import dialogue designer or designer dialogue All right so now when you click here you should be able to show you so let's go ahead and re modify the designer dialogue so everything is going to be the same only that we're going to remove this content inside this dialogue and put another content that is totally different so i'll just come here and remove all the content I believe everyone can do up to this level and then inside this content I'm going to put uh, the designer content or the dialogue that I've seen okay so everyone should be able to reach this level so this is what we're going to do right now this dialogue of header and we're going to do and this one of header and the achievement that's an achievement where they put it call in contact that's yeah in contact so they no contact right so it's got contact dialogue okay so let's go ahead and do uh this beautiful dialogue okay so uh the first thing so have up to what up to to show so we are going to begin immediately from here okay so i'm going to begin by returning what a transparent background return transparent background so let me show it and then i'll be updating so transparent background after returning transparent background we're going to give it a container so go ahead and give it what a uh, container okay then after giving it a container you're going to give it a width of uh, 310 give it a width of what of 310 all right so after giving it a 310 go ahead and give it a card inside so this child of this container make it a what make it a card so after making it a card okay go ahead and give a rounded rectangle border as the shape of this card okay as the shape of this card so go ahead and give this card the shape of that all right but you can give it just an option thing give the background color of the card to be white okay so you can make it what you can make it white all right so after giving making it white give the, the the clip design the clip behavior to be this one
Okay, start by giving it a clip designer to be that one that you can see there. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to Okay, so we are designing this and uh, electricity disturbed. So we are putting this one here. Okay, it's so after we're going to put a wrap. The wrap works like kind of a column. And then, so come here and give the child to be wrapped. And then after, we give uh, alignment of the wrap to be center. And then we give it children. And then we go ahead and create this first part, this first uh, button. So let me show you this button is just going to be alignment right. It's going to be a container which has an alignment right. And then it has some padding of five at in all edges. And then it has um, a child of uh, icon button. Okay. And then you give this icon and then you say, when someone clicks on this icon, I mean on this button, it should pop. Okay. So by doing like that, we'll have something like this. You see? Something like this. Beautiful. All right. So after doing that, uh, next to this container, we are going to put a divider. Okay. Let's go ahead and put divider there. Okay. Then we'll have a divider there. Then after, I'm going to put a height of 10. So height of 10 after doing that then we'll have something beautiful like that one okay a height of 40 so after doing that then we're going to go ahead and put a what a, now a container in there all right so go ahead and put a container and then after putting container we're going to give uh, padding and uh, width okay padding and width okay then after doing that we're going to go ahead and create a column inside that that container as the child of that container and then we're going to give it children so the first child is going to be this what we call so we say alignment start alignment start of this container so the first child of this container is going to be um circle avatar circle avatar and we're going to give it what uh, a background of asset image of photo number six photo mail number six then we'll have something like that okay something like that you see it's beautiful so after doing that the next thing to it you are going to give it a height of 10 so it can be spaced and then after giving a height of 10 let's go ahead and give now the text of this one column so text of that then you give it a magazine so that is uh, what we've done then after I hope you can see uh, then after doing that we're going to go ahead and give it um, the, the description of this person this is a photographer we can call him a designer then you see product designer that's why I call this one designer then after doing that, we're going to give it a height of 35. Height of 35. Okay. Then after doing that, we're going to give it uh, now the content of that. So I can give it now here. Some Lorem Ipsum. Good. So you see, that's beautiful. So after doing that, uh, we are going to go ahead and put now a height of of 35 height of 35 and then we'll have something like this all right then lastly you go ahead and give it now this bottom thing let's go ahead and design it together it's going to be a container a container that's going to have child of what of uh, column okay column 
and then this container we're going to give it background color uh, background color of blue and then with uh, the parameter of 900 so right now we're trying to design this bottom thing then uh, we go ahead and put um, the first child of that column inside there it's going to be text that's going to be centered all right so we go ahead and give children and then we're going to call this one text and centered contact us on social media and then do like this make this it have a gray color of 20. then after doing that you're going to give it 40 okay height of 40 so it can be spaced from the next thing then after doing that the next thing we're going to give it uh, a row so we can have these icons of social media let's go ahead and do that so we're going to give it a row we're going to have children so the first thing is going to take uh, a twitter icon a twitter icon is already in uh, that scratch folder that i gave you that's a twitter icon so we put here the row should be centered so come and put these parameters on this row okay so they can be centered so we have our twitter icon uh -huh. then after we go ahead and give uh, a will create also put some space between them 25 and then put the next icon okay so the next icon is going to be a Facebook icon. Okay, something like that. And then the next icon is going to be Instagram icon following the space of 25. Something like this. Alright, so after doing that, then you come on the further end in the bottom, in that wrap, in the bottom, in the column, in the bottom here. So we go ahead and give it um height of next to the row go ahead and give it a height of 10 or 5 and then you'll have something like that okay so let's go ahead and get padding this container we get some padding this container which is having blue we give some padding of 15 15 all right so what is limiting our container from touching the edges uh, let us see it is this one so we'll have to remove it here and you put it in the wrap i think here yep so we'll have something beautiful like that one so you can be creative and think of how you can make something even much more better than this all right so go ahead and challenge yourself and do this one challenge yourself and do this dialogue challenge yourself this one will finish challenge yourself and do this one with a dark background okay and that kind of green and challenge yourself and do this one okay with this kind of icon so you give yourself a challenge and also do this kind of what this kind of dialogue okay uh, challenge yourself and do this one the review dialogue did we do this one yesterday challenge yourself and do this one so all those that have told you to challenge yourself please don't undermine yourself just give yourself a challenge as i've said and do this kind of what this kind of dialogues okay this one of a post you can as well do it okay so that's it for about that's it for dialogue i've just shown you the main main concept which is uh being able to customize the dialogue and put there your own what your own content so the rest you can be creative and see how you can make use of what use of those dialogues let's go ahead you can also do something like this so let's you just pause the video and then try those things by your own so when you try it's when you get enough experience about it all right, let's go ahead and have a short break of five minutes or four minutes. So 20 past five, we should, I mean, 20 past three, we should be resuming the, in this session, we are going to learn how we can uh, create 
uh, what we can create expanding uh, uh, widgets in what in flutter so always do 40 minutes and you can see our time has started so let's go straight and uh, start at this topic of um, expand in what in uh, flutter visit widget so expand it will help you to uh, to collapse information such as this one and then you show it when someone clicks on the expand icon on the expand button and uh, it can help you to organize your things not in a very cleaner way and someone will only be seeing information when this is what it is required so what that's what we're going to look at right now so we're going to see how we can do such a kind of thing and then we're going to also design a flight ticket like this one this one can even be your, the, the order for your e-commerce project e-commerce app and then someone can do like this to do what to expand and see the details so we're going to see how we can implement all these things what uh today so we're also going to see how you can create an invoice and also be able to watch to expand and also collapse it so that's what i'm going to look at right now so without wasting much time let's go straight into our today's business and start implementing uh these uh features of flutter the expanding all right so uh let's begin by creating this basic expand so you can first understand the concept of expanding and collapsing uh, widgets so I'll go and uh, do what and create another folder for expand so this come to screens then come here and say new directory I'm going to call it what expand okay and then this expand uh, we're going to create a fresh new uh, what new screen that we're going to call uh, that we're going to call uh, expand basic expand basic and then say that so in this screen it's going to create i mean to demonstrate the basics of expanding and collapsing widgets in flutter so let's go ahead and create here a stateful widget, a stateful widget and call it expand expand screen all right so let's go ahead and import the material ui then after we're going to go ahead and add this to our main screen or to our menu so that when someone we should be able to access it and someone when we click, click there they should be able to but guys just i mean at let me first pick my boss so we're going to expand into our home screen so we'll come to the menu and then duplicate this one and then after we are going to call this one expand screen and then call this one expand and then we can call it maybe expand basic okay the basic of expanding <laughs> all right all right so i want when someone click here they should be taken to the basics of expanding so when i click there i'm taking this empty screen all right so let's go ahead and uh, demonstrate this basic expanding so the first thing i'm going to do we're going to begin by by putting the scaffold Then the first thing that we're going to add, we're going to add the title and make the background to be gray. So I believe everyone can do this at this moment. All right. So after doing that, so after doing that. Uh, we're going to put there the what the body that's going to be a scroll view ok 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to give it some padding of 40. Make it vertical. Okay, now I hope everyone can do this at this level. Um, now we go ahead and put column as a child of this. The children. Okay, so we're going to begin by putting our first expanding this one. Okay, so it's going to be kind of a widget, a separate widget. So I'll call it panel one. So let's go ahead and create that method. Okay, it's just going to return a what? A widget. Okay, so I'm going to return a what? A card. So this is a card. So return card. So card it must take a child. Why is it crying? Ah, it's supposed to be widget. Eh? Okay, so there I go. Okay, so in here now, how to create this expanding feature? So you can first put these first parameters of our normal card. Then go ahead and add now the expanding feature. So the expanding feature is going to be just uh, first going to be a column. So this card is going to have a child of column. And this column is going to have children. So the first child of this column is going to be this text. That's going to have the word expand and okay. So we're going to put a container and put this first content. So I can pause the video and explain it. So it is going to be a container that has a row inside. And um, this row is having uh, the, the, the container of 15. So it can the first word should be distanced from the margin. And then you ha it has a spacer. So it can spend the, it can separate this icon and this one. And then it has an angle of animation so this one is the rotate the rotation animation okay so this transform i mean this icon this icon that you're seeing here the icon that you're seeing here the button here it is having it is being surrounded by transform dot rotate so this transform dot rotate is the one that is going to be doing the logic of rotating this uh, icon from top to bottom okay so that is transform dot rotate so transform dot rotate it takes an angle of which you want to rotate in okay so it's going to create you're going to create an animation uh, dot value and then put math pi and then say 180 so you should be able to rotate it at 180 just first created this variable for the animation one so it's this one, eh? the first one, we call it animation one. We're going to be responsible for the first animation. So let's go ahead and create it. So you can come here, create it on top here, and then say, uh, let, so you're going to define it later, and then say, uh, animation, then you open square bracket, and then say animation one, and then here you can say animation view. So after doing that, the next thing we're going to define them now by creating what? The init state. Okay. So go ahead and create init state. Initialize state. I let me just create it. Just say init state here. Init state. So each side here, so we're going to define this animation. Okay. So I define the first animation, which is going to be animation one is supposed to be twin and then say begin at zero and when it should end at what at 180 degrees and then you give it a controller so you need to define this controller 
and then the animation view is going to be cover me i mean animation and this is the type of animation that is going to take the controller also one okay and then it is going to take a curve what of curve linear so let's go ahead and control it and, and define this controller one so to define this controller one we just simply define what an animation like this animation give it double and then sorry and define this controller one so you're going to have to control as well so since you're going to deal with two things so i'm going to give it controller one and then give it define it from here okay so controller one you have to define it first before you define the animations so i'm going to copy these controllers and define them on top because they are going to be used by the animations okay so controller is going to be animation controller so you part vsync so if you're going to pass vsync you have to extend this one with the ticker provider okay ticker provider this one here so you come to the state and then add with the ticker provider mix in okay after putting the route after they putting them the state and then add with ticker provider mix in and then go here come here and then say animation controller then say vsync and then pass this and then say duration that you want to admit okay so after doing that then this one will be for the second what for the second animations you can also define them at once because we're going to have both of them so we're going to define animation one and animation two which is this one here and the view that we're going to control it. all right so after doing that we're going to define the mathematic the math mathematics what mathematics value so you can be able to get what you can be able to calculate the pi so you import it just say import that math as math then it will be enough so come here on top and say import that math as math it will be enough for you to get free mathematics so let me first comment this one and see have the icon that will be able to toggle so we have to restart the screen okay so here we should now be able to do what to toggle the icons so i'm going to create uh, the logic that's going to be responsible for toggling or for switching something from back to forth otherwise you can pause the video and see how i've defined this these values have defined them how i imported the math and how i initialize them in a what in a on start with different animations okay now after doing that now we're going to do the real what the real animation by calling when someone clicks here we should call the toggle okay so let's go ahead and create that method that's going to be toggling the two so I just simply press Alt and Enter and say create method. So this method is just going to return void and then it will be checking whether something whether it has expanded the first value or not. Okay. So these are going to be just what? Are going to be just booleans with true or false. So we can put them on top here. So the first one will be just checking if the first is expanded, it should collapse it. If it is not expanded, it should do what? It is, should expand it. Something like that. Okay. So you put controller dot forward, it will it will do what? It will expand. If you say controller dot dot reverse, it will do what? It will do the opposite. So you see, now I'm able to toggle our what? Our controller or our controller here. Now what's remaining is now to really uh, hide and display. So to do that, we're going to come to to our text. So this is the first row that we created that even has the logic of what of toggling. Then after that row, 
now we're going to put the what the sized the size translation that's going to be responsible for expanding and and what and collapsing so let's do that together step by step so after putting this row here can collapse this container let's go ahead and put what you call sized uh size what size uh transition so size transition is going to take admission factor so we put here the view that we defined okay and then it is going to take what it's going to take uh, the content that you want to be uh that you want to be what to be uh, to be displaying and hiding okay so just go ahead and put here child and then put the content that you want to expand and hide okay so it's going to be a column so i can just copy the content and explain it okay so i'll copy it and explain it so that's how you do it that's how you define an animation so i'll just simply come here so the content inside here is just a normal content okay it's just a normal content i hope you can see that okay so when i save then i'll have the content like that it's just a, nothing but a column okay that is having also maybe a button of hiding and this button of hiding its task is just to toggle whatever is there so you see I can expand, I can hide, I can expand, I can hide. Okay? I can expand, I can hide. So I can try it also in different ways. So the main thing is just to initialize the controller. I mean create the controllers and animations and then implement them as I've just shown you. Okay? So this one will hide and expand like what you see here. so that is it or right, you can proceed now to this one which has an input in it where i can expand it and hide it all right so let's see how i can implement that So I come to a column. So I put another build number two. Okay, so let me go ahead and create that widget. Okay, now in this widget, you're going to just return a card like they did in the previous one. Okay, so in this card, we're going to give it child of what? Of column, so you can have our first column here that will be responsible for expanding and hiding. give it height and alignment on top here so after giving it alignment uh, the next thing is now just going to put the content inside there so this content is just going to be this top thing that you're seeing here We can as well design it so in here we're going to put now the toggle that will be toggling that second second what second widget it's just a simple method as you can see it here so I'll come here 
and add that toggle method. It will just check if the first thing is defined. It if it is expanded, it expands. If it doesn't expand, it collapses it. So if I save, I should be able to do what? To expand and collapse the icon. Then you go ahead and put the what? Now the content that should be expanded and hidden. Okay, so that content is going to be next to this first item that we just displayed. Okay, next to this one, eh? next to this input word, or in the input row. Then I'm going to put what? Side transition. Remember with the second widget, so I'm going to come here and put size transition. So in this size transition, I'm going to give it what? A second what? Size factor or controller. So it's the one that will be responsible for uh, collapsing and hiding. So this, you see how we defined it, all that. All right. So after doing that, the next thing I'm just going to put now the column that is going to hold the content over what I want to display when someone clicks on expand. So this content can be any content of your car, of your own. Okay. So you see, it is nothing but uh, a column that is having a what? An input, the, the, the decoration field. I mean an input field, a text field, something like that. And then it has an input decoration like that. Then here we have a row that is having a male. Of course, it's going to be a drop down of male and female. So we're going to pass here. We're going to create a variable of gender that is going to have male and female. But let me just leave this one. simple here is just nothing but what the content that you want to display in there and then here i show you i give you a controller where you can also hide it from what from the within buttons okay so this is nothing but the content that you want to be inside that so we can be able to hide we can be able to expand and be able to collapse so you can pause the video and make sure that you try them and make sure that they do what they do work and make sure that you understand them so that's how we implement the collapse and what and hide in a basic way so i hope you've seen and i hope you've learned so now let's go ahead and see how we can implement an invoice like this one an invoice like this then if we implement this one, then it means that for you can also go ahead and implement the ticket, okay? Something like that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, implement the what? The invoice. Alright, so I'm just going to create a new screen that I'm called expand invoice screen with that. I say stateful widget. Remove this one. There we go. So let's go ahead and add this onto our main home screen. So someone should be able to click there. Okay.
come to menu route to get this put it there and then put here expand invoice okay now when someone clicks here they should be taken to expand invoice so i click expand invoice they are taken to there okay uh however we can create a, a separate section we forgot to create a separate section uh for dialogues so this is for dialogues and this is for expand So we're going to design an invoice like this one where someone can be able to expand their orders can be able to collapse and see just like we see it here okay let's do this okay so let's go to the screen expand invoice screen and uh, let's go ahead and uh, Start designing the invoice screen. Expand invoice. Go here. Expand the invoice screen route. And then we are going to do what? We are going to. Okay, we are going to begin by creating this screen. Okay, so you see, there's a lot of controllers in there. But no problem, we're going to create it. We're going to do what it takes to come up with something beautiful like this, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with the adding the scaffold. Uh -huh, so the, uh, our scaffold is going to have our the background color of white. There we go. Then it's going to have a single scroll view as a body. Okay. All right. So after doing that, again, not give this single scroll view a column as its child. And then I'm going to give it children, and then those children, it's so going to give the up bar. So I'm going to copy the up bar and then explain it. So this up bar is going to be scrollable. Okay, so it's going to be an up bar that's going to have an elevation of zero, and then it's going to have this color, okay, the brightness of light, and then the color of teal and then the background color of teal and then the leading icon which is going to be an icon button where someone can click and then we pop up okay this one here and at the end we are going to put up the pop-up menu and then this pop-up menu we're going to put what we're going to put uh, settings and maybe display settings all right so that's what we're going to have so if I do like this and I save, we still have something beautiful like this, where someone can even click there and get the settings. Okay. So after doing that, I hope you've seen how I've done it, but it's scrollable. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, create a container that is going to contain this top content that you're seeing here. So let's just design that top coated together. So after putting the upper, we're going to put a container and then give it children. Okay. I'm going to give it alignment of center and width of infinity and give it that color of teal. Something like this. Okay. I have that one. Okay. So I hope you can also do something like that. 
All right, after doing that, so the next thing we're going to put now the double, I mean the, the, the child of column, which is going to contain this content. Eh? So child, I mean child and put column, and then we are going to have children. So in those children, so we're going to pass this first total, and then the second total, and give the mud color of white. So I'll come and import my text styling here and here. So you can have a white color there. Okay, so when you save, we have something beautiful like this one. Okay, we have something nice like that. So we have to make it um, alignment always be at start. Cross align, start. Okay, you see it is simple and straightforward. Then after putting the total, then you can put maybe add height after putting the height and then the next thing we're going to do we're going now to put the row that is going to have this to the the invoice number and then the word purchase in bottom of it which is going to be a column and then it has a spacer and then at the further end, it is going to have a what? This uh, feature icon, I mean feature button, this one here. Okay, so you have something like this. So you can pause the video and look at just this row. This is straight forward. Okay, so I hope you can understand this. I hope you can see how I've just achieved that with a spacer that separates this between. Okay. Then after doing that, now we're going to put now the content that is going to follow here. It's going to be outside this green color, the teal color. So, I'm just going to copy that and then I explain that box. So, I'm going to come here outside uh, this teal color. Here. We collapse that teal color and then put this uh, kind of design. So, it is having the invoice date as you can see it there. So it is just a row that has a calendar icon in beginning and then followed by a column here that is having uh, the invoice date in that font and then the date itself in that font that you're seeing there. So after doing that, now we're going to see how we put a divide and then start working with the logic of expanding and collapsing. So we shall go ahead and put here the divider okay so the divider is there but it's not very clear this device has an issue with divisors okay so the next thing that we're going to do i'm now going to put what the container that is going to have the content for expanding and collapsing okay so i'm going to copy it and explain it so it's going to be items. This one is in a row. If I think that items are in a row. So I'll come here and put items like this. So they're in a row. Okay. So we're going to have at the end here. Here at the end. We're going to have our what? Our animation. That's like the way we did the other time. That's going to be rotating between 90. I mean between. Uh, I mean that's going to be rotating in minus 150 180 degrees and also 180 okay this one between 0 and 180 okay so we're going to create the first animation controller let's go ahead and create it 
this one here i'm going to create these variables all of them and then i'll explain one by one so we shouldn't repeat ourselves eh? so let me come here on top and create all these variables here okay mm -hmm. we make sure it is expanding ticker so make sure that it's having with the ticker provider at the end here okay then after i'm going to create the init state and initialize these icons okay i mean these variables that we've just created so you can pause the video and look at those variables each of it it has a in meaning it's there they are just controllers so let's go ahead and create the init state so just simply come here and say init state so when the screen starts this variable should be defined as follows okay as follows okay so having a main controller is having an uh, animation controller and then say see this thing this duration is equal to that just go ahead and define these ones as you can see those on the screen of course because uh, most of them i've just explained them right now so they shouldn't confuse right now so now i hope you can pause the screen and see so there are many because i'm going to use them in what in uh, many views for expanding and collapsing so here we go ahead and import math okay so after importing math so the next thing is now to define this toggle that will be collapsing the what the items information so create as a method okay this method is just going to be here checking if the first thing is expanded it should expand if it doesn't expand it should do what it should reverse it okay so i understand so i'll reset my screen you can see that so i should be able to at least switch in one way or the other so now here after columns after container we're going to put the what the items themselves okay and the items are going to be like these ones okay so let's go ahead and define those items so the items are going to be surrounded with the what with the size transition this one here and the size transition is going to take the first animation that we will be controlling when you call this toggle okay then the uh, item uh, let me copy this one and then explain it so we'll pause the video and do it so it's going to be here next to it and then we have here the row okay this is just a row so i'm just defining this one eh? so it is a row that is going to have the first icon and then it's going to have column that's going to have this expand and collapse so the first row is um this first one which is having the web design and then having expanded and then the value there hope you can see that so that's the first row this is the second row so once you design one row you can go ahead and design the rest okay that are having the items okay but the main point here items are surrounded with the what with a size translate transition the one that can be controlled to expand and collapse i hope you can see that okay so you try it out and make sure that you're able to achieve something like this so you save and then you'll be able to do what to expand and collapse expand and collapse i hope you can see that okay so our time is up for the next session so i give you a challenge to go ahead and finish this description so this description is the same exactly but uh, for it it is just lorem ipsum or plain text so go ahead and challenge yourself and do the one for description 
go ahead and challenge yourself and do the one for what for the address since i've already finished for you this one so when you challenge yourself it is when you really know that you're getting the concepts or you're not getting concepts you need to watch again so challenge yourself and do this okay so you should have a complete thing that you can collapse like this that you can preview like this all right so that's it for this session let's have another short break of five minutes so 15 past four we should be coming back for the very last session for today and in that session it's where we're going to look at uh, how we can design the grids like these ones okay so this flight ticket you can look at its ui and challenge yourself if you can do something like this which has also an expand and hide okay so go ahead and challenge yourself and just if you can see if you can do something like this one okay so that's what you're going to do as a challenge to you so i've already opened the project that you always use to work with i'm going to add another section called grid so come to our main route and then i'm going to duplicate this one and put grid and then we're going to put the grid basics okay Okay, so we're going to create a screen where someone clicks there, we take them to the watch to the grid basic screen. So let's first create a section a new category, a new directory for grid. And inside here we're going to put a new file that we're going to call grid underscore basics but that. Okay, then let's go ahead and create stateful widget and put grid screen. You go ahead and import everything. All right, so after doing that, I'm going to add this on the main screen so someone can be able to do what to click there and then we take them to grid main screen good good so now when you click on grid main screen it should take you there to that screen with uh, a placeholder in it uh -huh. so now in there we are going now to start putting the grid content Okay. So we're going to see how we can do such a grid. Okay. Such a grid user interface. Okay. This is what we're going to see how we can do. So we come. The first thing we're going to put scaffold, of course. So return a scaffold. Then uh, 
after we go ahead and add the up bar and in this up bar we put grid basics we can put basic grid then you have such kind of watch have an up bar okay so in our scaffold we are now going to put the body so our body is going to be a grid adapter so this grid adapter I already created it but i'm going to rebuild it together with you so you can do what you can be able to understand uh what is there what's supposed to be there okay so we have grid adapter it takes just items and maybe on click listener and then after we put dot get view so you can be able to do what to display uh that grid in our screen so right now what we're going to do we're going to see how we can generate such a what such kind of an adapter okay so it's, can, it's an independent class that is going to have the grid logic and the rest and then for it to be just returning the what the user interface okay so um just like we have models just like we have models it is better to have also the logic of of lists of user interfaces i mean of 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 of, of widgets separate and also the logic of creating something that's going to display things such as uh, the width and i mean such as the list and the rest you put it separately okay so we're going to create a class that we're going to call a grid adapter and then that's class that we're designed that will be calling to display any kind of what any kind of grid that you want so let's go ahead and create here a separate uh, folder that i'm going to call adapters So in that in those adapters we still are going to have different items that will be displaying in there so the first adapter that we're going to add there is the grid basic adapter okay the grid basic adapter so i'll just simply come there and say new new file i can call it grid basic adapter but that so in there we're going to put the logic that is just readiness responsible for what? for creating the grid uh information or the grid adapter okay so the first thing that we're going to do there we are going to create a class called grid adapter and then we're going to give it different different parameters okay the first thing that we're going to give we're going to give it a list of items and then a list list of items so list of items it will be now the list of what we want to be displaying for example this one will be accepting only strings okay so it's going to be a list of what of strings okay so that's the first thing that we're going to give it so the next that we're going to give it i'm going to give it uh, a list of tiles okay item tile so item tile is nothing but a what our custom class Okay, that we're going to create right now. So let's go ahead and create a class called what? Item tile. Okay, so it's kind of our model or our widget that we want to be do what that we want to be displaying. So I'm going to come here in bottom here and create a tile. So it is a class called item tile, and then it extends the stateless widget. Okay, so you import the stateless widget, just a stateless widget. Then inside this class is going to have an object that's going to be responsible for displaying and also the what the index and also the function that when someone clicks on that item what should be what action should be done okay so it's going to return i mean it's going to have a, a now a constant of what of an item type that's going to take a key and then the index and then the object okay so the index is going to be like a number of that will be uh the id of that particular item and also the on-click listener, like when someone clicks on it, what should be done? So that is a constructor, like uh, when you're creating this item tile, you must pass these three things. Then uh, after doing that, then you put here on-click listener. So when someone click on it, you want to call this on-click listener. So be just calling that item and pass it the index 
and the object that has been clicked on. Then after we give now this item what the build on build okay the build so it will take the context and then say we are going to have now stack so now start building your user interface okay so this is interface going to just be an image so it's going to be stuck so in case we want to put something on top of it so it will be stuck okay and then we say children and then these children we pass image dot asset and then you pass the object since this object is just a string or a location of the image we just pass the object and then we give it the height of infinity and width of infinity and then you say it should be fit and then say cover and then you pass here the material uh so someone should be able to watch to when they click they see that kind of a repo okay and then put the inkwell and then after putting the inkwell we put the the, the 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 opacity and then the splash okay and then after we put the on tap so when when you click when someone clicks on tap we'll be calling this on click item and then this on click item and this and this on click item we'll be calling what the on click object or the function that was passed okay so uh and that's it and then that's it then this container we make it having the width uh, the child of this material it's going to be a container that's going to have width of infinity and height of infinity so by doing like this you can pause and look at this class can look, can look at a bit confusing what it will make sense once you do it once you understand okay so it's just a kind of widget that will be displaying by time then this is on uh, click item listener okay so after doing that now this class is now the adapter that is independent and created the separately okay so i want now to be able to do what to to deploy it or to display it so in order to display it i want to give it uh, another method called on view so this on view i mean get view is the one that is going now to compile this widget and the data that will have passed here so let's go ahead and create that on view i mean get view so this get view is going to be in this main class here on top here okay so this get view it will just say grid dot count it is going to create a grid with a, a, a with a i mean this grid dot count is going to be a list of uh, a number of what or grid item that you want to display so it's a grid dot count it's return grid dot count and then you say uh scroll direction should be vertical and then you say uh, cross axis spacing should be two and then say main axis spacing should be two and then say padding should be all two and then you say cross axis count it should be three so this one uh you just uh, saying maybe uh, this axis should be three and then uh, um the spacing should be two between them so this spacing that is between them should be having the pixels of two and then after to give the children so the children is going to be a list of what this list of items that someone will have passed here okay so that is how you create an independent adapter that will be responsible for displaying the data okay and that is very effective in a way that things will only be built when they are required so you can pause the video and try to understand this one so almost all our adapters that we're going to be doing, they're going to be looking like these ones. Okay. So after doing the adapter, after creating the adapter, then you're going to see that displaying this item in our what? In our in our um, in our what? In our main structure, it's going to be just clean. To implement all right let's go ahead and now go to our main scaffold or to our main grid screen and then it's going to just see which is just as simple as this then you have a complete thing so we're going to have a body so here the body is going to be our grid basic adapter grid basic adapter press alt and enter and then you say 
you open it so you'll be like initializing it and then here we're going to pass the items that it needs here as the first parameter and then this here we're going to pass the on click method like when someone clicks on it what should be shown okay so this on click method you can create it here you can create it uh, here within the state widget here so you just simply say on click method it will take index and the object which is the string that someone has clicked on and then maybe when someone clicks on it you'll be making a toast so you mean that when someone clicks on this item you'll be doing what you'll be making a toast here and show what someone has really clicked on so maybe you can do other logic maybe navigating them to another screen something like that so let's go ahead and the uh, uh, pass sorry so this one's going to be grid dot okay so you pass and then the second thing we pass the what the on click listener and the third thing i think that's it and then we put dot what dot get view like this all right so now this first is going to be what a list of what a list of strings or a list of item strings okay so to get the list of items of, of strings we are going to use our dummy data that it that comes with your what with the scratch project that you that i gave you so i'll just simply come here and i put our list of what of items so it can just be a list of string and then you pass it here So I have to create this constructor. I'm using the wrong thing. Be the other side. This one here. So let's create our constructor. I've not created the constructor. So our constructor here is going to be so you come to this grid and then put what will be receiving. It's going to be grid basic, it should be the same name as this one. Eh? And then you say this dot items. So when someone will be calling this one, they'll be they must be providing the items, and then you must be also providing the click listener when someone clicks on it. Then you loop through these items, you loop through them, and then say item dot add then here you pass the item tile which is this user interface this user interface and then put index pass the index that it needs and then pass the object which is going to be items which and the string of the of the string or the image that you want to display and then pass on click and then pass this on click listener so by doing like this you'll be able to do what to create this one so these items to generate them we just simply say items dot dummy dot get nature images so this one will come with a scratch project that i gave you this is nothing but it gives you a list of what of uh, nature images that are uh, in the in the in the in the scratch project that i did what that i gave you it loops through them and then after looping through them it uh, shuffles them and then return back Okay, so it's just your data that you want to display. So by doing like this, you see, you're able to get something like that. So uh, you can put multiple dummy data. So you can add, uh, you can add here after getting the nature images. You can add, so you say items dot. So come here to build. Wait. Should be here in the build save time you build so you say items dummy dot get nature image just so you say add all then you add all the what the the nature images you add like multiple nature images okay so here you can get a different kind of what different kind of uh, images that are in the dummy data that i gave you 
okay so this is just like maybe the data that comes from the api or the data that comes from anywhere and then you add it there then after you loop and uh, send it to what to the user interface so you'll be able to get something like this you see when i click i'm able to know so you just uh, pause the video and go slowly by slowly you'll be able to understand i know it can be kind of confusing for the first time so we just created this adapter and just that's what you just need to know how to create however there are also maybe simpler way that i'll show you how you can do this but this is the hard way and the most effective way or the cleaner way of doing things whereby the logic of your items they are separate in a different adapter and also uh, your items i mean the display of your data is separate in a safe in a different what in a different screen or in a different uh, layout okay that is how things should be done though it can look a little bit confusing at this moment so these dummy are just adding uh, the strings of images in this items and then here i pass the items and then i click this center so if someone click on this it will be calling this one and then i just display it here okay so when you when you do like that and open see it will create a, a nature images and shuffle them this is just for the user interface but you can go to now implementing the real data and be able to do what to understand them properly i hope you can see that so you can create such a beautiful uh widget you can create maybe an album you can create maybe a photo gallery image gallery application and implement such kind of what such kind of things so let us proceed uh right now we're going to see how you can do uh a widget like this one okay so it's going to be the same exactly the same but here you just simply say they are going to be two and then here you put uh, the user interface is going to be a little bit different and it's going to have just uh, what um an item on to in front of it okay so since you're having a, a stack there you can go ahead and do what and display uh, item in front of it by putting the next uh, the image next to it okay so all right let's go ahead and uh, create this one it's just exactly the same knowledge but this just to change in the user interface okay let's look at something different let's do this and then uh, you'll challenge yourself by doing another one let's do this section okay because uh, this one is just the same this one this one with a single line is just exactly the same all that you need is just to modify for example here is just to modify what you need to show here And the grid adapter you can just simply come here so since you have stuck here you see you have stuck okay so bottom to it or can come here bottom to this one you can put your text and then and then display what you want to display for example i can say I display the object which is a string and then you'll see you have that so if you pass style you see you have that with a white color so you can use positioned and then you make it to be on bottom you see it is now in bottom here 
okay so i can say maybe max line should be one then you have it like that so if you want to put a text some content i mean some some uh, something in between this text and the image you can just simply put here container and then give it a width of infinity and then give it some height of maybe 50 give it some color i mean color of black then you see have that container so you can also make it positioned and then give it um bottom say zero so it will be at bottom so aligned i think can give it height of infinity let's see so it's going to cover the image then you give it a uh, transparency with opacity of 0 0.2 then you see you'll have that car that that layout that is between them i hope you can see that kind of layout in between the image and the text i hope you can see it okay you see it the image is there and then there is another layout between them uh then you can uh, go ahead and do what and uh, change this one maybe to bluish see see you have something like that i think black is better okay so and then after you can come and maybe give this text some container padding and then say maybe padding all of eight so it can be there like that container and give it margin something like that so you can design any kind of this you basing on what i've just elaborated to you here you can use tuck so here i use the um, show you So you just change the user interface. So you use your what? A line. Okay, so you put stack and then you put a line. Then you see a line bottom. Then to be able to align your container in the bottom. So you see, I have a stack of image on top. And then after the stack of image on top, I have um, a line bottom, which is going to be what? Which is going to be this eye. This eye that you see here. Okay, and then it's an icon. Then I have, uh, after line, a line bottom, then I have the container which is uh, having uh, that opacity, the background with opacity of this color. And then inside it, there is a what? There is a text of this row that is having an icon and what? So by implementing this, you'll be able to achieve exactly what I want. So instead of doing this fresh uh, tutorial for this, you can just challenge yourself and uh, change the UI and do the UI that you need. So instead of putting position here, you can as well use what? can as well use a line let me remove this you see then you just put a line there then display this one as what as a object and give it maybe max line
see you can put here maybe some text so you see you're able to achieve that so if you want to change the number of grid you can just simply come here instead of three you just simply put two and then you'll have something like that okay so it's just changing the user interface but the logic is exactly the same so i'll let you challenge yourself i'll let you challenge yourself by going ahead and uh, by going ahead and change the what the user interfaces okay so i hope you see that so you can also just challenge your sofa by doing this okay so once you get the concept tell me that you'll be able to do what to do anything okay all right all right all right all right all right so see our time having nine minutes let's see if we can start the list or yeah i think we can start from there for today then the next lecture i can start and design this list okay and design this list or we do them right now and you know we are done with them all right now let's start with the next lecture and you see how we can do this kind of list you can drag and also can have multi selection all right let's start with the next lecture with this one so for this one we'll stop it from here and uh, then you'll challenge yourself by doing the remaining uh thing that i've asked you to do like um, modifying the grid its user interface and also maybe presenting it in a different way so in the next lecture we'll go ahead and start with the list and also look at what at different menus such as these ones all right so this is our project that we always use to demonstrate with i hope you can see it so what i've done i've just launched it to my emulator and uh, if you remember clearly this is the last thing that we did in the previous video so if this is your first video, I recommend you to, the, to, to, to follow the previous videos that we've been demonstrating or that we've been teaching. Uh, if you want to start from here, then you have to download first the, the, the Scratch project. And the link is in the description of this video. So you download that project and the, after downloading it or after cloning it, you put it on your computer. So the remaining examples, you just uh, you'll be able to do it to get something that is familiar to this. So the advantage of that project, it comes with a source code uh, that gives you the assets that you will not need to again suffer with the assets such as images, constants, models. So for us, for that the, the work that we'll be concentrating on should be the what? The user interfaces. So let's go ahead and start. So I assume that you have this project on your computer and uh, you're ready to go do it to get started. All right. So today we're going to look at uh, lists so i'll go ahead and uh, open our demonstration application hope it's on this app it's on the other app all right all right let me compile it here yeah? Uh, so we are going to look at uh, how we can do different kinds of uh, lists. So this is what we are going to do, a basic list, how you can do such kind of a list. Okay. And uh, someone can click and do able to tell what somewhere someone has clicked. Aha, uh -huh. so we'll go after, we'll do section list where we have a section and then uh, display different kinds of what? 
different kinds of data from that list. We'll go ahead and do a list so you can have an expanding where I can click and then expand. Also, we'll go ahead and do a list where you can be able to do what? Uh, to drag like this one where you can move the user to another level and maybe and also move this one to this level. A list where you can drag items. Okay, we'll go so ahead and do a list where you can swap an item like this and that swap item get disappeared. Okay, so you can implement that feature in different ways. So we'll do that list also. Uh -huh. Then we'll also do the list which can support multi selection or can support more than one item. Also, we'll do a list um, uh, of what? Of uh, such kind like a uh, a news application then also I'll leave you with the challenge of doing a list like this one if I finish the other one and also a challenge of doing a list like this one if I'll have finished the other ones all right so that's what we're going to do today so we have a lot of things to do together right so without wasting much time I'm going to launch here our application now this is the one that I always follow okay then stop this one. Then uh, we start without as much time. Let's start. Okay. So this is application. Okay. This is application. So we are starting your business right now. Our timer is uh, timer timer is uh, showing 35 minutes so five minutes were just for introduction and explain what you're going to do so let's go ahead and do now serious business so we're going to create a section for the what for the list here so we'll come to our menu here and then create another section for the what for the list so i'll come here and uh, copy this and create another section called lists okay and then you can change the icon the icon of list there if you want to so after doing that so the next thing we're going to put now an item that is going to navigate us to the list so I'll come here and call this one lists all right so after doing that we are going to go ahead and create now the list user interface itself okay the basic list we are going to begin by creating this list this one here uh, lists are going to begin by creating this basic list okay so what we're going to do we're going to create a special category a special uh, folder for the screens of lists so let's go ahead and do that so I'll come here to screens and then create a new uh, directory I'm going to call it lists okay so in this list I'm going to put list basics so I'll come here and say new file so I'm creating now the screen of the list basics so I can say lists uh, basic okay dot that so it's the screen itself all right so after doing that the next thing we're going to put now the real list of that here so we'll go ahead and collapse and then we go to where this is and i'm going to start explaining everything okay let me first put it just a stateless widget a stateful widget that i'm going to call uh, list basic uh -huh. Then after doing that, we'll go ahead and import. Remove this key. We rename this list basic. All right. So after I can come here and put a placeholder of text. I believe everyone can do this. So after doing that, so we're going to put, you're going to link this list to our main screen so that someone should be able to click and then move to this list. So we'll come to our main screen. This is the one. I'll go ahead and remove uh, this and put the uh, list and I put it. So after doing that, now if someone click on uh, this list, you should be able to do what? when someone clicks on what 
and this list it should be able to be taken to the what to the basic list this one is called basic list okay so when i click here i should be able to be taken this basic list item all right so this is where the class is all right so that's we're going to start from now creating a what our list so I'll come here to our screens or the routes and then i come to where uh i put the lists here and then uh, basic list is here all right so the, uh, after doing that now let's go ahead and start uh, designing the what the real list there okay so the fact that we're going to do we're going to do what we're going to create a scaffold okay scaffold first so I'll come here and put scaffold so return and put scaffold all right so after putting the scaffold we'll have something beautiful like that okay let me first disable copilot because it is uh, giving me the answers before all right so after putting the scaffold so the next thing i'm going to put the up bar so everyone, know, everyone knows how to put the up bar of this scaffold and then me i'll import mine you can also design your own up bar in that way and then just keep on importing it all right so after putting the up bar so the next thing that we're going to do we are going now to put the what uh the list body itself okay so this list is the body is going to be an a list adapter list basic adapter that we're going to give the items and also the on click listener and then say dot get view all right so i mean that these are the variable that we must have at first before we do what we start creating the list so you need the list items so this list item can be your list data from the api or from anywhere okay so i'll go ahead and uh, get the and get the context first okay so i'll go ahead and create the what the list items so i come here in this class and I create the list item so according to the project that i gave you it should be able to give you a model of people and also a dummy that can get for you people okay so this dummy you know what it does it just generate some random what some random list of what of people so in simple terms this is nothing but a what but a model called people so if i press control and click on it it will take me to the class okay it has taken me to the class that i created here in these models so you can create your own model if you want okay so you see this is nothing but a class called people and this people is having a string is having a name is having the, the image the name the email and what and whether it is a section so if it's a section it is true if it's not section it is false by default and then it has a constructor called what section that i mean people do section and then to pass the name of a section and also the name of uh, um, uh, whether it is a section or not all right so this is these are the two constructs that it does so you can either take an empty constructor or it takes this what construct that will pass a section so that is uh, what our simple model of what of uh, a list uh, i mean of a person object so i'll go back to our list so here we have dummy dot get people so this is where you can now do the logic of getting your data from the internet or from the api and then you get this data and destroy these, these items but here i created this class called dummy it will generate for you what some dummy data so in the project that i told you that you download you'll be able to get this what this item so when you press dummy dot get people you'll see it is a static method inside the what let me open this see it is a static method inside a, a a class called what a class called dummy so i prepared these things so that we don't suffer in doing what in regenerating this dummy data so it is just a class called dummy and it can return for you some dummy data so I press dummy dot get get people dot data you see it is just a, a a static method inside that class of dummy that is returning a list of people which has the name called get people data so when you open this method it is list people so it is a list of people and then say items which is nothing okay so after doing that i create a loop so it is for each loop it is going to get an integer beginning from zero 
up to the length of people that you may need okay and then after i plus plus okay so it's going to loop so as it is looping it is creating an object of a person and then it gets an image of that person it gets a random name you see i have a, a, a constant called people's names eh? so if i let me take you there you see it is a, just a list of constant called people's names okay so you can also see how it is so it is creating a, a random of people's name and then also the email and then after creating this object of people of a person it adds it in this list of items so after looping here after the loop it shuffles them so that they should not be the same it creates a random logic like it is shuffling this is what called shuffling so after shuffling them and then returns for you the list so if you call this method it will generate for you the what the dummy data of random users okay so in this case it can be now your users from internet or what but for us we're just concentrating on what on the api i mean on the on the user interface so here we are getting the what the data of what of users and i hope you've understood that all these items so i've explained what this class meant and what this get uh data meant so after doing that the next thing you're going to now uh add more items in this what this item so you just simply say items that add all and then you say dot get dot what i did not add all and then you see so it is in the build so it has put in the build Let's put it here so that every time it will be random item dot get all so you add more people like three times you can even add as many as you want so it is getting like more people like three times as it is making a shuffle and then add them in this list okay if you want you can even shuffle again from here so this list should be totally what should be totally different okay so this is how we're getting a what a getting we're getting a, a dynamic list so after getting a dynamic list then it means that we have now data that we can display and i've explained how you what is meant by everything here so it should be understanding uh, now we have the data that we can display so after now we're going to create our what our our um, adapter so the adapter it is the one that is going to be responsible of organizing that data and display it in a what in a screen you can create your own list builder here it's, you can create your own list builder by the way here and then display these things automatically without even creating an adapter but it's a good good practice if you have to keep your things clean you better create a what an adapter okay so this adapter will be responsible for displaying the data in your what into uh the, the the screen so you can reuse it again and again so the body here now of this what of this scaffold is going to be our adapter okay so we are going to create a, a class called list list basic adapter that's the class that we're going to create so this class is responsibility is going to be an adapter that will be responsible for displaying this kind of data on the screen so if you create this adapter you can even reuse it on different what on different kind of screens okay so that's the different the, the advantage of what of creating things in form of what in form of modularized architecture so let's go ahead and create this adapter so that that you don't now know the meaning of that adapter its responsibility is to do what is to 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 uh to display the data on the screen all right so let's go ahead and create that adapter so creating an adapter can be boring but once you learn how to create one then it will be very simple for you all right so let's go ahead and do that what i'll do i'll come here to our what to our project and then i come here to where there's adapters and then i create a new what a new file okay right click here and say new file okay on this file i paste and they say list basic adapter and they say dot that so in this adapter it is we're going to put the content that uh, you are going to be using to display what the data of what of a list okay so you can go ahead and uh, create a class called adapter so let's go ahead and create it so it's going to be class called adapter and remember once you create one adapter the later later you can just be duplicating copy and paste them and just modify where you want okay you can create one and then in the rest of your project you just be modifying them okay 
or if you want you can just display the list directly in the scaffold if you want to all right so we're going to create now a class here for the adapter and i've told you the meaning of adapter is to display uh the data we give it the data and then it do that the logic of displaying it separately okay so this adapter you're going to call it what a class of list adapter and then be a list basic adapter okay list list basic adapter you can call it any name okay so after doing that the next thing you're going to do in that adapter so that adapter is going to have items okay so the items of what it will be displaying so you're going to put your list and then say items and then say list of people so it will be expecting a what a list of people okay so that's the first thing because it's going to display that data so it will be expecting the, the data of people then the next thing um it's going to be expecting the list style so list style is going to be the list user interfaces okay so item style so it's going to be like a an a single item okay or a single item of a what of a, of a list so this item tile i i already have it okay i hope you have it too so if i press cotton and i click on it it's just a user interface that i created only one time and you can use it to do what to display different kind of items i hope you have it okay i hope you have it let me see where it is if i share this Okay, we can create our own let's create a new one here so the item tile is now the user interface itself so going to be another list of items that's going to be displaying okay so let's go ahead and create now the item tile here okay so item tile is going to be uh, now the user interface itself okay so it's going to be a separate class here it's going to be a stateless widget so let's come here and press uh, and create what called stateless widget and call it what item tile. You know not create a stateless widget. You just write STLS, okay? And then press enter. Then put the name of that. So it's going to be a stateless widget, and it's going to be called item tile, okay? So you see, this is the item tile. So we have two classes: one for people that's coming from outside, and then we have a list of item tiles, which is this one. And it's going to be this one okay so there are two classes here so after doing that so we are doing this thing one time and then the rest of the classes maybe we'll be duplicating it so that we should not repeat ourselves so be very attentive so that and make sure that you understand so we are here we have created the, the list of item and also created the class of item tile uh -huh. so the next thing we're going to do we're going to create a constructor a constructor is a function that must be called when this list is what is initial is initialized now the constructor must be having the same name what uh, the same name as a what as a list so in this constructor i'm just going to say list style okay so list style as you see here and then an open bracket so i put the thing that must be provided to list be, to this uh, adapter for the what for the list for this for this list list adapter to display so i say they must provide me they must provide me the items okay and then the next thing that they must provide me they must provide me the click listener function or the function that i should call when a user clicks on a what on, an, on a single item okay so we have to create now that function also so we can come here and just simply write function and then put on click okay so someone will be able to provide these two things in order to initialize this what this class all right so you can open curl bracket like this in case you want to do some things when when this when uh, when this uh, list item i mean when this list builder is created so immediately when it is created okay so after doing that so we're going to put here some logic um that will be done when it is created so you see what i'm doing here i'm just getting these items and i look through them so when i look through them so when i look through them i'm creating a, i'm putting the data into this item style okay so it's a place where i'm let me let me repeat this again so you can understand so this list basic adapter is a what is a constructor a constructor means a function that must be called when a class is being initiated okay 
So if you want to do something immediately when that class is initiated, you open it here. So if you want someone to provide you or whatever function that's going to call this one to provide you with to provide you with the content uh, that you need in order that class to operate, you pass them through the what? name of the constructor. Okay? So to create a constructor is just a function which has exact name as the what? as the class. So this this constructor will be called immediately when uh, this list is being created or this this adapter is being created. So if this adapter is being created immediately once you receive this data. I now need to create now the user interfaces. Remember, they have given us the data of items and they have given us the function that we should call when something is being clicked on. So I now need to create now the user interfaces that should be displayed on the screen. However, I'll show you another different algorithm that is uh, less complex than this one eh? in the next video not like too much complex like this okay so i want to do what i want to go ahead and uh, create the what on uh, click item i mean i want to create now the single item for these eh? so what i'm going to do i'm going to do what i'm going to loop okay i'm going to loop through these items as i'm creating a list of what of widgets that i should be uh, displayed all right so i'll go ahead and loop so this is a loop this is a loop of these items okay i look through them and then i say i plus plus okay so i can get the id then i say items dot add so i'm adding this list style you know this list style is nothing but our what but our user interface okay it is nothing but the user interface that is going to display the data so i'll pass the index or the item that the index or the position where that item is and I also pass the object, which is the items, and I pass the item, it's the item position, okay? So this is the, 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 the object or the data object, and then I also pass on click listener. Now you see, I'm calling this constructor, it is uh, giving me a warning. Why? Because in this list style, we just created it, we did not put a constructor. So I'm going to give it a constructor that is going to accept the index, going to accept the object, which is the item that should be displayed, a single item. And also it's going to accept the what? The on click listener. So it's the constructor that we must put here. But you see this constructor that we put here, it does not accept anything. That's why you're seeing the what? The warnings. So I'm going to come here to our user interface here. And then we put that constructor that's going to accept those things. So you see the first thing that's going to accept. Okay. So this item or single item, it is going to need a what? Um, a, a, an object that is going to display or a single object that should be displaying which is going to be a class of what of people okay then um it's going to need the the index okay so that we should be able to know where someone really clicked okay so i'll just go ahead and put here another variable here called index and then after i'm going to need put a function so this function is a way how you can pass function into another what into another um another function okay so we are going to accept um uh, an object of a person i'm going to accept the index i'm going to accept the what the function of on click so i'll call this function on click when someone clicks on it on when someone clicks on an item all right okay so after doing that let's go now ahead and create the constructor of this particular what of this particular class of this particular item type the one that will be called immediately when it is being created when it is being created okay so our constructor is going just to accept uh the index so i can just simply put uh this that index so this index will be initialized automatically okay so if you want to make them in form of uh, the names to accept the names so you can just simply put here curl bracket okay so the first thing that we're going to accept is the key. So you go ahead and put um, uh, something like this key and then key. Then go ahead and put required. So the next, the first thing that's going to require is going to require the what? Uh, the index. Okay. So I put this dot what dot index dot index. So the the item position. Eh? It's going to require this dot what dot object and then this dot what dot on uh, required uh, this dot what dot on click method 
right so that is the constructor of this particular user interface okay this is the constructor of this particular user interface all right so here i can just simply return text in this build uh, maybe i can say single item and then i maybe pass here the word the index okay so it means that for someone to call this uh, on build he must provide this information that's why you see here when i'm looping i'm providing the index i'm providing the object i'm providing the on click however you can provide as many as possible or you can even provide less it's just up to you so you can pause the video and see how i've designed that what that adapter that is the core skeleton of it all right so it means that this adapter at this point we can use it so let's go ahead and just use it as the way it is and uh, now we'll come back and now we'll design this what this is the, this interface so to use it we we'll just simply copy the name list basic adapter and then we go to our screen which is this one okay and then here we'll open the bracket okay so you know what this will import it but now we know this will have to provide some data for it to do what operate so we press cut and click so the first thing that is going to accept is going to accept the items and then on click function okay so it's going to accept the what the items so of people the list of people so i first put this dot what dot items okay that's the first thing that's going to accept so the next thing is going to accept on click listener the function so you have to pass the function that should be called when someone clicks on what when someone clicks on a single item so we are going to create our function here that should be able to be called that we can pass here okay so let's go ahead and create that function okay so i'll just simply come and put this function here i'll call this function on item click and it's going to accept the index and also the object that the person has clicked on okay it's going to accept the index i call it on item click just a function on item click it's going to accept the index and then the object so in this function when someone clicks on it i create a toast i hope you have this toast uh, method in your utils class that i shared with you if you don't have it you can as well print just put something in the console okay so i'm going to just simply display the object dot name and then just to confirm that i can now access the item that someone has clicked on so if i want i can even navigate to the next page so this is a good architecture that uh, things are organized everything is separate in its respective place that is the what the on item click so i'm going to come here and pass this on item click by putting this dot what on item click let's go ahead and remove this function open okay and then after i have to call uh, dot get what dot get view okay dot get view so dot get view is going to be our method now that is going to do what to be responsible for getting back for returning back the what the content in the list okay so i'll come and call it here but you know you have not built it okay i'll come and call it here but you have not built it so let's go ahead and build it okay so we'll come here to our list adapter i'm going to add now one one function here a static function that is going to be responsible for merging the data and the widgets and then return back the widget as a list builder okay so let's go ahead and create that function however in the next video i'm going to in the next example i'm going to show you the simple way how you can do this though this one is the most organized way okay so we're going to have here a function called what uh get view okay so this get view is going to return the container it's going to return the container now here that's going to display okay it's going to return the container Okay. Now this container is going to have a child and that child is going to be now the what? The list dot builder. Okay? And I'm going to explain this. Eh? So go ahead and put the child of this container to be list dot builder which is going to take the context 
and then the index then uh it's going to take the what the item style okay so this item tiles is the is the this item that we have just built here and then here we pass the items dot count the item style dot count so the number of tiles that we have here and then put their length then you can put some padding okay some padding around it so this is the one now that's going to do the magic of merging the data with the what with the user interface so you can pause the video and see how it is this is just nothing but a list what a list builder so now if you come here let's keep anything I'd imported the wrong list. All right, so you see, it is list basic adapter. Then I pass the items. I pass on click listener and then save the get view. So when I save, you can see I'm able to get single item, single item, single item. So it means that we have successfully generated our what? our list. But the point is, we have not uh, displayed any content there. Let me put my laptop on charge and uh, resume. All right. So at this moment, at this moment, you can see, you can see that we have what items there, but we have not displayed. So let's go ahead and design now this single item widget. Okay. This kind of widget on this item. All right. So where shall we find it? Let's find it in adapt, of course, on this here. Okay. So I'm going to change this one and now start putting the this item itself. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'll come here to our list builder and then we design that items. Okay. So let's go ahead and design the item. The first thing that we're going to have, we're going to have uh, inkwell. Okay. So that when someone clicks on it, you should be able to call the item. So let's go ahead and put inkwell. I've never started with inkwell. Inkwell. So it's going to have a child, and then it's going to have on what? On tap listener. So when someone clicks on an, on this item, I want now to call uh, the what? The function that we passed. Okay. So on tap listener, when someone clicks on it, I now call this what? On click. So I call on click, and then we pass the object. We pass the object that someone has clicked on. We get it, eh? Okay. Just repetition. All right, they're the same. Okay, so after doing that, now the next thing that we're going to do, we're going now to, we're designing this a single item. We just design a single item, then it will be possible for all. I'm going to put padding for all. So let's go ahead and put... Uh, uh, padding so padding is going to have padding all of I mean padding symmetric of what of five from both sides and then the child here is going to be what a row so let's go ahead and design a row so are we putting the row we are putting a row because this content you can see it is two there is a picture here alongside the what the content next to it okay so I'm putting a row first and then you put the cross axis alignment to start and then the uh, main axis to max. Okay, so let's go ahead and put those parameters to the row. So after doing that, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to put now the children of this row. So we're going to put the children. Uh -huh. So the first child is going to push this image in front here, which is going to be just a container with width of, of, of 20. You can as well use a sized box. Okay, so when you save, you see everything is alright, but nothing is being displayed. Alright, so the next thing is now to display now the image, okay, the image. So I'm going to copy this and explain it. Come and put it here. So you can see, it is now this image, this one, eh. So it's going to be container, and then I put circle, circle image, and then I pass the image, uh, asset image, and I give it width of what? Of 50 and height of 50, and I save. So you see, I'm able to get my what? My pictures. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I hope you can see that. All right. So after doing that, 
we go ahead and uh, now create a, a container that's going to separate this image from the next text okay so let's go ahead and do that so create a container that's going to separate this image from the next text and remember you do these things only one time and you can implement them again and again in different kind of projects all right so after we're going to put expanded that's going to have the column the remaining space okay we're going to give you the column the remaining space so put here expanded so that is very important otherwise you'll see your things are crying as if uh, because of the space if you don't give it expanded so the remaining space i'm going to give it what the column so that's why i put the word the expanded so now this is our column we're giving it a column because we're going to have a name on top and the description in bottom so the column we're going to give a cross alignment of what of start and then after we're going to give now the what uh the, the the content that column okay so the first content is going to be our name so come here children and then the first content is going to be the name so i'm going to go ahead and import this okay so this is a style of a title so you can style this name to what to a title so go ahead and put the title style and then put the font weight to normal i've already explained this how we import it so if you save you'll have at least the name there on top okay you'll have the name there that's beautiful then lastly we go ahead and put the what the container that's going to separate that name from the from the description all right then after we go ahead and put uh the text or the details or a short roller m that's going to give now the details that container right so this is my string constants okay just say a random lorem ipsum then you'll have that container there then that's beautiful then after we put some some what some containers going to have 15 sp space okay of height of 15 after that did lorem ipsum put a container of height 15 and then after we we'll go ahead and put a divider that's going to divide that content from the next one okay so let's go ahead and put a divider that's going to be a thin line and give it a height of zero so when i save you'll see i have that divider boom you have such kind of a beautiful what of a beautiful list and that's how you can approach it step by step as i've shown you i hope you've understood uh, i hope i was <laughs> too fast but if i'm too fast you can pause the video uh you can pause the video and follow along so when you click on an item i'll be able to do what to toast but this emulator does not toast it but you can put something in the con in the con in the console to be able to see that you have clicked on what on a certain item okay so that is how you do what that is how uh let me put here uh, uh here on click let me just uh, put this item in the console so i just simply say uh, print and then i put the name so if i come to the console and i click right something is not right they're saying what here okay you get a function this one that is skipped click item and then we'll be calling it and then it will be passing the, the data i think it's supposed to pass also the index okay yeah i think if you come here if you see here here in front eh? originally sorry if you come here to Sorry. if you come here to our list basic our only click function which is this one it accepts the index and the people and the person object but here we're passing only the person object so we are doing it wrong so we have to pass here index and the person object as it promised so i hope here you should be able to do what to get it you see i'm able to get it eh? so you see that is it so as you can see i've already launched the application this is the list that we designed the previous lecture so if you didn't watch the previous lecture i recommend you to watch the previous video so you can be on the same level with us okay so it's what you designed the previous video so what you're going to do right now we are going to go to our main screen here and add the what add this sectioned what sectioned lists here 
okay so let's go ahead and uh, navigate to our mains route or the main screen and then in here we're going to duplicate and add what you call section lists okay so section lists so in this section lists is where we're going to have now the list of uh, sections okay so as i've told you we're going to duplicate the list that we already have instead of us creating another fresh thing we're just going to duplicate this one as you get that experience of, of the power of the, of the power of knowledge of how to use your own code and you're going to see how it is made very much effective it took us 40 minutes to design this so let us see how it can take us to replicate it and modify it okay and that's the power of mobile application designing or, pro or the power of programming so what i'm going to do i'm going to press all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to press control and i go to uh, uh this list basic screen okay press control and click on it this is the screen i'm going just to duplicate it this is the one so i'm going to call this one list what list section or section D. okay so i'll go ahead and press alt and enter to rename okay so i'll just copy and this name of this screen press control i mean copy it and then press control and press alt and enter so i can be able to rename the whole of it okay so i can call this one list section instead of basic section so i can call it maybe screen okay so it can be list section screen okay i can come and change here to section d list the title so after doing that i'm going to copy uh, this list section the screen and put it in the what in the main controller so or in the main row so i can be able to be navigating to there so i'll copy that name and then come here then come to a main route which is this one and then change this one to list section the screen and press a latin edit to import it so no audio oh sorry all right so i hope you can hear me now so I have just done what I've just duplicated the other links uh, section and then after duplicating it I did what I did um, I just duplicate the other section and then after I mean another screen after duplicating it I just uh, created the second section you'll watch in the video what I've done okay so this is the same section but different classes you can see here we have now two classes okay We have two classes one's called section list and one's called basic list they are the same exactly but only this one has a different name of the class and has a different title but they're exactly the same okay so i've just come and import this one this section list this class here i've come and put it here on the main menu so that's how much be able to click there and they go to that list so now when you click when you click on this section list you're able to do what to go to the section list Okay, when I go back, I click here, I'm able to see, go to the basic list. So let's go to the section list. So the section list is exactly the same, but the difference is, is the adapter. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to duplicate the adapter because almost the, the logic is the same. As you can see here, the logic is the same, but the only thing, this one has section. So we're going to duplicate the adapter of the section list and or the adapter of basic list and create it, and it's same adapter, but section list. And then you go ahead and add these small changes that this one will have what a logic of sections all right so after doing that let's see what we're going to do next we're going to go ahead and come here to list section adapter Okay, 
so let's go ahead and uh, duplicate the adapter because what makes them the same is just the what the adapter so we are going to duplicate the adapter of uh, basic and then create a one for the what for the section so I'll just simply come here the list section user screen which is this one okay then I press alt and press control I may press control and click on it take me to this basic adapter you saw how we designed this adapter I hope you still remember so we are going to go ahead and duplicate it and then call this one list list what list section adapter that's the name of what of our adapter list section adapter all right so i'll go ahead and rename the name of this adapter so i'll just simply press here ctrl f i copy this name separate ctrl f and then press alt and enter so i can re multi rename and then i press there the new name which is list section adapter okay so that's the new new class of our what of our section adapter so let's go ahead and implement this adapter on our what on our screen so i'll come to our list section screen instead of having list basic adapter i'm going to put what list section adapter okay so that is what we have now right now okay now we, we are fetching this data from that from the list section so this list section adapter is the one that we're going to modify okay so let me show you the changes that we have in the section adapter that are created before and then we implement them in this one so in this list section adapter um the main section here so you have uh, items same items same function okay same on click method okay and then same index so here we are adding uh, the items okay Show you this clearly. Can't explain it clearly so I can understand. Share here. Section. I just want to modify the one that we have without creating it from scratch. Right. I'll take it step by step. So this is our uh, list section screen. Where is it? I'll take you for the screen first, so it shouldn't confuse you. All right, let me close everything and then I close. I explain everything. I don't want to confuse you. So this is our. Let me close everything. All right, so go to our main route. This is the main route. And then we go to our list section, which is this one, the list section screen. Okay, so let me also take you there step by step. So list section screen, come to our list section. Okay, so we begin with adding there the data. Okay, so begin with by adding there the data. So we are we get the context. Okay, after getting the context, we get the list of people. Okay, we get the list of people. We already have the list of people. Okay, after getting the list of people, we add there some more people. 
we add there some more people we already have this okay after adding there some more people maybe you can shuffle if you want then the next thing you have uh you can select i mean you can create the what the section count okay and then the section indexes okay so that we should be able to add these sections like the way you see here so this can be your different kind of logic okay so let's go ahead and create those two sections so i'll come here after adding um the items i'm going to have two variables here one is called section count another one is called section index okay so we have those ones okay so after you're going to create uh, what we call get months we're going to get the months okay so this is also in the dummy data so these are, are the months okay like you can have january february march up to uh december okay this day is a is a is a is a generator that will generate for you the what the months okay so we get the months and then put them in this variable called months and it's just a string that's had these months okay then after doing that the next thing that i'm going to do we're going to do what we're going to loop okay we're going to look into those months and you divide the list by two i mean by 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 six so every time after six items you should be able to do what to add there a single month okay that's what you're going to do so you create that what we create that uh, uh method i mean you create that that that, that what that, that 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 section which is going to be for rich loop okay and then you say i is less than the items length divided by six so it's going to divide it by what by six times and then say i plus plus so every time it loops we get items dot insert so this item dot insert is a what it is just a a, a flatter function i mean it's, it's a dot function so every after six every after what every after six items you see it's going to loop uh, six times we're going to divide these items and divide them by six times so every after six sections okay after after six section is going to insert and what's going to insert there in that item is going to insert there so again say after after this section count which is uh, going to be dividing by five by six is going to insert in that section is going to insert new and then you say people dot section so this people dot section is a method that is already in the what in the in our class of, of section let me show it to you it is here i mean the, in the class of people it is here it is just a method or a constructor that is taking the name and then it is taking the section this is the second constructor see here we have two constructors one constructor is of a pub of a people the normal one that will take the person's information then the second constructor is the one of a section so if you want to create a section we just simply say people dot what the section you pass the name of a section and then you set the section to be true so this is what we are doing here so we say every after six items it should go ahead and insert a people dot section then it pass the the what the month name you see it passed the month name and then it says it is a section to be true okay then after you say section and then you say the section plus five so you should be able to do what to add other five steps and then you say section id plus plus so don't mind about this this is just a generation of what of data it is just generation of what of data then after doing that it means that we'll have inserted a section in every what in every after six what six items okay so after doing that of course you're going to get uh, an error in case you don't want if you in case you don't change check if an item is a section for example you want to try to find uh, an image an image will be null if you don't check if an item is a what is a section so it means that in this adapter we're going to be carefully checking if an item is a section and we display the relevant what the relevant information uh, the relevant section user interface other than just go ahead and display things without checking as how it was doing so after generating the data okay this is just nothing but what but data in your what in your in your in your dummy data okay so let's go ahead and see the list section adapter it's going to be exactly the same but only here we are checking we're going to be so here we're coming here we, we create the, the the items all right we create the items after creating the items add them there okay so here we create the add what the so here we create the on click listener 
and then after we create the add item so add item we just be passing on the click and then i want to show you who are going to check if the section okay so here on build okay here on the widget let me show you so let's go to the list section adapter here when you're displaying here 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 exactly here this is where we're going to first check is this item a section so if it is a section you have to return a relevant what a relevant widget which is going to be padding and uh, okay let me show you so we're going to check before we just before we return the ink well on top and then display the images we're just going to come here and check if is what if is what if if is a section so i'm going to say if object is section okay so if it is true we are going to just return our what our section user interface okay so by doing like this we'll be able to have the section you see so in say if it is a section you're going to return some padding so we're going to return padding okay and then you're going to return edge inserts of symmetric vertical 15 and horizontal 15 18 okay and then we're going to give this padding a child of a text like this so by doing like that this is just a you can pause the video and see it so i'll check if it is a section i just return if it is not a section then i put the everything with the click listener so by doing like this we'll have achieved uh what we wanted so you can see it did not take us even more than what more than 10 minutes to come up with something that we did in more in 40 minutes you see some that is complex that so that's it that's what you call uh, reusing your code once you get that experience, then it will be very simple for you to what? To reuse your code. Okay? You see, I just copy and duplicate, and we have exactly the same results. So that's how you can display something with uh, different sections, you see? You have different months with different users separated in them. So that's how you do the section list. Okay? So you can pause the video and follow step by step and make sure that you understand. Okay? Don't worry about the data generation because uh, this is just them that you're going to do the real world data. We'll have to find another separate way of how we can get the data on our system and then you're able to do what? To generate it. Okay? I hope you can see that. It's beautiful. Okay? All right. So let's proceed. Okay, let's proceed. All right. So right now we're going to look at another thing. So I've finished the section list. Let us go ahead and look at how we can do the expanded list. Okay, the expanded list where so we can have something and expand, and then you see the details. All right, let's go ahead and do that expanded list. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So, what we're going to do again, we're going to reuse our what our first basic list. In from there, instead of just displaying the whole name, we're going to put the logic of someone being able to do what to expand an item and then we achieve something like this okay this is what we're going to do right now so this is what we're going to do right now let's go ahead and implement that let's go ahead and implement that all right yeah okay so let's go ahead and do that so the first thing we're going to do we're going to uh add uh we're going to duplicate our basic list this basic list we're going to duplicate it so we should have expanded what expanded list so we'll come to our basic list screen, which is going to be here under screens, the basic list, which is here. Okay, so I'll copy it and then paste it. I'm going to call it list expand or expanded. List expanded, all right? Okay, so I'm going to come here. So this is our new uh, screen. So I'm going to come here, copy this, and then press Alt and Enter. And then instead of having the word basic, I'm going to put here list expanded screen like this. Okay, so this one is going to be having the logic of what of expanded. 
and then I'm going to come here and change the title to expanded okay so after doing that we're going to add this expanded list to our what to our main screen so I'll come back here and then come to our main route which is this one and then I'm going to duplicate this so I'm going to call this one expanded and we'll call this expanded lists or oh, list okay so when someone clicks here you should be able to get to see expanded list or expand list so we are where there we are so when i click there i'm able to see expand list now we're going to do the whole logic of the adapter uh in a way that this list should be what should be expanded so you can watch the previous lecture where we discussed how to create this list from scratch so this one is an ex a, a what an uh, an extension of the previous lecture okay and i've shown you how you can duplicate things so let's go ahead and proceed to expand this screen which is this one so the data generation and everything is going to be exactly the same the only difference is going to be in the what in the adapter so let's go ahead and do that so I'll come here to list expanded so I can just simply come to our expanded adapter and to get here the adapter and expand here all right so we're going to go through this adapter step by step and I show you how can implement the expand all right so let's go ahead and create our second adapter so this is the, the basic adapter i'm going to go to it and duplicate it and so that we can create what the expand adapter so I'll press ctrl and click on it so i can reach that adapter of basic so i'm going to copy this adapter and create list expand adapter all right so after doing that, press Ctrl F, Alt and Enter, and then we'll have list expand what? Alexander adapter. So let's go ahead and implement this list expand adapter in this list expanded uh, screen. This is a list expanded screen. You can see it here. Um, then I'll go ahead and put here, and then press Alt and Enter so it can be imported. There we go. So it has been imported. Now, what's remaining is just adding that logic for this single item to be expanded. So, I'll press Ctrl and click on it, okay, to go to the adapter. So, this is our adapter for the expanding. So, the whole logic is here in the widget, okay, in this widget. So, in this widget, instead of just right, returning back, let us go ahead and, and should we destroy the whole widget or we can just see the very, okay, let's destroy the whole widget and redesign the widget that will be having ability to expand okay okay let's go ahead and destroy the widget so i'll come here to our widget remove everything just simply text item so there we go okay so i'm going to remove everything and then we start designing one which has an expanded feature so the first thing we're going to put we're going to return a column because we're going to have this item that will be responsible for expanding so we're going to return a column so return column and put going to have children so the first child is going to be expansion tile so expansion tile is a flutter widget okay and then this expansion tile it will take what you call title okay so the title is the let me put this one here. The title is what you want to show at first. So let's go ahead and put the title. So the title is going to be the name of a person, right? And then we it's going to be a widget of the name of a person to the text, and also uh, we style it in this way. So by doing like this, you'll see we'll have the item with the what with the title so flutter gives you that beautiful thing you can see hope you can see that okay so this expand tile it has another item called uh leading 
so leading is an item that you want to display here at beginning so at beginning we just need to display the what the image of the person okay so this can be your different kind of user interface so at leading you display the what the image you see this you know how to display the image have been displaying it so by doing like that you'll have that beautiful thing hope you can see that so you see so now we need to put now the content that should be toggled expand and collapse okay so we go ahead and pass the key the key is going to be make it to is the one that will make this item to be unique so the key is going to be index because our index is unique okay so that is going to be our key all right now after passing the key the next thing we're going to pass is now the what uh the children the children is the content in the expansion that will be expanded so you can pass their multiple children that should be hidden and 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 and, and displayed when uh someone clicks on the expand feature so we're going to pass here children so you can come here and press children so inside this children is going to we are going to put a what a lorem so i just copy this and then just put the lorem ipsum eh? so come here and you can see for the colors so this i just give the container a background color of gray so it should be a little bit different from the background and then i import my what my lorem ipsum and i style it like this okay i hope you can see that so i save and there we go boom see i'm able to expand and i see the content that is so beautiful i'm able to collapse i'm able to expand i'm able to collapse I'm able to collapse. that is so so beautiful i hope you can see that okay i hope you can see that that is so beautiful isn't it it is beautiful okay so that is nice so go ahead and challenge yourself and do it all right so let's go ahead so that's the power of reusing your code imagine you have done something twice compared to the other first video where we originally created the code and that's the power of having the knowledge and experience once you have knowledge and experience you will keep on becoming like very very powerful things that people can do in five days for you able to do them in two hours but to get that knowledge and experience it needs you time and practice and resilience in order to reach that level okay so invest your time don't regret you'll definitely reach that level because you can imagine if you didn't know this kind of technique before we started the video but right now if you try it like three times you'll know this technique it will go in your head and it will go in your head forever when we see when we reach the level of integrating now with the uh, web api you will see that you put all these things together and be able to come up with amazing things and then you start earning money or making revenue on your own using your own brain so i hope you've understood how we can do that and how it is uh, achievable all right so try it out okay try it out uh, even though it is challenging but you've seen i've successfully achieved it so it means that you can also do what achieve it all right let's do the next thing and having 10 minutes we can of course achieve the next item on the agenda so we are going to see we have finished expand we're going to see how you can do a draggable list something like this where I can drag okay i can drag an item and rearrange it let's say that you have a music player application and you want users maybe to organize their playlist by just drag and drop so we're going to see how we can do something like this okay what can do the draggable list all right let's go and do this let's just do this right now okay let's just do this okay so we're going to duplicate again our main list view and just we'll do what we'll modify the what the adapter okay so let's go ahead and do that okay let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and do that right, so the first thing you're going to create um an item on the menu okay here where i can be able to do what to drag an item okay Let's go ahead and do that so i come here to our main menu
any routes here um i'm going to come here and call this one draggable list Dragable list, sorry. I have to change this so just stuffing it with a post conversation. All right, okay, so we're going to add the draggable list here, copy it, then put here uh, draggable. Okay, there we go. A draggable list. Let's go ahead and duplicate our what? Our our basic list. So this is our basic list. Okay, this basic list. I'm gonna just duplicate it. So you see how we earn money. You do something only one time, and then the rest of your life you just duplicate and modify, and you collect money like nothing. So you just need this knowledge. A list list draggable. Okay, so I'll just write and control F. I'll turn and say list draggable. I hope that's the spelling. And then turn this to drag. I'll just come and see what the spelling I use. This draggable screen, and then we come here and put here. Okay, so after doing that, now we're going to add this screen into our what? Into our user interface. So that's the draggable list. Let's put on top there. There you go. So if someone clicks on this, should be taken to the what? The draggable list item. Okay. So now we are going to do the logic of draggable list adapter. So the only thing we are going to do what is to design, is to change the adapter. Okay. So everything is the same, but just changing the what? The adapter. Okay, we are here, right? So this is the draggable list screen. I'm going to come to its adapter. Press control and, and click on it so you can be able to navigate to the adapter. This is the adapter. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate this adapter. Okay, so the basic adapter, this one here, and then I duplicate it. I'm going to call it list draggable adapter and then press come and copy this name control F alt and enter to duplicate it okay so after doing that we come and register this adapter into the draggable draggable list here press alt and enter so it can be imported right so now after 
uh, we're going now to do the logic of what of the drag and dropping i mean the dragging and drag and dropping in the what in our list okay so uh let's go ahead and do it step by step okay so we're going to begin from the screen or from the user interface okay Okay, so here we are. So the first thing that we do, we get the items. We already know how to get these items. Okay, we get the items. Okay, but this the difference here right now. We don't want our items to be fluctuating every time. So what we're going to do, we're going to get these items only one time and have them fixed there. Okay, so to do this, instead of putting this item in the unviewed, because every time we, we refresh, we need to do to change the items. So we're going to put these items outside the on build and then we're going to put here our what our um, our init state so in this init state is where we can add more items here at this level you may not shuffle if you want the items to be the same okay so that's the difference so the our item will be kind of static eh? okay so that's the first thing that we've done so after doing this the next thing that we're going to do we're going to initialize the context okay okay the next thing that we're going to do now is now to add the adapter the adapter is added and then uh, we're going to write the function called on reorder so on reorder is going to be responsible of doing what of uh, updating the status that we have finished ordering the what the item you update the status so it's going to be a function that's going to be implemented here that will be calling to update the list after you have ordered okay because the state you cannot access from the other side of the adapter so we we'll go ahead and create this function call it on reorder you can call it anything eh, that you're going to be passing to our adapter here so instead of passing on one click we can pass on what on reorder right you pass on reorder so when someone we uh are reordering after reordering from the other side let's say that after, after i've reordered uh, this function it's it's its purpose would be just do it to set status or to update the status okay set state so that the two things that we are taking we're taking so if you want you can pass even multiple function you can pass the on click you can pass as many as you want but here i'm just passing one that after someone has finished ordering I should do what I should set state. I should update state from this side of the what of the user interface. All right, so aha, uh -huh, so let's go ahead and now redesign the, the adapter. So instead of having here on uh, on click, let's go ahead to uh, adapter. So instead of having here on click, we're going to change this one to on reorder. You can call it anything. Eh? So let me go ahead and change this one to what to on reorder instead of on click. So just come here and create our function on reorder so instead of having on click i'm going to put here on reorder so this this dot on reorder so it will be called every time we do what we finish reordering okay then after doing that then we go ahead and do what and create this uh, get view uh method this get view method is uh going to be a little bit different okay so let us first remove these warnings So we remove this what this builder so it's just initialize the items and the reorder okay so after doing these things the next thing that we're going to do now is to return now uh the what the the the, the list that is that is reordered that can be reordered okay so i'm going to remove this get widget you know this get item widget is the one that is responsible for returning back the items eh? So I've removed it. I'm going to show you how can we design something that can be reordered. So to design something that can be reordered, we have to return back this what, this method called re 
reorderable list view. So instead of returning what? Uh, list view builder, we're going to return a method called reorderable list view. Okay? So let's go ahead and return reorderable list view. Then it must take children. Okay, so we have to put the function that should be called when you reorder. So it's our function here. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a function that should be do the logic when item is when the when the items are being reordered. Okay. So I put it here. It's going to be called re on reorder. So it's going to take the index, the old index, or the position, the old position of an item where it was, and the new position. Let me repeat. This reorder, the orderable list view, it will go ahead. When 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 someone finishes reordering an item, it will go ahead. It will go ahead and give you the old position and the new position of what of uh, new index. That's what it will give you. Okay. So we check if the position is not the same. We go ahead and change remove item where it was, and then after removing it, we insert it to the what to the new index. We remove it to its old index and we say we insert it in a what in its new index. And then after we call this what this reorder function, which is going to call the front function in the in the in the screen to update the what the status. I repeat, this reorder function will be called when a user finishes reordering, and it will give you the new index, the old the the, the, the old index and the new index. So what we do, we delete we we first get the old index and put it somewhere. After putting it somewhere. We go ahead and remove the uh, we remove the index where it was, I mean the, the the item where it was after removing it and we insert it in a what in a new position and then after we say this reorder we call the reorder function that they are, uh, that was passed here that the list should be should be updated. So here we we'll finish the 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 the, the screen the reorder. So the next that we're going to take it is now going to take the what the the scroll direction this is optional we can say the scroll direction should be uh, vertical then the next thing we're going to take is going to take now the what the children or the items so this children is going to we are going to generate the what the list so children children we are going to put now the dynamic list it's going to be list generate list dot what dot generate and then here we pass the length of the list as the first parameter and then here it's going to loop as it is doing what as it is the querying the index okay so inside this one we're just going to do what remove this and put a function like this or in this function is we're going to return the what the user interface okay item tile so we're going to create our heart our item tile or you can call it maybe item widget or item user interface we're going to create our own let's go ahead and remove the one that we have here we're going to create a fresh one okay so let's go ahead and create a fresh one mm -hmm. so come here and create now this is the interface eh? So it's going to be a class that's going to be stateless widget that we're going to call item tile as you can see here okay so it has redesigned that item tile item tile is going to take these things like the way it was taking the previous time these basic items okay after that it's going to take a constant and the constructor so the constructor is going to take the what the main key and that's going to take the index and the object so this is the user interface itself okay then in the build we're going to return a what we're going to return a column in here we're going to return a what a column okay 
and then this column is going to take children okay so we're going to return list tile list tile you know it it's a flutter widget list tile uh, that's going to have a what it's going to have a, a key so a key is very important so this list tile give it a key remove this constant all right you take a key uh, so the key will help to uniquely identify the what the item okay so the next thing is going to take a what a leading which is going to be an, our image okay go ahead and put the leading of our image and then the next thing is going to take the title which is going to be our text okay and then the next thing is going to take now the the trailing and it's going to be the item that will be dragging okay dragging yeah the trail the tail so this one is going to just be an icon that someone will be able to drag so the old item will be able to do what to be draggable if someone uh perform the draggable watch the draggable uh, gesture so this is our simple what, or user interface and then we turn maybe a divider after the what after this list tile so it can be able to be divided you understand so you can pause the video and look at that user interface okay i think that's all so when you save everything should be okay so when i move you know the emulator has a you see the first long press and then you move you see i can move i can adapt okay you see i can able to rearrange my items so you can think of an idea where you may need to do what to rearrange your items and then you'll be able to do what to implement it accordingly so you can pause the video and look at how we've approached it step by step uh, in simple terms the user interface in the in this side the front of a list is just almost the same the only thing that we just removed is the on click however you can add also on click you can be creative and add on click so you don't change anything but you have also the on click so this is reorder that will be called every time that someone does what someone create an order so you can use this brain this not and uh, today we're going to look at um, how you can create a uh, swipe list items a list item where you can swipe like this an item and also we'll go ahead and create how we can create multi select items like how you can be able to select multiple items like these ones and if time allows we'll go ahead and create um news list item where you can have such kind of what such kind of uh, news user interface item then you will go ahead and challenge yourself by creating uh, another uh, your uh, your own like this one with what in a dark mode so without wasting much time let's go ahead and begin with our what with our draggable uh, list user interface all right so this variable list it resembles much like our what our uh, what our um, this swi swiping list swipe list is it, it resembles much like our what our draggable list so what we're going to do we're going to use the power of uh, duplicating the code that you already have so you should be able to achieve uh, the swipe uh, feature so we are going to duplicate our what our draggable list view that we did in the previous video and then we rebuild on that to achieve this swiping uh, list view 
okay so let's go ahead and do it so the first thing this is the one that we did in the previous video where someone could be able to do it arrange an item so the first thing that we're going to begin with we're going to begin with the uh, what with um come here we're going to begin by going to our user interface i mean to our main menu so i'll collapse everything and then i go to our main menu our main route so i'll come here to route main route Okay, our menu route here and we're going to put swipe list so i'll come and duplicate this guy and put swipe lists all right then after having that we're going to create now uh, the we're going to duplicate the draggable list screen and then we change it to swipe list so I'll press cotton and click to the draggable list screen and we go there. This screen, I'm going to change it, copy and paste and call this one a eh? swipe. All right, so after doing that, press alt and enter and call this one swipe screen. Then after doing that, I, I go ahead and change the title to swipe swipe list item something like that after doing that we're going to get this screen and add it to the what to our main menu connect it there so i'll come here and change this class to swipe screen and then i import it then after saving now when someone clicks here he's taken to what to a swipe list what swipe list item so you know it is really a draggable what list but what you're going to do right now is to turn it into a what into a swipe list item okay all right let's go ahead and do that okay so here we are here we are so we have our adapter okay so i'll go to the swipe list now that we just created this right now this one here and then we're going to go with the one that i had created before and then we compare as we fix it these are the adapters okay so as i told you it looks much more like uh, the draggable one okay so the first thing we're going to follow step by step so i hope you've also duplicated your screen okay the first thing we have the list of items have the list of items and then you initialize these items here and then after you shall these items here so now in this instead of calling uh, uh so everything is exactly the same almost okay because they're the same but here we put on swipe instead of what on on what on reorder so you can put on swipe but you can just just a matter of renaming the functions okay so let's go to f and press alt and enter so here when someone will be swiping a list we want to remove this list from the items okay so we'll be receiving we'll be receiving the what we'll be receiving the index and the list that will that have just been removed okay so this on swipe will accept the index and the object that has been removed okay so after receiving the index we're going to do what we're going to say set state remove at so I say set state remove at so we remove the items at the index that have been brought so this will be called will be sent back will be sending us back the index of the item that has been reduced removed and then maybe we can make a toast and say item x has been dismissed by saying my toast dot item then dismiss has been dismissed and then we put the available what the available yeah so we just put the name and then 
<coughs> and the item that has been dismissed okay so i hope you now understand that all right so after doing that the next thing is now to design the uh swipe list uh what the swipe list adapter so i'll press control here and takes me to the watch the adapter of the draggable i'm going to copy it so you see once you understand how to make these adapters it becomes simple so i'm going to call this one list swipe adapter like this okay list swipe adapter so i'll come here press control f alt and enter and then change this one to list swipe adapter i hope you can see that so after putting list swipe adapter let's go ahead and uh, do it and reconnect it with our main list swipe okay so i remove this you see this is the list swipe i remove this adapter and i put the new adapter that i've just created and i import it okay and then i press control to go back to it so in this adapter we're going to do it to reorganize it so that it can give us what you need to achieve so go to adapter here so the first adapter it will receive the items of people it receives the item of people it receives the on swipe function okay like when an item is swiped it also receive here instead of reorder we put on swipe function you can remove even this list item we no longer need it okay so you put here on swipe so like after it, it has been swiped okay so the two things that you receive to receive an item i mean the the list of items and the what and the list of when it is swiped then the get view it is going to generate <coughs> okay it's going to generate the list builder okay so it's going to be uh, uh it's going to return back so let's modify this get view let me copy this and then i explain it so our get view this time is not going to just return the what um that drag but so i'm going to modify this get list view so it's going to return a list builder that is going to have uh that's going to accept the index okay and also the item passes the index and then it passes the on swipe okay so we're going to create a what our item tile or a single item user interface okay so let me remove this reorder we no longer need it so i'm going to create this one our item tile so the item tile will accept the index and also the item and also the function of on swipe okay so let's go ahead and create our new on uh, our item tile so i can delete this one if i don't want it can delete it or you can modify it if you want also so i'm going to create a new item tile or the new user interface which is going to be stateless widget that's going to accept the item tile okay so in this item tile we put the thing that's going to accept okay it's going to accept what and what it's going to accept these things it's going to accept the people who's going to be the object and then the index is going to be the index and then the function is going to be on swipe function okay then after we go ahead and put the constructor that will receive these things okay so we put on tile and then you put the index the object and the on swipe so that the three things so this one should stop crying okay then after doing that we go ahead and put and call this on swipe method here so this on swipe method just on on item swipe eh? it will be called and then you call the on swipe and then we on swipe you know what it expects if you still remember it expects the index and the object of that has been swiped okay then after we we'll go ahead and put now the what the, our list view i mean our, our user interface so this user interface is not going to be just like normal we're going to put this user interface called dismissable dismissable is a flutter ui that will help us do what uh to dismiss items okay so i remove whatever was there before okay so the first thing that's going to take is going to take the direction okay so the direction is going to be horizontal so you should be able to, to dismiss horizontally okay the next thing that's going to take is going to take the what the unique id 
is going to be the key and it's going to take just the index and then it attaches the name to make it totally unique okay so after putting the unique id the next thing is going to be the on dismiss so when it is dismissed what do you want to call so i want when it dismisses it call this on swipe method okay it call this what on swipe method so this on swipe method will receive the index that is being dismissed like that pass and it will be calling this on swipe and give the index and the object you can as well call them here in case you don't want to write this repetition you can as well copy this and just put it here it's just the same thing okay all right so the parameters so the next parameter is going to be uh, the background color when it is being dismissed so you can pass a red or anything that you want to show when someone is dismissing it and then another thing is going now to be uh, the content okay of that item so it's going to take the word the child and this content is going to be what column okay so you design now the user interface itself so let's see if I can save. all right so now here in this column is going to take um main access of minimum okay and then after we're going to give it what a padding children padding and give it vertical of 10 okay then we go ahead and give it a row And then after we go and pass these parameters of the row. And then after we we'll go ahead and give uh, children. Alright, so put your container and then you put also the icon or the picture. Of a person and then after you put the spacer okay hope, hope you can see that how to put the spacer we're going now to go ahead and put expanded all the available space and put the name there. hope you can see that okay so after putting the name we're going to put now the icons that will show the swiping Okay, and then after we put the item that's going to separate it from the end, and then we'll have something like that. Then at the end, we're going to put the what? The divider. We at further end of the column. After padding, put the divider that's going to separate it. Then we'll have something like that. So yeah, that's it. I think that's it so you should be able to do what to swipe and then it goes you see so it is that simple you see let me take you through again step by step so we begin from the list what from the list uh, the list uh, screen uh-huh we build our adapter that's going to take two items the content or the items and also the on swipe method this on swipe method will just accept one thing or two things to accept the index of item that has been swiped and then the person just for the the object of the person just to display who who person which person was removed then you put here set state and then you say you should remove the item that has been swapped if it is not if it is if it is there just i put your explanation mark remove at that item and then it should set state it should update the state and then we put here the toast let's say 
this item was what was dismissed then we go ahead and create the adapter the adapter that is going to accept the items and the function of on site okay then we have a view that's going to be a list builder that's going to return a tile of what of uh, what an item tile or a widget an item user interface so this item user interface is going just to be accepting uh, the person or the object of a person the index and also the function that will swipe so the function that received here you pass it here and then here when you're looping in this list this builder you pass the items and then the index to this on time so you return what you call dismissable widget that takes these parameters that you have looked at so it takes till child the child is the user interface that you want to display and then it takes the background the background that should be displayed when someone is dismissing and then takes the on dismissed so on this dismissed you call the on swipe that you received here and give you the index and the object that you've been described so this one will go up to the front side to to update the what the screen okay then it will give you also the direction where it was taken okay so after you go ahead and give this item a key a unique key which is going to be a combination of index and its name and then the dismissal the dismissal uh direction so there are small parameters you just press control and, and uh control and uh, and enter to do what to uh to to, to see these parameter parameters if there is this one of confirm in case you want to maybe show the confirmation dialogue aha uh -huh, there's a uh, cross offset there's dismiss threshold how long it should take the size the on size the on update all those things they are available for you you can go ahead and do it and implement them in case um you want to go ahead i mean in case you want to get advanced technology in this dismiss uh dismissable what widget so you can see that you can see that is very useful user interface that you can implement in your application you see go here i can swipe I remove the users I hope you can see that okay you can swipe and remove as many as possible but because you have uh, so many users so you cannot see that I'm even removing the users but the fact is they're getting removed so that is uh, the on swipe for you uh, go ahead and practice it and make sure that you get enough experience in on swipe all right, so that's it on swipe. Then let's go for our last uh, feature, which is the multi select. I want to show you how you can be able to achieve this multi select what multi select feature. Okay, let's say that you want to be able to select like this and delete items. Okay. a good what good user what good user interfaces all right let's face it uh it's going to take time but we can still face it because it is uh nice for us all okay so go to multi select Create from scratch, I think. Let's create it from scratch. Mal selection. So let's go ahead and add mal selection in our what in our. In our main route let's go ahead and duplicate our basic Screen. So 
so this is my select screen we change the title right you go to our main menu route and then add change this one to multi select screen press control to click to go to it here it is uh, so when I press here you will take us to what to list multi select okay so let's go ahead and uh, design it step by step okay so the first thing I always we'll need dummy data of course Okay, just remove everything in scaffold and start afresh. So since it involves updating of data, let me remove this and I put this on outside the what? The build. Because every time it builds, it's supposed to change the data. So let me just put only single items like this. All right. So that's our scaffold. Okay, we begin. So we come to our scaffold. Okay, I get it. I implemented uh, the state here, the state management, and I've not introduced you to state management using OBA. I mean, using um, OBX. So I will have to teach you these things after I've introduced you to what to state management using GetX and OBX. So at this moment, I will not be able to. I remember that I implemented this one using what using state management. So at this able at this moment. Uh, you'd not be able to understand how to update these states because uh, it is another complete topic on its own. So let me uh, let me teach you these things of um, math selecting after I've done what after I've introduced you to do what to the uh, state management of uh, mobile apps because right now it's not going to help you. It's going just to confuse you. So let's call it a day from here. Uh, I'll organize when you finish these user interfaces. I'll introduce you to the application state management, and when you finish the application state management, that's when you'll come here now to do what to perform this what multi selection. So, what I'm going to give you as a challenge, uh, I want you to go ahead and uh, try this. Try this, okay? Create a list user interface with your own adapter. And then you should be able to do what to display something like this okay something like this that's the challenge that i'll give you and then i also want you to also be able to create something in a dark mode and display something like this so that's the challenge that i'm giving you i'm giving you this one can be even from the basic list all what is needed is just to change what the user interfaces uh so that's it for our list we have learned how to create basic list how to apply create section list how to create expandable list, how to create um, draggable list and swiping list. Then the mass select will be then later. So I want you to challenge yourself by creating um, such kind of a news uh, application list. And also uh, I want you to challenge yourself and create a list in what? In this kind of what? In this kind of uh, dark mode. Okay. I know if you think so hard and use the thing that I've just taught you, you'll be able to achieve these ones. I'll be grateful if you share with me your what your uh, outcomes after you've tried those things then in the next lecture we'll go ahead and look at this variety of menus that i have prepared for you so it's going to be a very very important like different kinds of uh, flutter menus and uh, by the end of the video you'll be able to create such kind of a menu and uh, so many other menus uh, like these ones the draw menu you have to create uh, the email kind of a menu you'll be able to create um, this kind of a uh, light menu you'll be able to create uh, uh, this kind of a draw white menu 
and uh, so many other kinds of menu such as the bottom drawer like this one okay so that's what you're going to do today so we have a lot of things that are going to cover so we don't get too much time we're going to start our timer as you know we always do 40 minutes i believe the timer has already started where is it anyway uh, let me make sure that the timer is counting yep our timer is there uh 40 minutes so it has started counting so let's go straight and start doing our day's business all right so i hope you've been following the previous lectures if you haven't then i recommend you to please uh, follow the previous uh, uh, videos uh if it is your first video and you want to start from here uh, download the project tree of, uh, scratch folder that i've put the link in the description of this video download it and then you start with that project that project will come with the asset files that you'll have to do what to use such as images and dummy data so the remaining things you can add them but uh, the basic thing that you are going to learn like um, i mean the best thing that we're going to use in this system i mean this application such as um, images and the rest they come with that with that project that i've shared in the what in the description of this video all right so that must say let's uh, resume so what i'm going to do we're going to put here the menu icon uh, to show that we are starting the what uh, the menu topics so let me first close everything i'm going to come here to our main route and then come here and duplicate this guy our title let us call it what let us call it a uh, menu and then you can change the icon to uh, menu all right so let me go ahead and put now our first what our first menu is going to be here so the first menu that we're going to look at we're going to look at we're going to create um, a very basic menu oh we're going to create this a simple news menu like this one this is what we're going to create right now okay so let's go ahead and um, and uh, create our first screen so they call it here they called it draw a news menu okay so let's go ahead and create that screen okay so what we'll do we'll come here to the project and then create a fresh screen here category of menus so after creating the category of menus we're going to create a new file there and then i'm going to call it what i'm going to call it um drawer news that okay i can call it menu draw news menu menu draw news menu screen so there we go after we're going to put here what our stateful widget and then paste drawer news menu screen All right i'll go ahead and import the states and then i can remove these ones okay so after doing that so the next thing is you're going to link this screen to our main screen so this is our main screen i want to just put here draw a news menu like this okay so that when someone uh, clicks here it should be taken to the draw news menu screen so when you click there i'm able to see this placeholder all right so let's go ahead and now um start designing our menu let me look at the one that i created for news this one all right so the first thing that we're going to begin with we're going to begin by adding a what um right. we're going to begin by adding a scaffold and then we take it from there all right so let's go to where our scaffold starts from our scaffold starts from here here so let's go ahead and add a scaffold so i'll come here and change this one to scaffold 
right so after adding scaffold we'll have a, a simple user interface let me disable copilot so i can be able to write everything by myself all right so the next thing we're going to add uh, the key so when you're creating a menu it is very important to have there the scaffold key so i'm going to create a variable called scaffold key and then we're going to add it there in our scaffold because it's very important so we're going to come here in this class on top here we create this it's a global key it's a global key and then pass what you call scaffold state and then give it what you call scaffold key and then say global key equals to scaffold state that is very important when you're going to get what dry menus it helps the menu to sync with what with the scaffold itself so here the scaffold we're going to give what we call key and then you put this key that we have just defined so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do let's go back to our scaffold so the next thing we're going to do we're going to put the up bar this up bar the one that you're seeing up here so what we're going to put okay let us first make the background color of the scaffold be white then you're going to put the what the up bar i believe everyone can do the up bar at this level okay so i'll go ahead and put the up bar and make the color of my up bar to be blue or primary dark so there we go okay i hope you can see that all right so after doing that we have put the up bar in our scaffold the next thing that we're going to put we're going to put a drawer so a drawer is the menu that you pull this side okay that's what you call what that's what you call drawer okay so we we'll go ahead and put a drawer so go ahead and put drawer parameter okay so after putting drawer then you go ahead and pass this what this uh draw widget so this draw widget is uh, our menu itself okay so when i save like that you see the, our app bar it was having the back what the back um the back icon but because you have the key and you have integrated with the drawer this back icon will be able to do what to change so you see i now i'm now able to expand and collapse my menu that is so beautiful all right so after finishing do that we're going now to start putting the content in this drawer menu this this drawer menu so since we cannot know how how long the phone is or how big the phone is better put the scroll bar i mean the scroll the scroll view so in case of anything uh, the menu should be scrollable so we're going to come here and put scroll okay i mean sorry and put child and then put what single scroll child child view so it's going to take child and now the child here so we're going to put now the column that will be scrollable so we put here the column and then the column is going to take what children so the children are going to put here we're going to first design this container so you see how it is very simple and beautiful to do what to design a menu so we're going to begin by designing the first container of course you can even do this container separately in its different as widgets so put container we're putting the container uh, the next thing we're going to give it height so we give it height of 140 so we are designing this now right now okay and then after so if i expand let me expand here you'll see we have that one okay then we have given it height of 100 190. Uh, the next thing i'm going to put there the stack you know because of stack i'll be able to do it to have things in the in front of the other okay so that's why you'll be able to have even the background of what of an image that's why i put a stack so let's go ahead and put our stack i mean child of this is going to be stack now the first child of stack is going to be what it's going to be this background image because everything is going to fall in front of it okay so let's go ahead and say the front child of this stack is that image okay which is going to have the width of infinity of height of infinity and then it's going to be fit cover so because this height is already defined so i can as well put here height infinity so this can be your image of your own what of your own choice so when I save, you'll see the image has changed. It can even be that one. So it can be the image of your choice. So I've put the what? Our first image. So since it is stuck, everything that's going to fall is going to come on top of what? Of this image. 
let's go ahead and put our hot our our padding and the, this image circle this one this one that i want to put so i go ahead and put what you call padding and then after putting padding i give it to um let's say edge insert symmetric uh and then i put the vertical of 40 and the horizontal of 14 and then i go ahead and give a, a circular avatar which is going to have a radius of 306 of 36 and then it's going to have the background color of uh, gray of 10 and then I, in this circular avatar i pass now the avatar itself which is going to be the radius of 33 so this one is going to have some separate distance with this one the radius of 33 and then it's going to have what uh, the image of six of the user number six by doing like that you'll have something like that okay hope you can see that just keep anything All right. Okay. So after giving padding, so the next thing we're going to put now, uh, the name. Okay, this name. So if you want to put the name, we're going to align our content to be on bottom, and then do some margin so it can be uh, a little bit on top. Okay. So you're going to put here what you call align. After this padding of that image, you put there align. So align will help us position our content in the stack in any place that we want so we're going to say align bottom left so our content that will be here is going to be the bottom left of the container that is containing it all right so after doing that the next thing we're going to do what we're going to give it uh, padding and uh, say padding so the child of this ally is going to be having uh, padding and then this padding we're going to give it edge inset of symmetric horizontal 20 and vertical uh, 18 so after doing that the next thing we're going to do we're going to put now the columns okay so go ahead and put the child of this padding to be column why putting column i'm putting column because this name is on top of this one so you're going to follow each other you're going to be in the same uh, section and then i give it what i give it these parameters after giving it these parameters the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to give it now the children and then put the names, okay? The children of this car, of this, of this what? Of this container, I mean of this column that we have just put there. So, and then we give it the name. So, with this column, I know how you, you understand how column works. So, I go ahead and put the first name and last name. Alright, so by doing like that, We'll be able to do what to get uh, uh, such a what such a result okay i hope you can see that okay so after doing that uh then it means that we have finished uh designing this top uh, this top part okay so after doing that then we're going to put down the list item this list item that you're seeing here okay so you come to a column and then you start adding the list item so let me add the first one and explain it so this is the main column of the what of the menu so i can collapse this first container that we've just added and then start adding the list item okay list style then it's going to take a heading i mean a title of home and then the color of black and then after we give it a leading of an icon of home okay and then we put um, uh, on click listener so like, for example if you want to know where the user has clicked we can create a function called on click and then we'll be calling it when someone clicks on something so let's go ahead and create this method so this method is just going to uh, close the menu because see when i click here sorry the point is when okay let me show you what what the method is going to be doing so you have to collapse the menu on your own so you see 
so this on click it will just simply uh, receive the name that you've clicked on the item and then make a toast so if i click and then after making a toast it go ahead and uh, and pop so pop means you're closing the menu otherwise if you don't if you don't implement that pop it means that you will not be able to do what to close the menu automatically you see here if i remove pop so does it mean it means that the user can click even the menu will not do what will not close so navigator pop dot context pop context it will make sure that the menu closes immediately after someone has clicked so that's the method that we just created okay uh, so we have put home which is the content and then the icon itself like this so you see how things are very very simple to do so after doing that you can add the remaining items we want so you can design your own menu and add there the remaining items that you, you want to implement so these items are just different icons but the same one the same structure that i've just elaborated right now so if i come here to list style i can be able to paste these many items and you'll be able to see i have that one of trending i have that one of what of latest i have that one of highlight and i have this one of uh, i put a divider i see this divider and then i put settings and what and the uh, help so maybe you can that's why you can also maybe put the logout or maybe users user user password changing or user profile update so you can put those things here so right now if you can achieve that we're having the side menu when you click on an item we are able to tell which item you clicked on and make even what makes even a toast so that is how you create uh menus or that's how you create what um drawer menu in what in flutter you can see it is very very simple and straightforward okay so our main focus is the menu creation we will not focus on anything else so we're going to to go to the what the next topic okay then i mean to the next example of what of a draw menu all right give me just one minute only one minute just a minute i'm coming back all right let's proceed so we've seen how we can create such a what such a beautiful menu okay let's see how we can create another kind of what another kind of menu So I'm going to create an, a menu like that one of email, like the way you see the Gmail menu. So let's have menus like these ones, okay? So let's see how we can create such kind of what? Of drawer email menu. All right. So let's go ahead and what? And uh, duplicate because this menu looks much more like uh, the one that we just created. So just we'll duplicate the one that we have and then just modify accordingly. All right. I just come come and copy this and then paste it's going to be draw mail menu okay and then here come and change it to draw mail menu screen then after we're going to add that uh so i can call here draw mail I'm going to add it to what to our main menu so it can be connected Okay, so I've imported it here. So when someone click here, we'll be taken to the drawer mail menu. Right. 
right so i can close now i click here draw mail menu i'm able to see that okay so right now we're going to see now by the way someone can as well do like this to to get the menu here at the edge like that all right now let's go ahead and uh, see how we can create this kind of menu okay so let's go ahead and do that draw mail uh-huh so what's the difference okay the difference is the scaffold color the background color and then the scaffold color of the up bar let's go ahead and do that so our up bar we're going to give it what we're going to give it a state overlay system overlay okay so let's go ahead and go to our draw mail menu which is this one so we're going to give the up bar the system overlay and give it the color of pink okay so the brightness is going to be light and the color is going to be pink so by doing like that pink of 700 will have that beautiful icon i mean beautiful item displayed behind them all right so after doing that so the next thing we're going to uh, the next thing we're going to do what? I'm going to put the uh, title, draw mail title. The title is already there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to give the background color, okay, of our scaffold. So I come to a scaffold, I give it the color of that white. So after doing that, uh, now the next thing we're going to put uh, uh, actions of close. So actions of close is uh, the one that will be responsible for going back okay so in case someone has to go back so i'll come here i think it's already there i've already put it there action and task close where someone can be able to do it to go back all right so after doing that uh we're going to go ahead and give the scaffold the background of white i think that's already done the scaffold uh to give it the background of white it's already done so you have just finished the what the the, the up bar so after finishing the app bar, so the next thing that we're going to do is now to do what is now to add the draw menu. So the draw menu it is added in the same way, just like we did in the first example. Uh, the only thing you're going to change this image to two. Okay, so the only thing you're going to change this image to the second image that we use. Then we'll have that. I hope you get it so that color of the image it comes uh with the image itself while you've already designed it all right so the person can remain the same you can as well of course change the person if you want something like that and then you change also the name of the person uh -huh. so after putting that so the next thing now we're going to put here uh the inbox okay all inbox so what i'm going to do i'm going to come here i'm going to come here to this uh into the main to the main co column this one and then i just remove this and then i remove the rest okay i can go ahead and now remove the rest and then i put back my what my column that i cut i just cut it uh, so like that i'll have removed all the what all the columns i item that were in that uh menu so the next thing now we're going to do are we now to go ahead and add this item one by one so you can simply put here height of eight height of eight and then after i come and say list list tile and then i'm going to show the parameter that you can give it this list tile so if I put a list tile you'll see it has the title okay let me first copy it uh -huh. so let me explain this it has the title which is all inboxes okay all inboxes okay it has the title of text of all inbox then it has a leading and the leading of an icon of what of an inbox then it has a trailing and this trailing is nothing but text of the number of inboxes that are there and then on top we just call the drawer ticked you see can you see so by doing like that you will have come up with that such kind of what of beautiful user interface so you can go ahead and add other items you see how it is not complex you just use even the list style so you can add the divider okay that should the inbox is separate after adding the divider then you'll have that kind of beautiful line drawn there 
and then we go ahead and now start adding other what other folders okay so i can go ahead and add here for example inbox inbox and i say it has the leading of that inbox and then it has uh, uh, a title of inbox and then it has uh, a number of 68 as unread messages okay so you see how it is uh, simple you just try it out and you'll see how it is not complicated uh -huh. so this let me show you how i can put this kind of a card here i'll come and copy this and then i'll explain it okay so uh the first thing is uh set the title so after setting the title uh the next thing you're going to say the what the the text okay as the as the what as the trailing okay so in this trailing we just simply create a text i mean a container that we give the color that we want to give for example the background color of, of blue and then we, we put in the text that we want and then you put the what you put the um, the uh, you make the text to look what to look white by doing like that we'll have created this simple what this simple badge in the trailing and it makes the system be much more efficient as well as looking good all right so the next thing uh so i've shown you how to create one so it means that the rest you can be able to challenge yourself and create them so if i save this can get my thing that i had done before so challenge yourself and see how you can achieve this is there just nothing at least time so by doing like this we'll have created what our um, our email like drawer menu so go ahead and challenge yourself and also see how you can achieve such kind of a menu all right okay, can proceed to another what another example so we have here drawer simple light okay so this one is a, a drawer menu but for it does not have what it does not have the top image the stack so it just do the same menu and remove the what the top image and also this drawer menu it has uh one unique thing that they don't, did not have this has had limited what has limited width i think we're going to do this and then let us choose the one that we're going to do and then the rest you're going to do them as you what as the challenges okay so you have this draw simple dark which is almost the same i think we'll do this one with the dark mode okay and then you have the draw icon this of which has an icon you that one you can try out okay uh we have draw overflow toolbar okay that one you can maybe also do it okay let's do the one of what the one of uh, the one of this this one which which has difference in width i'm going to do the one in the dark mode so you can do it we can also see how we can implement the menus in what in simple dark mode or in dark mode versions Right, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate the thing that I've just done, and then uh, uh, it's done that we're going to do what to depend on uh, to learn how we can do the what the other one of a dark mode. Okay, so come and copy this. Control F, Alt, and Enter, and then call this one. So it's going to be that, and then you put here dark. All right, so. 
I'm going to put this one in our home menu. So come to our main route and then duplicate this one and then put the one of dark put here dark okay so now when someone click here it should be able to take into that uh drawer of dark menu dark news i mean dark dark I mean dark mode menu All right now let's start turning it into a dark menu so if you want to do um, a what you want to do a dark mode version of an app so the first thing uh, we're going to make our up up what up to bar to be dark so you just simply come here sorry come here So by doing like that, setting status um, bar to be that color, grab 900, the status bar will be set like that. All right, so after doing that, I'm going to add what? You're going to add uh, the background to us to our app bar and give it the same. And then we'll have such kind of a menu. Okay? So you can as well change the style of this one to white if you want to okay so after putting that uh we have our icon uh, so the next thing is just the same exactly the same okay so the only difference is we're going to come and uh, give our menu this menu you see we're going to give it a container and then in that container we're going to give the draw of dark version okay so our menu is here so i'm going to surround it with what with a container i give it what and i give it uh, the dark version of it so we'll have something like this so as i told you this menu for it we don't have this upper uh So I'll go ahead and remove this and then we'll have that kind of okay so after I'm going to start now adding the items okay so let me remove this whole column and add my own okay so there I have that kind of item so i think let us try to see if you hear the use area okay so we'll have that and see if we can wrap this one that we save area Yeah, so I had surrounded uh, my menu with safe area, so the content shouldn't collapse. I mean, it shouldn't go in what, in uh, in the app bar. 
I mean in the in the status bar outside the phone. So you see, I put safe area, then the content comes to the right part, the right place. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to add now these icons. If these are just simple, an icon and text, an icon and a text, an icon and text. What matters is the coloring. Okay. Then I'll come here and display it. Then we'll have that. Okay. So I believe each one of you can do this. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you here is that you see this menu is 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 a little bit limited. Okay. So to the to the width. So the reason why it is limited, it is because it was specified with width. So you can as well do the same by specifying the width and then your menu follows that width. So that width can be specified from what? From the container that contains it. Like here. Okay. So if I save, let's see. So I said draw immediately after draw. Okay, before draw you can give it a water container as well, of course. Yeah, before draw, give it a container and give it width of hundred. So this will be able to do what? Uh to follow your rules of what? Of width. So in this lecture we're going to design this menu and that will give you enough uh, concepts of how you can modify your menu and maybe also you do other challenges of doing a uh, different kind of uh, uh, menus such as this one which has filters and the rest so in this one let us begin by designing uh, uh, this what this kind of menu is it This agri menu, I call it agri menu, agriculture menu. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, design it. Let's go ahead and design this kind of menu. So that will give you enough grasp, grasp to also see how you can design different kind of uh, menus that you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to come here and create a, uh, another one. Okay, so I can just duplicate this menu. Since all of them they just draw menus, so I'm just going to duplicate the menu that we already done, and then uh, we do what, and then we modify it for each to look like this one. Okay, so I'll go ahead and copy and paste this one. I'm going to call this one uh, agri menu, agri menu, and uh, agri menu screen, and then I'll come here and select the whole class. Control F, Alt and Enter. And then I read multi name here and call this one agri menu instead of news menu. All right, so after doing that, I'll come and change the title. Come and change the title from draw news to uh, uh, draw agri menu for agriculture. All right, so after doing that, let's go ahead and uh, add this menu to our main uh, navigation menu so someone should be able to navigate to that menu so I'll come to our main route and then go ahead and duplicate this uh, route and call this one agree draw agree menu and then this one I'm going to call it a draw agree menu all right so after doing that uh, now someone should be able to do what to click here and then they should be here to draw a green menu so now the the, the task is we're going to see how we can change this uh, uh menu that we have right now to look like this agriculture menu okay so let's don't mind about this uh front end side well, what you mind is about the menu because that's the main to topic that we're looking at today so everything is all right so the next thing you're going to do is to color the scaffold so i mean to color the, the status bar to green so let's first navigate to our menu 
is this one uh, the first thing that we're going to do we're going to color the green to i mean the 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 the, as the bar to green so there we go okay the status bar to green after coloring the status bar to green the next thing we're going to do we're going to give a, a stack so that these things should be on top of the other so let's go ahead and uh, create stack on this drawer so instead of putting a uh, scroll view we're going to put what we're going to put stack okay stack so this stack is going to take children and the first child is going to be the image okay so it's going to take children and then the first child will be the image while giving it stack is because we want to have a what the other big background image okay so it is uh, image 31 according to our assets in the images that i did what that i did share with you so it is 31 okay so let me see what i've been done right okay i've put here bucket all right so i save now if we expand our menu you see we already have that kind of uh, beautiful menu so why is it like this is because we have stuck and then you give it height infinity and infinity and you know anything that will come on top of an item next to the item of stuff will be on top of it okay so all right after doing that we're going to give um we're going to give what uh the the, 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 the layer you see there's a layer in front of it so this layer to give it you just simply come in front next to stack and then you create a container and give it a color and then you give it what you call opacity so i've created a black container and then you give it an opacity of 0 0.5 so it's going to be transparent by 0 0.5 so when you do like this you will see we have that kind of black in front of the layer and once you have black it in front of a layer even though it is having it uh, it, uh, it has some transparency it means that in front of it you can be able to write the, text, the white text and the, that white text will be readable in this case you're like writing in a on a on a, on a what on a glass okay so after doing that the next thing we're going to give now the column <coughs> column then after column, we put children. Then after putting children, we're going to put um All right, so the children in this column, we're going to have a container that's going to have the height of 40. So the container is going to have the height of 40. So this con this column since it is on top of, of this is after these ones, it's going to be on top of those items that are in stack All right so we're going to give the row that is going to have this closing icon okay. so we'll go ahead and do that you see it's just nothing but a row in front is having 10 and then it also has a icon button that of close and then it has a spacer so by doing like this we'll have such kind of art of beautiful icon that you can see on top here okay so this icon you give it a, 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 a on press listener like when someone presses on it you go ahead and pop so by doing like that it will be able to do what to close the drawer so after doing that the next thing you're going to head you go and you put a what a height of 40 and then after putting the height of 40 you go ahead and put the image now this image of the person i mean of this is icon icon Okay, so you see it's nothing but what? An image in that kind of way. And uh, it is what? It is centered. So by doing like this, because items in our column here, they are centered, then you'll have a beautiful uh, centered image in there. Then you go ahead and give it a height of 5. Okay. And then you can put uh, there maybe a user name of person. Okay, so I need to put this. I think like this, you'll be able to have that. Then the remaining are going to be what? 
uh, the list items, the list tiles. And I believe everyone knows here how to create a what? A list tile. Okay. So go ahead and add 40 on top of it and add your own list tile that you want. So everyone should be is familiar here with list tile. You should be knowing how they work. So you see this list tile has plant. Now someone can you do what? To click on it. Okay. So I have their plants, so I can go ahead and put uh, a product. Okay, then after product, you can go ahead and put flowers. Okay, this is nothing but what? But list tiles. Then uh, after doing that, then we can go ahead and put maybe uh, process something like that. Then after adding a uh, process, now we're going to design and put something in bottom. Okay. So before you design, let us first uh, display it. So I'm going to have a divider like this. Okay. So you see, we we'll have a very very beautiful divider of. Uh, having one pixel okay and then after that divider there's another last list style item which is going to be explore so maybe this can be a logo or it can be anything like this so by doing like that so we have that last item that's serving the explore and it has a what uh, a, a trailing what a trailing uh, icon okay here this one so if you want this to be in bottom this one then it means that you'll have to come here and put what you call spacer if you still remember spacer it will push everything to its maximum so you see i'm having this one and then you have this one here all right so i hope you can see that it is so beautiful so you can also go ahead and try it okay or be much more creative and see how you can do such kind of what such kind of things so a spacer should come before before the line before the divider such a divider Okay, so you can also be able to create such a what? Such a drawer app bar. I mean app menu, drawer menu for the app. All right, so that's how we have learned how to create what? Uh, drawer menus. All right, so you can proceed to something else. So you, I hope you to get your hands dirty and you try them out. All right, so... Let us see how you can create. Uh, let me show you. So the ones that are a little bit complex, I'll create them for you. If they are not complex, I'll ask you to do what? Uh, to try them out by yourself. So I'll just give you the ideas. So I'll finish these two. I'll finish, okay, this one of progress. This one you can do it. Uh, you can as well do it. Uh, so you'll just simply create a normal thing, but put your stack. In this and then uh, you align the image to be in the center of stack and then you give it a, a height of negative so it will be able to do what to be uh, below the other so go ahead and try and challenge yourself and do this kind of what of uh, draw progress what progress uh, menu draw menu all right so finish that progress or we'll finish this one of a Greek Okay, so I want to give you ideas of things that you can try out. Uh, so I want you to try out this one of filter, whereby it's going to be on the right hand side, on the left on the on the left hand side, and should be able to collect even inputs in uh, the menu. So this menu can be used for filtering. Okay, that's a challenge I'm giving it to you. Uh -huh. So 
I want you to be able to do the lateral filter. I want you to be able to do this kind of admin menu where we're going to have different what? Different user interfaces. I mean different UIs. So here the only thing the icons are colored. So go ahead and pause the video and challenge yourself and see if you can do uh, this kind of a menu. Same concept but uh, different experiences or different displays. So challenge yourself and do this menu. Okay. That was admin menu. Okay. You can do this bottom menu. Okay. You can do this bottom menu. So I want you to challenge yourself. It is exactly the same thing. These are just list style like the way we've been doing whereby you have the leading and the heading and the trailing. And then here on top you just have um, an item with a what? With a emoji. So this is a hard menu that I'm challenging you to do what? To try out. Okay. I'm challenging you to try out. Okay. I can give you the idea. I can give you the idea of how you can approach it. Okay. So if you look at the scaffold, okay, this is our scaffold. It is having what you call bottom navigation bar and it has bottom up bar. Okay, so bottom up bar is the opposite of the up bar. You know, we have been putting up bar, up bar, not in something called bottom up bar. Okay, so instead of using uh, the up bar, we'll go ahead and create the bottom up bar and then go ahead and add these items. Okay, go ahead and add this item. Well, by this, just a uh, um, so what an icon button which has a spacer and here they have another icon button another icon button another icon button so now when you click this icon it has to launch the menu automatically this one here okay so to launch the menu we just simply do the show and not show and then do a set state so here uh, you right you click you create you call this function called show sheet so this is nothing but a what but a bottom sheet so you have to just be creative and know even a bottom sheet can work in that place i've already told you the bottom sheet i've already explained those bottom sheets so i want you to challenge yourself and implement that menu in form of what in form of bottom sheet Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can increase it. You can increase it. Yeah, you have like uh, full access to to modify almost everything that you do what <coughs> that you want. So it just depends on your what on your idea. So go ahead and and challenge yourself by doing this bottom sheet. Okay, that will do what that will display the menu from bottom and instead of using up bar use bottom up bar okay and then use icon bar to display this and do something exactly like this one i've already told you bottom sheet so you shouldn't be what shouldn't be uh <laughs> it shouldn't be like a uh, alarmed like it is very hard it is really possible okay so go ahead and challenge yourself and do that all right so let's look at another kind of menu the exploring okay so that is a slide menu i think uh, this one we can do it aha uh -huh. then this one also we can do one of them and then you can get the idea of how we can achieve the rest okay this menu which can slide Okay, so I'm going to do the first one, the first sliding menu, this one. 
and then for you you do the rest you do the rest by challenging yourself and see if you can achieve them okay so let's go ahead and uh, do this uh, sliding menu so i'm going to do it from scratch i'm going to do it from scratch so you can also uh, recap and get the whole concept of what of uh, menus i have to create a special video for them so you come while uh, you're ready because i'll have to first teach you about uh, the what the obs or what you call a uh, state management package then for you to understand and then you'll be able to do what uh to, to grasp everything all right so with that said let us uh proceed to banners because because our time is running let us proceed to banners so banners uh, we use them to communicate to users important messages for example uh, when a user is offline you may need to tell them you're offline maybe when you give a user that uh, uh, they have successfully done a certain step or a certain uh, thing or process you may need to show them a banner maybe you want to uh, like if you use whatsapp 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 chat or the whatsapp application when you when you applicate when you when your storage is full in whatsapp they give you a communication in form of a, a banner and then it communicates to your mind for you to do what to do some action for example what you're seeing here on top here is a banner okay so it gives uh <coughs> communicate <coughs> it is ticked somewhere and gives the communication to the user that they should do some action so we're going to see how we can create such kind of what such kind of uh, banners okay so these are the banners that i'm talking about a banner like this one and also a banner like this one that can be pinned okay so let's go ahead and uh, get started with these banners so what i'm going to do i'm going to create um, a separate what a separate section of banners so i've created a separate fold of banners so inside these banners i'm going to create a for my first screen for the banner okay so uh, we're going to begin with this one the basic banner screen okay so i'll come and create here a new file called banner underscore basic dot dot Then you create a class for it. Set full widget of banner basic screen. And then you go ahead and import the states. And then after doing that, we are now going to go ahead and uh, add this one to our main menu so someone should be able to click and then proceed to here. So I come here and add the title. We can call banners. And then after, come here and add the banner itself, the banner screen. Then this one call them basic banners. So after doing that, then you should be able to come to a home page and then be able to see basic banners. So in this basic banner, we're going to see how we can create such a basic banner like this one. Alright. So let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to begin by putting scaffold. Okay, so the first thing is uh, your class must extend what? Uh, ticker 
provider so come here to your banner class and then I add with ticker provider like this that's when you'll be able to do it to expand and add more banners at any point so after doing that we are going to create a boolean that will help us to show whether a banner has been expanded or not okay So we say expand and make it false by default and then after we're going to create a controller for the banner. So animation controller and then you call it controller and then after you create now the animation animation which is going to be taking double and then create to the animation and then animation view okay so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do we're going to create on click listener so this on click listener is one that will be toggling the what uh the banners so i can pause the video and see it so after we create a toggling class that will be switching expanded from expanded to not expanded like this So after doing that, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to create the init state, the one that is going to work on the responsibility of initializing the what, the controller and also the animation. So just simply come here and say init state and then go ahead and initialize the banner controller like this after initializing the banner controller go ahead and initialize the animation and try out different animations and then after doing that then go ahead and uh, uh, initialize animation view okay now that you want to be viewing all right so after doing that uh, we go ahead and do and make sure that the widget binding is finished this is how you check if the widget binding is finished and then we just make some delay duration of like five milliseconds and then we display the what the banner so this is how we do it so this will help the user to first uh, observe and then this banner will show us after uh, five milliseconds 500 milliseconds Okay, so after doing that, the next thing now is uh, to start doing what? To start uh, creating our scaffold. So I'll come here to and say return scaffold. Put semicolon at last. And then go ahead and put there the content. We're going to have our column. Okay, so the body is going to be a column. So you can put the up by if you want. So after doing that, now in this column, I'm going to give you children. And the children here, uh, the first one is going to be the size translation. That's going to take it now the animation itself. I'll copy it then, I'll expand it. I'll explain it. 
Okay, so here you have the save the animation and then you pass the animation that we've just defined. And then here you put the content that you want to be to be shown in your what? In the card. So this content can be any content of your choice that you want to be shown in your what? In a banner. Okay. Then you design the content. Okay. And put in this what? What you call transition animation let me say it's transition all right so after that you can now display uh, the content like this one okay so you display your content so here it's expanded so i can come here and say text and then i put and some string okay so this is my like my content save then I'll have to open it afresh. So you see, it delays for three seconds and then it displays for five seconds. So I can even say here it should dis display after uh, five seconds. Okay, so a user's mind can be communicated too. So I open here, so it delays for five seconds, and then as I'm doing, when I'm doing my things, then the pop up will show up like that. Okay. So that pop-up can even be like a danger, a warning pop-up. Let me show you. So instead of having it straightforward like that, you can as well do what you can as well come here and give it a color of what of red. Okay. So it can look like what like a real warning. So it is just up to you how you want it to work like. So that is how we implement banner. So go ahead and uh, initialize these things as I've shown you. Okay. Please initialize them slowly by slowly as you understand. Make sure that you insert that you put this uh, the, the ticker, okay, the ticker provider. Then after you go ahead and just put this animation control view. So this animation control view inside the size view that is going to control the content, and then the content that you're going to put inside this size view. Is the one that will be hidden. I mean, the, the one that uh, will be hidden when uh, when uh, a banner comes up. So this is the quantity itself. Okay. So go ahead and uh, make sure that you do what that you understand these ones. Then after you've understood this one, of course, then uh, you should challenge yourself by doing this. By doing this one for the information, it is almost the same. So go ahead and challenge yourself and do that one. Go ahead and challenge yourself and do that one. Go ahead and challenge yourself and do that one. All right. So this one is just almost the same, but I want you to think uh, really hard to see how you can hide or how you can show this kind of a what? This kind of a banner by the use of what? Of the controller. I'm just. So challenge yourself and do those things. All right, so that's it uh, for today. If not for now, I think um, since it's the weekend, I can let you guys go and uh, rest. Uh, the next lecture, uh, we are almost uh, finishing. The next lecture, we will look at uh, pickers, date pickers, and uh, progress bars. Okay. So that's what you'll look at in the watch in the next videos. And that will be, I think, next week. Uh, but for today, we'll stop from there and i let you go and rest. All right, guys. Uh, goodbye. Make sure that you practice. Make sure that uh, you're not left behind. Uh, we'll, I'm going to see how I get much more content. Uh, so maybe in next week, um, we resume. So I'm giving also this period for you to do us to be able to practice. Otherwise, that's it for today. Uh, keep practicing. In case you're stuck, you can contact me. Uh, once we finish these user interfaces, they, now you will have enough basics for you to get started. Because uh, me, I'm not like other teachers who say, in this video, you're going to learn how to make mobile applications. And one, we want to teach you everything in what? in one video which is not really feasible so i'm cooking you slowly by slowly but uh, with a period you'll have enough grounds if you've been practicing 
you'll have enough grounds now when you're going to start when you shall start creating the applications uh you'll be able to do what you'll be able to understand everything since you'll have got very strong what very strong ground information so don't demoralize these things that i'm teaching you uh practice them practice them and uh, that's what will bring uh, experience to you we're going to cover different topics among the topics that we're going to look at are uh, the pickers toasts and then progress uh, progress now progress bars and uh, many more things that are going to come in this topic i mean this lecture so um i hope you're ready uh, to do this with me if you are then let's get started also in my time so as you know we always do 40 minutes as you can see our counter has started counting so without wasting much time let's go straight and see what we're going to do today so i'm going to begin by looking how we can create date pickers for example if you have a user interface and you want to allow someone to uh, maybe enter their date of birth or collect any kind of date we're going to see how you can create such a kind of a thing where someone can pick date from what from the calendar uh, we're going also to see how someone can pick time let's say that you want to collect time we're going to see how someone can pick time from uh, uh, the clock and also we'll go ahead and look at the uh, progress bars such as uh, this progress bar we'll see how we can create uh, a progress bar like uh, this one which is progressing on top this list progress bar we'll see how you can create a progress bar like this one when you scroll it shows down so we have a lot of things that are going to cover so without wasting much time let's go ahead and start doing the real business so as you can see i've already started the application that you always use for practice maybe i should increase on font so you guys can see things clearly maybe let me increase on font i think the font is already okay all right think they can see things clearly so this is the application that you always do i mean that you always use to practice with if it is your first video i recommend you to watch our previous video so you can be on the same page with us however if you want just to watch this one only it is also okay there's no problem you can still take it from here you just simply download that project uh, the startup project that you always do and then you take it from here all right so what we're going to do right now we're going to create uh, another section for pickers and then we see how we they we take from there so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to the home page uh or the main screen which is this one uh we'll come to our main route and then in this main route i'll go on top i'll then go ahead and copy this and paste it i'll call this one what uh or pickers or date picker whatever Okay, and then I'll save. I should be able to see the change. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the link for the date picker. So I'm going to come here and call this one date picker, like this. Let me first stop copilot. Right. So after doing that, I'm going to go ahead and do what and uh, create a special, uh, a special. Uh, page for the pickers so i'll come there come here and then after reaching here i'm going to create another uh, section or another folder for before pickers so i'll come to screens and then say directory i'm going to call this one pickers so in this one we're going to put a uh, date picker so i'll come here i click on this folder of pickers then new then i say file and this one i'll call it date date picker screen dot that okay so that's our date picker screen okay so let's go ahead and uh, create our scaffold so i just simply say stateful and then i paste there the name which is date picker i go ahead and press alt and enter in order to import the package and then i can remove this one for now or i can remove this constant okay 
out. So after doing that, I'm going to connect this date picker page with our what? With our main page. So I'll come back to the main route, which is this one, and then remove this screen and put what? The date picker screen. I import it and then I save. So now if someone clicks here, it should be taken the date picker screen. When I click there, I'm on the date picker screen and you know there is nothing there. So to save time, I'm just going to follow uh, the one that I'd already created, which is here and uh, routes and uh, pickers and uh, what and a date picker. All right, so we're going to begin by creating a scaffold. So remove this placeholder and put scaffold. Okay, after I'll go ahead and import this scaffold. Then after importing the scaffold, so the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to put there the background color should be white. We just come here to the picker itself. So I'll come here and then I make it white. So the background will be the scaffold with a white screen. All right, after doing that, I'm going to give the up bar. This should be just a normal up bar. You can as well create your own. Let me import it. And then I'll have my up bar. So I believe everyone can be able to create this up bar at this level. All right, so I'm going to give this... Uh, I'm just going to center and then put... Um, the what and then put the um, text i'm sorry i'm going to okay, i'm going to create a column i'm going to create a column okay and then in that column we're going to put uh, the data that we shall be picking okay so let's go ahead and create here some column so it's going to be the body of this scaffold And then on top, I'm going to put the date that I'll have picked, okay? So I just simply come here and I paste it here. I'm going to explain, okay? So this column will take children, okay? So in this children, I've just simply put a container that is having alignment center, width to infinity, height of 45, and then color of gray. And then in it, I have uh, a text as a, as a what? As the child. Let me import this, okay, as the child, and then there is a text date, okay, the date that I'll have picked. So the date I'll have picked is going to be just a simple string, okay. So I can just simply come here and create a simple string, it's just going to be a variable called date, okay. So I can come here, in this class, and I create a variable called date. So it's going to be string called date and I can put maybe an A or no date. Okay, so if I save, I'll have that string there, okay, which is no date. All right, so after doing that, I'm going to put um, a what? Uh, a, this button that I want someone to click on so they can be able to see what? So they can be able to see the date, okay? So I'll just simply come and create an elevated button. So I'll come here in this column and add the elevated button. So I can explain this. It is just simply elevation elevated button that is having a style of elevated elevation but elevated button dot style form and then having elevation of zero, a shape of this, and then this padding. Okay. And then uh, the background color is my colors dot accent. You can also put your own color, okay? So I import this color dot accent. And then it has a child called pick date, which is the child of this main button. So on press, there is a function that I'll be calling. For now, let me first remove it, okay? So when someone press on this button, so I can put here maybe if I want to center it, I can put here uh, spacer. And then I put also spacer in the bottom of it. So I'll end up having it what? I have it centered. All right. So I want now when someone clicks here, you should be able to see the date picker or the date, the date picker should launch. So I'll come to this elevated elevated button and I put on press listener. So when someone clicks on it, you should call that 
uh, function that is going to launch the date picker okay so this is the function it's called just uh, show dialog okay i'm called maybe show dialog or can call it show date picker okay let me let us create that function that will be called all right so i'll come here i'll say this class okay then i've called it show date picker or show dialog picker or you can call it anything that you want it will be accepting the build context okay so inside it it's where i'm going to write the logic that will launch a what a calendar so to launch a calendar so you can just simply uh, first create a uh, first create selected date so you say selected date equals to so this selected date is going to be a variable that i want to define as uh selected date okay like this okay so you say late future and then you define it like that then date and time and then say selected date so this is the, like the default selected date okay so this date we are going to do what we are going to say show date picker so it says is equals to show date uh show date picker and then this show date picker is going to be it is a flutter function that is going to be responsible for launching the calendar okay so this date picker will go ahead and take the it takes the context so i'll come here and open and put the semicolon at last so the first thing it takes takes the context okay then it takes the first date the initial date so the initial date is the date that you want to start with so I can say it should begin by showing uh, the current date to be the initial date. Then it takes the first date. So the first date is the date below which you don't want someone to select the date below that one. So I can say date time 2000. So it means that someone won't be able to select a date before 2000. Okay, then I can go ahead and show the last date. So the last date it should be is the date that you don't want someone to select beyond it. Okay then i'll go ahead and uh, create the builder and then this builder it takes the theme and then the kind of data that you want to us to display whether it is the red light theme or that you can do that in the what in this builder you can post the video and see how i've uh, created it so this one will be able to launch the what the date picker okay so i'll go ahead and add a listener on that date picker i say date picker dot then so when I put it then, then it will be able to wait for me. I mean for the date picker to finish and do what and the uh, and uh, give me the date. So it's date picker dot then. So when you write just date picker, let me write it up here. Date picker dot dot then. So it will give you a value that you do what that you'll have to uh, to collect the date from. So you can as well put here what your own bracket or the normal function so in case the there's an error let's say you want to listen to an error you can just simply come here and put a comma and then you listen to an error like that so in case someone selects a wrong date or in case someone does not uh, select anything and put the error in the, in the console so if in case everything is okay the date that is correct it will be given to you as a what as a value okay so I can say if this value is null, let's say that uh, the date is equal to null or the value that has come, I just simply go ahead and return from here. So now if the value is not null, I'll go ahead and initialize the other date that we created. Okay. So you say date equals to This function I think I'd not share it with you. So you can create this function. Let me show it to you. This function will accept uh, an integer because this time this data will give you a what? A timestamp. Okay. So it will accept an integer and then it will be able to do what to return to you 
the date in any format that you do what that you need if you want the month and the day and the what you can be able to convert that date but if you want the timestamp you can just be able to get the mill mill seconds uh epoch that one will be able to give you the timestamp so let me remove these tools so this one will convert the date to what to the string and this is the format that you can use to uh to any day that you want so after doing that after uh, setting the date remember this is the the date that we created here will go ahead and do it and say set date i mean set state so it can update so by doing like this you'll be able to achieve the date picker okay so you can pause the video and then you look at this function properly okay and then be able to understand it so i'm going to call it now so i'll come to the button here where the, where the button is and then I call it when someone clicks on it or when someone presses it. I'll go ahead and do what I call it. This button takes context, so I'll give it what? I'll give it context. So you see, when I click pick date, it shows date picker. Mm -hmm. If I cancel, there's nothing that is done. So if I say pick date and I select the date, you see, that it is selected. Okay, pick date. Select the date, the date is what? It's selected. All right. So that's how you do date picker. Though there are some other package that make it really much more simpler than this. Okay. So you can go ahead. For example, I don't want someone to pick the date before today. Let's say that you want to make a, a system where you don't want someone to pick the date before now. So it means that here, the first, I mean, the, the, the first date should be uh, date time dot now say dot now like this so by doing like that it will be able to uh it will not allow someone pick the date before today can you see i cannot pick third i cannot pick first okay even if i go back i cannot even allow to go back you get it so that is uh, how you can do the so if you want also to lock the top side let's say that maybe you don't want someone to pick after maybe three days so I said the time dot maybe add is it add days I think okay this one doesn't have that logic can say maybe uh All right, <laughs> this is going to be wrong. So we can't attempt it. All right, so you can do the logic of uh, getting the next date and then don't allow someone to do what to pick that. So that one will not allow someone to pick the date beyond 2024. I mean 2023. See, so this is the last date, and then this is the first date. So you can play around this in order to validate your date and maybe avoiding users from picking the wrong dates. So that is how you can implement the what? The date uh, picker. That is how you can implement the date picker and you can convert the date to any date that you want. This is the timestamp. In case you want the timestamp, you collect this one. All right, so uh, let us proceed and see now how you can achieve the time picker like this one. If you want to pick time, okay? You want to pick time using Flutter. Right, let's see how we can achieve that. So since date and time picker, they're almost the same UI, it everything's almost the same. I'm just going to duplicate this screen and I change it to what? To time picker. All right, so I'll come here to our screens and then I'll come to this particular screen, which is date picker. I'll copy it and paste it and I'm going to call this one time picker screen. Okay, and then I'll come here to where there's date picker screen. I'll select all and press Alt and Enter and paste it there. So I'll come and change the title from date picker. I mean, so here from pick date time, I uh, date I put, put pick time. Okay, so I'll come here and change the title from date light. I'll just say maybe time picker. So I believe everyone can do this duplicating a screen and then renaming it okay so after doing that i'm going to add this screen now in our what in our main route so it can be linked so i'll just simply come there 
and then duplicate that and then go ahead and put time picker as a title and then I change this to time picker screen so by doing like that uh, when I come back to our home page someone should be able to see time picker so when I click on time picker you should be able to show me uh, the time picker though uh, this one's going to be the time instead of what instead of date all right so let's see how we can achieve that Come here to temp picker, I already have it. Alright, so I have the first thing instead of putting date, I'm going to put selected time. Okay, so I can just come and change this one. So instead of putting date, I can say maybe selected time, and then I can say no time selected. Okay, and then I come and I substitute it here. Okay, and then after I come and remove everything in this function, maybe. Let me remove everything in this function so I can create a fresh function for time picking. All right. So we have our simple user interface that is going to allow us to pick time. All right, so let's go ahead and create a function for picking time. I'm going to copy it and explain it. Okay. So, this function is going to allow us to pick what? It's going to allow to pick us time pick time so i'll go ahead and create um this variable for the time picking so we just simply come here and create this variable and call it time of a day you create it like this okay time of day it's the data type that will be time so after we just simply say this function you call it i mean you create it and then say Selected time, we call this as selected time equals to show time picker. The other one has show date picker. This one is show time picker. And these are the parameters that are taken. The initial time, and then it takes this theme, and that's all. Okay? Then you put also dot then, and then you do the same thing that we did in the previous example of date picker. Okay? So for each here, we're just getting... Uh, they give you the time and they give you on each time they give you the hour and they give you so the minute they can even give you the what the second for example if I come here I just simply say even uh, seconds I can be able to, ask to get it okay so after collecting the hour and the minute okay second of course will always be the net because that is does not pick seconds mm -hmm. I say I, I update this time this one that we created here I say time equals to value then string then I put hour and minutes okay so after doing that I go and call this method okay when it is being called I'll come here to this button and call it from here so it means that now someone should be able to do it call it i'll have to give it context and then should be able to launch and allow someone to pick the day i mean pick time so if i come here pick time it picks time okay so begin with the now time and i say okay it updates okay so only that uh, i didn't see that thing of pmam let me see what else this value carries okay so it has how hours per period, minute period, and period of offset, and then the format that you want. Yep. Let's see what this one has.
Okay, so you can convert it to PM or AM to your own. Okay. So this is the hour of the day. The 11th hour of the day. Okay, so in case you want to use the PM or AM, you can use that to convert using the uh, hour of the day, whether it is the 11th hour. So by default, it gives you uh, the time in what? In 24 hour clock. So that is how you can pick time and collect it in any way that you want. So I hope you've understood that. I hope you can now be able to do that to implement uh, those two. Okay, the date picker and the time picker. All right, so let's see how we can do one more thing. Uh, so we've seen how we can implement date and time pickers. Uh, let's go to progress bars. So these progress bars, they help us to show the user something when the progress is being, uh, when the process is happening, okay? So they will help us to display, okay, that something is downloading or something is going on, other than just leaving the user with the what? With a screen that is uh, stuck without showing anything. All right, so let's go ahead and implement uh, these uh, progress bars. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new screen that, I've got, that we're going to call progress. So we'll come here to our route, menu routes and then create another section that we're going to call progress. Let's see if there's any relevant icon. Okay. All right, so if we come back to here, we'll be able to see our progress. So we're going to begin with the basic progress. So just simply come and copy this and add it here and call it basic progress. All right, so in here, I'm going to put the, like, the logic of being able to click there and then you see the progress all right so we are going to create a, a new screen for the pro progress for the basic progress let's create a new section a new directory for progress And then in that director, we put new. I call it basic progress. The dot. Let's say we basic progress screen. The dot. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a stateless widget. Stateful widget. Paste the name of the of the of the class, and then I import it. Just a minute. All right. So after creating that, I'll just come and remove this. Okay. Right, so we'll come here and connect this one with our main screen. So when I click on this progress, it should be able to take me to that empty screen. All right, so let's go ahead and do the basic progress. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the basic progress. Uh, all right, so 
Uh, we're going to put um, uh, what our scaffold. Okay, and then we import it. Uh -huh, we're going to put a uh, white background and then the up bar. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and create the body. That we're going to give a container that will have a child. Now, this child is going to be a column. Let's give this body some padding. So it's going to be of 20 all, so it's going to be a column. That is going to have children all right so in those children let us first align everything to center all right so uh we're going to put now uh, uh what our primary uh this one the, the determining the what the primary or the, the basic uh, uh, loader okay so this is just uh, nothing but plain text where well, we are targeting the main progress flow what we are called primary progress so inside there i mean in there we're going to put now maybe a container that's going to separate it from the top one and then after i'm going to create a container this just uh, okay this container is just going to help in padding or giving the height of the of that otherwise we don't give it the height then we don't be able to control it so i'll go ahead and give it height of five okay and then i'm going to put what you call linear progress okay so it's going to be it's going to have a child of linear progress indicator that is a widget by what by flutter okay so if i save it will be just like that it will just show that there is progress okay it can show that there is something that is progressing so let us see how we can control it okay let me first give it color uh, uh so this is how we give the color so if you want to put the value of the color just say always stop animation and then you open uh color screen square and then you put here the color that you want next to it for example i'll put me my primary color and then the background color we just simply have background color and then you specify the background the background color so like this one like that you'll be able to do it to have that kind of progress bar that is moving always okay so now let's say that you want to control it okay let's say that you want to control it so if you want to control it you have to give it what you call a value okay let's say that you want to maybe show the download speed so you have a good value and give it a what uh, progress value so this progress value is nothing but uh, a variable that we just created here that is going to do what to control the, the that is going to control the what our uh, progresses okay so i'll come here and create that variable okay so i'll come here on top and create that variable okay so it is just a double the value just a double that has this progress so if I save now, you see the progress at zero zero. So I mean that it is at really it's really at zero. Okay. So after I'm going to create this uh, update progress function that is going to be responsible for updating the what the progresses. So this can be your own kind of function that is going to be fetching maybe data from internet and then be able to display the user. Okay. The progress. So this is just a function. It's called update progress. It's nothing but just a simple what a simple function so inside that i'm going to put a, a timer so this a, a timer periodic it will be able to do what to execute a certain uh it will be able to execute a certain function periodically after a certain period okay so you just simply come and say inside this function and say new timer dot periodic let me first import it 
new timer dot periodic so it will take the duration how many time how long do you want it to to do us to to delay before it executes again so i can put here uh duration you write the word duration capital t in beginning the capital t is just a class and then pass milliseconds so you can even pass seconds here if you want to like if you want it to execute maybe after one second so i can as well pass what seconds right let me put here semicolon so it will be executing this something that is inside here after those seconds that will have specified up there okay so inside those seconds i want to get the progress and give it a plus two okay so this progress is going to be a uh, plus or equal to two so i'm increasing it by two okay and then after i want to do what i want to say progress value if it is uh, more than one it should do what it should come back to zero okay so that is how it's going to keep loading if it reaches one and comes back to zero you see that's just a simple logic that i'm creating then after i go ahead and do what and the uh, set state hope this set it will be there all right ah, sorry the set state okay the set will be was up okay so i go ahead and do what and update the state so this function i want it to be called only one time okay so you know things that we they, uh, that you need to call one time you know where to put them you have to put them inside init state override this one okay so that function will be called at the beginning of the execution so this is just a timer that's delaying for one second and then increases this first progress with with two and then it checks if the progress is more than uh, one it's supposed to increase by sorry 0 0.2 it checks if this progress is more than one, then it, it resets it back to what? To zero. So by that, it will be able to load, wait for one second as it is increasing. When it is more than one, it goes back to zero. Hope you understand that. So I'll save, then I go back and I open this page afresh. Okay. So when I click on basic progress, you can see it is loading after one second. And then it goes more than one, it goes back to zero. Okay. So that's how you can do. So this can be your maybe your progress maybe to the download something like that okay so the whole point is your progress should always be less than one in order uh this the this what this progress to be able to do what to show you the progress so it is if it's less than one when it reaches one it will be considered as what as a full so here i'm checking if it's more than one i just set it back to what back to zero okay if i want maybe to be faster i can maybe maybe come here and say uh, milliseconds okay milliseconds maybe i can say maybe after 200 milliseconds okay so let me say after 100 milliseconds okay so i'll have to open it again in order to start afresh so you can see it is really really fast okay so i can open it afresh again you see so you cannot even see because milliseconds are really small okay so i can keep it there maybe after like if you want to delay after maybe two seconds you can as well do that okay so this is just to give you a simple what a simple overview of how you can implement this what this progress bars uh-huh so uh let's go ahead and implement uh these other ones for example this one is called uh, inter my intermine primary so this one will keep on just uh, loading without doing what without stopping let me show them to you so you can be able to practice them uh so we have uh, the progress bars let me show them to you because our time is up and i want to finish this so you have this progress bars it's just the same this one the one that the determine progress bar is that one that will be showing in steps then you have this one intermined progress bar this linear progress and then say put always stopped animation and then this one will always be what it will always be like uh, it is not stopping this one the second one so you can pause the video and then you look at this one it's just the same logic this one is having the second value so this is how i create the second value and this is how i update the second value okay it's just the same logic but this one is for what is increasing one by one not two by two okay so for this second value it is increasing just by 0 0.1 not by 0 0.2 
so you'll be able to achieve something like this one then circular progress progress indicators is just the same logic the same one but for them it is called circular progress indicator so you can either use the linear or you can use the circular progress indicator you can pause the video and do what and uh, practice all of them but simply those are the basics those are the basics of what of the progress indicators so you can implement them in this kind of way uh let's say that you want to make a list like this one and uh, you want maybe to show the indicator you can show an indicator like that one you remember if you don't specify the the controller it will not be able to do what uh to stop it will just keep on loading so you can do something like this okay you can do something like this all right so you can also do something like this can you see what's something that is loading on top so according to i mean from the example that we have done you can be able to challenge yourself and implement it like this in this i'm just showing you how you can implement those progress indicators in different ways i believe this one you can do it just put there on top and then try it out all right so you can as well uh this one is a refresh indicator i think we already looked at it that one in some video but hello and how are you my name is mahino bark and i welcome you to our 20th video of learning how to master flutter user interfaces in our today's video we're going to cover different topics among the topics that we're going to look at are the pickers toasts and then progress uh, progress nav progress bars and uh, many more things that we're going to cover in this topic i mean this lecture so um i hope you're ready uh, to do this with me if you are then let's get started also in my time so as you know we always do 40 minutes as you can see our counter has started counting so without wasting much time let's go straight and see what we're going to do today so i'm going to begin by looking how we can create date pickers for example if you have a user interface and you want to allow someone to uh, maybe enter their date of birth or collect any kind of date we're going to see how you can create such a kind of a thing where someone can pick date from what from the calendar uh, we're going also to see how someone can pick time let's say that you want to collect time we're going to see how someone can pick time from uh, uh, the clock and also we'll go ahead and look at the uh, progress bars such as uh, this progress bar we'll see how we can create uh, a progress bar like uh, this one which is progressing on top this list progress bar we'll see how you can create a progress bar like this one when you scroll it shows down so we have a lot of things that we're going to cover so without wasting much time let's go ahead and start doing the real business so as you can see i've already started the application that you always use for practice maybe i should increase on font so you guys can see things clearly maybe let me increase on font i think the font is already okay all right i think there you can see things clearly so this is the application that you always do i mean that you always use to practice with if it is your first video i recommend you to watch our previous video so you can be on the same page with us however if you want just to watch this one only it is also okay there's no problem you can still take it from here you just simply download that project uh, the startup project that you always do and then you take it from here all right so what we're going to do right now we're going to create uh, another section for pickers and then we see how we they we take from there so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to the home page uh or the main screen which is this one i uh, will come to our main route and then in this main route i'll go on top i'll then go ahead and copy this and paste it i'll call this one what uh or pickers or date picker whatever Okay, and then I'll save. I should be able to see the change. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the link for the date picker. So I'm going to come here and call this one date picker, like this. Let me first stop Copilot. 
right so after doing that i'm going to go ahead and do what and uh, create a special uh, a special uh, page for the pickers so i'll come there come here and then after reaching here i'm going to create another uh, section or another folder for for pickers so i'll come to screens and then say direct i'm going to call this one pickers so in this one we're going to put a uh, date picker so i'll come here I click on this folder of pickers then new then i say file and this one i'll call it date date picker screen dot that okay so that's our date picker screen okay so let's go ahead and uh, create our scaffold so i'll just simply say stateful and then i paste there the name which is the picker i go ahead and press alt and enter in order to import the package and then i can remove this one for now or i can remove this constant okay all right so after doing that i'm going to connect this date picker page with our what with our main page so i'll come back to the main route which is this one and then remove this base, uh, screen and put what the date picker screen i import it and then i save so now if someone clicks here it should be taken the date picker screen when i click there i'm on the date picker screen and you know there is nothing there so to save time i'm just going to follow uh the one that i'd already created which is here and uh routes and uh pickers and uh, what and a date picker all right so we are going to begin by creating a scaffold so remove this placeholder and put scaffold okay after i'll go ahead and import this scaffold then after importing the scaffold so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to put there the background color should be white we just come here to the picker itself so I'll come here and then I make it white so the background will be the scaffold with a white screen all right after doing that I'm going to give the up bar this should be just a normal up bar you can as well create your own let me import it and then I'll have my up bar so I believe everyone can be able to create this up bar at this level all right so I'm going to give this uh, I'm just going to center and then put um, the what and then put the um, text I'm sorry I'm going to okay, I'm going to create a column I'm going to create a column okay and then in that column we are going to put uh, the data that we shall be picking okay so let's go ahead and create here some column so it's going to be the body of this scaffold And then on top, I'm going to put the date that I'll have picked, okay? So I simply come here and I paste it here. I'm going to explain, okay? So this column will take children, okay? So in this children, I've just simply put a container that is having alignment center, width to infinity, height of 45, and then color of gray. And then in it, I have uh, a text as a, as a what? As the child. Let me import this okay as the child and then there is a text date okay the date that i'll have picked so the date i'll have picked is going to be just a simple string okay so i can just simply come here and create a simple string it's just going to be a variable called date okay so i can come here in this class and i create a variable called date so it's going to be string called date and I can put maybe an A or no date. Okay, so if I save, I'll have that string there, okay, which is no date. All right, so after doing that, I'm going to put um, a what? Uh, a, this button that I want someone to click on so they can be able to see what? So they can be able to see the date, okay? 
So I'll just simply come and create an elevated button. So I'll come here in this column and add the elevated button. So I can explain this. It is just simply elevation elevated button that is having a style of elevated elevation but elevated button dot style form and then having elevation of zero, a shape of this, and then this padding. Okay. And then uh, the background color is my colors dot accent. You can also put your own color. Okay. So I import this color dot accent. And then it has a child called pick date, which is the child of this main button. So on press, there is a function that I'll be calling. For now, let me first remove it. Okay. So when someone press on this button, so I can put here maybe if I want to center it, I can put here a uh, spacer. And then I put also spacer in the bottom of it. So I'll end up having it what? I'll have it centered. All right. So I want now when someone clicks here, you should be able to see the date picker or the date the date picker should launch. So I'll come to this elevated elevated button and I put on press listener. So when someone clicks on it, you should call that uh, function that is going to launch the date picker. Okay. So this is the function. It's called just uh, show dialog. Okay. I'm called maybe show dialog or can call it show date picker. Okay. Let me let us create that function that will be called. All right. So I'll come here. I'll say this class. Okay. Then I've called it show date picker or show dialog picker, or you can call it anything that you want. It will be accepting the build context. Okay, so inside it, it's where I'm going to write the logic that will launch a what? A calendar. So to launch a calendar, so you can just simply uh, first create a uh, first create selected date. So you say selected date equals two. So this selected date is going to be a variable that I want to define as uh, selected date. Okay, like this. Okay, so you say late future, and then you define it like that. Then date and time, and then say selected date. So this is the, like the default selected date. Okay. So this date, we are going to do what? We are going to say show date picker. So it says is equals to show date, uh, show date picker, and then this show date picker is going to be. This is a Flutter function that is going to be responsible. For launching the calendar okay so this date picker will go ahead and take the it takes the context so i'll come here and open and put the semicolon at last so the first thing it takes takes the context okay then it takes the first date the initial date so the initial date is the date that you want to start with so i can say it should begin by showing uh, the current date to be the initial date then it takes the first date so the first date is the date below which you don't want someone to select the date below that one. So I can say date time 2000. So it means that someone won't be able to select a date before 2000. Okay, then I can go ahead and show the last date. So the last date it should be is the date that you don't want someone to select beyond it. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and uh, create the builder. And then this builder. It takes the theme and then the kind of data that you want to us to display whether it is the red light theme or that you can do that in the what in this builder you can post the video and see how I've uh, created it so this one will be able to launch the what the date picker okay so I'll go ahead and add a listener on that date picker I say date picker dot then so when I put it then then it will be able to wait for me I mean for the date picker to finish and do what and uh, and uh, give me the date so it's date picker dot then so when you write just date picker let me write it afresh here date picker dot dot then so it will give you a value that you do what that you'll have to uh to collect the date from so you can as well put here a, a what your own bracket or the normal function so in case the there's an error, let's say you want to listen to the error, 
you can just simply come here and put a comma and then you listen to an error like that so in case someone select a wrong date or in case someone does not uh, select anything and put the error in the, in the console so if in case everything is okay the date that is correct it will be given to you as a what as a value okay so i can say if this value is null let's say that uh, the date is equal to null or the value that has come i just simply go ahead and return from here so if the value is not null i'll go ahead and initialize the other date that we created okay so you say date equals to This function I think I'd not share it with you. So you can create this function. Let me show it to you. This function will accept uh, an integer because this time this data will give you a what? A timestamp. Okay. So it will accept an integer and then it will be able to do what? To return to you the date in any format that you do what that you need if you want the month and the day and the what you can be able to convert that date but if you want the timestamp you can just be able to get the mill milliseconds uh epoch that one will be able to give you the timestamp so let me remove these tools so this one will convert the date to what to the string and this is the format that you can use to uh to any day that you want so after doing that after uh, setting the date remember this is the the data to created here will go ahead and do it and say set date. I mean set state so it can update. So by doing like this, you'll be able to achieve the date picker. Okay, so you can pause the video and then you look at this function properly. Okay, and then be able to understand it. So I'm going to call it now. So I'll come to the button here. What is the where the button is? And then I call it when someone clicks on it or when someone presses it. I'll go ahead and do what I call it. This button takes context, so I'll give it what? I'll give it context. So you see, when I click pick date, it shows date picker. Mm -hmm. If I cancel, there's nothing that is done. So if I say pick date and I select the date, you see, the date is selected. Okay, pick date. Select the date, the date is what? It's selected. All right. So that's how you do date picker. Though there are some other package that make it really much more simpler than this. Okay. So you can go ahead. For example, I don't want someone to pick the date before today. Let's say that you want to make a, a system where you don't want someone to pick the date before now. So it means that here, the first, I mean, the, the, the first date should be uh, date time dot now say dot now like this so by doing like that it will be able to uh it will not allow someone pick the date before today can you see i cannot pick third i cannot pick first okay even if i go back i cannot even allow to go back you get it so that is uh, how you can do the so if you want also to lock the top side let's say that maybe you don't want someone to pick after maybe three days so I said the time dot maybe add is it add days I think okay this one doesn't have that logic can say maybe uh All right, uh, this is going to be wrong. Let me get to All right, so you can do the logic of uh, getting the next date and then don't allow someone to do what to pick that. So that one will not allow someone to pick the date beyond 2024. I mean 2023. See, so this is the last date, and then this is the first date. So you can play around this in order to validate your date and be maybe avoiding users from picking the wrong dates. So that is how you can implement the what the date uh, picker. That is how you can implement the date picker, and you can convert the date to any date that you want. This is the timestamp. In case you want the timestamp, you collect this one. All right. So uh, let us proceed and see now how you can 
achieve the time picker like this one if you want to pick time okay you want to pick time using flutter but let's see how we can achieve that so since date and time picker they're almost the same ui it everything is almost the same i'm just going to duplicate this screen and i change it to what to time picker all right so i'll come here to our screens and then i'll come to this particular screen which is date picker i'll copy it and paste it and i'm going to call this one time picker screen okay and then i'll come here to where there's date picker screen i'll select all and press alt and enter and paste it there so i'll come and change the title from date picker i mean so here from pick date time i date i put, put pick time okay so i'll come here and change the title from date light i'll just say maybe time picker so i believe everyone can do this duplicating a screen and then renaming it okay so after doing that i'm going to add this screen now in our what in our main route so it can be linked so i'll just simply come there and then duplicate that and then go ahead and put time picker as a title and then i change this to time picker screen so by doing like that uh when i come back to our home page someone should be able to see time picker so when i click on time picker you should be able to show me uh the time picker though uh this one's going to be the time instead of what instead of date all right so let's see how we can achieve that come here to time picker i already have it all right so i uh, have the first thing instead of putting date i'm going to put selected time okay so i can just come and change this one so instead of putting date i can say maybe selected time and then i can say no time selected okay and then i come and i substitute it here okay and then after i come and remove everything in this function maybe let me remove everything in this function so I can create a fresh function for time picking. All right. So we have our simple user interface that is going to allow us to pick time. All right. So let's go ahead and create a function for picking time. I'm going to copy it and explain it. Okay, so this function is going to allow us to pick what? It's going to allow to pick us time, pick time. So I'll go ahead and create um, this variable for the time picking. So we just simply come here and create this variable and call it time of a day. You create it like this, okay? Time of day. It's the data type that will be returned so after you just simply say this function you call it i mean you create it and then say selected time you call this a selected time equals to show time picker the other one has show date picker this one is show time picker and these are the parameters that are taken the initial time and then it takes this theme and that's all okay then you put also dot then and then you do the same thing that we did in the previous example of date picker okay so for each here we're just getting uh they give you the time and they give you on each time they give you the hour and they give you so the minute they can even give you the what the second for example if i come here i just simply say even uh, seconds i can be able to, ask to get it okay so after collecting the hour and the minute okay Second, of course, will always be the net because it is does not pick seconds. Mm -hmm. I say I I update this time. This one that we created here, I say time equals to 
value then string then i put hour and minutes okay so after doing that i go and call this method okay when it is being called i'll come here to this button and call it from here so it means that now someone should be able to do that to call it i'll have to give it context and then should be able to launch and allow someone to pick the day i mean pick time so if i come here pick time it picks time okay so begin with the now time and i say okay it updates okay so only that uh, i didn't see that thing of pmam let me see what else this value carries okay so it has hour hours per period minute period and period of offset and then the format that you want So you can convert it to PM or M to your own. Okay. So this is the hour of the day. The 11th hour of the day. Okay. So in case you want to use the PM or M, you can use that to convert using the uh, hour of the day. Whether it is the 11th hour. So by default, it gives you uh, the time in what? In 24 hour clock. So... That is how you can pick time and collect it in any way that you want. So I hope you've understood that. I hope you can now be able to do that to implement uh, those two. Okay, the date picker and the time picker. All right, so let's see how we can do one more thing. Uh, so we've seen how we can implement date and time pickers. Uh, let's go to progress bars. So this progress bars, they help us to show the user something when the progress is being uh, when the process is happening okay so they will help us to display okay that something is downloading or something is going on other than just leaving the user with the what with a screen that is uh, stuck without showing anything all right so let's go ahead and implement uh, this uh, progress bars Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new screen that, I've got, that we're going to call progress. So we'll come here to our route, menu routes and then create another section that we're going to call progress. Let's see if there's any relevant icon. Okay, all right, so if we come back to here, we'll be able to see our progress. So we're going to begin with the basic progress. So just simply come and copy this and add it here and call it basic progress. All right, so in here, I'm going to put the, like, the logic of being able to click there and then you see the progress. All right, so we are going to create a, a new screen for the pro progress for the basic progress. Let's create a new section, a new directory for progress. And then in that directory, I'm going to put new. I'll call it basic 
progress the dot semi basic progress screen the dot okay so let's go ahead and create a stateless widget stateful widget press the name of the of the of our class and then I import it just a minute all right so after creating that i'll just come and remove this okay all right so we'll come here and connect this one with our main screen So when I click on this progress, it should be able to take me to that empty screen. All right, so let's go ahead and do the basic progress. Okay, let's go ahead and do the basic progress. Uh, all right, so uh, we're going to put. Um, uh, what our scaffold okay and then we import it uh -huh, we're going to put a uh, white background and then the up bar okay and then we are going to go ahead and create the body that we're going to give a container that will have a child. Now this child is going to be a column. Let's give this body some padding. So it's going to be of 20 all, so it's going to be a column. That is going to have children. All right. So in those children, let us first align everything to center. All right. So uh, we're going to put now uh, uh, what our primary uh, this one the the determining the what the primary or the the basic uh, uh, loader. Okay. So this is just uh, nothing but plain text where we are targeting the main progress flow what we are called primary progress so inside there i mean in there we're going to put now maybe a container that's going to separate it from the top one and then after i'm going to create a container this just uh, okay this container is just going to help in padding or giving the height of the of that otherwise we don't give it the height then we don't be able to control it so i'll go ahead and give it height of five okay and then i'm going to put what you call linear progress okay so it's going to be it's going to have a child of linear progress indicator that is a widget by what by flutter okay so if i save it will be just like that it will just show that there is progress okay it can show that there is something that is progressing so let us see how we can control it okay let me first give it color uh -huh. so this is how we give the color so if you want to put the value of the color just say always oh, top down mention and then you open uh, color screen square and then you put here the color that you want next to it for example i put me my primary color and then the background color we just need background color and then you specify the background the background color so like this one like that you'll be able to do what to have that kind of progress bar that is moving always okay so now let's say that you want to control it okay let's say that you want to control it so if you want to control it you have to give it what you call a value okay let's say that you want to maybe show the download speed 
So you have to give it value and give it a what? A progress value. So this progress value is nothing but uh, a variable that you just created here that is going to do what? To control the, the that is going to control the what? Our progresses, okay? So I'll come here and create that variable, okay? So I'll come here on top and create that variable, okay? So it is just a double, the value just a double that has this progress. So if I save, now you see the progress at zero, zero, so I mean that it is at really, it's really at zero. Okay, so after I'm going to create this uh, update progress function that's going to be responsible for updating the what? The progresses. So this can be your own kind of function that is going to be fetching maybe data from internet and then be able to display the user. Okay, the progress. So this is just a function, it's called update progress. It's nothing but just a simple what? A simple function. So inside that, I'm going to put a, a timer. So this at a timer periodic, it will be able to do what? To execute a setting. Uh, it will be able to execute a certain function periodically after a certain period. Okay. So you just simply come and say inside this function and say new timer dot periodic claim first import it new timer dot periodic so it will take the duration how many time how long do you want it to to do what to to delay before it executes again so i can put here a uh, duration you write the word duration capital in, in beginning with the capital is just a class and then pass milliseconds so you can even pass seconds here if you want to like if you want it to execute maybe after one second so I can as well pass what seconds, right? Let me put here semicolon. So it will be executing this something that is inside here after those seconds that will have specified up there. Okay, so inside those seconds, I want to get the progress and give it a plus two. Okay, so this progress is going to be a plus or equal to two. So I'm increasing it by two. Okay, and then after I want to do what I want to say progress value. If it is uh, more than one, it should do what? It should come back to zero. Okay? So that is how it's going to keep loading if it reaches one and comes back to zero. You see? That's just a simple logic that I'm creating. Then after, I go ahead and do what? And the uh, set state. Hope this set state will be there. All right? Ah, sorry, the set state. Okay, the set will be was up. Okay, so I go ahead and do what? And update the state. So this function, I want it to be called only one time, okay? So you know things that, we, that you need to call one time, you know where to put them. You have to put them inside init state override, this one, okay? So that function will be called at the beginning of the execution. So this is just a time that's delaying for one second and then increases this first progress with, with two and then it checks if the progress is more than uh, one. It's supposed to increase by, sorry, 0 0.2 it checks if this progress is more than one then it resets it back to what to zero so by that it will be able to load wait for one second as it is increasing when it is more than one it goes back to zero hope you understand that so i'll save then i go back and I open this page afresh okay so when i click on basic progress you can see it is loading after one second and then it goes more than one it goes back to zero okay so that's how you can do. So this can be your, maybe your progress, maybe to the download, something like that, okay? So the whole point is, the progress should always be less than one in order uh, this, the, this what? This progress to be able to do what? To show you the progress. So it is, if it's less than one, when it reaches one, it will be considered as what? As a full. So here I'm checking if it's more than one, I just set it back to what? Back to zero. Okay, if I want maybe to be faster, I can maybe maybe come here and say uh, milliseconds. Okay, milliseconds, maybe I can say maybe after 200 milliseconds. Okay, so let me say after 100 milliseconds. Okay, so I'll have to open it again in order to start afresh. So you can see it is really, really fast. Okay, so I can open it afresh again. You see, so you cannot even see because milliseconds are really small. Okay, so I can 
keep it there maybe after like if you want to delay after maybe two seconds you can as well do that okay so this is just to give you a simple what a simple overview of how you can implement this what this progress bars uh -huh. so uh let's go ahead and implement uh these other ones for example this one is called uh, inter my intermine primary so this one will keep on just uh, loading without doing what without stopping let me show them to you so you can be able to practice them uh so we have uh, the progress bars let me show them to you because our time is up and i want to finish this so you have this progress bars it's just the same this one the one that the determined progress bar is that one that will be showing in steps then you have this one intermined progress bar this linear progress and then say put always stopped animation and then this one will always be what it will always be like a, it is not stopping this one the second one so you can pause the video and then you look at this one it's just the same logic this one is having the second value so this is how i create the second value and this is how i update the second value okay it's just the same logic but this one is for what is increasing one by one not two by two okay so for this second value it is increasing just by 0 0.1 not by 0 0.2 so you'll be able to achieve something like this one then circular progress progress indicators is just the same logic the same one but for them it is called circular progress indicator so you can either use the linear or you can use the circular progress indicator you can pause the video and do what and uh, practice all of them but simply those are the basics those are the basics of what of the progress indicators so you can implement them in this kind of way uh let's say that you want to make a list like this one and uh, you want maybe to show the indicator you can show an indicator like that one you remember if you don't specify the the controller it will not be able to do what uh to stop it will just keep on loading so you can do something like this okay you can do something like this all right so you can also do something like this can you see what's something that is loading on top so according to i mean from the example that you have done you can be able to challenge yourself and implement it like this in this i'm just showing you how you can implement those progress indicators in different ways i believe this one you can do it just put there on top and then try it out all right so you can as well uh this one is a refresh indicator i think already looked at it that one in some video back uh, so let's go ahead and look at these ones uh in the next what in the next video let's go and have a break of only four minutes so five minutes i mean after four minutes so five minutes past uh, i mean five minutes to ten we should be back and resume with what with uh, more content so let's have a short break and then we come back for other content so immediately at uh, five minutes to ten we should all ba be back from the break let's have a short break as we always do, we always do 40 minutes, so I'll start our timer. In our today's video, we're going to see how we can uh, implement the things that we've been learning so they can start making sense. So right now, we're going to look at how we can make such kind of uh, tabs, and then uh, we'll see how we can implement this, uh, this kind of a tab, maybe in a, in a store uh, application. We can also see how we can implement uh, this kind of tab in what in a light uh, mode application we'll also see how we can implement uh, this kind of tabs in what in a, a scroller i mean in a, in, a, in a system that can allow uh, scroll the tabs and then hide them so we have a lot of things to cover and uh, that's what we're going to implement right now so without wasting much time let's go straight into our today's business which is learning uh, about tabs then if my if time gets if if time allows us we'll go ahead and proceed also to what to forms so i have a lot of, of things to cover in this video let's get started so let me begin by setting up my font so you can be we should be able to see things clearly 
come here to settings and increase the font maybe to 18 uh, so you can see things without any problem okay so we're going to look at tabs mainly uh, so we're going to begin by creating a section of tabs so i'll come here to our application then i come here to where we have our screens i'm going to create a second a certain stage i mean a section for what for tabs so i'll come screen and say new and test the directory and then i call these ones uh tabs all right so this is where we're going to put the logic or the files of what of tabs so we're going to first begin by creating these basic tabs okay so to create basic tabs i'll just simply come here and create a new screen that i'm going to call a file and i'm going to call this one basic underscore tabs dot that okay dot that so after doing like that i'm going to go ahead and create a class of basic tabs by just simply saying uh stateful widget like this and then i write uh basic tab screen okay basic tab screen i would say basic tabs screen okay i'll go ahead and press alt and enter to import this and uh, i'll remove this key for me i don't need it okay so after doing that i'm going to link uh, this uh, basic tab key with my what with my main route here or with my main home page so i'll come here to our home page and then i'm going to create another section here uh, the section i'll call it what i'll call it uh, tabs so i'll come here and create another section that i'll call tabs so after i'm going to create um, i'm going now to create a what a clickable link okay so i'll just copy this one and then i paste it here okay so after doing that sorry i paste it here let me copy this one that is clickable and then i paste it here so after doing that i'm going to link uh this one to basic tabs so i'll come and change the name i put basic tabs and then i come and put here uh basic tab screen okay so when someone clicks there they should be able to proceed to what to basic tabs so let's go ahead and do that if i click here i'm able to see the basic tab screen I believe everyone should be able to do this all right so let's go to save time i'm going to go to our code so you can uh, just be referencing there as we explain everything step by step so come to our route i'll come to our tabs and then i'll come into basic tabs or tabs basic uh so the first thing that we're going to do right now uh we're going to extend our class with what with the amino stateful widget with the single ticker provider mixing okay so just simply come here uh to our stateful widget okay here on the state of the system here and then we go ahead and add let me first disable copilot there is this m I don't know. Right, so I'll go ahead and say with the single ticker provider mixing. So you have to add it there in order your tabs to behave. So after doing that, you're going to create uh, controllers. Uh, the controllers, the one that you use to control the tab, and maybe the one that you use to control the scroll. So you can go ahead and create these two controllers. Okay. So create the controllers just simply come here on top and then you create the first one which is going to be tab controller okay so you put it and then another one is going to be scroll controller and then you give them the names okay so after doing that so this tab controller will help us to control those tabs so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do we are going to go ahead and now do what and initialize those tab controllers so those tab controllers we shall initialize them in the initial state okay or in the init state hook so I'll come here and put init state. Then we'll come here on top and then initialize them. Okay, so you say tab controller equals to tab controller, and then here you must specify 
uh, the what the number of uh, tabs that you're going to have for some for our case we're going to have three tabs and then you put vsync then you put what this okay so this one will link with what with um, a single ticker provider so after doing that then we'll have um, system controller so I mean scroll control so you can also call this scroll control like that so make sure that you initialize them in the init state like the, the one I've done so after doing that so the next thing is uh, to dispose them in case uh, someone leaves this screen so they should be removed from the memory so you have to come here and put at dispose or you can just press dispose and then in this dispose you'll be able to dispose you dispose the tab controller dispose the scroll controller uh, when someone clicks back so you are removing them in what in memory so after doing that the next thing now we are going to create now a what our context okay so to create a context we just, shall just simply come to our context here and then return the scaffold as always do so we'll come here and turn scaffold okay so this scaffold is going to take the body okay it's going to take the body so I'll just simply come here and say body let me first disable copilot okay so say body uh, is going to take what you call nested scroll view that can take multiple scroll views I'll import it okay so this nested scroll view it must have a controller that will be controlling it that is the scroll controller that you created it so i'll go ahead and give it what a controller after giving it a controller the next thing that it must have it uh, have now the what the header silver builder so the header silver builder is the one that is going to be responsible for displaying these things in the what in the header okay so let's go ahead and do that so the header silver builder just simply header silver builder it is going to take a what um a function that will receive a co the context and the what and the whether the inner is scrolled or not so we just simply open here and this one receive a what a build context and then put your context and then it will also receive a boolean okay when the, whether the inner is scrolled or not so you put here boolean and say put inner scroll or not then after doing that you open curl bracket and then you return the what the widget like this okay so we are now going to return our what our widget or this top widget okay so this is the one that's possible for just displaying the top uh, items here if you can we're going to have nested scroll view so uh for now we're going to now just simply say maybe uh return let me first return just a simple UI return and say text and then say top and put semicolon there. So after doing that, so this nested um it must return a list of widgets because it's going to support multiple widgets on top there. Okay, so I can as well pass this one just for now. So the next thing it's going to take, it's a uh, must take now the what? So this, I'll come and finish it. I'll come and finish it, this builder later. So the next thing that's supposed to take is supposed to take the body. So the body is the content for that uh, information. So I'll just simply come and say the body. Okay. So I'll come in this and, and take the what? The body. And then I can simply say uh, text this is the body so i save so by doing like that now what haven't i done uh receive the child and a box of specific okay we're going to see how we fix this um yep have we defined the controller yes i've defined that ah sorry um yes define the scroll controller okay i'm going to see where the problem could be all right so after doing that, then you're going to return here the tab so that it can be able to what? to be controlled. So instead of returning here the border as text, you're going to return now the what? The tab view. So the tab view will have two main sections. The, the section of controlling the tabs, this one here, and then another one is the section of now where you're viewing the tab information. 
So we'll come here and return the body of this as what? As tab view. Okay? Tab view. So this tab view is going to take our children, of which they're going to be tabs. So we're going to take children. Okay? So the first children, we can define the first tab. Okay? So I can put here the first children. So this here, you can put any kind of what? Any kind of content that you want. So it can even be a normal kind of widget. Okay? So that will be our first tab. And then you can also add other tabs. Okay? All right. So after doing that, now the next thing is now we're going to add now the controller, the tabs here, the one that you see here on top, which is going to be the controller. Okay? So uh, here I did a mistake. I'm not supposed to have done that. I'm not supposed to turn a normal text. Okay, so uh, on top here, uh, in this widget, I mean this list of widget, we are going to return what we call um, the silver up bar. Okay, we're going to return what we call a uh, silver up bar, and then we'll also attach the remaining widgets. So this silver up bar, it will allow me to organize my things in this way. Okay, so just go ahead and turn silver up bar. Okay, then after doing that, you can as well mimic these ones as uh, normal widgets. Like this. Alright, so after doing that, the next thing you're going to do is now to turn now uh, the silver up bar. It will have the style and that style is one that uh, you can use to maybe to color your system. Okay, the, the status bar and the rest. All right, let me first go back and open this page again. Okay, the application crashed the whole of it. All right, so you return the silver up bar. And this is, uh, I mean, you return the silver up bar. And then in this silver up bar, you put the what? You put the, the silver up bar theme that you want to style, like the way you see here, the overlay theme. Uh, the overlay styling and then this silver up bar is going to have a title so this title is what you'll be able to see here on top okay so the silver up bar you can design it and put give it a title then after giving it a title so this is in silver up bar you can give it a title the next thing that you can give it you can give it the what uh the background color okay so you can give it the background color then you can be give it the leading the leading is the icon that you'll see on top and then the um, the actions the actions there are these um the actions there are these uh, buttons that you see here so that's the one that one that you call what that you call actions so you can be able to create your own what your own uh up bar as, as you can see here so let me go ahead and provide those ones here all right so after doing that so you can pause the video and you look at uh, this is our action that I've passed. So this uh, silver up bar, it will have, it will have what we call uh, the bottom. So the bottom, the bottom is now the content that you see here. Okay. So uh, in the bottom, we are going to pass the tab controller. Now the one that is going to be controlling this section, which is this one here. So let's go ahead and give it the bottom. So I'll come here uh, to this silver bar and give it what you call bottom. Okay. So in the bottom, we're going to pass now the tab, the tab bar. Okay. So now let me explain. We have two things. The tab, which is the one that's going to show the view. And then the tab bar. The tab bar, it is the one that is going to do what? To now have the controls or the controllers. Okay. So that are the two things. You can place this one anyway. Uh -huh. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to style it. Okay. So let me go ahead and paste this one. So the first thing is going to have maybe uh, the color. So I'm saying the color of the tab it should be white, and then uh, the indicator it should of the tab uh, it should be of this size, and then also I indicate the weight of the what of the tab. So after doing that, now we have to pass the tabs. The tabs now the content that is going to appear here on top or to control the the, the the tab itself so you pass the tabs and these tabs you put the tab so when you say tab you can pass an icon you can pass a title so you can even try to see other possible 
are things that you can pass you can pass it's hate you can give it a child you can give it text so there are so many things that you can do what that you can give you can give it an icon margin etc so for us here we're just providing it an icon and then uh we return what the text okay so that the tab that are going to control are the main tab then uh, lastly you have to give it a controller so this controller is one that is going to control uh, the tab view wherever it is so this tab view i hope it also it must have a what it must have a controller i think that's what i had forgotten so the tab view must also have a controller so this controller is then that is going to connect with this tab what with this i mean this tab this con tab tab controller is then that's going, that's going to connect the tab view with the tab controller okay so i hope you understand so if i open you should be able to see that it is so beautiful okay so you see i'm able to scroll to scroll to scroll but the challenge is uh the challenge is our tab has not changed the color so we have to give it what uh this scroll bar we have to give it a background color of primary so you can be able to do it to have that color that you want so come here to this uh, silver bar and also add it what a background color of primary so this it can be any color that you want and then you put uh elevated to inner scroll so when you say elevated to inner scroll then we able to have something like this uh so this leading i've already shown you it is the one that is going to be on top here in case you want to replace this you can put the leading and then you put the any icon of your choice okay so uh whoever can color icon by icon but for us since we are using the white theme that's why our things look to be in what in uh, black but you can color them if you want to uh one by one all right so let me explain what i've just done so you can uh, go ahead and color this but if you style the whole thing of course to be the color that you want so let me go ahead and explain what i've done okay i'm going to explain everything step by step so you can understand the concept and then you proceed and i'm also going to remove the misconception that you might have got right now all right so here we are having the what all right sorry about that uh so here we are having uh the tab controllers so the tab controller is the one that is very important if you, if you just forget about even this scroll controller so this tab controller is one that is very important its purpose is to link the tab view wherever it is the tab view it's one that is going to be displaying the content with the tab controller or with the tab uh, navigation bars so the tab navigation bars they are the ones that are going to do what uh, to be displaying the content okay um let's just pick this person uh hello Phil, i'm in a lecture can you call me like after one hour yeah call me at 11 please all right okay so i was saying uh this tab is the most important okay it's the most important okay it's the most important because the one that is going to collect the controllers with the what with the with a section that's going to control it okay and also another thing if you're going to have tabs you must also add this single ticker provider on your what on your state so forget about this second one eh? so when you're defining a tab uh, you have to initialize it like that so you give it the number of tabs that you're going to put and then put vsync to this all right so after doing that the next thing is that um, you have to now put um, the the container i mean what you want to display so one thing that you should know I can as well do something like this i can for example i can comment this one okay and we have our normal scaffold okay and then this scaffold we give it uh, uh maybe we have our up bar and then we have here maybe our column this is just the normal column that you know all right so if i do like this still everything will be okay i can as well come here and give our normal up bar and then maybe say up bar and then you give maybe a title
okay so you see I just want to remove the misconception that maybe we might have got like maybe tabs are hard. So after doing that, you see we have nothing because I've commented this one. So the next that you're going to do, you're going to keep, for example, these children. Okay. So first of all, you're going to need the controllers that are going to control your tab. So to create controllers, you can put them anywhere. You can put them maybe to any design that you want. You can place them anywhere. So, but the main important part is that your tab controllers should be having the controller um the controller what they should be having the controller uh, uh the controller variable or object that is going to link them with the what with what it should control so you see here i saw a simple column i've just given what you call uh the tabs okay so tab bar what you call the tab bar so this tab bar it will take just a few things it will take uh the indicator color that you want it will take the tab, but the most important part must take the what the the, 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 the the tab controller and the number of tabs that you're going to have. So these are the icons or what you want to display. So if I save, you see, I'll see that. So if I say maybe it should be blue or black, uh, my icon will always be black. So you see, you can even create such a what? Such a beautiful design. So right now I've just created a what? A controller, but I've not put now the content that I want to put in this controller. So if I want, I mean, that I want this tab controller to control. So if I want to put the content, I just simply come here in bottom. For example, I can now put expanded because I don't know how content, how huge the content is going to be expanded. And then here in this scroll view, I'm going to put, I mean, in this expanded, and I'm, I'm now going to put my what? I'm now going to put my tab view, this one here okay tab view so i'll come here and put tab view okay so the tab view uh it must also take the what the controller that is going to control it so the tab view is now the content that you want to display remember it's going to have a child this child is like it can be your content like anything that you want in this uh child okay so since there are three i'm also putting here three children in this what in this tab view so if i save i'm going to achieve the same thing so this one can even be scrollable can you see so forget about this nested scroll view whatever whatever just look at what i've just explained right now those are the main things that you did that you do want in order to create such a kind of um, a whatsapp application where here you have your messages here you have your status and here maybe you have your calls you see so here you can put any kind of content that you want so you can go ahead and look at all the possible functions that this tab view controller can take and also maybe the tab bar can take okay so that is uh, all you need about tabs however you can go deep and uh, find out more things maybe colors and the rest the animation, the animation all those things so that is uh, about tabs so it means that in this one you can put anything for example here in the content i can even call this one and then maybe i put here i put here for example my widget and say maybe tab one tab one content and then and then I open bracket and then i create the widget of this okay so see i'm just trying to show you what you can possibly do then i'm going to give you a challenge that you should try okay so when i set up one content i come here and i return so i can return for example uh, a single uh, okay i can return for example a column okay so it means that the tab one is going to have a what a column so this column can have children Okay, so in this children you can have, for example, text one, two, three, four, five, and blah, blah, blah. So when I save, 
you'll see that in the first tab we have any content that we want in the second tab we have another content so you can design this content to anywhere that you want so it, it can even be scrollable if you want it to be it can even be a dynamic list so that is how you can create tabs so i hope you've understood the basic concept of creating tabs so let me see the challenge that you can do i can give you as a challenge also you can try it out so if it is a, a new tab of course you'll have to try it together so you should be able to do something like this uh, now we should be able to implement a store tab where you're going to have a tab like this one i hope you can see that we're going to have a tab like this one however here the challenge is i mean the, the, the challenge that i'm giving you is when you scroll this one should do what should disappear so you should be able to have a tab like this one so you can challenge yourself and pause the video and try to do this kind of a tab we're going to have the scroll the scroller and then the images like these ones and then should be scrollable and then you should be able to have the tabs maybe this one can be maybe a page for music for music this one may be a page for movies this one may be a page for shop and this one may be a page for my account settings okay and then you display the relevant content there it is the same knowledge but i want you to challenge yourself by doing something like this okay all right so that's the first challenge that i have for you this one you can also try it it is the same tab please pause the video and try this challenge okay just change the label color and then the active color but put the different content because i already showed you how to create this kind of grid so merge the knowledge get the grid that i told you before and see how you can achieve something like this okay so it should be able to achieve that all right so you should be able to achieve this so instead of putting instead of putting um instead of putting um, um uh, an, a text here okay a text here you should put a what you should put an icon okay and then change the icon to the color of the active tab so that is the challenge that i'm giving you also to try it is possible okay now another thing that you should you're observing here is like when i come to this for example movies the title changes so it means that there's a listener that changes when a tab changes so i want you to challenge yourself and put a tab listener so i think this one you can put from here here and put Make sure I can play the listener. So this is um, uh, the one for and for icon tabs. I want to show you how you can implement the listener. So this is how you add a listener. You add a listener on the controller. You put add listener. So this listener will be executed when something change. Okay. So you can just simply implement it like this. So you can add listener here. So you check if it is not null by just doing like this. And then put add listener. So this add listener will be called every time uh, the tab what the tab changes okay so you can go ahead and say when the tab changes you get the active index 
So let's say that we have our title, this one that we call tabs. Let's say that is a dynamic variable, or it is a variable called title. So the title by default, we can say maybe it is uh, a string, a string title uh, called tabs by default. All right. So now we want when, when it changes, when the tab changes, uh, this title should also change. So we'll come to this and add a listener here on init. We add, we check if it is not null, we add listener. And then you say, when changes, you go ahead and get the index of the, of the what? Of the title. So you can have this in form of index, or you can just simply say, um, title equals to, and then you say, tab, let's say that you want to identify which tab is it. So if you want to get the position of the current tab, this is how you get it. You just simply say uh, the tab and check if it is not null and then you say dot index. So dot index, it will give you the latest active tab position. Then you put dot set state. Okay, so if you can put a condition and say if is one, then display this. If it's two, then display this, something like that. So this one will always change the what? This tab. So since this function is only called when the application is open or when the page is open, I'll first go back and open it again. So you see, when it change, it is changing to tab zero. So the first Z tab is tab zero. The second one is tab tab one and then three. So it is beginning from zero. So if I want maybe to show one, two, three, I can just simply come here and put uh, plus one. So by doing like that, we shall be able to see this one is, uh, so I'll restart again. So when I change, see, this one is tab one, tab two, tab three. So this listener in simple terms is being called when it is changing. So it can be your logic here per page or per respective page of what you want to do when someone goes to that particular tab. I hope you are together, guys. Okay. So you should be able to, to do something like this. So I'm giving you this one as a challenge also. Do uh, something like this. Pause the video and then you do an example like this one. You should be able to achieve it. So right now we are now on implementation. I'm not going to do everything for you. I'll show you how you can do it and then I show you what you should do in order for you to, to trigger your brain and see if you're really understanding these things. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to achieve something like this. Okay. Now, if the tabs are too many, you can enable the scroll view. Okay. Let's say that you have like 10 tabs and they cannot fit all of them in the screen. You can enable the what? The scroll. So if there are too many, let's say that you can make like uh, 10 tabs. And then you want it to be scrollable. You just simply come here when you're initializing it and put. Sorry, come here to the tab bar. Put it here to the tab bar. And put is scrollable and make it to true. So if you make it to true these tabs will be able to do what? To be scrollable, if there are many. If you make it to false, it means that they'll try to balance the available space and make them themselves fixed there without being able to be scrolled. Okay, but if you're expecting many tabs, let's say like 10, you can make it to uh, scrollable to be true. Then that those tabs will be able to do what? To, to, be, to, to scroll, okay? So pause the video and challenge yourself to do something like this where you have like many tabs and you should be able to do what? To scroll them. Pause the video and do something like that. All right, so that is uh, a tab for you. So you should also be able maybe to do a tab like this one. Okay, so you can even disable the single scrolling. So you just change the user interface. Instead of putting just the normal icon over the tab, you can just simply put this kind of icon so you can be able to do what? To scroll them like these ones. 
okay this is just like a text that you have here but the difference is it is doing what it is um the difference is it is uh it is having the background color and also the container and do the padding and it is scrollable but they are what but they are tabs so you can challenge and do something also like this one okay pause the video and then do it like this this is nothing but a container that has uh, that kind of text and the background color and then these are list of widgets that you have already done in the when you did what when you did um, uh, cards if you still remember so pause the video and challenge yourself and do something like this okay so you can make a news application where you can have your maybe trending news all news new news or the featured news something like that and then you click on a tab you will be able to show the relevant content according to what i showed you here that you can even design a separate widget and then present it as a what as a tab content of a certain tab so go ahead and do that so and then almost everything that i've explained you can now relate and see that you'll be able to do what to achieve it so pause the video and do at least more than two challenges that i've asked you to do in order to know that you've mastered this knowledge of tabs all right so we'll proceed to the next step and we're going to look at uh, what we call steppers i think our time is up we're going to do that in the next video so in the next video we're going to see how we can do steppers steppers that help us to show something step by step and we can also use them when we are onboarding someone on what on our application so in the next video we're going to see how you can do this kind of uh, stepper what we call wizards okay so make sure that uh, you don't miss so we're going to have a very short uh, break and then come back and see how we can uh, accomplish this kind of what this kind of things or these steppers all right so we'll let us be back at 10 past 10 past 10 so 10 past 10 after six minutes we should be back and then do our last session we're going to see these steppers will be of next video uh, right now we're going to work on what on forms so we're going to see how we can create such a login form as I told you that today we are implementing all what we've been learning into now the real world user interfaces. So today we're going to see how we can implement, how we can create such a login system. We're going to see how we can create such a, such a, a login user, I mean sign up user interface. We're going to see how we can create such a profile um, interface for the form. We're also going to see how we can create such a, an interface for maybe a detail, for big text. We're also going to see how can create uh, such an interface for collecting the address of users. We're also going to implement uh, maybe this checkout. How we can create uh, checkout information for the user. We are also going to implement how we can create a sign up login in a dark mode like this one. We are also going to see how we can implement this kind of an um, outline. So I'm going to implement most of these ones, and uh, the others I'll give them as your what, as your challenge to try out. So we're going to see how we can create different kind of uh, forms that you always use in our day-to-day -day, uh, life. So without wasting much time, let's go straight and see how we can now start implementing what we've been learning and create a what? A login form. I mean, different kinds of forms. So we have already opened our application. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the main page and create a second a special section of what? Of... Um, of forms so i'll come here and then simply come here right click on the screens and create a new directory that i'm going to call forms okay so in this form directory i'm going to go ahead and create um what we're going to go ahead and create um uh the, the our first form okay our login form so i'll just simply come here and say new File, so I can begin the word form login. I can say login form screen dot dot. Okay, and then we come here and create stateful widget and call it login like this. So I'll go ahead and remove this and then I import the states 
like this. All right, so that's going to be our login form. Now the next thing we're going to connect this login form with the main screen. So we'll come to our main screen, which is this one, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and create what we call login. And then we're going to put there the clickable item. Ah, sorry, this is going to be uh, forms, a section of forms. And then it's going to be uh, the login form. Then we'll go ahead and collect this. It's a guard this and then put this one login form. All right. So we're going to see now. So all these things we've covered them, okay? Well, good progress. Uh, so right now we're going to see how we can implement this login form. So when you click here, we are seeing nothing, of course. So we're going to create and see how we can implement the other login form that I demonstrated to you. So I already created it here. I'm going just to copy as I explain, okay? Or write a few things as explained in order to save our time form form login all right so this is one that you're going to create so the first thing that we're going to do we have already created our skeleton so we're going to begin our up bar and then this up bar we are going to hide it okay we're going to create our, our first up bar so begin i'll begin by creating our scaffold so i'll remove this one i'll remove this and put out called scaffold Okay, and then we give the background color to gray and pass a hundred. Okay, so that one will be our simple user interface. So we're designing. Uh, so the next thing we're going to create now our app bar. So this whole thing on top is an app bar. So again, create an app bar. So I'll come here and put app bar and then open. And then after, we're going to give this background color of app bar to be blue then for the color like this so we'll have that blue okay so the next that we're going to do we're going to give, make the icons on top here to be white so we have to pass this system overlay to be white so since our theme is really uh, white icons they so automatically will be white so now we have white icons okay so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove this uh, front icon of leading. So let's just simply come and put leading automatically, I mean automatically leading to be false. Or automatically imply leading to be false, then this back button will disappear. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put what you call uh, preferred size, we're going to put a uh, sized box. So go ahead and put preferred sized, or you can put also what you call sized box. That's going to be uh, the what is going to be the bottom of the login. I mean of this up of the scaffold. I mean of the up bar. So give it bottom and then put preferred size. So this preferred size like this. So it has to take multiple things. So it has to take a what? The size or the height that you need. So you can just simply put here a height of 140. So it's a size format um, uh, from height 150. So by doing like that, it will be able to uh, create a 150 height of that uh, preferred size widget. Uh, so after doing that, we're going to give now the container that we're going to put this information. Okay. So just simply come here and give it a child that is going to be a container. So in the save, we'll have something beautiful like that one. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to give now the content in this container. So this container, you can give it some paddings as I've specified there. So it can look good. All the content inside it should look good. And then after, we can also align the content to bottom left. Okay. So come here and put align the content to bottom left. All right. So after doing that, then we're going to go ahead and put the uh, constant height to expand to 150. Okay, then after we're going to put now the column, okay, the column of this uh, as the child of this container. 
so I put child and then put column and then after we are going to pass now uh, the cross section to always be start the cross axis alignment and then we give it children okay so in this children is where we're going to put this word login and then format it to that okay so i'll come here and pass login so you're using the the heading style that i already put in the project that came with using the style then we begin from the heading and then in this setting we give it the color of white we give it the the font weight of bold okay and then we'll end up having uh this kind of what this kind of word with the with the word login okay so after doing that then the next thing you're going to give the container 8 of 40 so it can separate the two so after this login i'll come here and give a container or you can even use a size box of 40 of 10 and then after i write maybe my welcoming message here it can be uh description message that is welcoming the user and i give it this style i give it just uh it's extending the body one and then i give it the color of what of white so by doing like this i should be able to have such a beautiful thing so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do uh we are going to go ahead and put the email okay so this is going to be now the content of the so you can pause the video and look carefully what i've just done okay all of this is just in upper so now we're going to give this uh, scaffold the content okay so i'll come here and give this scaffold uh the body okay so the body is going to be a single scroll view so i want the user to be able to scroll just in case their screen is small okay so a user should be able to scroll this section okay otherwise if you don't do that then your screen will have issues when someone wants to log in so give this one single scroll view okay and then after we come and uh, give it a padding so single scroll view can take padding of uh so i give padding of eight and then after i go ahead and give it what the cross alignment to uh always what always start so after i'm going to put now my container inside the single scroll view okay of which i'll give the alignment of right, i can leave the alignment let me go ahead and give a container so this single scroll view will take what a single child of course as it sounds and then i give the container so the container we are going to give it a width of one of 250 so it can have a limited width so i just simply come here and give the container 250 width and then after i go ahead and give it a uh, chill children okay so children so child i mean i'm going to give it child so the child is going to be what now the column itself okay so i come here and give it a uh, column like this so this column will take children now that we're going to do what to you to 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 to, to display here but remember we have limited their what their width uh so i can make it always to be on top and start as a cross axis alignment then i'll go ahead and give the height of four of what of 50 so i can have this space on top here okay the height of 50 and then after i'm going to go ahead and give the text field input what you call the text field okay and then i allow someone to enter the email okay so you can pause the video and create such a what a text field that will only accept email addresses so if i save like that it will always be like that uh -huh. so after doing that uh so here we'll collect the email address okay so i have to start this with align center this container will align and then it pass alignment of center like this so it should be centered okay you can as well expand the width and then send it it's all the same anyway so we have that one so the next thing that we're going to do now is now to give the what the height of five 
All right, so after doing that, then I'm going to give a what? A te another text field that's going to collect the what? The username. I mean the password. So you put obscure as true. So it can be able to hide it. So I'll do that. So when I save, I'll get that. All right? Uh, so after doing that, the next thing that we're going to do now, we're going to have a container again of five. Uh, so it can separate that from what? From the... Um, from the checkbox. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And then after, we are going to go ahead and give it the row. And this row will have a checkbox and then the word remember. And then the text of remember me. Okay. So if I come here, you'll see what I've just done. This is just a checkbox, okay, which can be on change, and then we, we change what the user has done. And then here we have a uh, material size up, which is going shrink shrink to wrap, okay. So uh, on top, okay. So after doing that, then next to that row, we put text remember me, and then we style this text like this, as you can see, okay. So if we do this, we'll be able to achieve something like that where someone can toggle and put remember me or not. All right, so after doing that, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to put the height of 15 and then we'll be able to put the login, I mean the, the button of login. So you can pause the video and see what I've just done right now. And then I'll go ahead and put here the height of 15. And then after putting the height of 15, I'm just going to put the what? The elevated button which is going to be the button of logging in i believe everyone can do this okay so i put the button uh you can format any the button in any way that you want so by doing like that you will have come up with our simple login user interface so you can use this login in your application right now or you can use it even later in any way that you do it that you want so you should try it to you could also you should try to really do this by your own self in order or by following the video in order to make sure that you are con confident that you have really learned what i've been teaching you so you can see it's a nice it's the most it's not the most nice but it is nice uh, uh login page that we have created using the right principles in a way that if someone even if they have a small phone they'll be able to, they'll have ability to do what uh to scroll ah so that's how we have implemented that one all right so let's proceed to another one so we can create this sign up so as i told you i'm going not going to explain everything a b c d e f like this i'm just going to be doing the basic one and then i show you how you can implement the rest so go ahead and challenge yourself and do the sign up. If you have done the login that it looks like this, okay? So why can you also why can you fail to do a sign up that looks like this? So to save time, I'll leave this one as your challenge. So you have to pause the video and do this on your own and see what you if you can really achieve it. So this one is just a radio button, okay? And then this is the button like the one that we created in the previous video. And then this one is just next to it, but with a different word, with a different color. So can you pause the video right now and uh, do what? And uh, and do what? And, and uh, challenge yourself and do something like this for sign up. All right. So this one, I'll leave it for you. All right, so we have another one, the profile data. This one, we're going to do it together. And then we'll also have with icon, you'll do this one on you by yourself, okay? So for me, I'm going to do the first one. Oh, I don't know if you do this one or the other one. I think, uh, let me do this one. Let me do this one. And then you will challenge yourself and do this one for the profile. But for now, let me do, let us do this one the profile sorry the that with the icon what uh form 
so this form only has icon instead of text so let's go ahead and do this together and then we'll select yourself and do the one which i just demonstrated previously so so i'm just going to uh duplicate this one and then i'll remove everything and then i ex explain everything step by step so we are going to call it what i conform All right, so we're going to connect this icon form with our main what? With our main route. So I'll come to our menu route, and then I duplicate this. I call this one. I import it, and I call this one what? I conform. All right, now let us go back and then you should be able to do what? Uh, to click on icon form. Okay, so in this icon form is where we're going to put the logic of uh, uh, designing the other icons. I mean, something like this. All right, okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Alright, so now if you want to reuse the styles, okay, if you want to use maybe the text style, like you see our text style are having almost the same style. You can begin by defining this style. You can even put them in an external file and then just be referencing them. Okay, so that's what you're doing here. You first define the style, since it is going to have the same styles, the same color, and then we'll be just substituting them. Okay, so I'm going to define my style for the what so i come here on top here this is my text style so put text style and then put text style and then put create text style and then pass color okay so it's going to be pink of 800 and then the height is going to be uh 1.4 and then the font size is going to be uh 16. so this is going to be my standard style for what for the text that i'm going to use in this form you can add even multiple what multiple things that you want the background color etc okay so if this style i can reuse it many times so if it, if it was if it was static i can even reference it from wherever it is okay so since i'm going to since i've seen that i'm going to write many things and they're going to have the same color duplicated i define it only one time as a theme and then I can reuse it. You can even reuse it in what? In a separate file so that your things should be on the same standard. So we're going to define another one. So you can pause the video since you have understood. You can define these other ones. So this one is underline input border, of which you can see it's got underline input border. And then we define the border colors, the border size, all of them at once. After defining these at once, so what does it mean? It means the next thing you're just going to do what? To reuse them wherever you want. It can even be outside the what? Outside this screen. Alright, so after doing that, now the next thing is now to create a scaffold. Okay, so I'll come this scaffold. Okay, so our scaffold's already there. And then you give it the background color of white. So, you give a background color, a bit about the, the scaffold background color to white, that's what you'll get. Uh -huh. So, we go ahead and give the up bar. Okay. So, I believe everyone here can do the up bar. So, I'll just get my up bar and then put it to this uh, scaffold. Okay. So, if you want to color the, 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 the icon bars, just simply pass the style, system style in the up bar and then to automatically update the color in the what in the status bar 
then this is the background color of pink so it's going to be like the same color okay so if i save i'll have something like this if you want to change the icon color this icon that you're seeing here you can as well change it by using what you call uh icon theme and then it, it takes what you call icon theme data and then you can put the color to white so by doing like this to change the icons that are in what that are in up by to change their color to the color that you want all right so after doing that uh the next thing is now we're going to put the content okay it's now going to put the content so i'm going to create a single scroll view so because this form can be huge so users should be able to do what to scroll so i'll come here and um, let me collapse the upper i'll come here to the body i'll come here and create what they call a body body and then give it single scroll view so this single scroll view it can take the axis and make it vertical okay and then its child is going to be what the column okay and the column is going to take multiple what multiple children okay so the first child that you're going to take you're going to design this icon that you're seeing here behind okay so i'm going to copy it and then explain everything step by step that is the first thing that we're going to design that big icon that you're seeing behind so i'll put it here and then explain it step by step so uh, the first thing that is there is the container and then it has the height of 230 then inside it there is tuck okay because you see this button is kind of top and it's also maybe kind of it is the middle of everything so it is the middle of everything because we have what we have stuck okay so the icon we put it i mean then we put also the icon of a person and then the icon of a person is going to have a size of 220 and then after putting the icon of a person so this icon of a person it is this one here okay so remember the size is 240 i mean 230 but the icon we have forced it to be 240 what does it mean it means it's going to leave some um, other space in the bottom so in the space that has weight left here it's where we're going to put now the what our icon of camera so you just simply put transform translate values this one so in, so it can be able to do what to be changing when you're moving it and then after you give it what some margin and then you give that container an alignment you see an alignment which is alignment bottom left and then you, inside this container is where i give now the what the the floating uh, action bar and then this we give it uh we give it the content such as the background color and also the icon itself and also when someone presses it you trigger something so you can add as well add multiple what multiple um ideas on something like this so if i save we'll have this one exactly okay so you see our icon is there and clickable and looks so nice and so you see so this one is in bit bottom because this one is bigger than this and it is also assigned that side all right so after doing that the next thing you're going to do is to create now the forms themselves okay it's not to create the form themselves so each form item is going to just simply be in this column okay okay so we're going to have a container inside the widget remember this this first container was for the first form so i mean for the first icon so we wanted it to spend 100 percent of width 
that's why I had to put it outside the container. Then the second container is that we're going to limit or put the form inside there and also limit its what? Its uh, padding. Okay. So I'll come here and then collapse this by clicking here. And then after, we can go ahead and put our container. Okay. So in this container, I want to give it some padding. And then you can say padding all to be 15. All right. So after doing that, so it means that the container that has come here next is having the padding of 15 from all sides. Okay. Then it's going to have now the, 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 the child, which is going to be a column. All right. So in this column, um, I'm going to give the cross axis assignment to center. How to start. All right. So after doing that, if I save, I'll see nothing, of course. Then in this column, I'll go ahead and give children. Okay. So the first child is going to be this text field. Okay. So I'm going to copy it and then I explain it. Okay. So I'll just get this one and then I'm going to explain it. But for you, you should write it because you don't know it. <laughs> So it is going to be a text field. So text field, it takes what you call text style. So we pass here our first text style. Remember the text style you have already designed it. You should be having these colors. All of it, you have already designed it. And it is now a variable that can be used in more than one what? In more than one text field or in multiple text fields. So in here, what we do, we pass that variable. And then you can maybe specify the keyboard to be of type text and also maybe the cursor to have the same one to have the same colors okay so after we give decoration uh input decoration so it takes what a leading of an icon this is how you do it you specify now the icon to be there in front okay and then the icon is what is gray so we go ahead and give it some margins as you can see there and then the label of what should appear in front of that and then also uh if we want to enable the borders or not okay so see here the enable linear border i pass the linear variable the linear border i mean the linear style variable that we created okay and then here we pass the forecast so in someone is forecast we will show this and when someone is uh, just uh, the body is enabled, will show this color or the normal color of the border. So you can pause the video and look at that. Okay. Um, this guy is in the wrong place. It's not supposed to be in stack. It's supposed to be here. Okay. So you can see my form has started getting what getting shape so i can go ahead and add another one all right so now we are here assume that now you want one to be on one side like this phone number and then the phone number type to be on the other side okay so in that case you're going to need a what you're going to need a row okay so in that row you'll put the same fields that we have just demonstrated right now so i'll just simply come here and put the row uh, so i'll show you how we achieved it Did I put it in the right place Okay, these are supposed to be inside here where there is padding. So I'll come here and put size box of height 5. And then after, after putting this size box of height 5 or 10, I'll go ahead and do it. And now, uh, display the what the form that I draw so if you want to look at the format that I draw it's just uh, a row that has expanded and then the form 
information icon and also a row that has expanded and then the second form and then here at last we're having that icon that is pointing down as the what as the suffix icon okay we call it suffix icon so by doing like this you'll be able to do what to uh to put your same rows in the same columns i mean uh to put two rows in this i mean to put two columns in a single one in a single row so you can play with the share of the space by just playing with these uh flex values that you're seeing in what that you're seeing here in the expanded something like that okay you can even put one one so it can be equal so you can try it out out okay so that is how you put the phone number okay so you can pause the video and look at what i've just done so the next thing is uh now how we're going to put those emails so this is going to be the same like the one that we've just done on top so you just challenge yourself and go ahead and add them so I'll remove this row i mean i'll collapse it and then i add the one that's going to display the emails and the rest okay so the email and the email type so you can see how i'm achieving it by the use of what by the use of row and then this is the second extension that is the text field and it is having what we call a suffix this thing that will appear like a what like a drop down all right so the next thing is now to add for example the address to so the address going to take full screen so i'll not explain because i've already explained it so i'll come and collapse this row and then put the what the address okay so you'll see the relevant icon and uh on a relevant uh form field uh -huh. so you can go ahead and register the remaining things okay on your own because uh we have already explained the what the core concept so you are able to come up with a form like this one where it can even be what it can even be scrollable you see it can as well be scrollable so that is how you implement the what uh the profile is it uh the, the user collector form okay so i hope you're learning and i hope you're getting the concepts okay so our time is almost up i'm going to give you a few challenges then in the next lecture i'll finish the remaining forms so i want you to challenge yourself by doing this sorry uh we've already finished with icon so i want you to challenge yourself by doing this can you do that you challenge yourself and do this however we will do it in the next video okay can you challenge yourself and do this kind of an, apl an application challenge yourself so me i'm giving you ideas of things that you should do what that you should do okay so challenge yourself and do this one also okay so challenge yourself and do this sign up like this one but in the next video we'll have to review and uh fix and work on all most of them or if not all of them so go ahead and challenge yourself and do all these what all these form user interfaces so in the next class you should be able to show me maybe some that you have done okay so don't just pause the video challenge yourself and do these things but in the next class which is tomorrow you are going to do them together so that is it for today so tomorrow we'll finish this form but that does not stop you from practicing them and then after we'll proceed to uh toolbars i think this one already explained them just only did to show you how we can implement them this toolbars i think will explain them then we'll proceed to what to the profile okay for example you want to make a pro a polygon profile like this that one will be after we have finished the what uh the forms so make sure that you subscribe to my youtube channel so when i upload the next video you are there all right so that's it for today uh go ahead and practice don't just watch so once you practice your user interface you can even keep them somewhere 
when you want to do an application you just collect what you already have and then into them in real world so yesterday we saw how we can create a login page how we can create registration pages we saw how we can create uh, tabs with the uh, real world examples and we also went ahead and deal with the uh, forms how we can design different kind of forms so today we are going to see how you can make uh, different profile pages in simple terms we are going to do something like this we are going to design this user interface where you can create maybe let's say that you're making an application where you'll have uh, profile pages of different users so you see we're going to learn how you can make something like this so you can expand you can scroll on top and then the the upper will collapse and then the picture will remain there fixed and then these things will be expandable so we're going to see how we can make such a kind of user interface so we're also going to see how we can make um, a profile page like this one we are going to see how you can make another profile page like this one so we're going to merge what we've been learning and see how we can put them together to achieve uh, this uh, combined uh, user interfaces that you can implement in real world so without wasting much time let's go straight into our today's business and get started so you can see i've already opened our, pre our project and then i'll go to the emulator that we shall use for practicing which is this one and uh, you can see i've done what i have uh, already uh, done what i've already run our application so if this is your first video i recommend you to go to our previous videos and watch them so you can uh, get enough foundation of what we are discussing in this video series but if you're an expert all what you need is just download the scratch project the link in the description and then start from here where we are whether that project will help you to give you the assets such as images and uh, strings and dummy data uh, and you'll be able to proceed from from where we are right now so let's go straight and uh, create here a section of what of profiles so i'll come here and then come here to our screens and create a new what a new directory directory called profiles okay so in these profiles i'm going to add a special profile this one that we're going to do let me i think let me just uh, separate the two because i did use one but it's like to disturb let me see let me see Okay. All right. I got this. Okay, got this. All right. So, then to come to our routes and then come here to where there is what, where there is profiles. And then we're going to do this profile of a what of a polygon this one we're going to begin by doing this one okay so it's not going to be a simple one but let's face it and design it together all right so we have, we're going to begin by putting a section of profiles so i've already created the directory so the next thing that i'm going to do i'm going to add the section of profile in our main route so i'll come to our main route and create another section that i'm going to call profiles okay so this one I'm going to call it profiles and then I can change this maybe uh, an icon to user icon and then after I'll come and put this one here all right so I'm going to call this one uh, profiles okay I mean okay the first one I'm going to call it polygon profile all right so after doing that i'm going to let me first disable copilot all right so i'm going to create a what a screen for the polygon profile okay so i'll come to our pages i mean our, our files and then create a new what a new file that i'm going to call a uh, polygon profile screen dot that okay 
So this screen is where I'm going to put the what? The logic of creating the polygon profile. So I just simply say stateful widget. I say polygon dot. Uh -huh. So I mean I put that uh, screen. Then I'll go ahead and import our what? And import our our states. After I'm going to connect this with our main route. So someone if clicks on the main route, they should be able to come to here. So I'll come here to our main route and then I change this screen to polygon screen. All right. So after doing that, now I'm going to make this clickable in a way that someone clicks here and then they come to this polygon screen. Okay, so if someone clicks here, is able to access this polygon screen. Now, let us begin designing the polygon screen. I mean the polygon profile screen. So I'm going to begin with the scaffold. So I'll come here and put a scaffold. Instead of placeholder. Okay. I'll import the scaffold. Alright, so after importing the scaffold, the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to put now uh, the nested scroll view. Okay. So this someone should be able to scroll it like this. Okay. Let's do that. So we're going to put the nested scroll view. So the body of this polygon, I mean the body of this profile is going, I mean of this is going to be a nested scroll view. Can go ahead. Uh, I put the silver up bar. So this silver up bar is the up bar of which when you scroll, you see, it will change the color and the background. I believe you have ever seen that that kind of what? That kind of um, you've ever seen that kind of uh, of uh, of user interfaces where a screen is big and when you scroll, it keeps on changing the up bar and then fix it to somewhere okay so that's you achieve that by using the nested scroll view and then you give it a what a header sli sliver uh, builder and then that header silver builder is where you put that logic of by default it will have a, i mean it will have a certain design in background and when someone scrolls it changes it and fix it to a specific color so this is how you achieve it so the next thing we're going to do here we are going to uh, to give it a builder okay the header builder so it must have a body at least so let me go ahead and first give a body so must have those two it must have a body and this builder so i can first give it a body of uh, maybe put your text and say maybe content okay so after doing that then you must have a what a header builder so this header builder, it's, this is how you pass it. You just simply header and then you pass the context, you receive the context and then the inner scroll that will tell you whether it has been scrolled or not. Okay, so you just simply come and say here, header builder, you open the bracket, it's going to give you the build context. So you can put here, build, build, build context. I can call context or can call C and then put comma and then to give you a boolean that will tell you that it is scrolled. So you can name this in any way that you want. So after doing that, you're going to go ahead and open the curl bracket here like this. So inside here, it is where we're going to return the what? We're going to return uh, the list of what? of slivers or sliver up bar okay so here you're going to return a list of widget okay so i can simply put here like this and then save so you see i'm able to return a list of widgets so this can be my example my header okay so but right now you can see it does not make any sense because i've not returned any serious header there so it is expecting at least a silver up bar in one of those headers. All right, our application has crashed. Let me rerun it again. Okay, so after doing that, so in this thing that we're going to return, we're going to return the what? A silver up bar. So I'll come here and return in form of a list. Okay, in form of a list. You can even specify here that there should, there should be what? There should be widget. So it's going to return the silver up bar. So this silver up bar. Sliver up bar is going to take a, a maximum height. 
So the maximum height is the maximum height that you want this up bar to have or the when it is expanded how 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 high do you want it to expand so that is the height that you'll have to specify i mean the height that you'll have to specify here so you give it what you call uh, expand height so this expand height is the maximum height that your application i mean your up bar will be expanded so like when someone expands to below what do you want to, uh, to be there so after doing that the next thing you're going to give the background color of which someone expands on top which color do you want to replace this previous image or previous content that is in background so you can specify that one by by first passing the what the system overlay colors okay so i can pass the system overlay colors to those ones so i can have that kind of what of background okay so you can see i have this height and then this overlay that show that colors the up bar and then after uh this is the maximum height so you see my content begins from here can you see this is the content so the content begins from here so this is the it will begin with this word with this expand height so after doing that the next thing that you're going to do you're going to tell whether it should be floating or it should be pinned okay so if you want it to be floating it means that it will uh, allow someone to scroll it if you want it to be pinned it means that you not allow someone to do what to scroll it let me for example put here uh too much content let me put sound this one with what with um with the column and put here style and put here uh, okay let me put here just like too much content that can be scrollable oh, let, me, let me just make them big okay i just put here style Alright, so I just wanted to make this one to be able to do how to scroll. So let me show you something. Is that uh, this is our content, eh? but you can see where our content begins from. It begins here in the middle. Why? Because it's specified here that the maximum scroll view it should be 200. So by default, it will begin by 200. So if you increase this one as well, this one will also increase. Alright, so after doing that, let's keep on. So you see when I'm scrolling, it will push it up okay uh let me show you now uh let's give for example where, where are we we are here uh -huh. so i was i wanted to explain this floating and pinned uh things eh? so before i do that uh let me first give it uh, a background color and make it uh, same blue Okay, so that is our background color. So you see, our up bar is there. It can be scrolled. Okay, so I hope you can see that. Now, uh -huh. now I want to, exp to explain the concept of pinned, okay, and floating. So you see, I can scroll it. It goes up. When I want it down, I just scroll it down like this until I reach it. Then it comes up. So floating, now if you pass the parameter of floating, okay, let's see what's meant by floating. So if you come here and say floating is true. So what does it mean? It means that it's going to float. When I scroll it, it goes up. But immediately when I pull down, 
does what? It starts coming. Wait. Okay. I mean, floating means that it can be what? It can be scrolled up. So if I make it false, it means that what? It will be what? It will be fixed. Then uh -huh, we have another one called here, whether it is pinned. So pinned, it means going to be what? It's going to be fixed. So if I come here and make this pinned to be true, so it means that our our up bar will be pinned. Can you see? It is not up, it's not disappearing. When I scroll up, it does not disappear the way how it was scrolling up and disappear. Otherwise, if I make it um, false, so it will disappear, you see, until someone scrolls down and then it does what? It comes back. Okay. So, you see, so it is not disappearing. So it is pinned until someone expands back and then it comes and and be full up to the maximum height that we uh, we defined it to be. So if I make this one also uh, floating, so you'll see that when I scroll back, it also does what? It also comes back. So that's the meaning of pin. Pinning means that it should always be on top when someone reaches this minimum height. All right, so we can proceed. Uh, now we have here flexible space. So flexible space is this space that is behind it, okay? This space that is behind it is what you call flexible space. So you can put anything that you want to see inside that, in the, that I mean, that behind space, okay? Let's say that you want to put an image like this one. So you can just simply say flexible space. For example, I'll just come here to the silver up bar and then I say, uh, flexible space that is the space that is behind there and then you put your image that you want okay so if I save you'll see I'll have my image behind there okay so it is just nothing but flexible space so then I say flexible spacer uh, space bar and then I give the what the image okay in as the what as its background however there are more more parameters that you can give this flexible space space bar Aha, uh -huh, you just press uh, press control and space bar, you'll see. You'll have the color, you can give it color, you can give it height itself, you can give it width, you can uh, play around it, eh? you see. But the most important part is that um, that is the space that will be behind it. So Flutter gives you the user interface, like when I keep on scrolling, it keeps on, you see, it keeps on changing that kind of uh, uh, light. So if I make this one, for example, uh, let's say 300 you'll see it will be big so when someone scrolls it keeps on disappearing until it is fixed when someone scrolls back it appears again so that is a very beautiful user interface that you can implement creatively in your different kinds of apps so i've put that space bar there uh, now the next thing i'm going to put the leading button here this is the leading button i always tell you in the app bar i, I put the bleeding and then i put the icons Okay, maybe it can be my icon for going back, it can be my icon for anything. Okay, so I put leading, it is the button that is going to replace this one. Okay, so I put leading, I'll have that one. So if I want to make it white, I can come here and change the color to white. All right, so I hope you're understanding. So if I want to put these icons, I believe you, you already know what they are. These are actions. So it has a parameter called actions of which you can put the buttons that you want to have there. And you can even as well put uh, the logic. So you see, I put actions and I put those buttons. Okay. So, and then I put here a pop-up menu. This is the pop-up menu. So maybe you can say maybe block this user, send friend request, something like that. So when I come here, let me change the colors of the icon. Change this one to white. Change this menu color to white. 
So I'll have something beautiful like that one. So you can be creative and think how you can make even something better out of this one, okay? So I can scroll like that. All right, so after doing that, the next thing that we're going to do is now to put um, the bottom. So this, uh, up this what? This uh, sliver, sliver what? Sliver up bar, it has a, a section called bottom. Bottom is the space that gives you where that you can place content there in the bottom of it. So I'm going to pass the bottom and then I, in the bottom I'm going to put uh, what our image that of the user profile. So come here to bottom. So in this bottom you can pass for example here and put for example bottom. So if you save like this, you'll see. Sorry, <laughs> this bottom has to uh, to. Uh, so make that you call preferred size. So I'm going to come here and then I pass preferred size. Okay. So in this preferred size, it must have a size, for example, of a quantity that you want to put there. Okay. And then after, it must have the child of the content that you want to put there. So you can pause the video and look at the child. So the child of this preferred size is nothing but a what? A container. This container, it has trans tra tra transform of uh, matrix 4. And then you put uh, translation of 0 to 50 through 0. And then it has a circle avatar. So in this circle avatar, it is where I give the radius of 50. And then I give the background color of uh, gray to 200. And then I give the circle avatar inside it of what? Of this uh, image. Okay. So I can pause the video and see how I've achieved that. So by doing like that, I'll have our image on top there. I hope you can see. So that is the space of what? Of bottom. However, in this bottom space, you can as well put any kind of what? Any kind of uh, content that you want. Okay. So you can pause the video and look at how I've achieved this one. All right, so after I'm going to go now and add the what? The body, okay? Now the content here. So the content, I'm going to begin by putting a scroll up bar. So it is going to be now in the body. So you can see how you can do this nested scroll view and then you put there any kind of things that you do what? That you want, including the what? The up bar. Then we go now to the body of the nested scroll view. So I will begin by putting a what? A single uh, scroll view. And then in there, I'm going to give it a what? A container. Let me first remove this one that I was using for demonstration. I'm going to give this one a container. Okay. Then after, this container is going to have some padding of 20. So it can be spaced. Uh -huh. then you see we'll have that one then so after i'm going to now go ahead and give a what um the column as a shell of this so it's going to have children all right so after i'm going to go ahead and uh, give the height of 70 so that i should have enough space between my content and this picture okay so I give the height of 70 and then after doing that, I'm now going to give my content. Okay. So I'll begin by putting this name that is going to be there and bolded. And then I import this styles. Okay. Then I save. So I'll have there the name that is bolded, okay? So after having the name that is bolded, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to give a container of 40 so it can be spaced. Or 15. Then after, I'm going to put now the Lorem Ipsum. This is just Lorem Ipsum, a short introduction, and then I make it center.
okay i align that content and make it center so i can pause the video and see what i've just done right now so i'll have that kind of what that kind of content there okay uh -huh. so after i'm going to go ahead and put this uh height of 25 and then put the button of follow okay so i'll go ahead and put the height of 25 and then uh, i go ahead and put a, an elevated button so elevated button it's going to have this style that you can see elevated button dot style form uh from and then you put the shape uh, you put the 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 radius to 20 and then you put the padding to 30 horizontal which is symmetric and then you put the watch the color to the color that you want for example me i can put my accent color which is going to be that kind of pink and i'll achieve something beautiful like that okay it can even be scrollable hope you can see that it's beautiful okay so after i'm going to put these uh containers that are going to show my followers and the one that i'm following the social score and then the okay that content those countings okay so now begin by putting uh 35 as height and then after i'm going to create a row you see this row that is going to have these followers that you're seeing here okay so let's go ahead and do it together so i'll begin by creating a what a row and then it's going to have children okay and then i'm going to give it a, a, a um, what the um, the main alignment of space around okay so it's going to have children so in this children the first chair that you're going to put here is this thing that you're seeing here so it is a column that is going to have a what of uh, that's going to have uh the number counting on top and then the the description in both below it so if i want them to be balanced and not to or to spend the whole space and throw an error i have to put expanded with each in each so when i put expanded uh expanded must take a what a child okay so in the, ch the child of this expand is where i'm going to put the what the column like this so this column is going to take children so the first child is going to be our counting this one here okay so i'll go ahead and put our first child which is the counting and you can see i have styled it i'll style it and make it bold so when i save i'll have that counting in the middle since it is the only one available there then i'm going to put a, a spacer of five as height okay and then after doing that uh we're going to go ahead and now put the what the description of that okay so it's going to be a text view and then you have this style okay and then um you can see gray it is that which is 400 600 so you see i have this one which is the number of followers all right and it is in the middle so i believe you can be able to achieve that if you follow the video step by step you see so i have this first ui so i'm going to go ahead and put the second one and the third one so the second one i'm going to put uh, the number of followers it's just all the, the same exactly what i've done so you can even create it a single user interface and then you'll be calling it then the number of what of people that i'm following you see that's it i hope you are together so since they are expanded so it will make sure that they occupy uh equi equal equivalent distances or equal distances then i can put the last one which is going to be also expanded and i put the what the social score come here put the social score. so when i save i'll have something beautiful like that i hope uh you're getting the concept all right so after doing that i'm going to put now uh this divider okay so i can again add another row if i want to and then i add another content like that one 
like this one so this one just a duplicate of the top one eh? okay just to show you a skill that you can do something that you want all right so i'm going to put a divider that's going to spread the countings or the counts from the content i'll put the divider and then i'll achieve something like this sorry this divider should be outside the row so i'm going to come and put it here in the column okay so i have that beautiful divider that is having height of 50. okay it's so beautiful and then after i'm going to go ahead and now put the what the content which is going to be just my simple what my simple lorem with the that text okay so this is just nothing but my strings dot lorem these are just lorem ipsum and then i have styled it like this so you can pause and look at how i have styled it okay so i can go ahead and paste this lorem like two times so i can have something that makes sense right, so by doing like this i'll have created such a beautiful user interface can you see that it's beautiful so you can go ahead and implement this one in a different kind of what in different kind of projects so you put here um okay so i hope you can see that and i hope you can pause the video and follow these source codes carefully and um, you do what you design such kind of a beautiful user interface we have just done it here without any magic all right let's do another interface Okay. All right, so we're going to see how we can design our second what? Our second interface. So you've seen how I've achieved this one. All right, so now let's say that you want to design uh, this interface, okay? This purple interface. So we're going to design this one together. Uh, that's also straightforward and then uh, you will do a challenge of designing this one by yourself and maybe also a challenge of designing this one by yourself this one is exactly the same logic that we have used but different height and uh, different design so you'll give this one as a, a challenge to yourself and uh, we implemented drawers you can also implement this drawer as a challenge to yourself and also um you can also design such kind of a drawer by yourself as a challenge okay so let's go ahead and do this one this purple um ui and then the remaining ones i'm going to show you their screens and you pause the video and you do them by yourself All right so this is just a simple ui as you can see it is kind of simple so let's go ahead and design it together very fast so I'm going to come to our project. Come to routes. Duplicate this one. And we call it purple profile. So we're going to create a separate screen for the purpose profile. So I'll come to our what to our profiles here, create new one, and I call I'll call it purple purple profile screen dot that All right, so i'll go ahead and put stateful widget then i'll go ahead and import this guy
So after doing that, we can now connect this purple screen, purple profile screen with our heart, with our main screen or with the main home page. Right. So if I now come to our main home page, I can see purple profile. So when I click on purple profile, we have there our placeholder that we're going to design and come up with the other user interface. Okay, so let's go ahead and design it. So I'm going to begin by returning the scaffold. So return a scaffold there, and then we import it. Then after returning the scaffold, so the next thing you're going to do, I'm going to give this scaffold a bug, a white background. So after giving the scaffold a white background, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to give it this up bar. Okay, we're going to design that up bar. So let's do the up bar together. So we'll come here and give up bar, and then this up bar is going to have the style, the overlay. So this overlay is going to help us to change the color in the what in this uh, top uh, toolbars. Okay. So system overlay, the color we change it to system style overlay, and we make it what. Um, so we give the the system brightness to light, and then the status color to purple. Okay, that purple of seven hundred. Then we'll have something beautiful like that on the top side. Okay, so after doing that, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we are going now to design the background, okay, of the of this uh, up bar, this up bar, we're going to give it the background color. So we'll give the background color of the up bar the same purple color. So I'll come here to up bar, so I'll come out of this style system style overlay, and then I come and give this purple up bar to purple. So I'll have this purple. So I told you if I want to change the color of this icon, if I want to change to out to white, I have to pass the what we call icon theme, and then I pass icon theme data, and then I change the color to white. Then this icon will be white. So after doing that, now the next thing we're going to do, we're going now to change the title, to add the title and put the title of view profile or profile details. Okay. So the title of this app bar is going to be text with the word view profile. And then when you save, be like that. So I can change this style to white. All right, so we have that view style there. So after doing that, the next thing we're going to put these action buttons. So I'll come to up bar and then I put the what? Our action buttons. Action button, just simply put actions and then I write the button that I want them to be there. Okay, so if I save, I'll have the action button and the menu on it. So I can change the color of this action button to what? To white. Okay. Then we'll see, I'll have something like that. Okay. So that are the action buttons or the actions. So after doing that now, the next thing we're going to do is now to put the single child scroll view and then we put our content. So I'll come to the body of this scaffold. And then we're going to put there single child scroll view. So this single child scroll view, we're going to give it a container as its body. I mean, so as its child. And then after, we're going to give it the column as the main child. All right, so after doing that, 
Um, so after doing that, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give the what the top size this one so it can be spaced. Uh -huh. and then after I'm going to give this title okay or the name I'll put the name here so I'll go ahead and style my name and make it bolded and then we'll have something like that okay so I can pause the video and you see how I've styled this name to make it bolded all right so after doing that the next thing I'm going to give a container of height 10 or height 5 and then after I'm going to give the title that you're seeing here of a photographer in that style so <clears throat> it's a text this guy I'm in a meeting I'm in a meeting sir first wait I'll get you back to you uh -huh, so it's going to be uh, the photographer and then text a line to center and then style body one and then I give it a copy this color okay so if I save I'll have the title there as I've defined it all right so after doing that the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and give the height of 25 okay and then I'm going to create a row that is going to have this call icon and then this image and then the, I mean the message icon and then the image, the profile image and then the call icon. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So you just begin by creating a row. It's going to have children. So the first child is going to be the what? Uh, let me say... Uh, the alignment is going to be centered okay so our first child is going to be the button with a color of green inkwell or with the button with the color of green so that is it uh, this is self-explanatory so you can be able to do that okay then we'll have this first icon here then we're going to put our image i mean we're going to put a space of width 10 or a container with width 10 and then after we put our image or avatar okay so let's copy this avatar and they put it there so this avatar it's going to have a background color of purple so this background color of purple is one that's going to be around the what the avatar so this is the color that you see around here we set it by avatar background color of that purple okay so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do we are now going to put a container that's going to create this space okay and then after we're going to put our what our call icon okay which is going to be inkwell and then we paste it in all right then we'll have that so you see have my call and here and here so after doing that uh the next thing they're going to do they are now going to add uh, the divider that's going to separate this top icon from the content counting so i'll come and put a divider in the column so next to the row i put a what i put the divider so this divider is the one sorry i put in the wrong place supposed to be here next to this row i put the divider so this divider is the one that's going to separate the content up from the content down. so you see it is uh, beautiful that way okay so after doing that uh, the next thing that i'm going to do i'm now going to put the these counts okay so i'll design a single count and then i think we designed these counts in the previous uh, example so i can just copy these ones and i put them there we designed counts like this one in the previous example so let me put them here and then we'll have something like this okay these counts they just have it's a row which has expanded and then a column or inside that expanded 
and then a text that is bolded on top with that color and then the spacer and then the uh, description then times three okay then you'll be able to achieve this kind of a column so i can collapse this one again put my what my divider okay so i'll come here and put the divider and then we'll have something beautiful like that i hope you can see how we're building something nice all right so after doing that i'm going to i'm going to do what i'm going to put now a row that is going to contain uh okay so this row i've finished it i'm going to put a uh, uh okay I'm going to put now the content, this content that you're seeing here, okay? So it is just nothing but remipsum. And then we'll have this kind of content. Then after that content, I'll not put another, I'll not just put one more divide and then I put the what? The content that I want to display, those bottom rows email and so these ones are just like this one that we did here only but these one are just two two per each row so you can do the same and make sure that they are two per each row however also the cross alignment of these ones they are on start okay so you can get those uh three rows with the website link the email the phone number the location and the zip code and then you design them and then put them here so by doing like that you'll be able to achieve something like that okay then you can go ahead maybe and put the what the um, you can go ahead and put the floating icon that you're seeing on top there All right, so you see, we have, we have been able to come up with uh, our simple and but nice user interface. You can go ahead and add this what, uh, this floating button if you want to add it. For example, for sending a friend request or doing some any kind of action that you want. So it has to be in the scaffold like this. All right. So you'll be able to design such kind of a beautiful user interface. So I want to give you a challenge. I want to give you a challenge. So we have designed these two together. Uh, I want to give you a challenge. You design this one. Pause the video and design this profile user interface. Okay. Okay. Also pause the video and design this user interface so you can get enough experience. The same techniques but challenging yourself also pause the video and design that user interface we've already done one of this kind okay so pause the video and challenge yourself and design that user interface also pause the video and design this user interface which has the navigation i mean the the drawer bar because we already covered these drawer bars so go ahead and do those by your own self all right so this makes our first session Let's go and have a short break of five minutes. So at exactly 10, we should be back and do the last session. In the last session, you're going to cover other interesting things and uh, you're going to do the what? The shopping user interfaces. You're going to see how to design, design such a, uh, a category user interface. We shall design these kind of cards. We shall also design the product listing uh, the product listing, like, um, oh, a lot of things have opened. All right, uh, so we're going to design this first, how you can make such kind of a, a category user interface. And then after, we're going to do, we shall design the what? The product listing, uh, the grid product listing user interface. And then if time allows, we'll go ahead and design the single product details screen. And then the rest, you can do it as a what? As a challenge. So without wasting much time, let's go ahead and start designing this. 
all right so i'm going to go to our project and then create a new what a new section that i'm going to call uh, what i'm going to call shopping all right so in this shopping i'm going to put our first word our category screen shopping category screen dot dot and then after i'll go ahead and create a stateful widget then go ahead and import and then i'll remove these ones and then i'll go ahead and connect this with our what with the main screen okay so let's go ahead and create another section this section we are going to call it what we are going to call it um, shopping categories aha uh -huh. then we are going to put there our clickable link so let me duplicate this one put there the screen and then i cut it and then come and paste it here let me go ahead and import the screen this one that all right so now someone should be able to click to this ah uh, where is it anyway <laughs> is it saving shopping okay i have to change the name all right so when someone clicks here you should be able to get this empty screen so we'll press control and click there to go to that screen uh, so we'll go and start doing what and start doing the category screens all right so we're going to begin by returning a scaffold All right, after returning the scaffold, so the next thing we're going to put the app bar, this app bar which we're seeing which has categories. So let me go ahead and put the app bar. I'll explain it. So in this scaffold, it takes an app bar. So this app bar, it has a background of what? Of uh, primary color. And then it has a status, I mean st system overlay, which has light and then... Uh, the, the 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 what the status bar is what is the primary dark okay and then after or it can be any kind of color that you want then after we have the title which is going to be a text that i put here as category so i can put your style and i put text style and make it what color to be white all right so after doing that i can go ahead and color also my white my icons which are one is the leading the leading icon is one that will come here in front so let me go ahead and color it and make it white and then we have what you call the actions action buttons icons so this action icons you can also give it a color of white okay then we have also uh also uh uh the menu icon here so i can put here icon color and make it white so that one will be white so by doing like that i'll have how created our simple app bar that you're seeing there i believe you can also be able to design such kind of what an app bar on your own if you cannot then you can watch the video very carefully step by step you'll be able to do what to understand how to do it on your own all right so after doing that the next thing you're going to put the what the body is going to be a single scroll chat view so go ahead body 
single child scroll view okay so after doing that the next thing you're going to give it now the child so the child will be a column so this is going to be having a child and it's going to be what a column so column will take multiple children and then you'll have something like that then after you're going to go ahead and now put stack let's first put um let us first put the alignment of cross access to be start all right so the next thing we're going to do we're going to put um stack as the first child of this column so put stack okay and then after this stack is going to take multiple children and then the first child will be this first icon here that you're seeing here so i'll come here and put um children of the stack so the first one is just a container that contains this image okay oh <laughs> i'm designing something else sorry i'm designing this category detail screen all right this one no problem we can begin with that one this one is it in a category shipping category card here I'm designing this one okay i can design this and then for you design the other one as a challenge sorry about that but it's almost the same i didn't lie anything okay so since you want now these ones to be in front of these ones so that's why i had to use what I had to use stack okay so after putting the stack so we put the image inside that stack okay we put the image inside that stack so this image is there with height of 200 okay and then width of infinity now you cannot write something in front of stack if there is no background that is separating it so i'm going to give a what a container so i'll go ahead and create a container container and i'm going to give it a, a color of with opacity of zero of black with opacity of 0 0.4 so i'll come here and say it has a color of black and then you put with opacity 0 0.4 so we have some transparency of a range of 0 0.4 so after doing that i'm going to give it also height so it can have a minimum height and maximum height so i'm going to give it height and width so height is going to be the same as this one and then the width is going to be infinity also then we'll be able to achieve something like that so you can see that kind of dark color in front of it which is transparent so it means that any white word that you can write in front there it can be readable even though there is white behind it because of that uh, different transparency black color so it is just like a glass it is just like a glass okay so after doing that we're going now to go and align our content so i want to put this content so it's a align center so put here uh, the child of this one to be aligned and then you make it what uh, alignment of center like this okay then you go ahead and give it a child which is going to be this simple what this simple uh, text okay so the text is going to be literally to be white okay so like this so it is nothing but white text of which you can also be able to style on your own okay then you'll have that text like that so after doing that then you're going to put some content here in front and they should be like coming on top here okay so i've this i've just done this top one which is having that okay so so i can collapse this container i can collapse this one all right so i come outside the stack i go back to the column and then i start putting the content okay so to put the content i'm just simply going to come here so next to stack okay and then i'm going to put what our grid of categories these ones eh so this one is just a user interface that i made a little bit separate okay 
so it's going to have a category and then it's going to be looping and then put those categories in a certain what user interface however you can as well use the what you can as well add it there directly okay so instead of having it there can just simply do what so this one has a transform of uh, minus 30 is that will enable it to do what to go on top there so i'm just going to have uh, my what okay i'm going to design these categories by just simply looping and then adding the icons that i want inside there so this is just a method that i'm calling so let's go ahead and create that method So I'll come here in the build and I create that method, okay? So this method, I'm just calling it, okay, it's called build category build. I've just created it. Okay, so this method, I'll call it, so, I mean, this is just a content of what? A list of widgets. Now here, we're going to have our dummy category. So if you go to class of this category, it's nothing but a class that has an icon, an image, and then the title in brief okay and then here we have a dummy generator that generates for us the categories just loops and then generate for us the content that we're going to put in what in category okay so you can see this loop here so i'm going to create now uh, the method called get category so this method is the one that is going to be responsible for generating the what the categories and give them to me in form of what in form of a list okay so i can create this method here okay Right. Okay, so here I'm going to create now what I'm going to create our list of cut of products I mean of categories or the list of widgets then here you remember they are sending me the content so I'm going to look through this content as I design the category So I just create a simple loop so this is a loop and then it's going to loop until the length of this what I mean until the the, the 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 length of the what of the category that I have here and then when when it is looping I'm creating a row okay then after I'll have to return this uh, list of categories okay here so I return after the loop Make sure that I return the list of categories. Okay, so as it is looping, I'm creating a row, and in this row, I'm put I'm putting two widgets here. Okay, so this widget is not just going to contain each single category that you're seeing here. Right, so this widget is going to be here. Um, it is this one. It is just simply a design that is going to display this. Okay, so let me copy it and I explain it. Okay, so I just call it get item widget. Okay, so it is accepting the shopping category and then it's just having a maximum of expand and then flex of one and then it is uh, having a child of card. So this is nothing but what? But a card. Okay, so this card it has a shape of uh, 
rounded rectangle border and then takes a, a circular a radius circular of what of four then it has a background color of white and then elevation is two okay then after i give it a clip border of what of anti with the save layer and then i give it a child okay and this child i'm giving it a height of 140 120 and then i align everything to center okay and then i give the padding to 10 from each side and then zero from the bottom and then after i create a column this column here in as the main child of that of that container and then the first column the first section of the column i'm giving it the icon that has been passed to me like this and then the next i give it the what the title that have been passed to me so you can pause the video and look at that kind of widget so every time uh, we loop here every time we loop here we collect uh we collect the what the content and uh, we collect the content and put and add it in this what in this list of widgets then when i finish i return back so if i save i should be able to do what to get that kind of what uh, categories so these can be categories that are coming from online from your online shop or something like that and then you'll be able to do what uh, to achieve something like that okay Okay, so I hope we are together. Where is my screens? All right. All right, so there I go. So you'll be able to achieve that in that way. So this is just a simple loop that is looping and then put this item in what? In these containers all right so uh the next that we're going to do let's see a timer here all right so uh so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to see if our time can be enough for us to do uh, the product listing so challenge yourself and do this one okay challenge yourself and do this one also challenge yourself and do uh, this one you can pause the video and look at it okay whereby this is scrolled in uh, this kind of okay so you can also challenge yourself and okay this one i've already done it together so i want as you can challenge yourself this one i'm going to do it uh, you can challenge yourself and do this product uh, widget it's just like the one that we just looked at but you can challenge yourself and do it and uh, give it we have already discussed how to do these things of expanding so go ahead and give yourself a challenge and see if you can do this kind of art of product All right i want to see our timer and see if time is enough to do the product yet yes it is enough so all right let's go ahead and do now the products listing widget so i'll just come and duplicate this product screen and then I'll select all the names or you can also right click here and then say refactor and then say rename and then put a new name it will update all of them okay all right so after doing that uh, now the next thing that you're going to do you're going to remove this content that I put there and then just only leave the scaffold
all right so let's go ahead and now uh, put this one in our main route and call it product listings okay so we're going to design this product grid right, so let's go ahead and do so so if i come back here and i click on this I should be an empty scaffold i should say an empty scaffold so let's go to our empty scaffold which is this one and then go ahead and add that one okay so products this is just an app bar so you can go ahead and give it background color i want to copy the app bar that i've already finished so we save our time just use this one so we can save our time all right Okay, so now after having that, then the next thing you have now we have we now have the app bar. Okay, so the next thing is now going to uh, design the content and uh, add it in our heart in our user interface. Okay, so the app bar is done. Now let's go ahead and uh, design this grid adapter. I didn't want to, sh to take you to the grid adapter. I wanted like just to show you a simpler way of how you can achieve that. All right, so I need to give you a shortcut of achieving this. So I'll come here. the scaffold and then give child I mean body and put grid count I'll import okay so this grid count will be able to do what to do something like for us like this one okay so the first thing is that uh, it takes the number of the grid item that you want to put there okay So the cross axis count is going to be two per row. So two per row. 
so the other thing is going to be the scroll direction it's going to be of course vertical and then after we're going to put the child ratio how spaced you want your children to be spaced you can put 0 0.8 and then after we're going to put the cross spacing like between spaces in form of a width so i can put two then after you can put the padding how you want your contents to be between it so i put the padding of four and then after we are going to have the what the cross axis counting and make it two. i think that already find it then after we're going to put now the items that we want to be in that what in that grid okay so these items are going to be just uh, a list of uh, widgets that we want to do what to be in that grid so we are going just simply to come here and put items okay so let's maybe design a function that is going to generate for us uh, those items okay so the first thing that we're going to need you're going to need uh, getting the data that you want to present or a list of items okay so to get a list of items we are going to come here in the build okay and then write uh, okay let's write a function here I want to do something that is will be simple for you let's write a function of say get items Because uh, some of you have told me that the adapter is a little bit complex or complicated. So I want to do something for you that is simple. So the items, by default, I'm going to make them to be like a shopping product. Okay. So shopping product is just a class that has an image, the title, and the price. So you can pause the video and create this class. So every time this function will be called, it will be getting the what? Uh, the items from the dummy of shopping product okay this is the dummy that generates for us the images of what of products okay then after doing that maybe I can shuffle them so they cannot be in the same so after doing that now I'm going to design our list of items that I want to present okay Okay, so to design the list of those items, I'm going to need I'm going to need first a single item, okay, that I want to present when. Uh, okay, we are going to design a single item together. But here the point is, I'm going to let's say that uh, okay, let's say that we're going to have now uh, the list of the widgets that we want to do what that we want to display. Okay. So I can put here, for example, widget. Okay, and then I say items UIs or item UIs. So the list that we really need to present. So this is the list that I'm going to put here that are asking for children. So I'll put here that list so i want every time someone builds this function i mean this build up this get item should be called so i can put here i hope you're not confused date you see i've just written a simple code right now so i want to call this get items here every time someone does what some someone call this one so every time i'm going for example to add a what just to show you what is going to happen i want to add here a simple uh, text and then maybe I can put uh, the length of the item in that and then I remember to do what to update state like this so you see when it is built I have item 1 every time I save I have item 2 something like that and they are being saved okay I mean they are being displayed so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to be clearing 
the item so before i do what before i add there the content okay so i clear and then i set state sorry clear okay so the, if i do like this i save it should be at one there all right now let's go ahead and now do the logic of uh, adding the items okay so to add the items i'm going to look through these items that i've got from the dummy data okay and then add the other items in the user interfaces so just say for each and then i can add the items inside here so after i've cleared them and go ahead and add for example the name for example i add so since accepting the widget i can add their text and then add for example name or title <laughs> So then go back and open this again i'm able to see the items all the items with their respective title okay so after doing that now we're going to see how we can now start adding uh, uh the content inside those items uh -huh. so we're going to get our uh, what our we're going to get uh we're going to design now a single user interface of a single item okay so you can call it maybe item ui something like that okay so that is the one that is going to be displaying a single what a single uh item so i can just simply come here and say it's going to be called item ui the other one is capital in plural this one is in singular and maybe it will be accepting a single product item shopping product item like that so this one will be returning what it will be returning uh, the widget okay that I want to design so if you return a container if you want to okay let's just begin returning by container so we want to return a container and okay let me call it now so instead of adding here text i'm just going to be adding a single item widget like this okay so after doing that i just uh, i have to open this afresh in order to see the new changes okay so after doing that and now the next thing that we're going to do uh the next thing that we're going to do is uh to do what is to uh is not to uh the next thing that we're going to do is not to start designing the user interface okay so to design the user interface so i've just created a container then we're going to give this container some padding this is a user interface of a single product or a single item so give the padding of alt 2 and then we put it we pass a card as a child and then after we give it margin and then the shape okay and then after you go ahead and give it a column since you're going to have content on top and content bottom so go ahead and give it a what a column a child that's going to be a column so this column is going to have a what an image on top oh, sorry children <laughs> children okay the first child is going to be what the image is going to be expanded and then the image inside it so this image will be from this item here and then i give the width of infinity since the width is already defined and then i save 
So by doing like this, we'll be able to get a what? We'll be able to get our images like that. I hope you can see that, okay? Hope you can see uh, a beautiful thing that you're building. Okay, so after doing that, I'll go ahead and add the container that's going to separate the two. Of five height and then I'll go ahead and add the row that's going to have this content and this uh, clickable menu so the row is just literally a row that is having the title and then next to it you have an icon that someone can click on okay so I hope you can see that so let me go ahead and instead of putting a row here uh, a title there I will put here an item and then I put that there so if I save so you can see how I formatted them if I save I come back and I open again I'll see my content is there with the title and then this thing that, that someone can click on to get more information or to do more actions all right so after doing that I'm going to put a height okay so after row I'm going to put a height of five and then after putting the height of five i'm going to put another row that's going to have the price i mean the rating and then the price okay the rating and then the price okay so here this is star rating and then you have this one have put what item and then the price inside for it and then the colors right so after i can put the height on the bottom that's just 10 okay so this is a star rating you give it the maximum and then you give the rating and then uh, you give the color so you'll be able to achieve that one this is a package that we added so if i save and then i open again i'll be able to achieve a user interface that we are looking for okay so you have to do it also this is just a single user interface that we did and then this is uh, a grid and then with this specification and then every time this is building we are calling uh, this to do what to create it get it so challenge yourself please challenge yourself and don't just pause i mean don't just watch the video but watch as you practice so we have designed this kind of uh, a beautiful user interface okay so you see now the remaining thing is now to put the logic of connecting this one with the back end and then you'll be able to create an e-commerce mobile application so the challenge that i'm giving you right now i want you to do the video that we've done and then you should do this details product page because everything that is here we've covered we've covered how to put the stars and ratings we've covered how to design uh, this kind of app bar so go ahead and challenge yourself please I've covered how to collapse and expand all those things I've already covered them so challenge yourself and uh, do them okay so design this single product page pause the video and then design this one which has can have expanding and then the rating is there or the reviews and then after designing that uh, uh, you can design also this uh this not this one this one category list uh, this one let me just go straight to what you're going to design today without taking much of your time you're going to design how you can make uh, the settings uh user interfaces for example you want to do a, a user interface like this one for your application i'm going to show you how we, you can do this so you should be able to learn and uh, be able to implement it in uh, the different kind of applications we we'll also go ahead and des design an application like this one or user interface like this one and also we'll go ahead and design an interface like this one so if time allows we'll go to another one and then we also design the verification screens like this one and also we design this verification screen and uh, this one so there are the things that we're going to do today and i hope you're ready 
to do this together with me if you are then let's go straight and start implementing so right now he's calling me All right, hope you can now see the screen. You just unmute and say, okay. All right, I hope you can now see the screen. All right, okay. So without wasting much time, let's go ahead and start, okay? So you say that we're going to do settings user interface. You're going to do a settings user interface like this one, okay? So what you're going to do, we're going to run our application that we always use to develop different kind of interfaces, user interfaces. So I'll come to application and go ahead and do it and run it. So as it is running, we are going to go to our routes, our menu route or the main route. And there we're going to add what? We're going to add uh, what our Settings section. All right, so we have now the settings there. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to now add the section for the design that we're going to do right now. We're going to do this design, this one, okay? So I'll come to our screen, the one that we always use to save our time. Okay. So the first thing you're going to create, you're going to create that screen, okay? So we're going to call it section settings. So after, I'll go ahead and create here a new section. Okay, in this section, I'm going to put settings section. Right. Then here I'm going to put stateful widget. Then I'll go ahead and import. Okay, so after I'm going to add this set the, this screen into our main route. Okay, then I'll import it. Now it means that someone can be able to do what? Someone can be able to click. On that screen and then they proceed to our account i mean to 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 that route to that screen okay so if we click here sorry is it updating anyway oh, okay i'm running on device two so here settings and the settings are having the section screen. Let me hit reload. I don't think this is even updating. Okay. Let me rerun it again. Okay. 
So you're going to go ahead and uh, return the scaffold. So as it is running, let's go ahead and start implementing. So I'm going to return the scaffold. So here, that's the screen. So let's go ahead and return the scaffold. Okay. And then after, we give it background of gray. So this background of gray, 100. Let me first disable the pilot. Okay, so after we put the up bar, I don't know how to do that at this level. Then after, we'll have our device settings like that, okay? Uh, after doing that, the next thing you're going to do, you're going to put now the body as a single scroll view. However, I can change the colors of that upper. So again, change the bodies. I'm going to put the body as a single scroll view, single child scroll view. So the body is going to be single child scroll view. Okay, after doing that, I'm going to give it a column as the main child of that single child scroll view. And then it will take children and then here on top we're going to put the background sorry okay that's the column okay of this one so i'm going to make uh, the alignment the cross axis alignment to be always start like this okay so now in these children is we're going to put the first section okay so the first section is going to be um a container so it's going to be a container So be, uh, it's going to be a container that's going to have uh, this margin. So putting a container so that you can have the place where you can place the margins, okay? So we're going to put a container there. Okay, and then give it a child of text that's going to have the word general settings with that color. So this is nothing but text with that general settings and then the gray as the gray 500 so by doing like this we'll be able to have our simple uh, general settings so if i want to give it some margin so that it can be in kind of middle i'll go ahead and give it margin to this container it can be padding or it can be margin that's no problem so i give the margin of that so it should be there a little bit in the middle so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do we're going to put now the first card okay that's going to have this account okay so it's going to be a card we'll come here and create a card all right and then after we're going to give this card the shape of rounded circle and then after we're going to give the elevation of this card of two Okay, so by doing like this, we'll have our card there, but it's not visible because I've not put there any content. Okay, so I can give it some margin. And then after, we're going now to give it content, okay? So the content inside it is going to be a container that's going to have width of infinity. So the child of this card is going to be a container of which is going to have the width infinity so it can spend the maximum available width so after doing that the next thing we're going to do is not add a column in this container okay so the child of this container is going to be a column and then we're going to make the cross alignment to be always what start all right so after doing that now we're going to put now the content inside that column okay so we shall go ahead and first put so that this column is going to have children then we we'll have an 8 of 10 and then after you're going now to go to do what to give it um uh, this first clickable uh what clickable user interface of account okay so you can create this and then keep on calling them or you can create one and then repeat it
So for the beginning, let us begin by creating the first one. So the first one is going to have, it's going to be just an inkwell. Okay. And this inkwell is going to have on top. So this is the place where someone will click and you do some action. And then it's going to have a what? A child. Okay. So it's going to have a child, which is going to be a container that's going to have the padding that you're seeing here. Okay. So I'll come and give the child this one and say what? As a container, that's going to have the width and, and I mean the, the, the horizontal and the vertical padding of 1515. So we'll have that one, okay? So after doing that, we're going to go ahead and give now the child to this um, uh, to that container. So I'll come here. It's going to be a row because it's going to have something in front here and another one at the end. So let's go ahead and do that together. So I'll come here and give a child of what a row. Okay, then after the row is going to take children. So the first child is going to be this icon that you're seeing here. So I'll come and put that icon and then I give it that kind of color. So we'll have that icon of a person there. So after doing that, uh, the next one is now to put the separate of that icon with the word account. So I'll go ahead and put a 10 there, okay, the width of 10 there. And then after, you're going to put the what? The text account. The word text. I mean, the, the word account in what? In a text view. So you can see how I've done it and how I've styled it, okay? If I save, we'll have that account like that. So you can see how it's getting shared. Then after, we shall put spacer so it can push the remaining icon to the further end. So I'll put your spacer, and then I go ahead and put the what? Uh, the remaining icon. Like this. So you can pause the video and see this icon is just chevron right and then it has that what it has that uh, uh gray color so you can see we have that kind of what kind of user interface which is uh really nice okay hope you can see that okay so after doing that the next thing is going to you're going to do the same thing but for the second user interface so you're just going simply to duplicate the row that you've created and then you do the same below only that you will have to do what to change the color okay so let's go ahead and put the height of 10 so it can be a little bit separated okay so after inkwell you put 10 like this so now you see that will have come up with something nice like this one. All right. Now let's go ahead and add the rest. So it's going to be exactly the same, but we are repeating it in different ways. Okay. We're going to repeat it in what? In different ways. So after adding uh, that, uh, the next thing is going to, to be what? To add the Gmail, okay? Or the email. So I'll finish this one. So you can just duplicate the same thing and then create that one for what for email okay so i can just come and duplicate this one exactly the same ui and you create for email so i'll come here in this column i make sure that i'm right column and then i go ahead and create for email like this so when i save i'll have the email here and then this one here so this one's supposed to be in bottom because i don't separate them like this so you see i have here the clicker for what for account and have here the for email okay and then you give it that color okay it's this just the difference is we are giving this one that uh, maroon color okay so we can do the same for the next one which is syncing then i come and add it here 
okay so you can challenge yourself and also do that by your own just copy what you've done and then call, change the part uh, the information or the data all right so after doing that let's go ahead and put the second and third card okay so we have put this margin of 10 then i'm going to put outside this card we're going to put the network section so i'll come here outside the card i'll collapse the card and then outside the card i'll put the what the network um the network what the network uh, section okay so after putting the network section i'm just going to copy the card you can even copy the one that we've just done on top and paste it and then modify it okay to what you suppose what you're saying here so i can just simply copy this card and then i put the other side because i've already shown you how to get a single card okay so i can come here and i paste it so let me see what i don't have in this project all right so in here we need to have a switch okay so here the difference is we need to have a switch that will switch on and off okay so if you want to have a switch you may need a, a controller okay you need a controller so what you do you define or oh, you need the initial value you define these values switch one and switch two okay so these values are going to be just plain what plain true and false so I'll come outside the outside the builder here outside the i mean uh, yeah outside the builder here in the class itself and then i create those two variables one is called switch one another one is called switch two let me show you how I implemented the switch it's just simple uh, create a widget called switch and then put the on change method and also the on change method is just simply set state and then you get the file that has just been set there okay and then also give it a cut an active color of your choice so i'll import this and uh, i'll have something beautiful like that one i can collapse it i can expand it okay so it is a good uh way of how you can get a what uh user friendly uh interfaces so i'll finish that one the next thing you're going to do is to put the sound section and then uh, we finish it okay so I'll come and put the sound section and the whole card just like the way I did the other side and then so I'll make sure that I'm here in this column also the card and then I put there my sound settings. Okay. So you see, I have now the what? The settings of the sound. So we have such kind beautiful UI. So I want you to pause the video and uh, look at how mine looks like. And also uh, see how you can achieve it. Okay. So you can see how I've gone through it step by step. All right. We can proceed to the next one. Okay so some UIs i'm going to give them to you as a challenge so for example this one i think you can do it so you can pause the video and do it this is going to be just a title and then after it will have a title and then okay let's see let, okay i want to do one more from this side so let us choose the one that uh, we can do uh so i don't know whether they should do this one or we should do this one I think let us do this one and then after doing this one you will challenge yourself and do this one the flat one okay this one because everything that is in there we have already taught it all what you need is just to organize it so i don't want to baby to baby to 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 to, to feed you or to spoon feed you uh some things you need to try them on your own so you can get that creativity so in case you're not there, you can also be able to do that, to do things on your own, right? Which is going to be the case. So please go ahead and pause the video and do this one on your own. So let us go ahead and do this one. Okay, so we're going to do this one. And then when you finish that one, we proceed to other topics. Okay.
So I'll come to a directory of settings and then I create a settings for the profile. Okay. All right, so we go ahead and connect this profile with our main menu. All right, so we have their profile settings and it is connected to what? A profile screen, this one here. So if I click there, we have that empty thing. All right, let's go ahead and do now the profile settings here. So the first thing, we're going to begin by returning a scaffold, of course. So I tell you, you import the ma material AI scaffold. So after that, we're going to give the title, the app bar, with the background color of white. So give the app bar and then give the system style white and then also the background color of white. Then you'll have something like that. All right, so after doing that, uh, the next thing we're going to give now the body is going to be a single scroll view. Okay, it's going to have a child, which is going to be a column that are going to put on their heart of content. Right. So after that, you're going to put a container of 10 of height 20 so you can be separated from the further top. Uh -huh, I save. After that, now I'm going to go ahead and put uh, another container that will have the row. Okay, that is going to have the row of what we need. I mean, of the, of the first image, okay? So we're going to have a child, and inside this child, we're going to have a what? The row. Okay, so after, we're going to put now our column, because we want to put this one, Adam's G, at the beginning of that row. So I'll come and get this one, and since one is over the other, it means that it's going to be what? It's going to be um, in that way, the columns. Okay, so I can pause the video and see what I've just done right now, okay? So after doing that, okay, so after doing that, the next thing we're going to do are this, so we're going to put a spacer and then put the image of the person. So I'll come here and put spacer. And then after, we put the image of the person who is logged in. So I can go ahead and import this circle image. And then put that. So we'll be able to have 
something nice like that one okay so after doing that the next thing you're going to we're going to add we're going to add the credits and coupons okay so this is going to be just an inkwell with credits and coupons text inside it and this inkwell is surrounding a what so i'm going to put it next to the uh to this first uh, row okay so i'll come here here and put it there so if i can explain it is just uh what an inkwell that has a container inside it that has edge inset of uh, of what of, of of symmetric which is a padding of a horizontal 15 and vertical 15 and then we have uh what we have a row inside it and then inside that row inside that row we have um, the word credits and then an spacer and then the picture of the person okay so if i save like this we'll have something like that okay this is just a picture icon okay so uh here i skipped uh, adding the margin and padding i think i can go ahead and add it from here so it can also be spaced so there you go so you can see we have the title the person and then the icon and then the what the text is next to it so after we're going to put a divider there so you can see how we're coming up with the nice user interfaces so i'm going to put a divider after that row okay we put a what a divider like this okay then after you can do the same thing just like we did on the first you do the same thing and adding icons all right so just come and put inkwell and do the other widget you can even write it once and then keep on calling it okay like this hope you can see that okay can go ahead and add this one okay so you can see the one that you're going to add so when i save we'll have such a nice user interface so go ahead and also design it i hope you can see how i've achieved such a nice what such a nice ui okay so go ahead and do it and design it you want to finish one thing and then you keep on duplicating for the rest all right so that's it that there's two screens that you have done so i'm challenging you to do this one on your own because you need to trigger your brain and see if it is working <laughs> okay and also you have to do what you have to do this one sorry not this one you have to pause the video and do this one let me open and do this one on your own because i already implemented this one yesterday so challenge yourself and do this one okay that's the first section and then also do the what the second section from challenging your brain it is when it will really really understand the concept without being without doing copying and pasting all right uh time is uh, what we plan to learn in the first session is over let me see if we can do one more thing let me show you i'm going to do this one after doing this one we proceed and uh do also this one and after doing this one also go ahead and uh, do maybe this one okay then after doing this i will leave for you or oh, a challenge and you do 
this one oh, i'll do this one and then you do th i'll do two and then you'll do the three i'll show you the screens that you should uh, uh, try out by yourself because right now i've already told you i've, been, I've already told you almost all the components that you can put together uh to come up with something meaningful so uh, you have to try out i'll show you what you should try and then you try out on your own but for the beginning i'm going to begin by showing you how you can do this one okay so without wasting much time let's go ahead and do the verification screens so i'll come to upload i'll come to a project and i then create a new section that i'm going to call verification all right so after putting verification so i'm going to put the verification screens here i'm going to come to our routes okay and then i create another section that i'm going to call verification Okay, then after I'm going to create a new screen for the phone verification no for entering the the phone. Okay. I'll come to a folder here and create a new file. I'm going to call a phone verification dot and then after come here and create a stateful widget that i'm going to call phone verification screen okay So after doing that, we're going to go to our main route, okay? And then we're going to add our what? Our link or our widget that's going to link us to the verification screen of the phone. Okay, so when you click here, it links you to that empty screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see how we can achieve it. So the first thing, I'm going to begin by returning uh, scaffold. And then after, we're going to give the scaffold the background of white. And then we'll have that nice scaffold. All right, after doing that, we're going to go ahead and put the up bar. And the up bar will not give its title, you're just going to keep it white. And then set the system, uh, the system what? The system. Uh, um, color to be white also so I'll go ahead and import and then you'll we'll have everything as white as we want okay so after doing that now the next thing we're going to uh, return a, a list view so the body is going to be the list view you know the list view is also a scrollable widget Okay, it's going to take padding and uh, it will shrink to two. Then after, we're going to go ahead and give it now children.
of the first children is going to be a stack. Okay. So in this stack, we're going to put a line of center. And then after, we're going to put a container that's going to have our image. A container of what? Of uh, 200 width. So after doing that, the next thing we're going to uh, give a column to the container and then it's going to put our, our content. Okay, so this column is going to have first a child of height of container that has a height of uh, 50. So after doing that, so you can see how I've designed that. Then the next thing is now to start putting the content. So I'm going to begin by putting this image, the vacation image. I'll import it. And then we'll have that. Okay? Have a vacation image. All right. So after doing that, uh, the next thing we're going to put our text which is going to be verify text so i'll come and put verify text and then i can go ahead and import it my colors like this so we'll have verify your number from there okay so after doing that the next thing we're going now to put the height of 15 And then after, we're going to put now the what? Uh, this text that you're seeing here that is explaining. Okay. And I will style it like this, like the way you see here. So I'll have something beautiful like that one for now. Okay. Then after, we're going to put a container and now start putting the phone number that we need to place there. Okay, so we're going to have a row that is going to have children. The first chair is going to be flexible of a text field. So we put uh, text field and uh, the content that we're going to collect. Okay, and then after we're going to have this one as what? As a controller that will be controlling it okay so we define here the controllers are first and second controller so you come here on top and define these text controllers both of them and then we go to build and then define the front text and then the detailed text Yeah, like this uh, so we have the controller that is controlling the first one and then the one that's controlling the second one okay and then their respective text that have just been put there all right so after doing that then you're going to put now the section of what of the phone number itself okay so I've just finished putting this one okay this uh, the one which has the front phone number and then we're going to have the front code, and then the second one is going to be the phone number itself. So first separate it with 10, width of 10, and then I'll go ahead and give uh, this one that's going to have a flexible 4. like this so it's just a flexible that is how uh, that's having a, a what that is having a, a text fill in it and then we have a keyboard okay that has a headline 
as a font style and then we have a flexible four this one is one by default so this one is four so it's going to be four times the previous one that we did in, is with it okay then after we we'll go and put a button you put a button Okay, which is having that called new so i believe you know now the button how can design such kind of a button okay and then after that button we put now the text button next we continue that is going to have no other time okay you see aha uh -huh. that's it and then you can put this one after this the max size to be max minimum okay so by doing like that you will achieve such kind of a what such kind of a user interface that will allow users to enter their phone number and also with a prefix that is kind of fixed there okay Okay, so that's it. That's it. Uh, yep. So this one is almost the same thing, only that it is one. It is exactly the same, but it is one per what? Per field. Okay. So let me just explain how you're going to do it. You're going to do the same thing that we've done here, and then you put the right image. And then you put the description and then you create four fields okay so in simple terms the only difference is this one you're going to make them what these flexibles so if you make this flexible one it will be like this okay so if i come and duplicate this one again so they're going to be like that one so if you separate them with 10 10 so you'll be able to achieve that Okay, so you see, but just because there's too much content there, but you can see I've successfully achieved that. So I challenge you to, um, you're no big boys because uh, I've taught you from scratch, I've taught you these components one by one. So I want you now to start putting your brain at, at stress. I challenge you to do this one. This is a text button. So I challenge you to do this one. Okay. So pause the video and achieve that one. I also challenge you to do this one. This we looked at this header yesterday. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the same, but these are going to be two on the same screen, and then you're going to have the one and the second and the three, just like the one that I've showed you to do, and then you'll have to a spacer that is going to push it, the this button in the column to the bottom here so i'm also going to challenge you to pause the video and do this one because you have to test your brain so those are the two things that you have to pause the video and try on your own because i've shown i've told you i've taught you almost everything that you see here so you shouldn't fail uh -huh. i also want you to do this one this one's really challenging but i want you to try it out so it's going to be a container which has an image behind it and then in front of it there is a what there is a, a layer that separates it with it and then there is a white context content in front of that layout so you can use stack and uh, you can use even the background image of what of a container to achieve this so i challenge you to do this hard one then this orange one it is also the same as the one you have looked at but the difference here the background is orange the difference the only difference is the background is orange color so i also challenge you to do this user interface so you can know that you've unmastered how to do this kind of thing otherwise if i do for you everything then you'll be equivalent to a person who has not learned okay so I challenge you to do this one. 
all right so that's it for today then so today it was like a challenge videos uh these logins for it we did them previous time so you can also try them out and then in the next lecture we shall look at what we shall look at uh dashboards how can you do a dashboard like this one how can you do a dashboard like this one and how can you do a dashboard like this one so that the dashboard that we're going to look at in uh, our tomorrow's lecture so i want you to use the time that uh, is remaining to do the challenges that i've asked you to do what uh, to do and don't miss in the next video or in the next lecture where i'm going to teach you how you can craft these dashboards and then after those dashboards we'll go to now our final uh, projects which is uh, designing the user interfaces of telegram and also designing the user interface of whatsapp and also designing the user interface of facebook and blackberry messenger facebook chat and blackberry messenger so we're going to go and do much more interesting things in the coming lectures and then when you finish the course of the videos or this lecture then while you can do so some things on your own then you'll be able to know that okay i've mastered the flutter user interfaces so in these last lecture this all lectures i want you to be taking the challenge that i ask you to do so you can really do what uh really uh, master the things that i've told you so to wrap it up all i want you to go ahead and uh, do the things that i've asked you to do which is here under verification uh today we're going to not do the different thing but proceed with our common lectures however today we're going to learn how we can uh, put still what we have been learning as individual independent components in order to come up with uh, different designs of um, user interfaces so, so, i mean that makes the uh, uh, mobile application dashboards uh, for example today we're going to design this screen that you can use as your mobile application dashboard after designing this screen of uh, fab icons or buttons we'll go ahead and design also a statistical screen for a statistical application uh, that you can use as your dashboard let's say you have a, a, a mobile application that you need to display uh, your data in statistical way you can use a dashboard like this however the 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 ideas can be unlimited but we're going to, i'm going to show you how we can do this uh, together this kind of dashboard and also we'll go ahead and proceed how we can do this builds application dashboard we'll proceed and see what can do also maybe a flight dashboard a flight application dashboard we'll proceed and do also a wallet uh, dashboard let's say that you want to make a wallet application so you can use an application i mean a dashboard or user interface of this kind also if time allows we'll proceed and also create um this a green wallet dashboard or a dashboard which has a green background for the wallet application so as we always do we always do 40 minutes for each lecture now you can see our timer has okay let us start our timer right now uh so we start counting our 40 minutes so in the 40 minutes we should have should be able to take a rest so with that much said let's go straight into our today's business and see how we can learn how to make uh, the, these different kinds of dashboards so let's do this okay so as you can see i've already started uh, my application which is uh, this one the one that we always use for practicing i've already started it and i've run it so today we are going to add here another section called dashboards and that's where we're going to put um, the links or the navigation that will take us to our very first dashboard that we're going to design which is the grid fab dashboard okay so let us go ahead and uh, do that so i'll close everything that i'd opened and then i'll go to our main screen layout and then in this screen i'm going to put a section that i can call fab what 
Uh, okay, let us begin by calling dashboard. Dashboards. And then I'll go ahead. I can put the relevant icon. And then that will be our section for dashboard. And then I'll go ahead and create a link or a navigation button that's going to be navigating us uh, to the fab, I mean to the fab dashboard. So we have not created this screen. Let's go ahead and create it together. So I'll just simply come here and create a separate section of a directory that I can call dashboard. Then in this section, we're going to put our first dashboard. You can call grid fab dashboard. Screen the dot. I'll copy this name and then press enter. Then I'm going to put here a stateful widget. That I'll press the name and remove the extension of that. And then I go ahead and import um uh, the package of uh, but you know you can as well go ahead and import the material UI. So after doing that. The next thing now, we are going to add this screen into our navigation. So if someone clicks here, it should be taken to this screen. So we'll come back to our main menu route and then put there grid dashboard and then we put that screen and then save. Now, if you click on this, you should be able to see this blank screen. Good. Just a minute. All right. Then after doing that, we're going now to start designing the exact grid fab, fab grid what dashboard that we need all right so this is the dashboard that we need so to save time i'm just going to go straight to it and then we start redesigning it together Okay, we're going to begin by putting the scaffolds. So to return here, a scaffold. Let me disable copilot. And then I save. Okay. After putting the scaffold, Okay, the next thing we are going to put the background color to be our blue or the primary background color. So you can have something like this, All right? So the scaffold background color is going to be the primary background color. I'll go ahead and import this one. So you can have that sky blue. <laughs> I hope that's the sky blue that we need, okay, as the background. So after making that one uh, our main background color we're going to go ahead and put the up bar this up bar that you see there on top so that we can be able to uh, give the color to the status bar so i'll go ahead and add the up bar 
so you can pause the video and see that uh, this app bar is nothing but uh, giving it a system overlay style that we go ahead and give it um, a brightness uh, color I mean the, 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 the status brightness icon brightness to be light and also status color to be dark blue and then you give the elevation of this up the head of this up bar to be zero so it can just change only the status uh, background color and also the elevation to be zero so if I go ahead and import this then to make sure that the icons in the status bar are white uh, then after doing that the next thing now we're going to go ahead and give our our scaffold the body so i'll just simply come here and go ahead and give the body and this body is going to be a container okay so after doing that the next thing we're going to give the background color not to be like a hundred percent white but um to be um a gray of a hundred so I'll go ahead and give this container a background color of gray of a hundred and then we'll have something uh, nice like that one then after doing that, uh, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to give the height of this container to be infinity, so it can spend 100% of our what, of uh, our space that is available, or the height of the phone. Then after doing that, now the next that we're going to do, we're going to give a scroll view because someone may have a smaller phone, so this might not fit there. So what we're going to do, to be on the base side, we're going to give it a scroller view. So in case someone has a smaller phone, they should be able to do what to scroll so we'll go ahead and give a child to this uh, container to be a scroll a single child scroll view uh, after doing that then we're going to give the column to this one because these are going to be arranged in form in form of column so let's go ahead and give uh, this one child a child of a column now this column we're going to give it a cross cross axis alignment of start and main axis alignment of maximum then after doing that it will go ahead and uh, cover whatever is there like that then after we are going to go ahead and give the children here okay so the children this column the first thing is going to be stuck so we are putting stuck because this one wants this one to be a little bit in front of what you have here so let's go ahead and put uh, the stack as the first child of this column Okay, so we give it stack. All right. So after we are going to give now uh, this top icon that you're seeing here. I mean this top blue color that you're seeing here. We are going to give it uh, the background. I mean we're going to give it a container. So the child of this one is going to be a container of this stack. All right. So after putting the container, this container we are going to give it the width of infinity, so it can spend the 100% of the available width. And also the background color of primary so it can make sure it is what it is blue so after doing that it has spent 100 percent of the available height so i'm going to limit its height okay so to limit its height you're going to give it a height of a hand of 140 so it can be uh, that size or that color there so after giving the height of 140 the next thing we're going to do we're going to give that image that you're seeing there the image of um, a world map okay this image it is already in the in the what in the it's going it, this image is already in the what in the assets that I shared with you with the project okay so let's go ahead and give that image as the main child of this what of this container and then give it a fit of um, cover so in its save we're going to have that kind of uh, uh, map color that you can see in the background okay so after putting that image as the main child here now the next thing that we're going to do we're going to uh we're going to go ahead and uh, put now this row this row that you're seeing here that is here i mean this row of the name that you're seeing here okay so it's going to be since it is it since it is uh, a stack so it means that it, this one is going to be in kind of background and the next thing that we're going to put to it in this stack, it's going to be on top of it. So it means that if we put a row, that row is going to be on top of what? On top of what? Of this image that we have just designed here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to put a, a row. All right. And then this row, we're going to give it um, 
cross alignment of uh, center and then we are going to give it uh, children and then the children of this row the first one is going to be a container or sized box of of 15 so we can have this space here that you're seeing here let's go ahead and give it Okay, and then after putting 15, the next thing we're going to put now a column. You see this name, it is having something on top of it and then below it. So it is a, it is a what? It is a column. So let's go ahead and put a column to this container. I mean next to the container. And then we make uh, this column to have uh, cross access alignment of start. So the content should be start. And then we're going to give it children. Okay, so the first child is going to be now uh, the height of 10, so we can have a space here on top here. So I can put here the height of 10, and then after, we're going to have now this name. Okay, hi, Miller Wilson, I can put there my name. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put the name and give it that style that you can see there. Okay, so... So I'll go ahead and have that one like that. So after doing that, so we have that color and that styling of that text there. The next thing we're going to put now the height of five. And then after putting the height of five, and the next thing we are going to put now the text. Okay. So maybe the name of our application. So you will come the user like that. So this is a column, and remember, it is inside the what? Inside the row, okay? Inside the row. So after doing that, you're going to put now the spacer. So the spacer is going to push whatever we're going to put next to this column, so it can be able to have something at at the further last. So put a spacer, and then after that spacer, we go ahead and put now this button that is going to show a menu. This one here, where you can put a menu. Alright, so I'll come and just copy the button, you can pause the video and then you'll be able to see how I design this button. It's just something simple that has that icon, which has the color, and then on press listener. Okay, so if I save, I'll be able to achieve uh, that beautiful user interface. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do now, we're going to put uh, now this search bar or this search icon, okay. So this one is going to be next to our stack, okay? It's going to be next to our stack, so it's going to be in the main column. So it can be in, on top of the stack. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can collapse this stack, okay? So why did you do it stack? Because we wanted to have that kind of image design in background. So let me collapse the stack now and go ahead and design now this search, this search bar or this search icon. All right, so to do that, I will go next to stack here and put a column. Okay, now after that column, I'm going to give it a, a padding of 10 on horizontal. Okay, then after that padding, I'm going to go ahead and give a transformation of matrix, matrix 4 and then translation values of 0 0.0 and then minus 3.2. So this translation it will help us to push to make the the, the what uh, our the con this container that we're doing here to go on top or even to go in bottom something like that okay so if this container is going to go on top uh, or it's going to go by, uh, on top of whatever is behind it okay and then after in this container we're going to give um, now the column okay so go ahead and say child going to be the column and then after doing that we're going to give children a card so we're going to put there our first card this is the card that I'm talking about
chain then this card can have this shape all right then after we're going to give now our card the background color of white and also elevation of two and then uh, the parameter of clip behavior of that so I can pause the video and look at that so right now we're designing this card that you're seeing on top and then after we're going to give this card a child that's going to have that's going to have a container okay and this container is going to have the height of of 60 and then the alignment of justification center left and then also the padding of symmetric horizontal five okay so that is uh, what our container so by being like this since our container i mean this since our column is going backwards by 10 we'll be able to achieve something like this one which is uh, so beautiful all right so after we're going to go ahead and give the row because this is nothing but a what but a row so we're going to go ahead and give a row as a child of this container okay and then after in this row i mean so let's go ahead and give it a row and then after the, after creating the row so the first cell of this row is going to be this such icon or this such button this one here okay so this is the button here icon button and we make it the first child of this row so go, go ahead give children so the first child is the what is the icon button there the one that you see there on top okay then after doing that so you have that one there so the next thing we're going to put now the what the expanded so it can spend the maximum available space and then you put the text field okay so you can look at this so you can pause the video and see this okay self-explanatory so we give expanded as next child and then text field and then give it a, a keyboard control as text type of text and then decoration decoration input it collapse and then you put uh, find a product or you can say maybe search something like that and then we'll have uh, find a product icon there so this decoration does not have a bottom and uh, navigate i mean bottom what bottom underline okay so after doing that the next thing now we're going to put at the further end this uh, icon for the menu so come here and put that one there so then after doing that we'll have a beautiful uh, uh, user interface that looks like that okay so it is uh, nice all right so after doing that uh, i hope you can uh, pause the video and uh, also do the same thing exactly okay now let's go ahead and uh, now put this content that you're seeing here in bottom so we're going to also collapse this card i mean this container that is next to the stack this one here so we found that was working in the logic of what of this search all right so aha uh -huh, then next to that container we're going now to go ahead i mean sorry next to the card sorry not the whole container i put the card next to the card because this column is where i'm going to put the content so next that card we go ahead and now put the what and put the another card so this card is this one that has these uh fabu icons of our buttons this one here so let's go ahead and put another card here next to this card you put another card and it's going to have a child and uh, you can pass these parameters of the card that the one that you always pass so our things should look the same okay shape the background color to be white okay remember this is kind of gray in background so this will make it white and then the clear behavior to that one then the child that we're going to put in this card is going to be a container okay and then when you save to be like that it's going to be a container that's going to be alignment of uh, of content to be center left and then after we give it uh, that padding okay so i can pause the video and see this padding that i'm giving this container so let's go ahead and give that one then after doing that the next thing we're going to give uh, we're going to do what to create now the the child okay so the child is going to be a column 
so go ahead and put here child that is going to be a column that is going to have um children of content that are going to be in rows 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 like this okay so let's go ahead and put uh, the, the children of this column so the first child is going to be a what a row okay so after doing that uh now the first child to this row is going to be a floating uh what action button okay so i can come here and give this column ch i mean this uh, this this row children so the first child is going to be a floating what action button all right so now uh, we put the on pressed uh okay we we go ahead and give it a tag and give it elevation and give it also the the minimum the TV weather should be minimum to be true and then give it the background color of uh, of light green this one here and then pass 40 and also go ahead and give it a contain i mean an icon of uh, a person and the icon is white since the background color is green and then we give it on press method which is an empty function like this one so if we do this and then we pass it here then we'll be able to achieve our first button like that one there okay so we're going to do the same almost the same for the remaining buttons that are going to be in this what in this particular column so um we go ahead and give it a size height of five so next to this button go ahead and remember it is in a column um <laughs> Um, wait, let's skip something. This one's going to be in a column since it's going to have a subtitle. So, uh, sorry, I come here and then press Alt and Enter and then say column so it can be sounded with a column because it's going to have a, a, a description. Then I give it a container of height 5 and then after doing that, I go ahead and give uh, uh, the text to that. And then I format it in this way that you're seeing here. Okay. Hope you can see that. So after doing that, if I save, I'll have that kind of um, a text and uh, an icon and a button on top of it. So this is what we have here, right? So it is having a row. And the first child of that row is nothing but a column that is having on top as a fab with those parameters. And next to it, it's having a height of five. And then also the text that you're seeing the word friends there so all right so after doing that now the next thing i'm going to put another column that's going to have the groups okay so if i explain this it is just a, a column that has a first child as a what as um action fab and then it has a height of five and then it has the text of what of groups like this so i'll just simply copy this and then can't paste it i hope you can uh, be able to see it. so i'll come to this row so next to the row i give uh, that second column this one here okay that i have groups okay so uh, so this row it must have so you see they are they are being attached to each other so this row it must have uh, a parameter of what of max of main axis alignment and then you give it a space around so it can they can be spaced uh, equally with a space around them so we'll have something like this so that is beautiful uh -huh. so i can go ahead and give the remaining things so let me collapse this one and i finish friends i go ahead and put also um the nearby okay so i put the icon of gps and then the text of nearby so let me go ahead and do that so i'll come here and collapse this column i've collapsed both of them this one and this one and then i go ahead and put nearby so nearby it is just exactly the same you can even design a simple widget and then keep on calling it and repeating yourself and then we'll have this nearby so i can pause the video and understand how i've done this nearby okay I will collapse that nearby then after nearby i'm going to put um the moment okay the moment icon number the moment 
okay so i'll collapse this and then come and put there like this and then we'll have the moment all right so that is uh beautiful so that is our first row so since these rows are in a column remember this is a row so i can come to where this row begins and collapse the whole row okay and collapse the whole row so once i collapse this whole row uh it means that uh, i can even duplicate it and become next to it so what i'm going to do i'm going to be put just a sized height of 15 so it can be spaced so i come here and put size height of 15 and then i can have a space between those and then i'm going to copy this row so this row which is having album likes articles and reviews so you can pause the video and design this one on your own okay album likes reviews so me i'm just going to pause the whole row copy the whole row and paste it there since i've already taught you or demonstrated to you how you can do the first one okay so i go ahead and put it there and then we'll have something beautiful like this one then i go ahead again separate it with 15 height okay container 15 height and then i go ahead and put our third row this one here so you can also go ahead and design it pause the video and design this third row which is having the spots payment and favorite draft favorites and draft so that you can pause the video and go ahead and do what and do that so press ctrl and alt and l to auto arrange your code ctrl alt and l to auto arrange your what your code all right so after doing that then it means that you'll have designed a beautiful user interface like this one so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to now we're going to go ahead and put this uh, balance icon i mean this balance user interface that has even the number of points so let me go ahead and copy that uh, contain of five so i'll come next to the card this is the first card so i'll come next to that card and then i give it what a height of five so it can be spaced then after that i'm going to put another card that is going to have this balance and then also the points so let's go ahead and do that so it's going to be next to the card that has been had that has this content it's going to be a what it's going to be our card that is going to have uh these parameters you can pause the video and look at them these ones all right and then after we are going to put now the child of this card okay that's going to have a height of uh, 60 okay so you can have that beautiful card there so after putting that container and the height and the rest so the next thing that we're going to put we're going to put now this row that is going to have this balance and the points so let's go ahead and do that so the child or the main child in this card is going to have it's going to be a row and it's going to have children okay and then after uh in this container i mean this these children the first child is going to be this balance and this money so since it's one item on top of the other it's going to be a what a column so the first child of this row is going to be a what a column a column which will give this parameter of main alignment to, to center and then cross axis alignment to start all right and then after doing that we're going to give it uh, children okay so the first child is going to be the text i mean the text and then the second child is going to be now the what the amount so we're going to give it children of this column so the first child is what is a balance which is having uh, this color and that alignment you can pause the video and look at that simple user interface so we're going to have that balance word then after we go ahead and give it uh what uh this text that is in green color which is the money itself so next to it to give it um, text in green color with the money itself then uh, uh we'll have something beautiful like this okay yep so that's beautiful now after doing that the next thing now we're going to put a spacer between that column and uh container that is going to have these points 
So we'll come and collapse this column in this row and then put a spacer. And then after that spacer, we're going to put the what? Um, the container that is going to have these points. So go ahead and put a, a container uh, that is going to have the padding of that kind. Okay. And then it's going to have a, a decoration. So it's going to be having a decoration. It's going to be a box decoration and then the color of orange as, as the color of the container and then the border radius of border circuit border radius circuit dot circular and then we give it 15 so it can be that kind of rounded so you go ahead and create that decoration around that container so when i save i'll have something beautiful like this then after we're going to give it uh, the child as the text of 140 I mean, 415 um, a what um, points, and the color of that text should be white. So by doing like this, we're going to have something beautiful like this one. Okay, so go ahead and design this as how I've designed it. So and that's it. So we'll have created a beautiful user interface or a beautiful dashboard for a mobile application. So. You can be creative and add on this what I've designed. So you can put here maybe the menu for logging in and logging out. Uh, you can go ahead and change this one to whatever things that are going to leave link in your different uh, modules to different modules of your application. So please uh, don't just watch the video, but watch as you do it, watch as you practice, and then you'll be able to achieve such a what such kind of. Uh, uh, user interface okay so from there you can get now experience of how you can do multiple things and another beauty is if you see how we have been organizing our code or our components what does it mean if i need to make a next application i don't need again to do everything from scratch when i want this dashboard i'll just come and copy this one and modify it when i want a list i just come and copy a list here and modify it so with these components it's not that you're going to do them and leave them here you can do them you can reuse them in the next of your what in the next of your project and then you just keep on improving them and that will save a lot of your time to do these uh, kind of professional user interfaces that is beautiful user interface for what for mobile application dashboard so how much time you're remaining with the remaining four minutes five minutes <laughs> Uh, can we do something in these five minutes? Um, I don't know. Let me see the next thing that we're going to do. So we're going to do uh, the statistical user interface, this one. I want to do two, so you can also give you a challenge and do the others. So I'm going to do this one, and then maybe for you, you'll do this one of flight. I don't know. Yeah, this one of flight is just like the one that you've just done, only that... Um, this one has this kind of card, so I don't know which one you propose I should do, and then for you take the other one as a as a challenge. I think I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do. Uh, let me do this uh, green one, okay? This green one is a little bit complex. So let, let me do this one. So we are going to design this um, wallet. What wallet? dashboard okay so in the previous lecture we were able to design this uh, dashboard so we're going to design this kind of what of valid dashboard all right so let's see how we can do something like this so first of all i'm going to i'm going to do what uh, first of all i'm going to create a new uh, screen of uh, wallet dashboard okay so how do we do that? I'll just simply come to our dashboard here. I mean to our mobile application here. And then after, I'm going to create a, a new uh, screen that I'm going to call wallet dashboard. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is our menu route. Okay. Our menu route. I'm going to duplicate this one. And then come here and call this one wallet dashboard. Okay.
okay so that is uh, our link to the wallet dashboard let's go ahead and now create our screen of wallet dashboard so i'll come up dashboard and click on new and then say file that i'm going to call wallet dashboard screen dot dot okay and then we'll go ahead and say stateful widget and then put that one all right so i can remove this and then i import the material and then after doing that the next thing we are now going to connect this wallet dashboard screen with our main menu so i'll come to our main menu route okay and then put the our what our wallet dashboard and then i save now someone should be able to click to here and then see this uh, completely empty screen that you can see here so after doing that now let's go to our wallet dashboard and then we see how we can um, implement it okay so the first thing that we're going to do we're going to return is scaffold remember this is what you want to target so let's go ahead and turn this black screen into uh, this beautiful user interface that you can use for your wallet so the first thing that you're going to begin we're going to begin by returning a scaffold then you have that white okay so the next thing we're going to begin i mean return the background color of gray uh 100 of that scaffold after returning that uh the next thing we're going to put now the single scroll view okay single child scroll view as the what as the body of this scaffold okay and then in there we're going to put a what a column as the child of that single scroll view and then this column we're going to put now our up bar however you can put the up bar on top to be fixed but here is in case you want the up bar to be scrollable just in case the screen is too small okay so let me go ahead and put the up bar as the first child Okay, so here I'm just showing you that even the upper can as well go in a what? In a column. So this is up bar. You can pause the video and uh, look at it. Okay, so we have that beautiful up bar, which has an elevation of zero, a background color transparent, and then a system overlay with a system back, uh, icon background of dark. And then the status uh, icon of gray, and then we had uh, uh, a leading of uh, this menu icon, and then when, whereby when you click on it, it will pop the page or go back, and then we have here the actions, which is uh, this button that you're seeing here for refreshing. All right, that is beautiful. Okay, then after doing that, now the next thing is going to be now putting this content that you're seeing here. So the first thing is going to be our child, okay, okay, so this child is going to have the padding of, uh, of what, I mean, going to have a container with the padding of uh, symmetric 15, okay, then uh, it's going to have a column inside it, so come here and give a child and then pass the column and then after passing the column now we're going to give this card this first beautiful blue card that you're seeing here so let's go ahead and create that card and then we give the child to that card which is going to be okay let's first give this parameter this card you can pause the video and look at these parameters here okay so this is supposed to be in container i mean in, in children like this okay so after doing that now we're going to give the child of this of this first card that you're seeing there so the child is going to be a column since we're going to have these items next to these ones so it's going to be a column that's going to have children okay so after we're going to give a row that's going to have um 
this x that's going to okay let's go ahead and design this row so going to have here there here a row and then in this row it's going to have children okay the first item in that row we're going to give it a 10 width and then after we're going to give the expanded and give that expanded a child of uh, the name of our application and the text with i mean the text so this is expanded which is having a, a new application and then it has a style and then it has uh, the text style this one that one that i'm showing you here okay with that color okay so you can pause the video and look at it all right so i'll go ahead and save and then we'll be able to have that kind of um, a ui so after doing that so the next thing that you're going to do is now to do what is now to so this connect this co this container uh, it's this column has a container around it so i can surround it with a container of which i can give um, a symmetric uh padding over uh, height 15 so it can be kind of that one okay all right so after doing that so the next thing that we're going to do is now to add is not add what is not we have added this expanded and uh we're going to put now this icon of adding next to this row okay so after this expanded we put the icon of a plus next to that row so when i save i'll have that icon of plus next to that row as you can see it here so that is uh, beautiful so far you can see it has a price listener all right so that is uh, so nice okay so after doing that um uh, the next thing is going to have a height of uh, 10 next to the row. We're going to have height of 10. Okay. And then after that row, we're going to have uh, the text that is center, which is going to be an Ethereum balance. Okay. E So this is nothing but text next to that 10 height that is having this style the one that you can see here okay so if i save i'll have this ethereum balance okay and then after i go ahead and put uh, the text that's going to show the balance okay Okay, so you have that beautiful thing there. Then after doing that, the next thing you're going to put um, the balance in form of what? Of USSD. So this is nothing but text that I'm styling. You can also style them in your own way. Okay. Then you'll have that balance in that color. Then after, you're going to have a container with height of 35. And then we'll have that container there with a the height of 35. All right, so that is beautiful so far. Now, after doing that, now the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to have outside that card, we're going to have a height of, uh, of five, okay, outside this card. So I'll come here to the column. I mean, outside this card, we're going to have a height of five. All right, sorry, should be in the column, comma, five next to the card, this blue card. Okay, which you can collapse from here so you can pause the video and see how you design such kind of a blue card okay then after we're going to go ahead and uh, now put a row that is going to have this send and receive okay so let's go ahead and do that so you can just simply put a row that's going to have children and um, the first child you're going to have it as expanded okay So they can be equal so the child this column is going to be expanded 
um, expanded all right after we're going to give this expanded a child of a card okay child of a card right now we are designing this send okay so this card we're going to give it um the shape parameter and also the color parameter okay you can pause and look at it and the clip behavior so it's just a shape and then elevation and then the clip behavior okay and then after we're going to put a child in this card so since this card uh so after going to put a container inside it so the main child of this card is going to be the container all right and then after we're going to have now the container that's going to have a, a padding of 15 on all sides okay so padding of 15 on all sides and then it, you see it is here okay then this is going to, the container is going to have a child of a row of a row and uh, uh, the row is going to have children it's going to have a clip avatar okay so this row is going to have children so the first child is going to be a clip avatar okay so this clip avatar is going to take a radius of uh, 12 so i'm trying to create this kind of a button here so i want to put a radius of 12 and it's also going to have a child a child uh okay radius of 12 and then i'll go ahead and give it um the background color of uh, of what of of uh, gray 10 and then i give it an icon that is going to have the arrow up icon which has the color of 40 and then the size of 14 okay that's going to be the child of that okay so that is our clip art that is uh, this user interface <clears throat> so if i come here i'll go ahead and give that information to the clip art i import these colors so when i save i'll have that beautiful icon that is in pointing up with that kind of uh, color then after next tweet, I'm going to give a width of 15. And then after, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, a style of uh, a style of uh, that you can see here, body and color, and also the font weight of uh, 500. Okay. So I can have that send here. Uh, so I'll have that beautiful user interface. Okay, so you can see it there. All right, so after doing that, uh, now the next thing I want to put a separator that will separate the two. Okay. So I'll come and collapse this expanded and put a separator that's going to separate the two width of five so i have it here okay and then after i'm going to put the same user interface okay but it's going to have the icon that points down which has the word receive okay so i'll go ahead and do that I can collapse it so for you going to design the same thing but with the arrow that points down and then i put it there so I'll be able to have uh, such beautiful interface. Okay, we'll send and receive. That is so nice. I hope you can see that. All right, so after doing that, now we're going to go ahead and design now this uh, word today. Okay, so it's going to be next to the row, this one that we have, so I can collapse this row. And then I put comma. And I put container of height 10, this one here, so it can be spaced. And then I give um, uh, a what? We'll give a text of today with that color and that font weight. Okay. So, and uh, that style. So you can pause the video and see how we designed this just word today. You can also write your own style if you want to. But should be almost looking like mine, so shouldn't be so much different from mine.
for the beginning then after we're going to go ahead and give it a height of uh, five okay then after we're going to go ahead and now create a what a card so let's go ahead and create a card now so you put a shape okay so as you can see there and then after you give it a, a child uh -huh. so this child we are going to have padding of uh, old 15 and then we're going to have a row okay so we're designing this right now we're going to have a row the chart of this container okay so we want to put this icon first so this row is going to have alignment cross alignment of start it's going to have children okay so the first thing that we're going to put there we are going to put there circle avatar of 12 and child icon of R down and then the color of gray something like that i hope you can see that okay so after doing that now the next thing that we're going to do we're going to go ahead and put a container of 15 so right now we're designing this okay so I'm going to go ahead and put a container of 15 uh, that's going to have width of 15 and then after we are going to put now a column you know this is having a rest, the word receive on top and then next to it there is a, uh, the date okay so it's going to be a column so go ahead and put column and then after we're going to have children inside there okay so I make the cross axis alignment to be start okay and then after we are going to go ahead and uh, put the first child as the word receive with that color that you're seeing on top there okay so i'll go ahead and put that first child as receive with the color of blue as you can see it and that style so if i save i'll have receive okay then next to receive we're going to have a height of t of five so it can separate this height to the next word uh -huh. and then in this height we are going to have now the text of um, style 14 okay so this text style okay and um, height of 14 like this all right so after doing that uh we'll be able to do what uh to have this beautiful interface remember it is a column so it is having receive and then this date okay and that text so after having that column now we're going to put a what we're going to put a spacer that's going to space, space this content from the next column so I'll go ahead and put the spacer in between here sorry next to the column okay it should be in this row okay so this is the co first column and then we have uh, a spacer that's going to have uh to separate the two from the other okay so let's go ahead and design now put this ethereum balance and also in the ssd so let's go ahead and do that so i'll come here and put the column and give it children okay so the first child is going to have uh I mean sorry I'm going to have the alignment to end and then the first child is going to be having children and this content that you're seeing here this one okay so that's the first child okay this content all right uh, then after doing that 
the next thing is uh, going to give to give it a height of five, the space of height of five, and then after we are going to put uh, uh, what we're going to put uh, this text of SSD this. So come here, put the text, and then we'll have that SSD there. Okay. So I can pause the video and see how I've done designing this. So we'll end up having that kind of uh, beautiful interface, okay, which is supported by the word by the colon. So you can see how you implement this one in different ways. It can be a start, it can be a finance application or something of that kind. Okay. Then after we're going to have now the card that is going to contain these rest ones. So it is going to be exactly the same card, but different. Uh, data so you can pause the video and start designing the same cards, but with different data So what I'm going to do I'm just going to go ahead and collapse this card and then add other cards Which is going to be these ones. Okay, so I'll come here copy this This is the first card that we just designed so I'll come here and add this other card here which is going to look like the first but just a few differences then you'll have something like that okay then i collapse it i create another card again i copy this one and then i'll have something beautiful like that all right so then at last i put maybe the height of uh, 40 40 20 so that it should always be mixed with the what with a bottom view in if someone's phone is small how has a smaller screen so you can see those are my widgets and how i've designed them then lastly i'm going to put now the bottom navigation okay so this bottom navigation is going to be next to the scroll view okay to the to the single child scroll view So bottom navigation bar it's going to be a child of what of the scaffold okay so come here the scaffold and then give it a child of bottom navigation bar then this bottom navigation bar you're going to put the bottom navigation by itself all right so it has to take uh the selected color okay the selected color will be white and selected color will be gray of 400 and then the current index is going to be the index that we're going to set here and then it's going to be the show selected labels to be false. Okay, so you can start writing these things, pause the video, and then give it on tap listener. Then we go ahead and get the index that has just been sent to us, and then set state and update the index. And then we have items in it. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So copy those. I can pause the video and write them down or in your application. Put them in the bottom navigation. Now this index we haven't created it let's go ahead and create that variable of index so we're going to you can come here outside scaffold and then could put the int of int of current index to be zero okay this one there okay then after it's going to have uh items okay so these items is going to have um bottom navigation of background color so each bottom navigation will have a background color and uh, an icon and uh, the label in case you want to put maybe the text there okay so that, that's what each is going to take here so i'll copy and put there the first so you can look at it so that's the first item you can go ahead and create the next item okay so you're going to have a background color and the icon and the label in case you want to put the other label okay so go ahead and do that also so that I, so if i save i'll have that and then let me finish the remaining ones okay then i'll end up having this kind of what of uh, the bottom navigation so 
I can even be able to switch something beautiful like that. So you can do the logic of when you switch, you change, you change the what? The tab icons. You see? That is beautiful, isn't it? So if you want to put maybe the labels, you can go ahead and put the labels. Okay? If you want uh, the labels. So, but for me, I'm not interested in the labels, so I keep them what? I keep them empty. So you'll end up having such a beautiful thing. All right, so that is how uh, you design uh, such a kind of a user interface. In the meeting in the car. <laughs> so, uh, my friend is here disturbing me. So called in the, in the meeting. So, I'm playing the So, I'm So, that is how you can design uh, what? That's how you can design such a user interface. Uh, and I've taken you step by step, so you should be able to practice and be able to achieve such a, a beautiful thing, okay? So, this is what we have been able to achieve today. So, you can go ahead and uh, also try these ones. So, you see, that's beautiful what we have achieved today. Make sure that you also practice, don't just watch as, as a movie. So, you can go ahead and uh, do what? You can go ahead and um, give a challenge to yourself and... Um, practice design this one so the other one uh, had a blue background uh, this one should be a totally light user interface challenge yourself and design this one go ahead and challenge yourself and design this one they like uh, sorry this one of light like the one that you did in the previous videos so for me i've just shown you the two and then for you can do uh these remaining ones which are almost the same ideas don't just watch but watch as you do it watch as you practice so uh that's it for today i'm going to leave you and uh make sure that you subscribe to the youtube channel so when we publish the next video you're able to do what you're able to follow up and also what i emphasize is that um don't just watch these uh tutorials like movies watch them as you practice so that's it for today we meet in the next lecture in the next lecture i'm going to train you how we can do uh, chatting systems a clone of whatsapp this is what you're going to do in the next lecture so make sure that you don't miss and also also be able to show you how you can do something like a, a face uh, proceed with, from where we stopped at in the previous uh, lecture and today we are going to see how we can create a uh, different clones of different chat systems so in what we're going to do today let me first make sure that our account is counting because all is do 40 minutes okay let me start our counter so it has started counting so in what we're going to do today we're going to design a very interesting thing we're going to design the chatting systems or the clones of existing chatting system so we're going to design a telegram user interface of how okay just we're going to design uh, an, an interface for a telegram chatting system or a clone of a telegram uh, chatting system so this is what we're going to do by the end of this video we should be able to achieve this we shall also go ahead and design the whatsapp chatting system or the ui for a whatsapp chatting system then uh, we shall you see so we'll be able to send a message like this one and then uh, we'll populate a reply like that we'll also go ahead and design a facebook messenger chatting system like this one okay so by the end of this video, we should be able to achieve uh, something like this. We shall also go ahead and design a BlackBerry Messenger chatting system or a user interface for BlackBerry Messenger or a clone for a BlackBerry Messenger. So you can use this uh, chatting system, of course, for the experience and also maybe in your applications in future when you want to make an application that has a chatting system, you can uh, as well code it on your own. So with that much said, we are going to go straight 
into our today's business and begin by creating a what a telegram uh, user interface or a chatting system clone for what for a telegrams app so let's go ahead and begin by running our application so i'll come to the application that we always use to practice with and then run it All right, so after doing that, I'm going to open, I'm going to, as this the application is compiling, I'm going to create a, a new section where I'm going to put the charts. So I'll come here to the screen and create a new directory that I'm going to call chat. Okay. So in this directory, I'm going to begin by putting uh, the Telegram chat. Okay. So, but before we go into that, let's go ahead and, re okay, let's create a Telegram chat. Okay. So right click here and then come and say new file and then we're going to say telegram telegram screen dot that like this okay so here we're going to create a stateful widget for the telegram screen so i just simply say stateful widget and then i say telegram screen then i go ahead and uh, remove this then i import the material uh, library or package okay so everything is there so we're going to link this telegram screen with our main route so someone should be able to click on uh, telegram screen and then they go there so we shall come to our main route which is there this file and then we're going to duplicate this one and then put here telegram screen and then here put here telegram okay so i'll go ahead and import this screen Okay, so on top there, I'm going to create another section that I'm going to call chats. Okay, like this chat. All right, so in there, I'm going to get this telegram and then I'm going to put it here as chat. Okay, so under chat, you'll have telegram. So you can put here maybe a relevant icon of chat like this. All right, so we have telegram so if someone clicks here you should be taken this fresh screen that you've created for telegram so if i click here i'm taken to the screen of what of telegram here so it is a black screen there is nothing right now okay so we're going to begin uh, step by step and see um, how we are going to design a uh, telegram what a telegram screen good so let me come to my code because I already created it. And then we'll start straight away the journey. All right, so the first thing we're going to begin, we're going to begin, of course, by returning the scaffold. So I'll come here, come to Telegram screen, this one here. I remove the placeholder and return the what? The scaffold. And then when I save like that, everything should be white. All right, so after returning the scaffold, uh, the next thing I'm going to begin by adding the background of the telegram. Okay, this background color of telegram. So I'll come here in our scaffold, we'll put the background color of the telegram. And I save. So I'll have that beautiful color of what? Of telegram that you're seeing there. Uh, then after doing that, then we're going to add our app bar here on top. Okay. So I'll go ahead and say app bar. So I'll come here and give this scaffold an up bar and open and close then we'll have uh, that beautiful uh, white in the background then this up bar we are going to give it um, a background color of this okay so you can just pause the video and copy these colors of telegram so I'll come and give this up bar the background color of telegram then we'll have that kind of uh, user interface like that then after doing that, we're going to give, we're going to make these icons to look white, okay? So to make those icons look white, you have to pass the system overlay, okay? So we'll go ahead and say system overlay. And then we pass that color, okay? Make them light and then pass that color. So by doing like that, you'll we'll have the, that color. Let me first disable copilot, okay? So I've made the background, the colors to be light and also the background to be the having that, that, that background color of what? Of uh, telegram. All right. So after doing that, let us go uh, to another step. So I've changed the color of telegram. So the next thing we're going to put the title 
So in that title, it is where we're going to have this uh, picture and also the name of the person and also telling whether they are online. So let's go ahead and give a, the title to this watch, to this scaffold. And then in the title, we are going to uh, pass a row. Okay, so we shall go ahead and pass the row. Then this row is going to have children. Okay, it's going to have children. So we're going to have children. And then the first child of this row is going to be this picture, the one that you're seeing here. So I'll just simply come and copy this circular picture. So from the project that I gave you, the project that you begin with, it will automatically add the what? Add the picture because it comes with it. So that project, you go ahead and import this picture and then you put it in this what? In this circle image. Okay, and then give it a size of 40. So by doing like that, we'll have our picture there, the one that you can see here. Let me zoom in so you can see it clearly. You can by the way zoom in, zoom in controls. All right. I hope you can see that. Eh? So that's what you have been able to achieve right now. Okay. This one here. Okay. So I've been able to achieve this. All right. So after putting that picture. So the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to put now uh, the width that's going to separate that picture from this, okay? So I'll go ahead and put the width of 15. So I'll come next to this picture and then in this same row and I put the width of 15. When I save, it's going to have that space that's going to spread the content with the width. Then after, I'm going to go ahead and put um, the container that is going to have a column and that column will have uh, the name of a person who you're chatting with and then the status whether they're online or not So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and put um, the column So go ahead and say column Okay, and then it's going to begin by having the cross alignment of start Okay, so come here and put the cross alignment of this column to be start. All right, so this column is going to have children Okay, so the children of this column are going to be uh, the text okay so I'm going to begin by putting there the text that's going to have the color of white so I'm going to come here and put the first tail of this column on top here and give it a text and then I style it like this so it is a text which has uh, the style and the color of white it's just simply a text with that size and then the color of what of white so when I save I'll have that name there like that okay then after doing that, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to add the name, I mean the status. Since it's a column, we're going to add the status below it, which is going to be online. So if it's the same column, I'm going to just add the status. So we'll just go ahead and give a container which has height of 2, so it can separate that status from the name. And then after, we we'll go ahead and put the status of what? Of online. It is nothing but a what? But a white text. So you can pause the video and you see how I've created that what? That white text. Or you can as well uh, design your own and then make it a, a white text with a gray of, of 10. So when you save, you'll have that beautiful thing of um, online. All right, so after doing that now, the next thing that we're going to do is now to add this uh, icon of what? Of more. So that icon of more, as I told you, it is always in actions. Okay, so I'll go ahead and create actions. So I come here and put actions. So I'll get out of the up bar here. I'll get out of the up bar. Okay, this is the up bar. So I can collapse this title. Let me collapse it. So I come back again to the up bar and give what you call actions. So action will take an array of widgets. So what I want to do right now is to put this, uh, is to put here what? Um, an icon. Okay, the menu icon. So I'll just simply come and say pop up menu, this one here pop up menu and then we give it a few things we give it the on selected on selected is just a method so you can leave it like that and then also give it a what the item menu builder so you can post the video and look at this item menu builder and then i come here and put item menu builder so if i save i'll have that icon here so if i want this icon to be white i can just simply come here and i give what you call icon color and then make it white then I'll have a white what? A white icon like that. 
So I've finished adding uh, this and this and this. So the next thing I'm going to do, we're going to change this arrow. So we'll come to that arrow and you know it is always what you call leading. Okay, so you'll we'll come here and give what you call leading parameter. So this leading, you can go ahead and pass the arrow and then also as well as uh, you can color this arrow by giving it what you call color and make it white. So when you save like this, you'll have uh, such a what? Such a beautiful um, interface, okay, over an app bar. All right, so let me zoom out so you can go back to the normal. Okay, so I hope we are together. So after doing that now, we are going to face now the what? Uh, the body. So I finished the app bar. So the body is going to be just a simple container that is going to have a column of which it will be divided into three. One is the adapter and then another one is the chatting, I mean the bottom thing which has the chatting uh, field. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, put the body. So we can collapse the scarf, I mean the up bar and then go ahead and give what you call the body. And then you pass the container like that. So this container, we're going to give it width of infinity and height of infinity. So by doing like this, um, we are going to now to do what? Um, to to go ahead and give now the the expanded. So in this expanded, it is we're going to have the adapter that will have the what? That will have the content. Okay. But before we design the adapter, we let us. Uh, let us let us go ahead and design these bottom things and then okay i don't know should we should begin with the adapter <laughs> okay let's begin with the adapter and then we'll finish by these uh ones that are remaining down so now let's let us face and start doing the adapter so i'm going to come here and say expanded so i'm going to say expanded in this column so it's going to have children and then the first child is going to be expanded oh, sorry okay it's going to have a column this container and then it's going to have children so the first chair is going to be expanded okay and then this expanded is going to have of course a child and this child is going to be now the adapter our adapter of the chatting system okay so go ahead and put that adapter there now I've not created this variable of adapter, so that's where now the whole business begins from. Okay, so we create the variable of adapter and you see uh, what it takes to do it. Okay, so if you come here, you'll find uh, we have what you call an adapter. So this adapter is uh, a what is uh, a Telegram chat adapter, the one that is a class of a Telegram chat adapter, or the one that that we're going to create right now. So. You can call it that you can call it any name but this is just nothing but what but the name of the variable so let's go ahead and uh, create that adapter so let us begin by creating uh okay let's go ahead and create the actual the, 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 the adapter so i'll come here on top here in this class and i say telegram adapter so it is not it is not there yet so it is just uh, the, the class that exists that has, does not exist for now okay but we're going to design it we're going to create it okay so um uh i don't know where even to begin from <laughs> we're going to have messages okay we're going to initialize this okay we're going to have the messages so these messages is going to be the the content that we're going to be displaying in the system okay so let us go ahead and create a list of what of uh, messages so this messages is a class that i shared with you in your project okay it's nothing but a what but a class so i'll go ahead and import it so you can go ahead and even create this class let me press control and i click on it so it is nothing but a class which has a an integer of an id and and a string and uh, content and then a boolean or whether it is a message from me or not and then it has a whether it should show time or not so after 
we have the first construct of this class which is having the integer and then this through the content and then where the message from me and also the date of the of the message and then you initialize them like this and then it has also another constructor called dot time so this dot time message dot time is going to take these parameters so for it you take the id the content and then the short time and then the what the data so that is uh, our message what our message model class you can go ahead and create that model for the video create something like this so after saving that let me go back now to my telegram okay um so the items or the message that are going to display now after creating the message they're going to display the next thing is to uh create uh the the the, the, the what is to create the 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 the, the togo but the togo interface i mean the togo controller the one that will be showing whether you should show the send or not okay so it can be just a boolean it will be helping us to decide whether you should show send button or not mm -hmm. we create that one after creating that one the next thing we're going to do is um okay so the next thing i'm going to do is uh, also i've created these three four, four variables so uh the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to create a text controller okay this text controller can come to it later all right so the next thing i'm going to do is now to initialize the um, the chatting system okay so to initialize the chatting system is uh just simply come to this init state and then we start adding the items okay the items but this one we can do it later all right let me okay let us, let us we can do this one later let us do this one later all right so now we have the chat telegram here that has not been initialized so we're going to initialize this uh, adapter you know it is still we use the late initializer so let's go ahead and initialize this adapter so to initialize this adapter is uh, we can initialize it in the build so it can always be refreshed at the time so I'll come here in the build, here in the build, inside this build, and then I initialize the what? The, the adapter. Oh, that's going to connect to the what? The telegram with our content. So it's going to be a class of uh, telegram adapter, the one that I've not created, but we're going to create it. It will take uh, the context, it will take the items, the item already there, and then it will take the what? It will take the on click listener so when someone clicks on an item what do you want to do so you can do that so let's go ahead and create the on click method or function that will pass to this telegram action i mean uh, adapter so uh it's going to be just our simple what a simple method okay so that's a simple method called on click that will give an index and then the object that someone has clicked on all right so by doing like this means that we have finished uh, initializing the what the, the the adapter now let us go ahead and design now the adapter itself okay let us go ahead and design the adapter itself however let us first add some messages so that we should uh, okay i don't know let us begin by adding the messages that we should design while we are adding what while we, are, while we have some messages to look at so to add some messages i'm going to use this initializer to do what to have the messages added to it okay i'll explain how these messages mean okay so i'll come here to init and we override the init state okay like that and then after writing init state so after super dot date we, we paste these lines so it is just items dot add so we are adding uh, some messages in this what in this uh, items okay so the first message is um is um uh this one i it, 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 we are using the construct of times of of message the time and then it is uh, taking the the length how uh, the length of the message and then takes the first message which can be high and then takes the false and then takes the takes the message if it's not equal to zero and then after we import the uh time formatter from tools so we don't have this time formatter from tools but i'm going to show you how we can design it and then here we format the time to be in mills porch all right so this is nothing but just uh, a conversion of uh, the current time you can pause the video and look at it here okay 
so to create this uh, get uh, formatted time event okay so i'm going to create that one so it is just this method let me copy it and i put it here in front so you can just look at it i'll put it here in this class so we don't find it in an external place so it is just uh, get formatted time and then you will call it get formatted time and then we do it and then we implement it like this so for it it will be getting a, a time time stamp and it converts it into what into a formatted time so let's just call this method here instead of calling it on tools so you can remove tools and call it directly because it's not in the same next class in the same class so in simple terms it is just receiving the current time stamp and then it converts it into what into the uh, readable time that someone can understand simply then this one is um, getting the what the the width of the message which is a percentage of uh, uh, five my uh, if it's got ten and then we do what we return the value whether it is true or not all right so uh, that is our first message that will show up in the in the what in the chat and then this is the second message that uh, will be like replying the previous one it is almost the same thing so you can pause the video and you see how I can achieve this so here we're just adding in the list of what in the list of items okay so i'll go ahead and save now i'm going to reopen okay i think i cannot reopen okay so after doing that now we're going to get our telegram what our telegram adapter okay i'm going to put a telegram adapter so i can copy this and then come here we have a section of adapters i think it is here you see i'm going to create a new one and i'm going to call the what telegram dot that telegram adapter dot that okay so after doing that we're going to do we're going to create a, a, a what um class okay we're going to create a class okay so this telegram dot that is going to be an external file okay so let's go ahead and create a class so just simply say class and then put telegram okay and then after open the curl bracket for the class so after doing that now the next thing is we are now going to put the constructors uh, that are needed okay so i'll go ahead and do it and import this by pressing alt and enter so it can be important that new class that i've just created. so when i import that one you can see this error has done what has reduced so the error that we're remaining with is the creating now the constructor that is going to be receiving this information okay and also creating the game view that it's going to be returning the user interface that wants to on the screen so i'll go ahead and open this okay so after opening this adapter okay after opening the adapter the first thing that i'm going to do i'm going to create our first uh, our first what our first uh required let me let me see so what is required here first is the adapter the first ad i mean the first controller and also the get view okay those are the two things that are uh, not being seen okay so, i mean that are required most in this side so let us begin by the controller i mean the constru the control the constructor okay so we're going to have here a list of items that we have to display and then the building context and the function that will be calling when someone clicks on something okay and then uh, the scroll controller so you can pause the video and create those variables in your chat telegram adapter okay so i can come here and open them so everything is nice so far let me import this so i report the messages Put um, the what? The single scroll. Then after, I'm going to create a constructor that is going to be receiving these items that are not initialized. Okay. So to do that, I'll just simply come here and uh, say contract. Is taking the content and then the items and then uh, the click so it means that when someone calls this constructor it will automatically initialize the items and the 
and the what and the on click method and also the context that's why you see here it was complaining because they were not initialized but if you do like this it means that as soon as someone sent the data to this constructor or to this class it will first begin by initializing those ones all right so after doing that uh, let's go ahead and now uh, let's go ahead and now do what, uh, what is remaining okay the get view let us now go ahead and design the get view so we can see if we can start getting things to appear on our screen okay so this get view is the one that is going to be responsible now for generating uh, 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 for generating the what the user interface that we want to see on the screen okay so we are going to design we are going to put this method into our class of what of uh, of telegram adapter so just simply come here and put uh, telegram i mean get view which is going to be promised to return back the widget and then put get view so get view is going to return a builder or list builder that is going to take the items and also the padding of that and then the scroll controller and then the the what the item builder that's going to return now the what the items uh depending on the uh, value that we're providing in the list so i can pause the video and look at this okay so i'm going to copy this and then i paste it here okay so after doing that now the next thing we're going to do is now to uh build the view or the view of a single message that was remaining so this list is going to be a builder that is going to be getting a what uh, multiple messages so this one the way you see the build view list is the one that's going to be now the user interface of a certain message so let's go ahead and design that okay so when you come here i'm going to go ahead and build our view or the view that we want to display so we'll come here outside this widget and then create a widget uh build build list view all right so now here uh we have to return uh, to return so but before we return i'll first uh, check here something i think if a message is not for me i mean if the message is not for me is for me should be what it should be initialized that as false like that all right so after doing that now let's go ahead and return the single message here that we want to display here so we're going to begin by by returning what you call a wrap so it can spend as minimal space as possible so we're going to begin by adding what you call um a wrap okay so come here and say return the wrap okay so after returning the wrap uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and return whether it is me or not okay so if it is me we'll uh, do what we'll have to make this application the wrap to book to go at the end of the column if it is not me it will go to the end of the start okay so i'll do that come and put in the wrap okay so after doing that the next thing is is now um the user interface so if it is me what should show if it's not me what it should show okay if it, so we go, we go ahead and begin by putting our card okay so that's going to be our card here okay so the child of this is going to be what the card Okay, so after this card, we're going to give it um, a border radius of that circular and make it what uh, five. Okay, so let's go ahead and design our card. And we give it what? We give it that shape and uh, the circle radius 
that. So I'll go ahead and I put the card. All right, so after doing that, now the next thing is I'm going to go ahead and give the margin, okay? I give the margin. So I'm going to explain how I give the margins. So I check if it is me, I make uh, my margin to be of uh, this. I can pause the video and see it. If it is not me, I make it to be the other way around. Okay? So I can pause the video and understand how I did this one. Okay? What are the margins? Okay. Now, after putting the margin, so the next thing is uh, now to put the padding around the card so it can have some space uh, that the text that is not going to touch the what? The card itself. So I'll go ahead and put a uh, padding. As the child of that card. And then after. After putting padding, so I'm going to put the padding of... Um, Symmetric five, and then we'll have that. Let me see if we still have any error. We don't have any error. So if I save, at least it should be able to auto reload. So if I come back and then I go back to Telegram, I see I should be able to see the messages. I hope you can see that. Let me zoom. Can you see that? It is there and. Uh, there's another one on the other side. Uh, this one here. Okay, so you have at least two messages there. All right, so after doing that, now let us go ahead and design uh, in that. Then we're going to put here the column because one text is on top of the other. So we're going to have the column and then the text next to the other. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and give here the child and we're going to have here column. So our first column, I mean, uh, our column uh, first is going to have the alignment of end. Okay, so now the first column is going to have uh, the text. Okay, the text that I'm going to display, which is going to be an SMS content. Okay, so you can pause the video and look at it. So this is our first content. So I'll copy that and then I put it there. Okay, so when I do like that, I'll be, I'll be able to what? To look at the text. That's beautiful. So you can see we have hi and hello there. Then after putting the text, the next thing I'm going to put a spacer. That's going to space the text from the content. Here. and then after i go and put the name i mean the time okay so you can pause the video and design the time so since time is going to have uh, uh those blue ticks and gray ticks uh it's going to be a what it's going to be a row and i'm going to explain it okay so the next thing i'm going to put there a row so let me explain things that i've put in this row step by step Okay, let me just uh, first break them down, then I explain them. All right, so since this row, it will have the blue ticks and uh, gray ticks. Uh, so, I mean, since that text will have gray ticks and blue ticks, so what I did, I had to convert it to a row. So the row, it has an alignment of center, and then the main axis to be minimum. Now, it has a text. So this is the text that is bearing now the time itself, which is the date. And then it has the text alignment to the end, okay? And then it has a style, okay? A text style. Now, in this text style, we have... Uh, I mean, it has a text style, okay? And then this text style, we check if it is me. Remember, we have here a variable call is me. To check whether it is you who sent that message. If it is me, you should have this color. Either, otherwise, it should have a gray of 400. Okay, so if it is me, you should have that background color, and then because we're going to have the background color if the message is not from you, then if it is the other way around, uh, you can do what you can try 
Wait. So here, after 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 this is the, the, the content itself or the, the, the time itself. Then after here we have uh, uh, the the icons. Okay. So they should show whether the message has been sent or not, something like that. Okay. So we check if the if the if the um, if the message is done all. I mean, if the message is if it is me, it should not even show this icon. If it is not me, it should show this double check or the double tick what the double tick icon because if it is me i don't need to do what to know i mean the message has just come to me so i don't need to know whether the time is there or not so that's why i put here if it is me you should just show the double ticks if it is not me it should show it should not show anything so if i save i'll have uh, that one i hope you can see this I hope you can see this Uh, that 9 p.m. which is in green and then this one which is in gray and that is so beautiful okay so let us uh, do the finishing all right so after putting that so the next thing I think that's all about the widget okay so the next thing is just going to uh, get the count okay To be 35 so i mean to be the item that length which you can put here okay it's called get count and then make it be at the length equals to that can put at the very last in case someone wants to know how long the items are all right so we have successfully designed our adapter so if you practice of course you understand how these adapters work okay so i've designed our adapter so i'm going to go back and put that bottom information okay the bottom information so let's go back to our normal class i mean to a normal screen which is this telegram and then the adapter is there now after doing that now we're going to see how we can put now this bottom uh, messaging icon this one here uh, so to do that i'll just simply come and uh, next to expand you know we had an expand Okay, so this is our expanded and uh, next to it we are going to put now uh, this chatting okay the message okay so it's going to be in a container so after the, the adapter we're going to put the container and then after we are going to put um, the color of the container to be white and then the text should be a line left like this so after doing that, now the next is going to be now uh, putting there the what uh, the row. So I'll go ahead because here we need this item to be arranged in the form of a row. Okay. So I'll go ahead and put a row. <laughs> Time is up, but about to finish. So this container we're going to have a child. We give it a row, and then after. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give it uh, uh, the button, our first button here. So it's going to have children. And then here, yeah, the first thing we're going to give it a what? Uh, the button. So this button is going to have the icon of what? Of emoji. And give it that color. So if I save, I should have something beautiful like this one here. You can see it here. Here in bottom this one here for emojis yeah so after doing that now the next thing we're going to add uh, the what extended so it can spend as maximum space available as possible and then we put there our text fill in that extended okay so let me do that and explain those things okay so i'll come and paste it's going to have an expanded and this expanded is having a text input and then we have uh, 
maximum line one and then minimum line one and then you have a mal it should support multiple lines and then when someone clicks on the i mean it's when the text change when text changes we keep on doing what you keep on um when when the, uh, so when the text to go is more than one we do what we make the the, the the show button to do what to be visible okay when the text is what is more than one you see when the text is more than one we make the show button to be visible. if it's not more than one here the show button will not show because you cannot send an empty message all right so after doing that we're going to go ahead and um, and add this icon for the files okay so come here and add the icon for the files so it's going to be expanded and then come here and add the icon for the files like this so i'll have that icon next there however we have here the controller that we have to create the one that's going to be controlling this input but let me first finish this icon so i can save everything at once so there's a controller that's going to be controlling the input so how we have to create it also so i want when someone clicks on this send message you should call this method of sending message let's begin with this controller so this controller is is responsible uh for what uh for converting the text in the in the i mean for handling the text in the in the chat all right so let's just go ahead and define this controller so to define the controller we'll just simply come to public and then create text controller and then initialize it to nothing we just simply come here outside the build not inside the build and say text controller or text editor controller equals to this controller okay and then it means that you can now set it or you can attach it to a certain what to a certain view and then you'll be able to do what to control it okay so i've attached it to this one and then we should be able to control this okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and now and now uh work on the send message when someone click on send message what should be done okay so go ahead and create that method you know it is here it has not been created so let me create it create method send message so this method is not going to be responsible for sending messages so if i save everything should be all right but there is no logic of typing something and send okay so what we need someone clicks here it should be able to get that data and add it in here and display it all right so to do that we we'll just simply come here and then uh, write this send message so the first thing we'll do is to collect the message itself okay from the controller so you say this controller minus i mean those text it should be able to give us a message so after doing that the next thing we say um show send i mean you clear the controller after collecting the message you clear the controller you clear the controller and then you set the send button to not to to show okay or not to send okay so after doing that we, we set state and then again try to fetch the what the data from the main adapter okay so we just simply say set state all right so after doing after doing set state and then we come here and put adapter dot insert single item you know this method we already created it okay and then you 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 get the item that count okay so you can get the length of item and then you get the message and then you the message the one that you have collected from the form and then you get the, the set it to true if it is coming from you and then you divide by you get the code divided by five if it is go to zero in order to stop it and then here you get the time you convert the time and then you add that one in what an adapter and then you do what you generate a reply okay so let's first do this so i can pause the button and do what i've just explained right now so i've not created the method of inserting item 
so let's go ahead and create an adapter so we'll come back to our telegram adapter and add the method of inserting an item so this is telegram adapter we'll go ahead and add the method of inserting item okay so this method let me go ahead and copy it and then I can I explain it so this method what it does it gets the index or the current length of an item and then go ahead and uh, insert it into the item so it sets it to be in that position of the item and then after it scrolls it scrolls so this is how you scroll you just simply say scroll con the controller remember you set this controller to the uh, to that list to be able to scroll it and then say dot position dot scroll marks and then i put this and then say duration which you take to scroll and then i put the animation of what of curves dot is out okay so that one then i'll be able to what to enable the scrolling so you can pause the video and see how you add this method in your what in your controller I mean in your adapter so after doing that uh, the next thing you're going to do is now to uh, is now to let me remove this thing of tools all right so like this so I should be able to come here and say hello and then I say send you should show hello you see that is beautiful um, Hindo, my name is Mohindo, I sent, you should be able to show up. I love your DP. And I sent, click on send, you should be able to show, I love your DP. So that is uh, very, very nice. All right, so after doing that, then we want to generate the reply, okay? We want to generate the reply. So the logic of generating reply is just the same method, but like same method, but for the, from the side of the user okay so i'll come here to to send message sorry sorry so i'll come here to send message and next tweet i'm going to put um, generate what generate uh, reply okay so in this generate reply we'll first get the timer and put the delay of one second so it should come after the delay of one second and then we say set state and then say adapter dot insert and then we do what we say adapter to get items and then we put here the message remember the message we are going when we're going to call this method we're giving it the message that we want to display and then we say adapter to get count and then we in here so here here we're saying true the message is coming from us here we say false the message is not coming from us and then you say get items i mean get uh, formatted items i mean time so you should convert our time ah, and then you set state after this delay or after that delay that i've set here so this one will be able to generate a what a reply uh, so i'll be calling it immediately uh, in this method of sending message so i'll come and put it here and then save uh, message what so i do that and i save so i'll have when i come here and i say hi it would leave one second and then it gives me Hi as a reply. You see that? That's beautiful. Let me show you. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So I come here and say hi. I say my name is Mohindo. When I save to load and then it come here and give this one. So it after that delay. Uh-huh. I put that and then does that one so that is uh, very very nice that is very very nice and that is so beautiful and that's why i'm going to give you what i'm going to give you a challenge of doing the remaining user interface it's exactly the same 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 logic using same adapter just duplicate the adapter make sure first of all you do this what i've just done right now and achieve it then uh, you're going to challenge yourself and give yourself the final product project because these are the final videos in mastering user interfaces so i want you to give yourself a challenge and design 
uh, what uh, tweet I mean sorry not Twitter <laughs> and design it uh, uh, and design what and design WhatsApp user interface okay so you see it is exactly the same only that you'll have to put the colors of WhatsApp and everything is almost the same just put the colors of WhatsApp and then also go ahead and change this one you see that typing message instead of having it as a flat thing like the way it is here i want you to use the skill that i've taught you to make it be like this okay to make it be like this uh, so challenge yourself and then put this recording button it might not work but put that recording button so let's take that one as your final project so if you finish it you can inbox me uh what you are able to do and then i'll know that maybe yeah you did something so go ahead and design this whatsapp interface uh, using the same things and also go ahead and design maybe uh, the blackberry messenger interface it's exactly the same logic but you just change a few things and from that practicing it's when you'll be able to do what to master and say that yes i understood uh, these things and also go ahead and design maybe the facebook interface you see exactly the same thing but only in this bottom it is changing it has been a quick a long journey but uh, i believe if you have been following and practicing i believe uh, you've learned a lot of things as you know we always do 40 minutes so i'll start our timer uh, today we are going to see uh, in the previous lecture we were able to do the uh, the clones for whatsapp and clone for messenger and clone for blackberry in our today's video we are going to see how we can design this about screen so we're going to see how you can design this about the application screen i'm also going to teach you how you can design this simple about us this uh, of this screen i'm also going to teach you how you can design the team about us i'm also going to teach you how you can design a company about us okay so this one you put them when you're writing the about in your application all right so without wasting much time let's go ahead and uh, start uh, designing these user interfaces uh, so uh, let's begin let's begin um we begin by as you can see i've already started our application okay this is what we did in the last lecture so uh, i've already started our application so i'm going to begin by creating a section for the about screens so i'll come here to I'll come to what to screens and then create another screen that we're going to call directory i'm going to call this one about all right so uh, we're going to begin by designing uh, the about application screen okay so to do that we we'll just simply come here and then uh, come here and say we create another file here about app screen so i'll come here and say uh-huh and then say about app screen dot that okay so here i'll go ahead and say stateful and put about app and then i'll go ahead and import and then i can remove this key for me i don't need it All right so after doing that we're going to put this about app in our what in our main chat or in the main in the main uh, uh, route so i'll come to our main route or to our main menu i'll come here and duplicate this one and then i come here and i put here about about There, but there we go. Then I'm going to get here and, and put here about okay, about up screen. All right, so after doing that, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, open this 
about here and then when I open it here, you should be able to see the about which is the black color. All right, so let's begin. Now we are going to design this about. Okay, this is what we're going to design right now. So I'll go there because I already have it. Okay. So I'm going to begin by returning a scaffold. Okay. So I'll come here. Instead of returning this threshold, I'm going to return by what? A scaffold. Okay. We import the scaffold. And then if we save, everything should be white. Okay. The next thing you're going to give the background color a gray of 10. So I'll come here and give the background color a gray of 10. Like that. Okay. So after doing that, uh, the next thing we're going to go ahead and now start put the app bar. Okay, so let's go ahead and design the app bar. So I'll come here and put app bar. It's going to be an app bar. And then in this app bar, we're going to give the background color of color, colors.amber colors dot amber do you know amber color it is like yellow but it's not yellow <laughs> so the background color of the amber i've made it amber color as you can see it there and then i'm giving it for 600 as its parameter then after i went to go ahead and set the system uh, overlay style so go ahead and pass here the system overlay style and import this one and then make the the icons to be light so when i save the icons should be light like these ones okay then after doing that the next thing we're going to do we're going to give you the title which is going to be about okay so we'll come here to here and then give here a title that's going to be about okay so after putting that the next thing we're going to do we're going to give now uh the icon okay so the icon i can it's already there dark you can leave it if you want so the icon there so when someone clicks there the application should pop right so the next thing we're going to do we're going to now give the actions here and then pass the what the the menu okay so there you go right so we have our action here we can have this menu of settings okay so that's it that's nice and that's beautiful all right so after doing that now the next thing that we're going to do now is not put the body that's going to have this content so i'm going to put here body and then pass single child scroll view and then after in this single child scroll view we're going to give it a column a child of a column then after we're going to give this column a height of 10 uh, so it's going to have children and then a height of 10. all right so after doing that uh we're going to go ahead and uh, give the card okay the card and then this is the first card that we're going to design here that we're going to put here so let's go ahead and put the card give it a child so before you give it a child you can first give it a shape like we we'll always do and then make this card to have a background color of white and elevation of two and then the layer of so go ahead and give this card to the card before even uh, putting the other child okay so you can pause the video and look at this parameter that i'm passing here okay then after the child of this card is going to be a white container that's going to have a child and this child is going to be it's going to be a container that has a good child and then it's going to let's first give it alignment and padding so you can first give it alignment and padding and then the child of this container 
is going to be what is going to be a column because there are things that are going to be in column so the child of this online container is going to be a column that is going to take children okay so the children that is going to take it's going to take uh, a row so this is going to be a row that's going to have our logo and then the name of the application so it's going to be a row okay and then give it children and then the first one is going to be a what our container that is going to have the logo and the name of our application so this is going to be our first child here okay so i can pause the video and see so it's going to be a container and then the logo so i import this image okay so if i save i'll have that beautiful thing there i hope you can see it okay so after putting that on the row next to that row i'm now going to put the what the container 15 okay next that row, i'm going to put the container 15 and then i'm going to put a column because we're going to have the, the the name of the item i mean the name of the of the of the of the app and then the description so i'll go ahead and put the column and this column is going to have children okay so the first child i mean before even put your children as first put alignment to be sent and start Okay, so the first child is going to be uh, the style and then the about us. Like this, okay? So it's going to be our first children. Okay, so I'll copy this and then come and paste it here. I hope you can see that. Okay, so you can see how I've formatted my text. You can also format them in your own way. Then when I save, I'll have that beautiful thing there. Okay, then after, we are going to add now, we're going to add the spacer. So it can always be pushed behind. Right, so this space is option i can leave it by the way all right so we're going to put now uh this uh, version the app version so i'll come here to the column i mean I'll, I'll come here to after this row so i'll collapse this row collapse the row put a comma and then put uh, a height of 20 and then after i'm going to put the row now i'm going to put the row okay so i'll go ahead and put the row and then after uh, this row, I'm going to put now the icon of info, okay? The icon of info, this icon, okay? Okay, and then after putting the icon of info next to that row, I'm going to put a column and then I put the information itself, okay? Put a, put a spacer. And then go ahead and put a column and this column is just going to have the version and then uh, the version value okay so I'll go here and put the app version and its respective value so you can pause the video and see how I've done that can you see it's not so complicated just text one on top of the other you see the version and then the other one is on top of it so when I save I'll have that one there isn't it it is nice okay i'll have that one there all right so after doing that uh, i'll go ahead and do the same so this row you can as well even design as a component and keep on calling it so that row i'm going to do what to do the same thing and put uh the same rows below it so that one's going to be the the, the the changing history and then another one is going to be the license okay so do the same thing so i can just simply copy this and this and then add them there since they are almost same thing exactly so i'll come and add that one there so when i save i should have only that i have put here the size i should have 
uh, that one. So you should be able to achieve that. Okay, you should be able to achieve that. Okay, then after we're going to make the next card here. So this card is exactly the same thing, but the only difference it is having the word author here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how it is done, and then I'll just copy and paste it there. So it is a card like the way you have the one on top, and uh, it is having a container and then the column, like the way you just you have on top. And the only difference here, it has a row, and on top it does not have any icon, just have the word uh, author or the person who created the application. Okay, so you put the, about the author's name and also maybe uh, the link of that author. So I can just simply copy that card and add it there because it is just like the one on that page on top. Likewise to this one, it is like the one like this one, but on the, this different different information. So go ahead and challenge yourself and design those two cards. Okay, they are just simple and straightforward because it's repetition of what I've done on top. But to make something beautiful, you have to really do them. So let me collapse this. Let me collapse this entire card. Let me collapse this entire card and then and then paste it them here and then we'll have those things there all right that's it so that's our first about us screen so here comes a challenge so i so you see i've just done this beautiful thing like this one here now I need to challenge you. I need you to do this simple as it sounds. A simple about us screen. And I also need you so you can pause the video and take that as a challenge. Since it is uh, a final, pro uh, we are in a final video. So I'm giving you some of these ones as a challenge to see if you have really learned. So pause the video and design that user interface. If you finish it, you can send it to me to make sure that uh, I check and comment. So design that user interface. We we'll have the name of application and then the version of application and then the, the date and then the description. I don't think this one will be hard. We can even discuss it. It will just be a status bar. I mean the app bar, which has the action of this button. And then you have here what? You have here um, a text, a title of your text that is big in size and it is having a font weight that is smaller and this is an a column which has an expanded here and then expanded in bottom and then you have this type of uh, the text which is having the version and it is in color gray and it's having the dark color here and then the last update this is color gray and then it has the dark color here and then description and then these terms of service so i believe you can challenge yourself and do this you might not be having an idea, but I'm giving you the idea of what you should do. So this is task number one for today's video. Do this. Task number two. Do this. Exactly what I've just explained in the previous video, but with a blue background color. So go ahead and do this. You can call us about us blue. Okay. So this is the second challenge that I'm giving you. The third challenge that I'm giving you. Do this okay this is a little bit hard but it's not hard this is just our team which has three rows and each row it is a column that has a picture on top this picture i already shared them and the dark later the dark text with the la gray text and time was how many times three i mean time was two okay two rows two rows three times three times was two okay rows times two and then the columns times three then after you have it, our team and then you have here the mission then give this text that looks like this one and then put here the address and then get this image of a google map put it there and then put the remaining address there down it should be a single chess call view and also work on the what on the upper back color so that is a challenge that i'm giving you so that is a challenge number two to see that in this course did you really learn something then after doing that i'm also challenging you to do this 
okay that is uh, pretty shiny i'm challenging you to do this one also it is just like this the other one that you just done but this one has a background color with the content i mean it has a background image with a content on top of it we have already i've already taught you something like this so i want to challenge yourself you can use stack or you can use any other thing but i want to challenge yourself and do this okay so please that's another challenge number three and no challenge number two challenge number three now this is challenge number four do this it is just like the other one that i told you to do at first however this one has a, a red color so if you finish these ones and uh, you do them exactly as how you wanted including the chatting systems then you can say okay i'm now a flutter user interface designer okay so i'll not do them for you because i don't want to feed you everything but i've taught you at least every concept that can help you achieve this so that makes it our course uh, and uh, i don't want you to just stop from there please do what i've told you to do uh, for your good and also uh, for the good of the my energy that i've invested in you guys to teach you these things for free so also show sure that you appreciate and do those challenges if you finish them you can as well contact me and i look at your works all right that's it for today uh we meet in another series of videos where i'm going to teach you now how you can connect this mobile application with the web application to start making real what real world projects goodbye